Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Law Explaining the Interwebs. I'm your host, Nick Riccada of Riccada Law, a small law firm in central Minnesota. Uh, how's it going, guys? Um, I hope that audio isn't blowing out your ears on the intro. It occurs to me that I don't have much of a way to fix that. And it sounded really loud to me, so... <laughs> Uh, wow. We are in for yet another day. We are in for yet another day of, uh, of Kyle Rittenhouse. I mean, that's, that's where we are. Kyle is here. His trial is happening. You guys are here, which is crazy. It's crazy how many people have been watching this show as we go. Um, and uh, that is. Okay, hold on. Getting things set up. Uh, crazy how many people around the world are watching this. Not just on this show. Although it was huge. Yesterday we were. I think we may have been edged out by PBS yesterday. <laughs> PBS News Hour. I think was the only bigger. Um, news live stream yesterday but we beat uh we beat everybody else if it, i sound rough cuz i literally just woke up i haven't had anything to drink yet and and i mean like liquid so um so yeah but uh it was huge huge broadcast we hit i thought i saw over 27,000 people but uh, according to playboard um, we didn't quite pass 27,000. It was a 26, nine and 26, nine, three, nine or something. Mm. So anyway, we will, uh, we will pursue on with this. I will be having some guests today as well. Um, one of the guests is already chambered. So when, uh, when he is, when I see him actually show up, he'll, uh, be brought into the stream, but, uh, other guests will be, uh, coming and going throughout the day. Um, to my, uh, also if I did not get to your super chat last night, I did read them all on the follow-up live stream or uh, yesterday. I did read them all in the follow-up live stream last night. So uh, thank you guys so much for, for making this, uh, for making this show work and making this show um, very, very, uh, you know, I guess uh, re rewarding, rewarding anyway. Um, and I, I very much appreciate it. Uh, so that is, that has been awesome as well. And I do as a, as a commitment, personal commitment, um, attempt to read every single super chat that comes in. Um, there's, there's just been so many people watching and chatting, uh, that I'm, I'm not able to get to them all the time during the main stream. Otherwise I'd be talking. Uh, you think I talk over the, the stream a lot now you should have, um, you should see if I were to read them all in real time, but I, I, I do get to them, uh, on the makeup streams if necessary. And so, yes, they did get done last night and that will continue as well. Um, speaking of that, there are a couple early super chats that I want to get before the show fully gets started. And, uh, before we have the, before we have the, uh, trial on, um, oh wait, no, that's. Okay. Oh, we've got uncivil law. What's yes. Up, Is uncivil law continuing to talk to you from the, from the road? Uh, StreamYard is being annoying with your volume. I got it fixed, but um, they I said it's auto adjust for whatever that's worth. Oh no. It, it, I've changed it to uh, I'm editing your mic settings manually because uh, that's fine. I've got, yeah, I've got us all turned down. And um, last night it kept, or yesterday it kept undoing my settings. And I was like, what the F? 
with the F. Yeah. Uh, so here, here's Kurt. <laughs> uh, so something, something was brought to my attention this morning, which I find to be hilarious because this is the absolute state of legal commentary online. Yeah. Right. Um, apparently, apparently I, maybe among others, uh, on the show, but I'll take all the heat have been being mocked been being mocked by very astute commentators on Twitter because Wisconsin does not have a directed verdict in criminal cases. It's called something else. Sure. Different so jurisdictions called different things. Yes. You call it a so motion to dismiss, for- called a directed verdict, called it as a judgment of matter of law, whatever. <laughs> one of those things. <laughs> this is, this is the lawyer issue, right? It's like, Oh, they don't know what they're talking about. It's uh-huh. just, it's not called that. It's called this. It's it's the same thing. We we all yes. get it. It's it's the basic legal principle that we're after here. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, so that was just that was just funny to me. Um, yeah, it's not called a motion to dismiss. It's called a demurrer in California. Okay, thanks. That's great. Yeah that that helped us a lot. Uh, thank you. Um, anyway. So uh, I was just about to read the first couple super chats that came in before the stream. So I don't miss them um, because of YouTube's awesome super chat management system that actually used to be good. So uh, real quick, Wolfgang Deo says muck 006 asks since the DA ordered the police to not serve the warrant for Gage's phone. What is the likelihood of Gage being an FBI agent? Um, I mean, I guess it's possible, but it doesn't seem likely. He seems kind of like an idiot. FBI agent with a criminal history, I don't know. Yeah. Stranger thing, yeah. an FBI informant, though, is more probable. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Fed informant, Fed uh, cooperator, collaborator of some sort. Sure. Uh, Wolfgang Dale says, so I bet the left likes the idea of a right to be safe, especially women. However, how does one charge char- uh, charge nature for endangering someone's life? Uh, Maca Jr. says, trying to catch up on your streams. <laughs> it's a futile attempt. The blood evidence chick mouth had a built-in grape whistle, constantly ruining every S word she said. That was annoying. Thanks for bringing it to our attention, by the way. That was that was nice. Oh, man. It, it ruined my life. I wasn't going to let you guys get away with it. Uh, Richard Grubber says the ballistician yesterday sounded like those automated voice message systems ending every sentence in an upward inflection and mechanical yep. cadence. I was waiting for her to tell me to press nine for more options. Um, devious smile says the two prosecutors looked like little finger and Varus. I just imagine the slim one taking the mic and start to, and start trying to talk about how chaos is a ladder. Uh, Wolfgang Deo says, started off my day with Michael Knowles. Yo, clip. Oh, uh, our clip on Michael Knowles. Cool. Uh, very cool. Shady J says, how's it going today, Nick? Thank you for streaming this, man. Also, check out the public freakout subreddit. There's a post of you guys sitting at 38,000 upvotes. Might get deleted <laughs> by the mod soon. <laughs> yeah, I bet r slash law isn't having a lot of fun with us either. They banned me from r slash law, which was pretty hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, because you didn't you accurately state the law at some point or something? Yeah, like that? The, I think it was talking about the uh, January 6th stuff, which I've covered extensively on my channel. And right. they're saying it's not complicated. And I'm like, actually, it's insanely complicated. Here's the reasons it's complicated. And I yeah, got banned. You, it was great. You have you have a ton of different defendants for one. And each de- uh, defendant yeah. is an independent Yeah, each case. defendant is in a different factual posture with different evidence that's relevant to them. We have to consider the case from each of their points of view independently. It's it's a little troubling or trying. Yeah, it's uh, that that was good. That's good stuff. I love when people are like, yeah. I mean, first of all, law law is generally complicated, and the things that make it complicated are little things that can uh, butterfly effect basically a case yep. really quickly. It's like, oh, oh, this is just a standard whatever. All of a sudden, but this fact. And then you're like, oh, and then this happened. Oh, and then this happened. <laughs> it's not good. Um, and then Squizgar says, uh, on time, impossible. Yes, we were on time today. Whew. So how are you feeling, man? Uh, I know you're traveling. I'm feeling good. Hopefully I'll be home today if the flights are kind to me. Oh, man, I am. Uh, 
I am feeling my voice be a little bit, a uh, little bit iffy. Um, so what happens when you get for talking eight hours on a stream and then you do a three hour live stream talking 11 hours a day at this point? Yeah. Great. That's great. Yes. That's my, just tell, uh, just tell me that you're also doing the, uh, the Twitch uh, movie night on top of that no, as well. No, no, no. Uh, I would, I would love to say that I've been able to keep up with that, but I would, I would die. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> people keep asking me at the end of the night show, are you going to Twitch? I'm like, Oh my God, it's two in the morning. I got to be up in six hours. Um, But let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Trying to get live streams yeah. i don't know why kyle rittenhouse trial live i don't know why these streams are not set up in advance like at least 10 minutes early yeah um and i and i don't know why uh youtube makes this thing that is is dominating live coverage on youtube right now I mean, and uh, just, just to uh, comment on what you were saying at, at the start of this stream with, you know, the various commentary here and trying to be honest, you know, it, I was on stream day two and giving praise to the prosecutor and saying how I thought they were doing a good job with narrative and story. And the chat was hating me, but I was still giving my honest opinion. Even at day three, <laughs> I thought the prosecutor was doing really well. And I thought, you know, it was basically looking really, really bad. The prosecutor's on po focus. The defense is nowhere to be found. It's looking horrible. So I don't know how much more honest or fair I can be when I'm coming into your stream with a bunch of people who are pro-con and being like, yep, prosecutor's doing a great job. Not going well. Not looking good for Kyle. And then when the defense actually shows up, I'm like, this is great. How much more fair can yeah. I be, man? No, no, no. That uh, I was in the same boat with you. I mean, I think you, you rated the initial opening statement of the defense a little bit lower than I did. But in general, we were basically on the same page after, after that first day of witness testimony, we were both like, Oh dear God, where's the defense? What are they doing? And then the next day, whew, they started turning the ship around and it was getting better and better and better. And I thought uh, day three was still pretty bad. Day four is where I thought it got better, but yeah, <laughs> no, I, the, I, I think so Day one for me is when I talk about it is jury selection. Uh -huh. Day day two opening statements. Day three is the first full day of witness testimony. That's uh -huh. where uh, I thought it was going really poorly. And then day four would have been Thursday. Uh, Thursday, Friday were okay. That sounds uh, right then. That sounds right. Yeah, were the good days. So that's that's how I uh, number them. I know I number them a little differently because I include jury selection as day one. Um, we got a we got another visitor joining the stream. Uh, I I don't know if his headphones are your headphones in. Are you ready? Oh, he's there. We go. Now he's there. That's uh, right. What's up, man? Yeah, I was the first one chambered, as you called a chamber. That's what, that's what you call it. Yeah, Being well, backstage. I mean, you were you were chambered like a like a written house rectifier. You were you were describing <laughs> me like like a bullet engages gun that just. Aren't never, you gonna? That never aren't got you fired. Start blasting. <laughs> I was the one. I was in that chamber, but I just never came out. So there you go. Yeah. Well, uh, welcome to the show. Good logic. Uh, happy to have you here, Thank and uh, I'm ready for a big day of commentary when this thing gets started. In just, I mean, it should be starting any second now, guys. If you happen to see uh, a feed that uh, is is streaming it, let me know. Um, and I will, I will pull it up. I'm looking as well on YouTube. When I say guys, I mean the chat. If you, if you in the chat happen to see a uh, Rittenhouse live stream actually starting, uh, I'll, I'll grab it. All right, we got another, we got another bro How's in it here, going, gangsters. Nice. What's What's up, buddy? Nice to see you. Yes, I had to go get some more alcohol and energy drinks. <laughs> <laughs> the fuel of champions. Sounds like my dinner. <laughs> this is an exhausting time to be a youtube lawyer <laughs> it is there's so much going on i haven't even i haven't seen a second of, of the arbor. uh of the arbory trial yeah yeah there's, there's, there's we'll, a lot we'll, going on there a lot going we'll, on. we'll get to it after the prosecution's opening, which went on for an hour 20 who decided to prove their entire case but it was good 
Uh, we, well, it, uh, I have to correct you, legal mindset. Someone was making fun of me because I keep saying directed verdict in Wisconsin calls it something else. No, I know it does. I know. I just covered that. It's actually a motion. Um, it's a specific motion. Yeah. But one were of the you things making we- fun of me? Yes. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Silly northern lawyers. <laughs> I'm a little uh, nervous hanging out with lawyers who obviously are so ignorant about Wisconsin law. Lord, yeah, it's so humiliating. Yeah, because we didn't call it a rose. You know, we called it something else. That's great. Um. Yeah. I. Uh, again, I'm not not super concerned about it. It was just funny. Um, I covered last night. There was there was someone else making fun of Viva uh, on Twitter. This is a, uh, a a Twitter criminal defense attorney, and this person, I think they're Southern District of New York defense attorney, if I remember right, but I I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but they're like uh, Viva had clipped out the section from the show, and he said this case should be should be over immediately. And she's like, uh, "Tell me you're a defense or not a criminal defense attorney without telling me you're not a criminal defense attorney." And then people were asking, "They're like, well, wait, what's wrong with the analysis here?" And they're like, "I didn't say it was wrong." It's like, <laughs> "What are you criticizing?" <laughs> so weird. I'm open. I'm open to suggesting I'm wrong. We could have blind spots. I'm I'm open to that. I opened up helpful. TikTok last night, and that was the second video that was recommended to me. Was was a clip of you guys reacting to Gage saying, "No, he didn't fire until I aimed the gun at him." And... I don't want to fire up the TikTok again, but <laughs> I mean, it's it's like I d- I don't know how you watched that and not come to the conclusion uh, yesterday. I mean, it was just it was insane. It was insane. Where is the yeah. Where's the feed? Where's the feed? Must they? They didn't shut it down, did they? Uh, no. Um, you guys are grifting too hard. Court TV has a scheduled live stream at least, and they're they're in. Uh, they're live now. Okay, thank God. Yeah. Uh, so let me. There's no nothing happening. So I'll pull it up here. Uh, see if we can blow all these other uh, shows out of the water again. I mean, we're already. We're already at uh, something like, um, God, 20 core TVs. <laughs> <laughs> As a metric, you know, it's like one yard. <laughs> well, we already have 11,000 people uh, waiting. So why, it's. Why uh, would you watch it without having attorneys? You have a choice of having just yeah. a trial happening or having a bunch of attorneys weighing in describing explaining what's happening why would you that, that was one of my favorite around? comments in the chat yesterday it's like could these people stop talking over the testimony there, there's any number of other feeds you could watch they're just providing the raw video right yeah go, go watch one of those and and we we try to really uh oh hey what's up legal legal bites? Bites. Hi. Alina. morning uh Bring we, some we class to the stream we do try to avoid talking over the um, the actual people speaking, but at the, the the time that some of those complaints were coming in, where it was uh, it was four in the afternoon, um, the uh, Gage Grosskreutz had already you know disintegrated uh, the state's case yeah. Yeah. in like several ways, and um, like his bicep. Oh. And we were on some, we were on some very useless testimony and it was mostly foundational stuff for, which ultimately had no purpose. So we weren't talking over too much that was important, but we do try, but we are people and we are still trying to uh, provide that commentary as well. And you got to squeeze it in somewhere. Uh, so, but uh, anyway, uh, Legal Bites, welcome to the stream. Glad to Hi. have you. Happy to be back. I, I live here now. This is where I yeah. live. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like this channel is quickly becoming socialist. And um, <laughs> But what I mean very specifically by that, it's where we all do the work, but uh, only 1% of us gets any of the reward. <laughs> <That's-> <laughs> hey, you know what? I've gotten plenty of reward here because my, my YouTube channel, my Twitter are just oh, completely God. blowing up. I, uh, I I don't I don't know what to do with myself anymore. <laughs> Comrade Ricada calls you for one last stream. 
Yeah. How many pizza <laughs> did you pick up yesterday, Legal Bites? Yesterday, I think, let's see, I was at like 8,500 and then I ended up like almost 12,000. That's insane. I know. That's, yeah. that's, I, I, considering the fact that last Thursday, I think I, I remember, I remember on, on the stream with, uh, with Nick last Thursday when I was on for like just a few hours, I got to like 6,600 and I was so excited. Cause I was like, Oh, like almost like two thirds to uh two thirds of my way to 10 K. I'm so excited. <laughs> and, uh, I've almost like doubled since then. It's, it's nuts. I can't believe it. Yeah. It's uh that's, that's how YouTube works. Like you, you grind and you grind and you grind and then poof, you get a big boost and then you grind and you grind and you grind and hope for the next big boost. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a super chat here. And and again, I will get to all of them, but uh, Mike sword and scale says it must suck to be court TV and have this grifter get more views than they do with their live feed. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, it's not just more. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's been a lot more on this case. <laughs> um all right and we've got uh gone fall says they talked about you on timcast irl yesterday night they would love to have you on they said do it wreck i am a gorilla the frogs are <laughs> fbi deletes video <laughs> <laughs> um mag says thank you again for doing this has been entertaining and lightning has restored my faith in lawyers in general with people like you and your guests cheers Ooh, i mean again Someone said something similar last night and I almost quit streaming forever. Uh, <laughs> I'm not out here to humanize lawyers. In fact, quite the opposite. So uh, I, I will tell you, the, you know, the popularity of, of your stream is actually very encouraging that, that small channels can, can have an impact that's greater than mainstream media. And considering that mainstream media is so controlled, it's basically we see the will of the people to actually get, you know, information. And it doesn't matter if you don't have the, you know, legacy behind you. If you put out good content, you know, the people will come. They'll find you. So I mean, that's that, very encouraging. That clip of us yesterday, which is 15 seconds long, was, as far as I can tell, the dominant influencing news piece about the, about the day that day of Kyle Rittenhouse. And the, the best part of it is, I think that is the most accurate summary of how that day went, <laughs> just in general. In 15 seconds, encapsulated the whole flow of that day. I mean, sure, there's other stuff happening, but when you read about the, when you read the news stories on it, what you find are them, I mean, they're focused on Gage Grosskritz. They're ignoring all the other irrelevant witnesses that came out. And they're trying to spin it into a headline and they couldn't do it anywhere as effectively as Gage saying that is correct. <laughs> right. That was it. right. And, and so. I, I just want to, I want to point out again, I pointed this out yesterday, but the fact that, that um, Sheriff Fisi was able to just get him to comply so well, like as soon as, as soon as he did once that he, 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 he started off, Gage Grass Cross Quotes, he, he started off kind of fighting him on 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 his assertions. Like he didn't want to, he didn't want to use, he didn't want to agree that he was chasing Kyle Rittenhouse. He didn't want to agree to that. He didn't want to agree to, you know, that he was pointing the gun. But then, like at a certain point, he you could see that he just he got tired. He gave up and he just complied. And from that point on, he just he just agreed. He said, Yep, yep, yep. And he that's wasn't fair. he wasn't even on the stand that long. I mean, in total, he was on the stand three hours. I mean, this is, this is a major witness in a homicide case. He was on the stand for about two hours for the prosecution. And then that hour for the defense coming into lunch, he folded in embarrassing fashion. Uh, it was, it, whew, it was, it was not good. My dad asked why, uh, why the prosecution wasn't able to manage him. And I said, well, dad, uh, he's a communist revolutionary. <laughs> <laughs> who is bringing a gun into riots in a city he doesn't live in or work in for the purposes of participating in an Antifa protest. He wasn't, again, like Kyle, and I don't think Kyle should have been there personally, but he was going there to protect a business. He had a, he had a goal. This guy's going there to participate in destruction. I said, he's, he's generally just not a really reliable person. Like this is the kind of personality that is, that is hectic. 
But that was my assessment of of that. I don't know if you guys have any differing opinions on it. I but. think he's all fluff and cheesy substance. You could see it in the way he was testifying, where he's doing the very unnatural thing of, you know, here's the here's the DA asking him questions, and like, he's like looking at him, and then he like does that really unnatural thing of looking at the jury and saying, "Yes, I was leaning to you for six months." <laughs> it was just like <laughs> everything is like like this fake type of thing about him and fake people when you when they get drilled with hard questions, he just he crumbled like like little. Like a little creme ball type of thing. One well, one know, day with a guest, I'm going to try and do that. I'm going to try and actually for the entire <laughs> show, turn <laughs> every single time I address them. <laughs> and people will see like, it, like again, the jury must have been sitting there going, why is he doing that? It's so weird. It, it becomes like looking towards the jury and talking is one thing, but that big move becomes so performative. Oh, I'm I'm conscious of the microphone and where I'm looking, however, especially on cross examination, it, because yeah. because the, where, where his answers are short, bam, 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 that bam, bam, movement bam, bam. looks looks way more awkward. Where he has to he has to move a lot more. It's like it's like he's getting a workout in. <laughs> yeah. And however, however much he was moving to us, we got to understand that the jury seeing that in court is a hundred times more awkward. However, we read that body language. The jury is looking at that and saying, this guy is a weirdo. This guy is creepy. I mean, he just came off as so stilted and unnatural to us who are just watching the video. The juror got so much more context to that. Think about that. Yeah. Think about everything and, they and saw the that we didn't attitude. see. He had this look yes. on his face the whole time of like, you're going away, Kyle. I'm, I'm Gage. I'm the guy putting you away for life. <laughs> and it's like, it was so cheesy. It was just, ugh. Well, he was he was tweeting about it uh, prior to the thing. The The best part was just, just not yesterday, since that was his testimony day, the, the day before, he had sent out a tweet correcting the record about how uh, he had every right to be there and every right to conceal and carry a gun. It's like, turns out... <laughs> No, you didn't. <laughs> that concealed permit, that carry permit was uh, expired. So good work on that one, uh, Gage. But um, so this is this is something that people brought up. I haven't had time to verify this. I don't know if you guys know anything. It was not really clear. They did not actually say his permit was expired. They said his permit was not valid. Yeah, or, um, or not, not, not in force at that time, or something like probably that. Probably because he committed a couple crimes, perhaps, mayhaps. Right. That's that's kind of the interesting huh. thing. Is is either uh, he uh, he had a criminal uh, criminal conviction completely obliterate his carry permit, or um, he had a temporary probation where he was not allowed to have his gun at the time for whatever reason. And typically, though, I think that that tends to destroy the permit in Minnesota and you have to go get another one when you're done. They, they revoke it, but that's, that's how it works here. Who knows? I don't, I I'm not a burglary conviction in 2015, right? That's what, that's what. Yeah. Doing. But that's a long time ago. And yeah, his he carry fixed that by now. Yeah. His carry permit was, uh, was longer. Uh, his burglary uh, was someone there and conviction was, was expunged. The jury. Which, oh, uh, the officer's, Approached the person and required ah. him to him her I didn't even ask to um, delete the video and return the phone to him. Um, I've instructed that if it happens again, there to take the phone and bring it here. So that's for your information. Um, How are you allowing two, some request? I'm not going to address anything further about uh, our conversation of yesterday. So that's Close the chamber's the conversation. And then, um, yep. how's that person not in contempt? You know, I don't know the answer to that. But you could talk to the lieutenant and I'll get a chance. And then, um, I, uh, for the reasons stated in the brief, which was filed by Mr. Krause, the motion for reconsideration on count six is denied. All right. Anything else? We were talking about exhibits that hadn't been moved that I think the parties are in agreement to. Okay. So, so uh, 64, 65, 66, 67, 76, We'll explain what happened in a second, guys. 
um, are ones that are agreed upon. The only one that is not agreed upon at this point is 69, which is the statement, uh, the written statement by the officer regarding Gage Grosskreutz that we, that I had questioned him about yesterday. I had marked and I would move that and I think the state has an objection to that statement. All right, um, Mr. Baird. Your Honor, the statement was used to impeach the witness. Um, I think some courts do things a little differently. I'm not, I don't recall off the top of my head. If sometimes those aren't marked as exhibits. Other times they're marked but not um, uh, admitted into evidence. Um, at the bottom line, Your Honor, is I don't think the jury should see it. So uh, as long as we don't show it to the jury, because I think it's only used for impeachment, I don't have any strong objection to how we handle it. Um, I think, generally speaking, things that are used for impeachment are not admitted to evidence. They may be marked as an exhibit, but not admitted to evidence. So that's that's where I'm at on that. And did you want to say anything further? Uh, Judge, I, it was referred to. I wouldn't ask that it go back because the entire, at this point, the entire document had not been uh, read. But I think based on the way it was used yesterday, it would be appropriate to make it part of the record. So uh, I'm going to uh, receive it for... Uh, It'll be received as evidence. Uh, but however, those portions which were not directly quoted in the uh, examination um, will not be argued, nor will they, because they, that part is not in evidence. And um, the exhibit will not go, certainly not in the, its original form, to the jury room. Okay. While we're cleaning up uh, exhibits, Your Honor, if I can uh, real quick, the. Uh, Three. Binger, also will you be quiet? I need to talk. Uh, the motion to dismiss the gun charge is uh, denied. So the gun charge is still in. Still think that's the wrong read of the law, but I haven't read the briefs. All right. Uh, ready to go then? Okay, I'm calling the jury. Hello? Would you come down, please? Yes. Yeah, if the, if the gun charge is staying in on that reading of the law, then I guess He's guilty up. on that charge would be the correct verdict somehow. I, I, I don't, I mean, I don't see it. I mean, unless the jury blanks them just all out, like they're just, if the jury is, thinks this whole thing was a complete waste of time. I mean, you well, know, that's that'd definitely be like, possible. They've become so disillusioned and so angry at the top charges. They can't be bothered to care. Yeah. yeah. That, I mean, that's a possibility. I'm, you never know what a jury will do in that respect. I mean, for that respect, they could also be like, huh, we're going to find him guilty. We hate this kid uh, yeah, for the same awesome. thing. But, uh, but yeah, so I, I still, I cannot as a matter of law, see how that works. I would love to read. Maybe I'll be able to get them at some point. I would love to read the briefing on that motion. Yeah. from both. I, I'm parties. not disagreeing with you. I agree with your reading of the law. I was just saying on the judge's reading of law yeah. that you'd yeah, have yeah. to conclude guilty somehow. So yay. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, I, I agree with that sentiment because the jury instruction is under 18 in possession of a dangerous weapon and the under the law, an AR-15 qualifies as a dangerous weapon and uh, and Kyle Rittenhouse is clearly under 18 at the time. So on those jury instructions, he's likely going to be found guilty of the misdemeanor minor in possession charge um, unless the jury just decides to nullify. Um. You're aware, of course, of the incident at the bus pickup this morning, and I've been assured that the officers uh, had the, the the video, which had been taken, is to have been deleted. Oh, and it was outside the courtroom. Oh, yep. Uh, so that something something like that 
is uh, something like that sh should not recur. I'm frankly quite surprised that it did. Uh, and um, I'm not that surprised it did. We have different procedures to do with respect to if it would occur. So I'm not. I, I don't have any particular concern about it. I hope the officer Very punched the guy in the this nuts. Entire issue and uh, are on guard about it. Thank you. All right, Mr. Binger. Uh, Judge, uh, the state uh, will be calling James Armstrong to the stand. <laughs> that's the uh, that's Gage Grosskritz's Bizarro World. His opposite man, James Armstrong. <laughs> 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 Take my strong arm. <laughs> How do they have brother? Can they spare a bicep? Who do we? Is this? Is this? Who is this guy? Who's this guy? Who's this guy? Mister Armstrong, can you please uh, state Don't your first name? Voice. Call it for the Don't have a weird voice. Order. James Armstrong, J A M E S A R M A R M S T R N G. <laughs> Sorry. And Mr. Armstrong, how are you? Employed? Guys nervous. I'm a senior forensic imaging specialist with the Wisconsin State Crime Lab in Milwaukee. Okay, there you go. What do you do as a forensic lab. imaging specialist senior? We handle a variety of internal and external requests. Internally, we handle a lot of photography of evidence, including fingerprints and footwear. Sure. My boy is nervous. We handle yeah. in the uh, within the forensic imaging unit. We handle a variety of internal and external requests. This includes photographing fingerprints and footwear, along with uh, also doing forensic video analysis as well. What is forensic video analysis? So examination of video uh, pertaining to legal matters. And what is your educational background? I have a bachelor's of fine art in photography from Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design. And uh... Have you worked in photography or anything else in your past? Yes. Uh, before coming to the crime lab, I worked in commercial photography for 14 years. Is your crime Stop lab accredited? Under the mic, buddy. Our crime lab is cr accredited. And when you do Sorry. some sort of Not forensic you. imaging, is there any kind of peer review process or anything that is done uh, to check your work? Yes, all the work that we do uh, within forensic imaging is tech reviewed by another qualified analyst, and it's also administrative re reviewed as well. So when you're doing forensic imaging, does that include things like <coughs> obtaining stills, zooming in? What kind of things do you do if you're uh, forensically looking at a piece of video? Yes, uh, it, it requires us to examine the video, uh, note any limitations of that video, and then provide any clarifications uh, of that video if requested. And have you been asked in this case, this guy going to enhance that uh, drone to footage look at that any they were talking video about? or other uh, photography? They don't else. have the iPhone. Yes, I've been requested to look at uh, different video uh, that's been submitted to the lab. I would ask that exhibit 24 be put on the screens. Is it, is it the witness breathing or is it the prosecutor breathing heavy into the mic? I don't know. <sighs> one of them is, I mean, or is it the judge? I, I don't, his it's mic doesn't usually come in like that. It's one of these two. I, man. It's is, Doughboy A or Doughboy B. It has, has, you know, some sort of apnea issue going on. It, okay. It's, it's the witness. Mr. Armstrong, I want to show you what is yeah. it? He's nervous. Yeah, that's nerves. Uh, you look at either screen, is, which other screen is more comfortable. Uh, does that look familiar to you? Yes, it does. And what is that? Those are three clarified images that I produce um, from the. I'm sorry. You're gonna bring this in. That I produce from item. I hope you, sure is like uh, so. You video file edit edit these I, photos. You said you clarified. So the video, video file was submitted uh, by me, and you found an image and you clarified it. That is correct. How do you go about doing that? I How utilize a, a variety of software. In this particular case, I used Ant Five to uh, enhance and clarify that image. Now, is it your job to figure out what is oh, in the no. image, or are you just it's providing, or are you trying to it's provide so clear or uh, viewable images? In this particular it case, sounds like a storm to come. Clarify, Daffy, Daffy. I could have uh, exhibit twenty-five, please. <laughs> Legal ASMR. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jesus. <sighs> I can't even mock. I like. I can't even mimic that sound because it's, it has so much to do with mic gain. They find. I think someone finally turned it down. Oh, thank God. It's like the guy with the the audio controls of the courtroom is sitting there with his hand on the knob, just falling asleep. Like, <laughs> Strong, strong. I'm showing you what has previously been marked as States Exhibit 25. Uh, do you recognize that? Yes, this appears to be the video that I annotated uh, as part of a request. What do you mean by annotated? I added the square box and the labeling uh, to this video. And is it your job to actually say who is who in the video? Or are you just pointing out people of interest that you've been designated to you? I'm just pointing people, just pointing out people as designated. Um, and how did you go about making this exhibit? Uh, to make this exhibit, uh, we load the video file into M5, and then I essentially uh, draw on that individual uh, frames as it goes through, and then I'll put a video. Can we play exhibit 25, please? <laughs> My dad sent in a super chat. He says he played the caller in scary movie. <laughs> so you annotated it all throughout that portion of the video? That is correct, yes. Nick, has your dad ever been on your channel before? No, not yet. Did you enhance or I feel like you should be else the video or just simply annotate what was to given happen. to you as a raw video? I just simply annotated that video. Let's uh, show you what it marked and previously entered as States Exhibit 26. Objection. I'm asking for that. You're this has already been entered. I, I heard it, and it is States Exhibit 26. Okay. 26. Okay. 26. Yeah, it's not going to be there. That sounds like that was just a clarification of which exhibit they were talking about. I think maybe there's some, there's some confusion. He said the wrong one. It sounds like. I'd rather ask to be admitted again and told it's already admitted than, you know, fail to admit it, you know, so I'll ask it five times. That's fine. Yeah. But look at what it did to the flow of his question. Mr. Armstrong, do you recognize this? He shouldn't be, he shouldn't be what is disrupted this? by that. This is another annotated video with an arrow. They are not and good did you at handling create this video as well? in my opinion. I did, yes. Similar to the last video, did you simply annotate it? You didn't change anything about the video? That is correct, yes. Uh, I'd like you to please just briefly play Exhibit 26. At least this video isn't labeled Killer Kyle. No, again, is that someone you've identified or someone that was designated to you? Militia labels. Killer shoots That's Someone that was designated <laughs> to Murderous Kyle. Mr. Armstrong, in this case, were you ever given a video and asked to get still shots of a snippet of a video? Yes, I was. And are you aware if that is the BG on the scene video? Do you recall? I do not exactly recall um, with regards to that video, no. Uh, but fair to say that we asked you to look at a, a short segment and produce every still image that you could? Yes, that is correct. And were you able to do that of this they video? Stipulate yes, that is all this evidence. And do you know how many stills that you received from that video? 729 stills. And this morning before we came over here, did you view a folder that had those stills in the uh, from the video? Uh, yes, I did. Um, at this point, I'd like to mark uh, and move a folder named Frames, uh, which is State's Exhibit 80. Um, I'd like to uh, move that into evidence. <clears throat> Not quite all here says watching this case has been a huge white pill and a great way to pass long days at work. I find it utterly insane like how the, the media is presenting next, things. Uh, They're priming the folks one. to be bewildered by a not guilty verdict. Sorry, I'm going to read through uh, some chats as this this insufferable uh, paste, insufferably paced expert testimony is occurring. Human sedative. Uh, Mr. Obi-Wan 2020 <laughs> says beatings will continue until morale improves. Vox Darkstar says, you okay today? You sound a little hoarse. Uh, I am I'm doing Mr. Great. Armstrong, in addition to those uh, videos that we've already mentioned, 
Have you recently done any more forensic imaging work in this case? Yes, I was provided another video file um, as item X. And what did you do with item X? With item X, I enhanced and uh, enlarged the video file and cropped it to the area of interest. Here it is. I'd like to this show you what is marked as State's Exhibit 81. Do you recognize this? Yes, it appears to be the videos, uh, clarified video that I uh, exported. Now, did you have any difficulties clarifying or tracking this file? Uh, the, the limitations of this file include the movement of the camera, um, movement of the person, and the lighting conditions that are present. Now, you mentioned limitations. Did all these various videos you looked at have different limitations? Yes, each had their own set of limitations. Um, I'd like you to, is this, uh, I know we watched, did we watch this video this morning? I believe so, yes. And is it a true and accurate copy of the uh, exhibit that you created of that drone video? It appears to be so, yes. I'd like it's to move to drone video. one into evidence and play it for the jury. Okay. Go ahead. Drone me, daddy. Where's the annoying drone sound? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I can have exhibit 82, please. Are, they, are we going to get just a bunch of snippets of the exam, like from that video? How is that enhanced? That looked like the, the raw Star video. Star, do you recognize yesterday. this? Yes, I do. What is this? This is a video, again, clarified um, and cropped into the area of interest. And this video is slowed down by 50%. Well, yeah, this cropped is interesting. Is this a true and accurate copy of the video that. Uh, you've created for this exhibit? It appears to be, yes. Uh, please, uh, I'd like to move exhibit 82 into evidence and publish it to the jury. We're supposed to be watching for Kyle Rittenhouse to raise his gun at Zeminski. That's what they're trying to show here. I didn't see it. I still just see him running. See him running. There's there happens Sir to Armstrong, be. A did I give you a specific area there. to sort of focus in on in this video? Yes, you instructed that I look at the area near the sign, near some vehicles, and then as the uh, person uh, enters into the parking lot. Were you able to zoom in tight on that area? Not not beyond what has been provided now. Uh, can you go back to Exhibit 81? Mr. Armstrong, I'd like to give you this pointer. And you could <coughs> sort of zoom in. Could you just point out, just stand up and point out the area of interest that I asked you to focus in on? Oh, man, they're going to switch over to his... The TV, so and we're not going to be able to see behind that. There's a black vehicle there, It'd be the, the rear of that black vehicle. Yes, that's correct. We play exhibit 81 again. And exhibit 82, please effectively a useless video so i mean the, we're looking at this up close like we're getting a live feed of the stream the jury's looking at this on a tv Again, that's Mr. probably Armstrong, eight feet away point out uh the area of interest in this video that i asked you to uh zoom in on again it's to the rear of that black vehicle we've been calling it the duramax in this trial you just give him the answer 13 speed oh, demon says vehicle. I apologize, but law cast you that went. vehicle, oh. the Duramax. Yes, that's right. Uh, can you play exhibit 82, please? Okay. Hmm. Why am I watching this for the fifth time? It's, it's right here below the, uh, thing. There's, they're saying that Kyle pointed a gun sometime in here, but I, I can't see it. I it don't know what an fly. iPhone shows. Yeah, if I zoom in on my super secret police iPhone, maybe I can see it. Where's the Neil? I don't see any Neil. 
Yeah, he definitely doesn't kneel. Well, she was marked as State's Exhibit 83. Do you recognize... Do you want to ask actually any questions about the video? No, uh, that's been uh, clarified. What did you observe in them? Large as well. And uh, is this a different part of that same drone video? Yes, this is a different uh, segment uh, picking up from the stopping point of the previous video and continuing on to where the video, uh, the camera view turns away from the area of interest. Um, is it true and accurate copy of the exhibit you created? It appears to be so, I guess. Could you, uh, I'd like to move exhibit 83 into ev evidence and publish it to the jury? No objection, Your Honor. I can see why they're not objecting so far. There's nothing in these He's videos. He's not saying anything. Maybe now they're trying to zoom it in. So it's after the shooting. Yeah. Okay. Very useful. Is that Siminski pointing a gun like at Kyle there? Uh, Asteroids of 84, please. <clears throat> 13 Speed Demon says, Lawcast stream when? It was interesting having all the various specialties and their unique perspectives on the case. Uh, Mr. Armstrong, what is this? Oh, it's the same segment, uh, except it's slowed down by 50%. So everything else is the same, it's just slowed down by half? That is correct. Let's move to exhibit 84. 50% or 60? 50% here. Let's move to exhibit 84 into evidence and publish just the jury. He, but he's not describing the videos. It's just, did you enhance this video? Did you zoom in? Let's play it. I mean, I think they're, they don't really uh, need to go into those kinds of details. And that last thing, you could see that Rosenbaum's not touching the gun. He is like, he's like, probably gauge gross course distance away at the time of the shooting. Yeah, I don't think that it's been testified to that he actually made it to the gun. McGinnis couldn't see. <clears throat> he, he didn't have to make it to the gun, though. <laughs> you could actually see the distance, though, like in sort of gauge for scale based on the size of the people. Yeah, he's a, he's a couple feet away. Maybe three, four. Yeah. Uh, or is testified to oh, by the okay, guy yesterday. Yes, for 10. 85. And Mr. Armstrong, what is this? This is a, another clarified and enlarged video um, showing from approximately the 15 second mark until uh, the where the camera turns turns away from the area of interest. And is it a true and accurate copy of the video that you produced for this exhibit? It appears to be so. I can move exhibit 85 into evidence and uh, publish it to the jury. Objection. Yes, Steve. They had the they had the videos out of order there, from what they planned. They had them. They did the labeling this morning please. fast because that was the one he wanted to watch. Well, that's last being pulled time. up, Mr. Armstrong. There was no sound in any of these videos, were there? I did not uh, observe any sound with these videos. No. And if I could just direct your attention to number eighty-six, do you recognize that? Ah, uh, yes, that's the same as the previous file. Uh, the only difference being, again, is that it is slowed down by fifty percent. Uh, I'd like to. Moves to be 86 in the evidence and play it for the jury. No I will just make a comment that the amount that we are biased by visual testimony and the fact that you slow something down can give you the misperception that it happened at that speed, despite the fact that you're told it's 50%. Even slowed down, it looks pretty fast, just to my eye at yeah. least. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes the defense's case. Mm, yeah, it does. It does. 
Zyver Warrior says, I mean, he was right on him. That has slowed down. It's like, yeah, I mean, he's right on him. Would any of you feel comfortable with that okay. maniac uh, chasing you, you at that speed, at that distance? Absolutely not. Oh, <laughs> I can tell you for my part. <laughs> I would have dusted him further away. <laughs> Good morning. Richard's on cross. The That's it? Nibbets we, we've just shown the jury 81, 82, 83, Another pointless 84, witness. 84, 85, and 86. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you began working on putting them together on Friday. I began working on them on Sunday. Okay. Whoa! <laughs> the crime lab received that as a submittal on Sunday. Okay. And who submitted them to you? It was ADA Jim Cross. Okay. And you're familiar with the fact that we didn't receive these videos until Friday of last week? I was informed that that was the circumstance, yes. Okay. And... When you do this, you're not adding color, correct? That is correct. I'm not adding color. You're not adding pixels. If with regards to enlargement, there is interpolation, and so pixels are added to that. Okay. How is the color's not changed? Color is not changed. So if you blow something up 10%, what does that do for the pixel number? The pixels will increase um, by interpolation of that of that um, area. Okay. And... What was the resolution of the source video for 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, and is it 86? I would need to refer to my notes in order to be able to confirm that. Please do, sir. <coughs> that should have been underlined in crayon. Resolution for that file, it was 1920 by 844. And in layman's terms, what is that? Uh, that's 1,920 pixels by 844 pixels. Okay. And that kind of tells you the clarity. The more pixels, the clearer it is. The more pixels, the higher resolution, there's more information present. Okay. And when... Oh, boy. If you have to look at your notes, that's fine. Videos are done at certain speeds. So certain um, videos, whether it's a phone or whether it's a camera, they do it by frames per second. That is correct. The more frames per second, the clearer it is. Not necessarily, no. Okay. This one, how many frames per second, sir? This, frame, uh, this video is 30 frames per second. 30. Three zero. So every one second... 30 different frames. That is correct. And you can use how many frames go by to time certain things, correct? You can, yes. Okay. You can use different videos if you can find a common event, such as a sound, to sync up videos to tell a whole story, correct? That would be uh, starting to move outside my area of expertise with that. Okay. But you're familiar that it can be done, correct? I'm familiar that it can be done. Okay. And what is that called, if you know? I do not know. Okay. And you can take different videos from different source sources, excuse me, linking them through a common event sometimes, sound, putting them together for a whole compilation. Um, with regards to audio, that's outside the scope of my expertise. Okay. And you can also do it from events on the video if they have a common event, not audio, but a common event. Um, it depends on the video in, in question. Okay. And... In this case, when you put the marks person of interest, who told you to do that? Uh, that was provided by the requester, ADA Jim Cross. Because you don't know anything about these videos when you get them or anything about the case. You're just told, we think this person's important. We want them followed. That is correct. Okay. And in your case, I think you used yellow arrow arrows. I did, yes. Okay. I have nothing further. Thank you. Can you redirect? Well, trying to get out of that. Yeah. I'm He's wondering the frames per second part might be might be to to detail for the jury, maybe commenting on on what legal mindset was saying earlier about the 50 percent reduction in the speed to sort of show them 30 frames per second equals this amount of time. Maybe I don't know. But he didn't. Yeah, he didn't make any I, of that clear to the jury. I mean, yeah. how no, the jury but I, I don't think he was. But maybe, to maybe clear. Later. 
to the jury. I think he's actually trying to raise the specter of the idea that the ADA got some videos, asked him specifically to edit those yeah. videos in a specific way without mm -hmm. actually saying that, because if you say it directly, then it, you know, they can go, no, we, I mean, we just asked for clarity. We asked for, you know, these labels of persons of interest, but now, I mean, I don't think it's a big thing, but there wasn't a big thing to ask about. Right. Yeah. But, but the, the director was kind of meaningless. He's well. teeing up his expert. That's the only reason it makes sense. He's asking the question about frames per second and timing. Yeah, for black. So that later when he brings up his expert and he starts talking about that, he can connect the two pieces of testimony. Yeah. And his sense. his expert is a whole lot more qualified at reviewing yeah. and talking about video than this guy was, who just said, uh, I can't sync it up by sound that's outside of my expertise. It's like, really? Like, it okay. I mean, be that hard, but okay. How is that outside of your expertise? I mean, you would think that that would be a thing you would have to do. Here, Anthony Tupin says, did you see the blatantly false headline from NPR? Uh, shocking, I know. States that Kyle shot UNICEF bro while his hands are up. BS like this <laughs> underlines why so many no longer trust legacy media. Yep. But why the state called him was unclear because it's just like you made the video, you enhanced the video. Doctor, you didn't get him, get him to say anything about the video. Strange. Doug Kelly, D-O-U-G-K-E-L-L-E-Y. And are you a doctor? I am. And what kind of doctor are you? Uh, to the I'm back. a forensic pathologist. Testimony what is a forensic in. pathologist? Yep. Well, pathology is uh, the field of medicine that involves the study of disease and trauma in the human body. Uh, forensic pathology is a subspecialty of that, which uh, specifically involves the principles of medicine, medicine and science as they apply to the law. So as a forensic pathologist, we're concerned with determining the cause and manner of death in people. And uh, uh, typically, we act as uh, medical examiners in medical examiner's offices. So we'll uh, look at those uh, issues in people who fall within our jurisdiction. Meaning he's a professional witness. And you, where do you work now? Uh, the Milwaukee County Medical Examiner's Office. And are you aware that the Milwaukee County Medical Examiner does handle the forensic pathology for Kenosha County? That's correct. What is your educational background? I graduated from Illinois Wesleyan University in 1990, in 1988, sorry. And uh, then went to medical school at Southern Illinois University School of Medicine in Springfield, Illinois. I graduated in 1992. Um, I uh, was in internal medicine residency from uh, 1992 to 94 and decided to be a forensic pathologist. Uh, my forensic pathology training in pathology is uh, with St. Louis University in St. Louis, Missouri, and uh, I completed that in 1998. Uh, I then came to Wisconsin and did my forensic pathology fellowship with the Milwaukee County Medical Examiner's Office, completing that in uh, the summer of 1999, and then uh, stayed on as a staff member after that. And have you worked as a forensic pathologist or a associate medical examiner or something in that capacity since then? Yes, I have. Do you have an idea of how many autopsies you've performed? Uh, I'm at or a bit above 6,000 at this point in my career. Why now, do you kill so many people? Are those all different <laughs> kinds of deaths? Oh, no, those are all kinds of different deaths. Um, so homicides are only a part of what we uh, uh, what we in investigate. Now, did you become involved with the autopsies of Joseph Rosenbaum and Anthony Huber? Yes. I would like to show you what has been marked as State's Exhibit 20. David Woodmans, he says, a donation for a larger man-sized bladder so you don't have to leave the stream every five minutes. <clears throat> this is uh, a copy of my signed autopsy report on Joseph Rosenbaum. And is it true and accurate to the best of your knowledge of uh, copy of your report? Yes, it appears to me. I'd like to move exhibit 20 into evidence. No Sir, but I'd ask, doctor, I'm sorry, if I'd ask you to put that down and look, yeah, let's look at the other exhibit there, which has been marked as state's exhibit 21. Oh. 
I pray he says Rosenbaum died of COVID. <laughs> we detected least, spike proteins and antigens, and <laughs> at least they'll get twenty k out of it. Twenty one is a uh, copy of my signed autopsy report on Anthony Huber. Uh, it also includes uh, the two page uh, toxicology report from our toxicology laboratory. Is that a true and accurate copy of the uh, exhibit or of your of your report? Yes, it is. I'd like to move exhibit 21 into evidence. Objection. Doctor, do you hold uh, any board certifications? I'm board certified in anatomic pathology, clinical pathology, and in forensic pathology. And do you hold a medical license? Yes, in the state of Wisconsin. I'm holding it now. <laughs> Are there any professional organizations which, to which you belong? Uh, I belong to the National Association of Medical Examiners, to the uh, American Academy of Forensic Science uh, to the Wisconsin Corners and Medical Examiners Association. Are there any sexual associations to which you belong? No. That's the question Doctor, I want I'd to like answer to. to. Uh, focus He's on a furry. Uh, Mr. Huber first. Uh, do you recall when you did the autopsy on Mr. Huber? Yeah, the autopsy on Mr. Huber was done on the morning of August 26th of 2020. And that would be the day of or the morning after that he deceased? That was the same morning that he was pronounced deceased, yes. Now, how is a body brought to you up in Milwaukee? Um, we, sure. when someone is brought to us, uh, our investigators uh, admit them uh, to the it's facility. Not asked, but... They are given a <laughs> unique identifier. Um, they are uh, then basically stored in refrigeration until we uh, have the opportunity to perform an examination on them. Uh, in this case, you were able to do an examination on Mr. Huber fairly quickly? Yes. And how do you begin, let's ask it this way, how did you begin your examination of Mr. Huber? Uh, well, an autopsy examination, uh, uh, it, it consists of many components, but the first thing that we do, or the first thing that I do, when somebody comes to me as I look at them as is, I uh, will look at them, uh, take photographs, collect any evidence that I find, and, uh, uh, and then we'll remove any clothing or uh, anything else from the body. Uh, again, examining the body, collecting any evidence I find, taking photographs, doing what's necessary. Um, uh, those photos are taken before anything is cleaned up. So that's the next step is to clean everything up, any fluids that are on the surface of the body, any dirt. Um, and then again, same process, looking, looking at the body uh, again. Um, you're in the smacking? The uh, final thing that we, we, we do is uh, 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 do the internal examination, which is really what I think more people are familiar with when they think of a, an autopsy. We make incisions and that allow us to look at the organs and tissues. And again, we are looking for any evidence of, of trauma, any evidence of disease. We're collecting evidence as necessary, uh, specimens for toxicology, taking photographs. And in the end, uh, we put together all of this information uh, from the uh, external and internal examination to determine the cause of death. Get the man some and water. And able to determine the cause of death to Mr. Huber. Yes. And what was that cause of death? Uh, Mr. Huber died from a gunshot wound to the chest. And is that an opinion? Shocking. With a reasonable degree of medical certainty? It is. Are you sure? And Finger uh, said the back in opening. What gunshot wound? Uh, uh, so talking about Huber's skateboard Huber skateboard. Huber has oh, Huber. an entrance wound. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, that is I know all riders are the same. Um, it uh, basically travels through his chest and creates trauma to both of the lungs and, and specifically to the heart. There's a lot of, of damage to the heart. Uh, so he has a, a large amount of, of blood within his body cavities, his chest cavities. And the, uh, the projectile didn't exit. There's actually a, a bruise and with some scraping to the surface. And it's located to the right shoulder just beneath the collarbone. And in that location, I collected a, a, a bullet fragment. Um, so this, this is the single gunshot wound and it uh, created lethal injury involving the heart and lungs. Now, why would that gunshot wound have been lethal? What, what would have killed Mr. Huber? 
uh, the, the trauma to the heart and lungs is pretty extensive from this, uh, from this wound. Uh, so he, uh, he bled from the wounds that were created by the gunshot. Did you find any blood uh, inside of his body? Uh, yes, he, he had blood within both of his chest cavities. I too those. have blood and inside my yeah, body. He's one of those people who have blood in his body. Uh, he's one of those. About 1200 As a vampire, I object to this. Of, uh, <laughs> of blood to the left chest cavity and he had two liters of blood to the right chest cavity. So, to the best of your knowledge, would it have been the loss of blood that caused death or the damage to the organs or a combination of both? A combination of both. Now, what was the traje trajectory of the bullet or of the wound path? Uh, this, this wound path had a trajectory that was left to right and upwards. Now, when you're talking about trajectory, what are you relating it to? Uh, well, in, in, in order to have a, a, a standard set of criteria to, to be able to discuss trajectories, we put the body in something we call anatomic position. And simply put, the anatomic position is with the person standing straight up with the palms forward. So the person's left is left, the person's right is right, superior and inferior, up and down, and front and back are relative to that person. So it's that simple. We're just creating a standard position that we can, uh, that, that we can relate to. So, Doctor, would I be demonstrating the anatomic position right now? That's correct. I'm glad so we're learning that Kyle Rittenhouse was, killed Huber. Let's say mm. uh, shot in my uh, stomach area from someone on the ground and shot by I'm sorry, let me see your word. Um, so no matter where I was shot, it was I think the breathing is legal mindset. That's my thought. Let's <laughs> <sighs> start muting people. Were there any other notable injuries or <laughs> findings on Mr. Huber? Um, Mr. Huber had some some little abrasions or scrapes here and there, and um, he had a, a good sized abrasion or scrape to his right thumb, and he had some uh, abrasions or scrapes to his knees and and to the inside of his elbows, a uh, little abrasion or scrape to the lower back. Um, when I did his internal examination, he did have a little area of, of hemorrhage to the, the left side of his, his scalp, uh, the deep scalp, uh, and, um, uh, but no injuries to the skull or to the brain itself. So the other injuries were minor injuries, scrapes, and, and little bruises, but nothing of significance. Is there any way to tell if they were the part of this gunshot incident, or could they have been pre-existing injuries no these these uh these injuries could have been pre-existing pre injuries and uh gunshot. there's no way to age a uh, a bruise or a, or a scrape to inaccuracy uh, so uh, excuse I'll me sir i watched those bones in, those injuries were present <laughs> is this anti-mortem or peri-mortem seven hopefully the monitors have remained down <laughs> what percentage of huber's death do you attribute to stupidity 100 500 <laughs> he had a pre-existing thumb abrasion oh my god this is torturous uh doctor let's see what's in marked as states of 87 do you recognize that oh i'm sorry i guess this isn't on one second please Love shot through the heart and you're to blame yeah i uh, yeah <laughs> I was only thinking it, Nick. I can't. Yeah. This. I get screamed at. I can't. I can't. Yeah, I would it's say you give Antifa a bad name, but seven. Do you recognize that? Yeah, you give Antifa a bad name. And what is that? Um, well, this is this is the entrance wound. It's uh, not clear in this photo because it appears that this photo is the one with the. Uh, uh, there is a, uh, a a patch over it which was placed uh, during resuscitation. There's a uh, that looks, it's kind of a plastic gel like patch that is placed over wounds to try to contain bleeding. And so that's over the wound. So you can't really see the, the entrance wound very well in this particular photo. Now, 
Where is that wound? Uh, well, you can you can you can see it. You can see the hemorrhage uh, there in the middle. It's it's red. I mean, I'm sorry. I should ask that. <laughs> Where in the body is that wound? Oh, this is so. This is the wound to the left side of the chest. The project looks all gunshotty. Red bad. <laughs> Who is it? Eighty-seven in the evidence. If I could have the next exhibit, please. Exhibit I'm 80. sorry to everybody in the chat who's mad that I made fun of the dead guy who tried to murder someone, but, um, you know. Oh, this is going to be. There's going to be more well, of that. Uh, doctor, Ooh, what this are we looking at in exhibit 88? Uh, hmm. So this is a, uh, this looks like a photograph. That's um, really graphic. I guess we could have used a trigger warning. Chest. My what you're looking at there to be totally desensitized uh, the purple this. area to his right shoulder. That's the location of the bullet. The bullet is underneath the skin in that location. So it's right below. Man, the I'm going to have to explain this to you two. Uh, yeah, they're, they're showing these things yeah. to monetize you. Yeah, yeah. Add, add, add suitability there. dropping rapidly. Let's be real. This is Ricada's channel. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Yeah, I might actually have to blur this on uh, the replay to even keep it up and not and not be eighteen plus. Yeah. You gotta give the day of props. <laughs> they, they were, giving him the oh, Jesus he was. Testimony, That's where you found the bullet. They, they were yes. supposed to change the policies on that, but it was about. still inside of Mr. Huber. Yes, this bullet was underneath the skin, right underneath that that bruise. If not already done, I'd like to move this into evidence. Uh, the next exhibit, please. This is State's Exhibit 89. Uh, do you recognize this, sir? Yes, this is another another photo of his. You can see his torso. And this is your body on soil. Uh, lower part of his face to the left of the photo. The white things on his body are defibrillator pads. So this is from resuscitation. Again, you can see the, the two wounds that we that we just showed. You can see the, the purple injury to his right shoulder and you can see the uh, red area of hemorrhage surrounding the entrance wound, uh, which is to his left so side. So even, even though all of this has basically a, been uh, agreed uh, to by both sides, like we all know how they died. We all know that Kyle was the one that, so doctor, that killed them. Could, could you please of course the prosecution wants to bring this in and this is exactly why because this is uncomfortable to look at and the jury has to look at this and stare at this. How is no, it not it's, inflammatory? It's never inflammatory. Yeah, this is this go this goes right to to I mean, I don't know. They have it, to it, show. Go, it goes it goes yeah it goes to showing the harm. So it would have entered uh, by. If his, they do a slow pan chest, up on his face, that would be inflammatory, though. Uh, like right. Right that would be shoulder. how they would make that bad. That's accurate. You may you may have a seat. Thank and they you. caption it innocent victim. Is the eighty nine in yeah. evidence? Uh, so, trigger warning, we're going to see uh, dead now, Rosenbaum like in a minute. To Mr. Rosenbaum, yeah. I believe you also did the autopsy of Mr. Rosenbaum. Yes, I did. Do you recall if these came in at the same time or if you did one first or do you have any recollection of that? Uh, I don't Some have a chatting, recollection right. of that. Mr. Rosenbaum, uh, his examination was performed uh, the following day. It was performed on August 27th of 2020. And did you do the same procedure that you described, Mr. Huber, in terms of taking photographs and initial appearances and then cleaning and then doing a further examination? Same procedure. Uh, is there anything different about how Mr. Rosenbaum uh, came to you or appeared to you? Uh, when Mr. Rosenbaum uh, came to the office, his uh, clothing had been had been removed. He had been to the hospital and his clothing had been removed. Um, whereas Mr. Huber came with his clothing still still on. Um, but aside from that, I, I don't think. Uh, oh, well, then the other thing was that uh, Mr. Rosenbaum came with the hands covered by paper bags to protect possible evidence. But uh, other than those things, I think that uh, I don't think there was anything else. Uh, and guys, know in the autopsy so photos, I'm not going to switch to audio only. Mr. Uh, Rosenbaum. 
This is what the jury sees. Uh, well, uh, yep. Mr. Rosenbaum uh, had uh, several injuries that uh, were related to gunshot wounds. Um, were they brothers or cousins of gunshot wounds? That's what I noticed initially, yes. And did you perform any x-rays on or any other imaging on Mr. Huber or Mr. Rosenbaum? Yes, x-rays are uh, taken prior to the autopsy examination. That allows us to look for skeletal injuries as well as to locate any projectiles or projectile fragments, bullets or bullet fragments. Were you able to come to a conclusion to a reasonable degree of medical certainty on the what caused the death of Mr. Rosenbaum? Yes. What was that? Mr. Rosenbaum died from multiple gunshot wounds. And uh, in this physical examination, was there anything of note that would have led to a questioning or a uh, addition to that cause of death? Uh, no. Please say Do it was from the one in his gunshot back. gunshot wounds They're Mr. Asking. that you found on Mr. Rosenbaum? Uh, well, Mr. Rosenbaum has a number of injuries. Um, there are well, they might uh, ask him for a tox uh, two injuries in which uh, the bullet entered on the body cross. and did not exit. So did bullets from those injuries. Yep. There's a third injury that is a graze wound in which the bullet just grazed the skin superficially. And then there is uh, a, uh, a gunshot wound to the left hand and an area to the left thigh that appear to uh, uh, be separate, but may actually be, um, I, I think they're related uh, to the same uh, gunshot wound. Now, gunshot wound to the hand, you we say. Get too far into this, what is stippling? Reaching? Um, okay, so I think to explain that, I have to back up one step and just uh, remind you that more than just bullet comes out of the end of the gun. Uh, so uh, flame comes out of the gun, smoke and soot comes out of the gun, unburned gunpowder particles come out of the Retribution gun. Retribution comes out of the gun. <laughs> um, what we do in forensic pathology is we look for injuries on the body or evidence on the body that allows us to estimate the distance of the muzzle of the gun to the surface of the body. And so... In, in contact wounds, we might actually see a, scrapes around the entrance site uh, from the muzzle of the gun, from the skin actually hitting the muzzle of the gun. It's called a muzzle stamp, so that's a contact wound. Um, uh, out to a certain distance, soot will actually be able to deposit on the skin. It's obviously not very aerodynamic, so after about a foot or so, soot is, is imperceptible. But and it depends on the weapon uh, to how far that can be seen. Um, but soot will tell us that the muzzle of the gun is within a, a pretty close distance. And then the gunpowder that comes out, those little gunpowder particles, they also have a, a velocity to them. So they have energy. So they have kinetic energy that can cause damage to the surface of the skin. So when they hit the skin, if they have enough energy, they can actually cause little scrapes. And those little scrapes or abrasions are little punctate, little round punctate or small elongated injuries to the skin that surround the perforation. And of course, the closer you are, the more dense it is. And as they, as they travel through the, through the air, they spread out and create a, a wider and less dense pattern around the injury to until a point where you can't see them anymore. They don't have enough injury uh, uh, energy to create an injury on the surface of the skin. That is called gunpowder stippling. So when the gunpowder creates an injury to the skin, we call that gunpowder stippling, and that indicates an intermediate range gunshot wound. Um, so that's just one of the things that we use to estimate the distance of the muzzle from the, the surface of the body. And then everything else is referred to as indeterminate because we, we, uh, we, we can't tell. We don't use the word distance. Um, we use the word indeterminate because we can't see anything. Uh, that doesn't mean that something didn't get in the way or filter out the gunpowder particles in the soot. So we just say anything without any evidence of uh, of gunpowder stippling or soot around a, a wound is indeterminate. So when you talk about gunpowder stippling, we're talking about an intermediate range gunshot wound. 
Uh, you, there's a term I see in your report uh, called pseudo stippling. What is pseudo stippling? Um, obviously, anything that hits the skin and leaves a, uh, an abrasion um, will you know, leave a mark that we will make note of. Uh, if something other than gunpowder hits the surface of the skin and creates those abrasions, we'll often refer to, we'll refer to those as pseudo, pseudo stippling. And so if the bullet goes through an intermediate target, so if it goes through uh, another body part, if it goes through a window, if it goes through a door, the, the particles of those surfaces uh, might actually travel with some force downstream and hit the surface of the body, creating those same types of injuries. But those look very different than gunpowder stippling. They're, they vary in size and shape. They sometimes are irregular, some are small, some are big. Um, They're very diverse. That's called pseudo stippling. And that can be caused by a number of different things, as I just pointed out, and also be caused by uh, a bullet ricocheting off of something. So it can break, break up a surface and cause those particles of the bullet and particles of that surface to travel and hit the body. And so that is called pseudo stippling. It's not the same as gunpowder stippling. I'd like to first talk about a gunshot wound to the pelvis. Uh, what can you tell me about that gunshot wound? So Mr. Rosenbaum has a gunshot wound to the right side of the pelvis. Um, or actually, it's to the right side of the groin, and that gunshot wound passes uh, into the into the body and hits the pelvis, <laughs> uh, creates a, a, a quite bad fracture to the right side of the pelvis, and then that bullet continues, and there is an area of bruising to the right buttock. Um, there's actually a little a, a, a little. Uh, perforation where the bullet couldn't quite get through. But in that location under that uh, little incomplete exit, that's where I found the bullet from that gunshot wound. Um, so this gunshot wound actually um, uh, has some stippling, gunpowder stippling associated with it. Um, it's to the lower abdomen. And interestingly enough, where his waistline is at, there's no stippling below that point. So there, it's not surrounding this entrance wound. It's actually above to the abdomen, but it's because he's wearing the, the, the clothing and the clothing didn't allow that gunpowder to get to the surface of the, uh, of the uh, body in the groin region, but it did in the lower abdomen. That was interesting abdomen. enough. That gunpowder stippling to the lower abdomen. It's associated with this entrance wound to the right groin, and that is an intermediate range gunshot wound. So what is intermediate, intermediate to what? Yeah, you. exactly. Uh, as misleading. I said, intermediate range is, uh, it, it depends on the weapon. He's still on humor now, right? The, 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 no, the Rosenbaum. Rosenbaum. Oh, talking Rosenbaum. about Rosenbaum, but they uh, haven't showed, shown photos yet, but I expect that they will. See gunpowder stippling. You're mm -hmm. looking at uh, a muzzle to target distance of a few feet. A few um, feet, that's again, intermediate. It depends on whether you're talking about a handgun or <laughs> rifle or, or such. Um, I would say that in this particular instance, we're talking about something uh, within a few feet, within four feet or so. And within could be two feet. Knowing that the defendant fired with an AR 15 rifle with 223 caliber. By the way, I said two to three feet away. That's right. <laughs> so you, you would you'd estimate that. I thought I'd be. Be clear, you're saying that he was about four feet away or he was within four feet? No, uh, objection. I'm saying that the, well, the best way of putting it is the only way to, to be more accurate is to test fire the weapon and uh, see what kind of a, a pattern you get because the density of that gunpowder stippling pattern might help you somewhat. But this is pretty spread out. Um, so it, all we can really say is that it's within a few feet, but I can't be any more specific. And what was and the pattern? Pattern not the same. Uh, it's basically front to back and a little left to right. And in your medical opinion, is this the kind of shot that would uh, resulted in loss of life? 
Uh, it's not an immediately lethal wound. Uh, no, obviously, you know, all gunshot wounds can, can produce morbidity and, and mortality, but uh, in this particular instance, this is not an immediately lethal wound. Now, Doctor, I'd like to talk to you about a gunshot wound. Did you find any wounds to the hand? The left hand has a gunshot wound. Um, it's a very complex wound. There is tearing of the skin to the palmar surface at the base of the uh, index and middle fingers. There's a tear oh, the that extends noises. up the middle finger, and there's actually some... Like he's eating a banana. Uh, a lot of soot to this area <laughs> and tearing to the underlying soft uh, That soot continues to the other fingers of the palmar surface of the hand. Um, this wound is associated with fracturing to the first bone of the index finger, so the bone just beyond the knuckle. That bone is fractured by this wound path. Uh, and then it exits uh, to the uh, back of the hand, just just beyond the uh, the knuckle of the index finger. He tried to use sword catch so and failed. If we were to put this into anatomic position, which we talked about a minute ago, with the palm forward, this the trajectory of this wound path with the hand in anatomic position is uh, basically front to back right to left, and a little bit upwards. Did you recover any bullet fragments from that wound? Uh, no. So I think you're right, Nick. I think he's describing his hand out like that towards the, towards the thing. You mentioned that. Yeah. Uh, was there any... That's how I'd frame it. Or yep. Of that nature in this wound? The defense needs to uh, make that clear. This, will, this wound does have soot associated with it. There's uh, a fair amount of soot to the, like I said, the palmar surface. Of, of that hand. Uh, so clearly this wound represents something closer to what I call the close range gunshot wound. <laughs> That's, That's great. That is great. Phenomenal. That is exceptional. Um, it, uh, I think that it makes sense that this wound is associated with another wound that is to the, the lateral or the outside of the left thigh. Um, it's, it's kind of to the lower left thigh, but the, um, that area has a very irregular, large area of abrasion and multiple small perforations. And in one of these perforations, I actually recovered a small fragment of a bullet. Um, the x-ray shows that there's additional, very, very small um, uh, metal fragments in the, in the left thigh as well, which I, I didn't recover. Um, so this injury to the left, uh, outside of the left thigh, um, this is very characteristic of a, a ricochet type wound. In other words, I think the bullet hit something, ricocheted, breaking up the bullet and that surface, and that showered the, the, the left lateral thigh and created these injuries. Um, it appears that the one the gunshot wound that could have caused that would be the one related to the left hand as well. So I think that uh, the uh, gunshot wound to the left hand passed through, made impact with the pavement, and fragmented, fragmenting some of the pavement as well, and that this created the injury to the left thigh uh, as well as to the, the left hand. He See, slapped the bullet. Well, bullet. He hand injury, he twice with one uh, bullet. That would you consider yeah, that, that can injury that would quickly cause death? No, it's a better shot than we realized. Wound either. And this injury to the left thigh is that uh, is that the kind of injury that would cause death? No, it's not. Uh, would it be would it be fair to say that's something of a superficial wound? Yes. This whole trying to get the back thing is is excruciating. Yeah. And even they know slowing that's the headline. It down. It's the headline. Even for slowing tomorrow. it down. Main, uh, all splashed across mainstream uh, media. Like is Kyle killed him with a shot to the back. Shot wound to the head. What can you tell me about that? This is the grazing one. But to the right frontal area of the head. Um, so, so basically the right lateral forehead. Um, there is 
a graze wound, as I mentioned previously. So this is a superficial injury in which uh, the, the bullet grazed the, grazed the surface of the skin or created an abrasion or scrape. And based on the appearances of the edge of this, of this wound, it appears to be traveling in a back to front and downward orientation. Uh, and there's no, obviously no bullet or bullet fragments recovered from the, from the body on a, a wound like this. So when you're saying back to front, the injury, the bullet actually made contact towards the rear of the head first and then traveled towards the front of the head? It, yes, it's, it's, it's uh, the angle is sharply downwards, uh, so, but it's from back to front and, and downwards. Now, is that wound, would that be considered to be a wound that would be immediately fatal? No, it's not. Now, doctor, I'd like to talk to you about a uh, he said gunshot back to wound front and to the chest yes. and the so abdomen. What the angle that Kyle that was at. Gunshot wound. Maybe he was looking up? <clears throat> well, this, this gunshot wound to Mr. Rosenbaum, it enters the back uh, about an inch to the left of the upper midline. Um, and this is the one that passes through the right chest cavity. Um, it uh, creates a great deal of injury to the right lung. Uh, there's blood within the right chest cavity. It then uh, perforates the, the diaphragm uh, at the base of the lung and enters the liver, which is right under the diaphragm creates a great deal of injury to the liver. Um, this case has created uh, a great deal of injury to my liver. several ribs. <laughs> this wound path as well. Heyo. But then the wound path, um, after creating all this injury, it passes into the right flank. And there was a, uh, a bruise to the right flank under which I collected a, uh, a bullet. When they go to show pictures, guys, it's going to be now, dead people. We so talked about how the other just so you know, were not it's like called a show wounds evidence. that would immediately cause a mortal wound. Uh, what impact do you believe that this gunshot would have had on Mr. Rosenbaum? Uh, this gunshot wound is a lethal injury. So what do you mean by that? Uh, this uh, gunshot wound is the uh, uh, one that would cause um, death as a result of the injuries to the lungs and the liver with the hemorrhage and the uh, injury to the organs themselves. And is that to a reasonable degree of medical certainty? Yes. Now, what was the trajectory of this gunshot wound? Is he saying now the other ones were fatal? This gunshot wound is yeah. downward, left to right, and back to front. I'd like to pull up the... Yeah, that's the headline tomorrow. All uh, you're gonna you're gonna video. see a dead body if you don't want to look. I am going to see this written house rye get opened. Nice. While we're take a few this shots up, doctor, of this, and you may be you in the able ground. to establish uh, the size of Mr. Rosenbaum yeah. during this autopsy. Uh, his height and weight, you mean? Yes. But yeah, he uh, he's five foot four inches tall, and he weighed uh, 153 pounds. Manless. Mr. Whitson marked as uh, Exhibit 90. What is this? You're looking at the graze wound to his head. So he said oh. it started from the back and went forward. When you say it's back to front. How can you tell that? In order to determine that, you have to look at it very closely. You have to look at the edges. And mm -hmm. typically, um, a projectile that uh, travels along the surface of the skin will create tearing of the skin. And... The way that it tears the skin helps you to determine its direction. In this case, the the direction of the tears tells you the direction the bullet is going. So it kind, it, of, Darth Vader. it kind of that was rude. Pushes through the tissue, tears it as it goes, and it's those specific tears as you go along that you can uh, use to determine this. So you indicated the trajectory of this bullet was. Uh, back to front and downwards, and that's in the anatomical position? That's correct. Um, I'd like to move Exhibit 90 into evidence. Next exhibit, please. 
Billy Witch Doctor 99 says, here's the money. Keep the grip flowing. What do you think will come first, 200,000 subs or 100,000 24 no, hours? Doctor, look at you. It's been 91. Do you recognize this? Yes. What is that? What you're looking at is to the left side of the picture next to that scale um, with the numbers on it. That's the knee of the left leg. And right above the left knee, you're looking at the lateral left thigh. And the injury is that area of scraping a red abrasion right above it. It's very irregular in its appearance. Now, is this the injury that you've opined was caused by debris or by a bullet fragmenting? Yes, by, uh, by ricochet. And is there evidence of the pseudo stippling which you talked about? Um, you can you can see that in addition to the the main body of the uh, uh, abrasion, you can see some very small areas of uh, uh, abrasions or scrapes there above it and below it, and those little areas are separate impact sites. Those are separate uh, projectiles, if you will. So this entire area is uh, is, is a typical wound. I'd like to lose it 91 in evidence. Do it hand next. Because I'm, ooh, that's, it's going to be ugly. Gonna be... Uh, yeah. Doctor, what is this? Uh, ow. Uh, this is a picture it's before be cleaning up. Uh, it's a picture of the palmer surface of the left hand. So this a lot is of where soot the on that hand. The left hand is located. And can you indicate, uh, if you can, where the entrance wound is? Um, so if you look at the, uh, the middle finger and to the right side of the middle finger, it's, it's really difficult to see in this particular photograph, but to the right side of the middle finger there, that's where the, uh, beginning of the injury is at. It's where the entrance is. Could you have taken a bird. I apologize. Better you picture? that pointer and point it out. It is difficult to see. Did you consider maybe showing the wound in the picture? All right, I've got to bounce. I've got to catch a flight, but I'll probably be in chat at some point. So I'll see you later. Fly well, brother. Hey, Kurt. Good talking, hey, Kurt. Kurt. Take it easy, brother. That, and why don't you just stay there and we'll, we'll try to get this out. Did everyone hear that? No, I didn't hear it. Now, <laughs> there's some dark markings all over the hand. What is that? Let's move exhibit 92 into evidence. No objection. Next exhibit, please. Uh, doctor, what are we looking at here? This, a this broken a finger. Photograph that shows the exit wound from the left hand. So hmm. what you're looking at here is the index finger and the thumb, and this irregular area here, this round area, is the uh, exit point. Wow. I wonder if he so stood up to me by the screen. That's why he's so quiet. Yeah, he's got the pointer. So travel now, two that different is fingers? Wound that you believe would have then went and struck perhaps the pavement and Ooh. caused the thigh injury? It went. You asked for a clearer picture. Down. Let's see, what is it marked as? 94? Uh, is it 94? Do you recognize that? So it hits the Another middle finger and then goes the down the, through uh, and out the side. Of the left hand. Mm. And again, you can see the rounded area here. This is uh, the beginning of the wound path. Here is this tearing here. This is 
Again, if you think about grabbing like this, reaching yeah. like this, the bullet coming through yep. this way. Right. Yep. It does make sense. All that black material is the soot. It's interesting that it actually the bullet goes down and then back up, implying that he was he wasn't trying to make like a headshot. You know what I'm saying? He could have aimed higher. He, his, he didn't his, have time. He was raising his gun as he started firing. That's yeah. why he hits the pelvis. That's yeah, why yeah. he hits the hand. Exhibit 95. Pelvis was likely the first thing hit. That, 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 which is really, that, which is really uh, yeah, karma yeah, right yeah. there, he considering the way he lived his life. The, the first injury was to his here. pelvis. Uh, Oof. <laughs> yeah, it's just with this testimony, how slow it goes, them slowing down the footage. You know, they want to they dilate time here and make it sound like Kyle had more time to premeditate this more what time is, to control this weight, but like nick said when you're moving it just part of a fluid motion and, and the shots are going off it's just something that essentially happened as one motion in an instant oh right? yeah it was four shots in three quarters of a yeah. second but they're trying to make it sound like it's it was a, a 10 minute a 10 right, minute shooting spree right and and that's why and that's why they want to they want to cherry pick the the one that killed him right yeah the, yes none of these other ones were fatal but the one that killed him was the one to his back you have a 95 so that's it's it's can be effective. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see how it plays out with, with the jury. Let's see what is marked as states, states Exhibit 96. Do you recognize that? Yeah. What is that? This is uh, a picture before it's cleaned up. This is a picture of the uh, uh, entrance wound to the right groin region. you would be in the upper right corner there uh, next to the uh, top of the scale uh, there's a lot of blood on this so it's difficult to see things but the entrance wound is right here and, and what is the redness around the wound um, that's that's all blood there so there's uh, wet and dried blood still to the surface of the body just before Like who's in 96 in the evidence? Elena Stansby says, sending much love from the UK. Great Britain. Hey, thank you. Cheers. I try and get these in between uh, talking. Doctor, what is this? This photograph uh, is a picture of Mr. Rosenbaum's back. Uh, you can see the entrance wound is this dark brown. He's a lot less bloody than I would have anticipated. Um, You're not going to, it's not a shotgun. Right. It's the difference with the Arbery case, the by the way. Yeah, the Arbery case is a bloody pulp. The, uh, the wound Shotgun versus the rifle. Uh, yep. Extending all the way from the back of the left shoulder down to the area around the entrance wound. But Huber had it worse. Huber looked up bloody. Is it 97 in the evidence? <laughs> Huber, he hit the heart. I mean, the, you're talking about to the chest. tons of blood. But Doctor, look at it. So you see 98. Instead of this, he hit the heart here through the back. No, it went down into his liver. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it traversed down his body because he was falling forward. Right. Yeah, after your pelvis is shattered, you tend to collapse. That Mr. Rosenbaum has been washed or cleaned up. That's correct. Like to move at 98 in evidence. Uh, doctor, this is Exhibit 99. What is this? Uh, this is a uh, closer photograph of the uh, left hand showing the exit wound. What you're looking at is oh. from the left. Someone just pointed out that the prosecutor sounds like Jonah Hill, and I can't unhear it. <laughs> they broke the glass. Let's move to 99 to evidence. Okay. Doctor, what are we looking at here? Yeah. This is the injury to the left hand after it's been cleaned up somewhat. Uh, you can see here the thumb, the index finger, the middle finger, 
You can still see the soot burns on it after cleanup. Yeah, it's a lot of soot. He was really close and reaching for the muzzle. Again, there's this glass or this laceration that extends along the palmar surfaces of those two uh, fingers. This was at 100 in evidence. Yeah. Doctor, what are we looking at here? This photograph depicts the this is the knee right here in the middle. Um, <coughs> This injury up here in a weird way, it's actually good to have the shot to the back lower, on this one because they're not showing, you know, like the dead body yeah. face the pose face. the whole time. Yeah, the, the face forward. Of the abrasion surrounding it. This right here to the left knee is an abrasion scrape. So this is just a, a, a scrape of the left knee. And what relevance do you believe this has to this case? Um, it, it, it possibly could have happened when he was down to the ground or was on the ground. Exclusive 101 into evidence. I can't wait for cross on these guys. I, uh, this guy, I think it'll be actually really interesting. And for the final exhibit. I think so too. Uh, what is this? This is a close-up photograph uh, after he's been cleaned up of the entrance gunshot wound to the right groin. On cross, I would I would like to to hear him I think it was a bit address the timing of these various wounds, how close together they may have been, or uh, or you know how how these various things I could have he, happened. I don't know if he's going to have too much ability to testify to that. That's going to be limited. But that's but that's exactly it. Yeah, that's exactly my now, point. As a is, medical is to, examiner, is to point that out. Uh, is all you do or all you're allowed to do is look at the body? Uh, no. Uh, what else can your a medical examiner, is it fair to say you we can watch the movie? Uh, yes, we uh, we uh, collect information about the circumstances of the case. Um, we'll look at photographs, uh, scene photographs or other photographs, we'll look at video from scenes. We'll look at a lot of different things in order to uh, understand the circumstances better and perhaps help us to uh, answer other questions. And did you review anything else in this case that would aided you in your investigation in terms of Mr. Rosenbaum? Uh, several things were were reviewed uh, from Mr. Rosenbaum, uh, specifically um, a, a video, YouTube video was referenced to uh, exemplify the, the circumstances of the uh, uh, of the the shooting. Um, I reviewed some uh, other records, medical records and things. So it says, I watched the Young uh, Turks. <laughs> that Actually, that was about it with Mr. Rosenbaum. Oh, God. Man, it'd be great if there's a tox report. What drugs were in the system at the time? The, no, but that's standard. Can you tell us what that drug is for? You're a, do you're, you're a doctor. I mean, I know you're not a pharmacist. However, uh, Justin Schroll says, why is the office that sprayed cow with pepper spray? 41. Never mind. I'll, I'll read it in a minute. Do you recognize this? Yes. What is that? Um, I th th that appears to be the an, an introductory screen from a, a video that was referenced to me. Uh, I, I was told to look at this video for reference. Uh, is he a video expert now? In understand or in seeing the scene of the shooting better. Well, it's not. Oh, it's yeah. not uncommon for no. For these kind of it was an intro screen Dr. with Jensen, writing. The defense expert review. Uh, yes, I, I believe so. So did the writing prejudice your interpretation of the event? That's the valid question. That is a valid question. In, but otherwise, generally... 
Because that video, was defense exhibit. Um, are you able to tell us anything about the first two gunshots? Um, the if trying to uh, d determine some kind of order of gunshots, um, obviously the autopsy itself is, is is not going to allow us to do that. We can use the injuries. Uh, and the, the, the details about those injuries to help us. But um, the autopsy alone is not going to, uh, to allow you to, to, to do that. And also is not going to allow you to know what position the person is in when they were, when they were shot. Um, you know, we put things in, in terms of anatomic position, but uh, we seldom know exactly what position they were in when, they, uh, when the gunshot wound was incurred. So the use of the video can sometimes be uh, uh, helpful in answering those questions. And really with regards to the video, uh, and there really was only one very small uh, a portion of that entire video that uh, helps me. And I think that it's the uh, uh, portion what where there's actually beginning? some sound so I can, I can hear the gunshots uh, and see the position of Mr. Rosenbaum at that time that you hear the discharge of the of the weapon. Um, uh, the Windows so sound that you guys hear I, is not on I my computer. The video for is not mine. To just to it's from the court. What position right. he's in when I hear those gunshots, and so really um, knowing that he had he had these these gunshot wounds uh, to the different areas. He's got a entrance wound to the to the front of his body the the right groin he's got an entrance wound to the upper back he's got an he's got a graze wound to the to the head and so in looking at the video and uh paying attention to his body position when i heard the discharge of the weapon i was at least able to say that the only time uh during the interaction in which he could have incurred the gunshot wounds to the uh, to the back and to the right side of the head is when he's more horizontal, and the only time that that happens is is uh, the the last two gunshot wounds. So I think the, the first two gunshot wounds are represented by the, uh, uh, the 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 injury to the groin and the injury to the left thigh. Um, and the hand. There is a. Um, uh, it, it's not the the greatest video for uh, left uh, thigh was a fragment video, but. Um, right after the second gunshot wound, there's also some kind of a, a cloud, uh, it, it seems. There's some kind of a cloud of smoke or something like that. And uh, I, I felt this was consistent with a, uh, a bullet hitting the pavement and creating that cloud, and therefore that would, uh, would be related to the uh, injury to the left thigh. Uh, so really that's how I uh, use the the, the video just to uh, determine when he's and that's, in position that's common, to you guys. receive um, um, certain gunshot wounds. So, Doctor, is your testimony that in the video you reviewed, uh, which the jury has seen, uh, you, the, the first gunshots are while Mr. Rosenbaum is facing Mr. Rittenhouse? Yes. And you said that at least one of those was intermediate out to four feet away? Uh, yes. And then uh, you see in the video that uh, Mr. Rosenbaum continues going forward and he begins to uh, tilt or fall. And is it your opinion to a reasonable degree of medical certainty that the back to front shots to the head and then the kill shot to the back would have been while he was the falling or shot. perpendicular to the ground? Uh, the, the only way Parallel that the, to the ground, uh, trajectories of the gunshot wounds to the right side of the head and the back makes sense is if he's more horizontal to the ground and that is occurring um, at the time that the last two gunshot wounds are heard on the video. Doctor, in your uh, the rest of your medical knowledge and opinion, um, if an individual is moving forward and they sustain that injury uh, that entered by the groin and went to the hip, uh, could that cause them to fold forward and kind of move forward or move down in less than a quarter position? second? Uh, th that's possible. There is a, um, a a very complex fracture involving the right side of the pelvis, which um, 
uh, may make the, the pelvis second. and the right leg more unstable, but uh, all I can say is that that's a possibility. Try falling to the ground in a quarter second. It's a remarkably difficult thing to do. Have just just launch yourself at the ground. Have your friend time you with the stopwatch. Try it. I Dr. dare you. Talk about this hand wound and where and how that occurred. Um, if someone is pointing a rifle at you, an AR-15, do you have an explanation of how that hand could be positioned that would result in the injury shown, and then also uh, perhaps the injury to the thigh from that same round? Well, as I said, this is a, a close range injury. Um, and uh, so his hand is in close proximity or in contact with the end of that rifle. Oh, Ooh. shit. So you can kind of think of it in your. Look at Pinger. Look at Pinger. Foot. Oh, man. <laughs> close to that trajectory through his hand. Um, you move the hand around, that's, you can put it in different. Uh, relationships to the body that uh, can explain that uh, typically by turning the palm towards the ground it would make make uh, sense that it could uh, go through the hand hit the ground and then create the injuries to the uh, uh, the left side of the thigh so it's consistent that the hand with the palm was to the ground and then it would have entered by the middle finger gone through and then exited the end of the index finger and then hit the ground Yes. I mean, that, again, and it's another case clear, where the, the state is uh, just making the defense case. We've only heard four gunshots. Um, is it possible that the four gunshots caused all five wounds? Yes. I have nothing further. Thank you. Talk about the case during the break, or you'd watch or listen to any account of the trial. So you the, know, the, the part, the, the part of the this, this testimony uh, that yes, helps the prosecution for, is the photos. Uh, actual time of uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, but the prosecution can't help itself. There all there's always something. There's always something that comes out during every single freaking witness that helps the defense. It just shows us strong the facts. Are. I honestly think it's just because they have bad facts. Yeah, no, yeah, that, no but that's, that's the point. Right there, there have been. There have been dozens, hundreds, thousands of cases not prosecuted on far worse fact patterns than this. I mean, on far worse fact patterns just because of self-defense. Um, again, uh, one of the ones I like to go back to is Michael Dreshka, the, the parking lot shooter over the handicap space. He wasn't even, he wasn't arrested. He wasn't charged for a very long time because they had to actually... They had to nail him on his interview. His interview is where he goes in and he says, no, I wasn't scared because I have my gun. I had no problem. Like that guy killed himself on his own, uh, on his own statements to the, to the cops. Mm -hmm. They were, they let him go. He went home. Mm -hmm. Everything was fine. And I mean, there was no question. He shot the person. Uh, this is not a Rittenhouse situation where there's a riot. Uh, yearly. There are again, Dozens, if not hundreds, if not thousands of cases in the U.S. that are not prosecuted because they're self-defense and they have less evidence. They have less video footage. They have a less compelling self-defense case than Kyle Rittenhouse. And, and that's the problem the prosecution has this entire case. It's why every witness is arming them. Yeah. And this is why we're saying the case for a motion, you know, any sort of motion under 805.14, there's a, all the motions are under that statute. If you want to look at that statute, anyone that could get him acquitted, I just call them the acquittal motions because they're all sorts of different types of motions. But all of those look at the evidence in the light most favorable to the prosecution. But even if you do that, every bit of their evidence has something for the defense. It creates that reasonable doubt. So they cannot get over that beyond a reasonable doubt threshold. Yeah, it's it's amazing. I mean, the fact that the the state's medical examiner that the state decided to call and the state decided to ask these questions has to con the state ends up having to confront the fact that he said not only was his hand in close proximity to the gun, but it may have been on the barrel of the rifle. And why do they 
Okay, go to it. Hold on. And uh, it's a 15 minute break, and Court TV is going to end their feed and start a new one. I guess they can start editing it or something. It's but it's budget cropping. God, I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> uh, so I'll I'll grab the new feed in just a second, or I'll grab Law and Crime. Uh, so so okay. either way, do we know how many more expert witnesses we're going to get on the stand here? Because this is already to the level of pain that probably was felt by gauge at this point, because I mean, we're just getting absolutely, you know, at, I mean, at this point we've heard the main witnesses. So it's just, it's just cumulative and cumulative. And I know it's new, right. But at this point, expert testimony, not the I most mean, persuasive. The medical examiner, I think, I think is different from the other experts because we, we yes. haven't seen any, any doctors before this point um, testify to the, the actual wounds and, you know, and, and the having, having conducted any autopsies and looking at reports. So, so that, that is new. I wouldn't say that that is cumulative, no. um, but I, I, I would say if they were, if, if they were going to be introducing any more police officers, for example, I don't, I don't understand. We, we've why heard from what, five that. now, five yeah. cops. And none um, of them have given us anything particularly yeah. relevant. How many uh, random videos are they going to not stipulate to and bring one cop on to bring on a single video? Yeah, it's it's insane. Um, guys, uh, and what we're talking about with cumulative evidence is the idea that a fact or you know a, a given fact for the jury to consider is supposed to really only show up once. You get the fact, the fact is entered into the record, and then the jury has heard the fact, and then they get to make a determination. There's a prejudicial aspect to hearing the same fact repeated over and over and over it's why binger keeps saying you didn't see him have a gun you didn't see him have a knife you didn't see him have a bat it's why he was doing that is to imprint in the idea of the jury that this guy was unarmed now each different person that he asked that is a different fact because that person didn't see it that so he's allowed to do that but when we're talking about cops coming up on the stand and testifying to a particular video that they all saw. If each cop were to come up and testify to the same video over and over and over, it's cumulative, it's irrelevant. And, and the, so the video evidence in this case has a real easy track to be cumulative. So that's why we're talking about uh, the cumulative evidence and, and finger uh, Richards could object to it if it were actually cumulative, this is all new. And I think the, the prosecution here had to make a choice and they said, we really want to show the, they really wanted that, uh, the Huber image. Yes. The one where he's dead, Especially. laying yeah. there. He looks awkward and it nasty. It really is. is a, it's a very uncomfortable image to look at, to say the least. Right. Uh, you think they left the eyes open on purpose to make it that no. much more uncomfortable? No, that's No, normal. I don't think so. Yeah. I, they don't, they try to manipulate it as little as possible, right? Get the right. body in place. Yeah. But um, have, have you guys ever been to a corner before? Uh, like I said, no. my family runs funeral homes. I, I've seen a lot of dead bodies. So that it that is. is. I, I went. Sad. I uh, when I when I interned with the attorney general's office, um, they do over their summer internships. Um, they do a, a, a field trip day to the LA County coroner. Uh, I yeah. I there were certain meats that I couldn't eat for a while afterwards. For for a while. <laughs> yeah, I I grew up with too much internet, so. Uh, like... <laughs> I mean, I've watched people be killed in horrific ways, and this is like, oh, well, okay. I mean, you look at it, and it's like, yeah, I could see that being a problem. I mean, that's kind of right. gross, but it's You're not saying this picture gets lost in, your, in the search history that you have from YouTube. It would, like, Pat Robertson totally was right all along, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, but no, I mean that they they want the they want the pictures, they want the stills, they want to jar the jury who are just typically normal folk. Uh, that's what they want to yeah. do. But they have to balance it with how bad uh, things can go for them. They ha they know about the hand. I mean, they asked Binger got up and said, "Do any of you know about stippling at jury selection?" He wanted anybody who knew anything about stippling off the jury immediately because he right. knew it was going to come up and be an issue. Even if they've seen CSI and just remember the word stippling, it's going to prejudice the jury against the state. But of course, then their medical expert comes out and says, yeah, uh, stippling on, on the two wounds uh, right there because it seems like he was pretty close to him. <laughs> oh, that doesn't look good for you. I'd say within four feet. Now, mind you, his hand is reaching for the gun is maybe coming into contact with the barrel. That's on me 
you're you're talking two feet uh and then another what uh i i'm not doing the triangle math but to get to my pelvis you're talking two and a half three feet of distance if if my hand is on the barrel so when he says within four feet i mean we're talking about joseph rosenbaum is within grabbing distance as the shot yes. enters his pelvis and yeah. uh and that and, is a critical and the, fact and the fact the fact that they had the the medical examiner saying that that based on what was on his hands it looked like he was either his hand was either near or on the barrel of the gun oh brutal that's very very damaging yeah yep and, and the thing is is that that, that within four feet you just got to understand it can be closer than four feet it just meant within four feet so even that was deceptive the use of the word intermediate i know a lot of people in the chat pointed that out intermediate is a deceptive word right but someone at, said at uh, the, oh yeah go ahead no, I was going to say, at the end of the day, we know that he was close enough to grab it. And also, you know, anybody who's seen the 21 foot thing, it's the knife rule, right? If you've got a knife, you're within 21 feet, you are deadlier than a gun because you can close that gap and you can kill them often before they can even draw their gun and fire it, right? So four feet is just, you know, <laughs> that to the end, right? It's that and that much quicker for him to disable Kyle. Yeah, and uh, the, the, the important part about the, um, the within four feet and the intermediate thing, that was a, that was a very sly move someone in the chat said uh oh within four feet four feet is intermediate now i'm a long distance shooter i guess <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's, you're, you're 10 feet away and 10 feet is nothing with a handgun i mean you're, you're like you're a sharp extra shooter accurate. there from yeah from 10 feet away i can hit him like i'm like a yeah. sniper on yeah. on cross on cross I, I would expect them to to completely eradicate that term and just use within four feet within four feet within four feet as many times as possible yeah so he can be two feet now away. with that yeah, right. So he, Narrow that down exactly like you yeah. were saying, Nick. Yeah, that yeah. within four feet could could also be six inches. That's also within four feet. Yeah, get him down to the closest it could possibly be, maybe. I, I don't know if you want to do that, but you could. You could say, so you'd say p potentially within four feet. It, would it be unreasonable to say three feet? How about two feet? How about one feet? Yeah. At what point yeah. is the stippling six inches? Uh, and, and just make him... <laughs> He, and he'll say the whole time, well, I'm not an expert on distance. Well, I'm not an expert on distance. I'm not an expert. It would really depend on the caliber. It depend on the brand of uh, shell that's used because, uh, you know, 223 or 556. Yes. I think Kyle was shooting 223. You can get two, two, different three, grains. Yeah. You can get different mm -hmm. grain loads inside the, uh, the bullet. Um, you can have a different amount of powder in there. Uh, and that's going to change a whole lot of those equations. And this guy is not an expert on it. And that, you know... Uh, Although you may just want him to say within four feet, because within four feet is a terrifying fucking place for a maniac chasing you. Yeah. Screaming yeah. F you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right. When you and, just and heard a point, gunshot. Right. And to your point earlier, Nick, um, you know, of course they want anyone that that knows anything about about uh about stippling to be to be off that jury. And anyone that has any amount of expertise related to the the material aspects of this trial, they want them to be off the jury because they don't want them to bring in their own their own analysis, their own expertise. They they want them to just work within the corners, the four corners that they build for the jury um, and then and then go within there. Because otherwise there's also the potential for one of the jurors to say, "Hey, I have a lot of experience with this and what they said is not exactly accurate." And then you have a potential situation where you have one juror becomes the leader on a particular issue. Um, and when they get into deliberations, that's when the jury is actually allowed to talk about the case. That's one of the interesting prospects here because there are, I, I believe, according to the report, there are two pharmacists and one EMT or maybe two EMTs on the, on the jury. EMTs are going to have, if they're actual 911 call responders, are going to probably have seen a gunshot wound or two. They're going to see stippling. They're going to they're going to have talked to uh, trauma doctors who are dealing with this type of stuff. And, and they'll be talking about it in the back. Um, the pharmacists, you re that's why I said if, if there's a talk screen, you really want to ask about the talk screen, what's on there. Even if you don't get out what they're used for from the expert, the pharmacists, if they go back into that jury room, are going to say, well, you know, I mean, this guy's on an antipsychotic. Like, Where'd you hear that? It's like, well, I know what uh, Sarah Toral does or whatever it is. You know, that's that's the type of stuff uh, that that can be really useful in a jury room, especially when all of it is negative against the deceased. Um, you know, they're not talking about a talk screen on on Kyle Rittenhouse. They don't have a tox report for him. They don't they don't say they're not going to be able to 
uh, discuss what was in his body. I mean, we have no evidence of it, um, but they will be able to discuss what was in Rosenbaum's body. And I still say Rosenbaum is the linchpin of the whole case because that first shooting sets Kyle's state of mind. If he was murdering a thing. guy, it sets right. the whole thing in motion. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If he's, if he's murdering a guy, he can't run off and say he was running to the police in self-defense. I mean, he can, but it sounds hollow if he's defending himself and then gets up and runs <laughs> towards the police as fast as he can. Sure. Looks like he's defending himself for the rest of the night. And, yep. and I don't know how you say otherwise. So I don't know if any of you caught Viva Barnes last night, but Robert Barnes was making a point, which was a little disconcerting for those of us who are, who are hoping for and expecting Kyle to be exonerated. And that is, we here, conservatives on the right, we looking at this as a matter of was it self-defense, was it not self-defense? And he was saying those people who have, the sheep who have been influenced by media into thinking, well, Kyle was wrong for being there. They don't care about his justification for self-defense because they already are judging him guilty for being in a place that he doesn't live there and showing up there, roaming around with an AR-15. And set it, and from from their perspective, you know, you're saying Rosenbaum set everything in motion. Yeah, that's what a lawyer thinks. That's what the law says. But from an emotional, moral perspective, or or what they deem to be morality, I actually think it's a perverse form of morality. They think that he's improperly there, and that's what sets this whole thing in motion. Kyle shouldn't be there, which is why I think the defense is when the defense puts their case up. Part of what they should be doing there is they should be putting people up there who can firmly show his ties to Kenosha, his strong links to Kenosha. This mm -hmm. is not that he decided I'm gonna show up there because I'm a big tough guy and I'm gonna be the one who's maintaining the peace, but he looks at it as his hometown, that he worked out as a lifeguard, that his daughter is dating that guy who's, who's living there and one of his best friends is living there, that he's there multiple times a week. Anything he can do to show that, hey, I didn't, I'm not some foreigner like Gage Grosskreutz who's like basically going around trying to um, enforce my ideology in a place where there's, you know, where BLM is going crazy, but that this is a matter of, I was coming here to defend my hometown and you need to show how strongly he's personally linked to Kenosha in order to justify, that's why he's there. It's his home. He's standing up for his own house, even though he and technically resides elsewhere. I just don't know if the prosecution, I mean, frankly, Joe, I don't know if the prosecution has done a very good job of painting him as somebody who shouldn't have been there. I don't know what evidence they've presented that has really conclusively said he should not have been there that night. He had no reason there that night. In fact, it seems like compared to some of the other people there, he was even one of the more demure in people there, right? He wasn't the guy who said, fuck around and find out. He wasn't the most teched out. He wasn't the most geared out. He didn't have a plate carrier, right? So, I mean, he wasn't yeah, the one that was getting in there and inciting. So I don't know how the prosecution has even done a good job of that. Although I do agree with you that the defense on their part of the case can go ahead and show his ties. And I think that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. I think the worst comment that they, that they got um, out of one of the witnesses was um, out of, uh, out of um, Balge. That's his name, right? Brian Balge. 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 Sorry. Oh, God. You guys, I'm, try, I'm trying to get it right. Mind, right? All the, I got, I got all the jokes are coming in and I hate it. <laughs> um, so, uh, Balch, yeah, when, when he said that, I think he, he said that uh, at, at one point someone from the crowd um, yelled at him like F you or something. And then he, he responded like, I love you too, ma'am, or something, right. which yeah, is yeah. like a little inflammatory. But, but that's, that's the worst of it. Um, and he kept walking and there was, no, there, was no, there was no scuffle after that or anything like that. So, yeah, I, I, I do agree. And, and it really depends on on whether the jury can make that delineation between Kyle Rittenhouse and other members of the of the the armed group that that he was there with or loosely affiliated, strongly affiliated, however they see it. I'm, I'm just saying if there are let's imagine there are Antifa members on the on the jury who made their way onto their jury from their perspective, they see him walking through there and they're thinking to themselves, Boogaloo boys, this is inflammatory. They are getting us angry by being being here. And his presence there is creating a more dangerous situation because you're just making the situation inflamed. I disagree with that take. My point is that if you're on the defense, you're trying to appeal to both conservatives and as much as possible those on the left and make them realize that, hey, this is his hometown. He has a right. He must defend this because that's where his heart is. Yes. I disagree with the left, everything about the left and everything about that take. But I just want I want everyone to understand where the mindset of some members of the jury may be.
So I just I just to I just want to point out our coverage is beating even PBS I mean, News Hour at this point. We are uh, we are I believe the top Rittenhouse stream despite when you type or when I type Kyle Rittenhouse trial live into YouTube search results can't even find the broadcast. So um, I know I know some people have seen it like seven results down. Uh, so thank you, YouTube, for manipulating search results. But we will we <laughs> we'll will get not there nonetheless. By that anyway. <laughs> uh so happy to help uh, out nick thank you thank you um and uh justin troll says why is the office that sprayed kyle officer that sprayed kyle with pepper spray conduct not push harder by defense he walked up to with his hands up so you sprayed him in the face and said go home is this justified use of force riot protest situation guy approaching a police cruiser with a gun should he have done it no but was he justified yeah even though his hands aren't on it they Look at what happened with Gage, right? Hands up, don't shoot. Oh, wait, I shoot you. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it would have... The one thing the, that the defense doesn't want to do is sit and deride the cops. That's, right. that's a quick way in this case um, where the cops are dealing with a ton of unrest in their town those couple days. That's a quick way in this case to get on the bad side of the jury, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you may be seated. All right, Richards, don't let me down. You would agree that uh, Joseph Rosenbaum's a pedophile, right? <laughs> <laughs> Could you see the, the toxicology report that he he was touching oh, boys? Like, sorry, it's been a long day. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Gosh, talking about generally. He just said this has been boring. Stippling, basically. stapling. Comes if this. I'm holding up the pointer the back end of the point of the thick end, the barrel of the gun here. Do we have agreement with that? Yes. If this gun fires a projectile, the first thing that comes out, and I'm not saying in order, but what would show nearness is soot stippling, correct? Correct. And then further out would be gunpowder stippling. Yes, soot and then gunpowder. Okay. And in... The soot stippling, it has to be, generally speaking, as you said, either in contact or within a foot. Yes, it's very. It's within a few inches. It's very close. Okay. Oh, and inches, when you yeah. looked at the state's exhibit, you talked about, you said it was either very close or in contact. And we're talking about the hand. Yes, it could, it could be within that within that range. Okay. So it could have been in contact. Okay. And as I said, if this is the barrel of the gun, this is my left hand, the barrel of the gun had to be somewhere in this area, correct? That's correct. Now, oh my God. The soot stippling, and I'm pointing with the pointer to my baby finger, that's there is visual. soot stippling. Yes, this is a very good dem correct? demonstration. Uh, I believe that's correct, yes. Okay. No the sit on the pinky. It starts between what would be the ring and kind of referred to as middle finger. Yes. Now you think okay. the pointer so is being the barrel. Is this the middle of the gun? It's not touching. In, in the jury's mind, would have been like this. They now associate the gun barrel being this close, like it's the so pointer. So that pointer becomes the gun. Hand was over the barrel of Mr. Rittenhouse's gun when his hand was shot. That makes sense. Okay. And the bullet goes into the fingers and then out through here. And I'm showing the fat part of the in between my index and thumb. Yes, the exit is, is to the index finger, but it's on the, the back of the lateral side of that finger, yes. And is it 105? Can, you... can, we, can we dismiss this charge yet? Can we dismiss this charge yet? 
I mean, are we serious? Oh, we just went over. I'm showing you an exhibit up on the screen. It's been marked Defense Exhibit 105. You see that photo uh, exhibit? Yes. Okay. And that's Mr. Rosenbaum's um, hand. His left hand. Left correct. hand. And you took that photograph, correct? Uh, yes. Um, circle on here to the best of your ability where the soot starts. Ooh, very oh, effective. Show Jeez. me on the hand. This where may become a new exhibit that gets en entered into, into evidence. Show okay. me on the hand you, where the soot um, touched you. Draw a line off <laughs> yep. of where it can be seen and then just put your initials. <laughs> oh, <laughs> make him it. This is so effective. And you they are so going to use this in their closing argument. If, if Assuming we get there. Circle on the ring finger, correct? Correct. Leaving the baby finger uncircled and blank, correct? I love that he calls the pinky correct. a baby Listen, finger. You don't see any soot there, right? Correct. Oh my gosh. No soot on the pinky. That is so important. Yeah, because it shows he was too close Published. to hit the pinky. Here you go, jury. Now they're going to publish it to the jury. This. Whoa. Finger Simon and Garfunkel playlist is growing by the minute. He is. Hello, darkness. <laughs> He's also in hazy shade of winter right now. <laughs> partially on video is dynamic situation, correct? Correct. And if the furthest he was away with the stifling that you see in the wounds was four feet and closing, that goes very quickly, correct? If someone's running at you? Yes. Okay. And four feet correct me if I'm wrong is about from me to you away that's about correct and if I had my hands out I'm even closer correct yes if I'm lunging and going for your gun which is an extension away from your body closer still yes mm. Mm. You saw I want a dedicated binger cam. <laughs> he was running, correct? He was. Well, we also have to have hunger watch then. He uh, he can't call it his little finger, he, by the way, because of binger. Right. <laughs> when you talk about TM, get out to word. anatomically um. Correct position? A atomic position. Ato yes. <laughs> That's as I'm standing That's here sort of before endearing. you, standing straight. That's sort of endearing. You said palms. He forward. just got the ME to say correct. atomic, and atomic position. position. Okay. I, I okay. Fix it. It. Okay. And the wound enters his back. That's correct. Okay. And, and goes down. down and across. Correct. Okay. We're not, and, and I know the prosecution covered it, but we're not saying that. He was turned and shot in the back, correct? That's correct. There's nothing in the hand right. shot that shows him would lead you to believe that his hands are up like this surrendering, correct? That's correct. I did not see that in the video. And your theory or Slice your belief to right a reasonable now. degree of medical certainty is that he's in a horizontal position close to my client. The bullet goes in and across and down. That's correct. Okay. So once again, in the position of lunging would put you in a horizontal position, correct? It would. And <laughs> as a manlet, there's some stifling, stippling to the wound in the pelvis, correct? Uh, yes, to the lower abdomen. Above okay. The and that's not trying to, but there, it starts at the belt line and goes up. Correct? That's right. Okay. And as it starts at the belt line and goes up, the reason it's not below the belt line is because he was wearing pants when he was shot, correct? Yes, that's right. Not trying to penis flex Man, here, but right. that <laughs> is also that was totally. gunpowder stippling. That's correct. Okay. So that's basically one foot to four feet. Yes. Oof. Oof. One foot to four feet. 
from the pelvis with the arm out, reaching for the gun. They both reached for the gun. I am I the only one that has had m music from and, Chicago playing in your yes, head every time no, they say that? Need to jump no. on your stream even. I put it on my the stream. I was like, this is on Mr. Huber. I'm, I'm assuming. I'm not going to sing it because I feel like the chat will get annoyed. That <laughs> bandage that was on the wound. Yes. Okay. Now, was there stippling on that wound? There was. Yes. Okay. And that wound was what kind of stippling? Uh, well, gunpowder stippling. So that that wound has the impacts from the gunpowder particles. Okay. A more dense distribution. Did you look at the clothing around the wound? Uh, on Mr. Huber. Y yes. Okay. And the clothing also had gunpowder residue? Um, it, a little more difficult to say on the clothing. I can, uh, Mr. Huber's tank top, which was the item of clothing that came with him, that tank top had, it was a tie dyed black and gray and white appearance. So made that very difficult. So in those situations, usually I, uh, I will defer to, to try to opine if I can't tell for sure. Okay, so there's nothing in that gunshot wound that suggests that he wasn't in close contact with my client's firearm. Uh, that's right. Okay, and did you look at any video regarding that shooting? Uh, yes, it's uh, also included in that okay. video provided. The video shows that my client's lying on his back, correct? Yes. Mr. Huber grabs the firearm, correct? It appears so, yes. Pulls the firearm from one direction towards and into his chest, correct? Uh, it, it, they end up in that position. I don't know if he's pulling or what. I don't know what's going on there. Mr. Huber strikes him with the skateboard. The gun is not in his chest. Fair statement? That fair statement. Okay. <laughs> when he's shot, the skateboard is in his right hand. The gun is now up in his chest. Sorry, Jack, these are conclusions based on... I'm asking if his wound is consistent with this scenario. Wait. Yeah, wrecked. Okay. Allowed. Let's start over. <laughs> yes. Reset. Reset. Okay. See, yes. Mr. Huber. Exactly. You see him hit my client in the head with the skateboard, correct? Yes. So now he just gets to and go over all the same details again. These are, these are conclusions that, that Mr. Huber hit or did anything is you see him case. do it. These are not conclusions that anyone can make but the jury. He, uh, he said, the doctor said he watched the video. Yes, exactly. So I'm assuming that that's his knowledge base. Um, you asked him to watch the video. And you can re, uh, yep. redirect on the subject if you want. I'll start again, sir. Yes, dun, excellent. There is a bullet from Mr. Huber to my client's head with a skateboard, correct? Yes, the skateboard makes contact with Mr. He swings the skateboard with his right hand into my client's back neck range, correct? I'm not sure where it makes impact, but... You see an impact. It, yeah, it makes contact. And he reaches down head with trauma. his left hand, seeming to grab my client's gun, correct? Yes. When he puts his hand on the gun... The barrel is not pointing in his chest, correct? Uh, I, I don't recall, but I don't think so. Okay. And through whatever movement between my client and Mr. Huber, the gun barrel ends up, which would be right about here. It does. Okay. And there's a gunshot, correct? Yes. And that gun is touching his clothes. Uh, it's, it, it's in intermediate range. It's... Closer. What is in close? Define intermediate range for me, please. Well, define again, it. We talked uh, about boom. how intermediate range injuries can be within four feet. And within four it, feet. Obviously, from the video, it's closer than that. But I can't say whether the Excellent. muzzle is in contact with oh, what the hell's close range? clothing. There's none. Through Touching the skin. type of stippling that you have it. on the Huber wound, a stab wound. You know oh, intermediate it's was less between four one feet. and four fair feet. Fair statement? That's a fair statement through independent evidence, which you review as a forensic pathologist slash investigator, the video evidence establishes closer. It does. Nice. Oh, gosh. Nice. Good cross.
He's doing a great job. He even asked a question and worded it with like, and okay, so when the, his hand was on the gun. Just assume. And he's like, yes. So it's for the purposes like of this question. You got to admit that. That the first shot from my client moving back to Mr. Rosenbaum now is the zero shot, number one. The fourth shot is 76 hundredths of a second after that. That is how fast the four shots were fired out of my client's gun. Surprised they didn't object to that because that's not an evidence. Goes yet. from the furthest four feet to touching the gun, correct? Uh, yes. No, it does not. He just answered. Doctor answered yes. Yeah. Boom. Too late. And yeah. Overruled. This is this is this is why this is why when you object, you have to do it very quickly before they respond. Otherwise, it's waived. Is that to a reasonable degree of scientific certainty or medical certainty? I apologize. Uh, medical certainty, as I pointed out, from the autopsy findings alone, um, you you can't put these in order. It's only by reviewing the video and and, and simply looking at the orientation of his body. I'm adding and, another and comparing gentleman to the, that to the findings on the body that you can do that. So uh, to that to be of certainty, it, it appears that he's in that horizontal position. And the, Mr. Carlos asked it, the shot to the pelvis, you think is first? I think that makes the most sense. Okay. The shot that goes in the scalp, second? No, I, I think that the, the, the only orientation that makes sense with the trajectory, traje, uh, excuse me, tra trajectory of the gunshot wound to the back and the right side of the head is when he's in more of a horizontal position. So those two injuries must be the third and the fourth injuries. Uh, but that, that's and the best I can do. The head wound goes back to front and from the top of the head down towards the forehead. That's right. Okay. So if I was charging like a bull and diving, that would be charging like a bull. Uh, it diving. would be <laughs> a baby. Nice. Bull. He had to object to the, to the wording there. Yeah. He should, he he didn't. Oh that was my bad goodness, job, that was phenomenal. Objection. Welcome to the stream, uh, Mr. Ron Coleman. We got a, we've got hey guys. another lawyer in the house. Yeah, someone with zero criminal law trial experience, but I can watch TV. Doctor, the anybody. injuries you uh, <laughs> noted, they'd also be consistent with falling after being struck in the hip? Yes. <clears throat> so if Mr. Rosenbaum was struck in the hip, that just his momentum kept carrying him forward. He was falling. The other three shots could have been as he was falling. That's that's possible too. But it's that consistent with that. It is. What is a muzzle stamp? Well, a muzzle stamp is what we 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 briefly talked about earlier with contact gunshot wounds. And um, if the the energy of the bullet entering the body causes the skin to smack against the muzzle of the gun, it can leave an abrasion, even a patterned abrasion in the shape of the muzzle of the gun uh, on the skin. And so a muzzle stamp is a term that's used for uh, a contact abrasion that's associated with a contact gunshot wound. Um, and the reason why, I, I, when we talked about it, a close range wound to the uh, to the hand. The reason why we you know we didn't talk about that, although uh, it could be in close range like that, is because the skin of the palm is much thicker, and it very seldom, if ever, allows for a muzzle stamp or an abrasion of that sort. Certainly not like you would see for, with a contact wound to the head or to the chest. So, there, so there was no muzzle stamp in this case. No. Yeah, I'd like to uh, I'd like to ask uh, investigator Stu to pull up. That's to try to create gun, a perception of distance that, between the the gun and his hand. Literally, if there was no contact, the muzzle stamp wouldn't wouldn't happen. Right. It's going to be millimeters could, away. Exactly. Millimeters. Speaking of uh, Chicago, right? What are you going to believe? What you see or what I tell you? <laughs> like that's that's the big problem with this case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doctor, yeah. if this is the gun, you can stand up, please. If I'm holding a rifle, let's just say that I, I shoot, I've shot you in the hip. How does it make sense that the 
uh, gunshot to the hand occurs in the trajectory you indicated. I love this TV. It's a great character in this TV drama. Around it? Oh, no. <laughs> Gentlemen, ladies, how goes the battle? Viva. Volume. Yeah, I just turned him down. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's not you, Viva. Hey, Viva. How you guys doing? <laughs> Injuries are to the palmar surface of the index and the middle fingers. The exit is to the side of the index finger. So TV blocked. It's, obviously, it's hard to do this completely, but it's like this. So in the anatomic position, it looks like that. But keeping in mind that your arm and your hand uh, move in a lot of different ways. So, um, so if you were to take the hand and you were to be in a position in which the hand was like this with the palm kind of downward, you could orient this so that you could explain the gunshot wound going down and hitting the pavement and then the fragments hitting the left side of the, of the thigh. Uh, if you could put your hand out again, doctor, like you had. So, but the barrel would have to be behind the injury, correct? Yes. So the bullet would have had to travel outside of the barrel so the barrel would have been had, had to have been in front of or somehow separated from where the wound took place. Uh, well, that's what I said. I, I, I can't tell that this is a close range wound with soot, but there isn't going to be a muzzle stamp because of the skin of the palm. So it's it's within that. Distance. Why, why doesn't he say there wouldn't be a muzzle stamp because of the distance? Or whether it's just in front of it. Yep. The There's a reason for that portion of the wound or inches away that's not something i can tell you Should you just indicated be consistent with swiping something away oh, swiping you're going a go, barrel away going to swipe away left left, left slap it away just slap it away he was doing at the time <laughs> that that happened all i can tell you is that at the time of the discharge that's a bad answer for the, the state weapon, and the traveling of that it, bullet. Yeah, it doesn't make it any better. And, he basically just um, said no. This is the trajectory that it took. Because in every other hand. situation, I, I he said yes to the answer of, the is it consistent? Uh, and this? I certainly, I can't see it on the video. Uh, the video is not good enough for that. Oh, he's giving him space here. I, I didn't see it on the video. Could have happened. He's not going to perjure himself. No, no need for that. That's what weasel no. words are for. Exactly. <laughs> he's, he's a professional witness. Yeah, he's he's obviously he's clearly testified before because he's he's doing a, a good job of of maintaining his uh, his professionalism and his pacing. Although I think maybe he's got a little bit of nerves. He's got some cotton mouth. They, they've established that the back wound was, was going down through the body, right? Yeah, right. Wounds or the, the pelvis or the soot or anything of that nature. You mean well? I mean, if you're if you're holding something in your hand and you're referring to uh, some kind of a something that's going to create an intermediary target or something. Um, yeah, that can, that can affect the appearance of wounds. Um, it, you know, the, the, the injury might look very different in that case. So when attorney Richards was talking to you about the wound to Mr. Rosenbaum's left hand and there's blood everywhere and there's so many places, uh, if he was holding say, uh, the a handle of something, uh, would you expect that the soot in the and the there's been no evidence no whatsoever evidence. that he had Good. anything in his hand? Ooh, wow, he has an objection. <clears throat> Questions must be asked uh, to a reasonable degree of um, uh, it's, a, it's an expert, you can ask some speculation. Uh, autopsy certitude, but there's no reason for the speculation because he wasn't holding anything. I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not really sure I understand. The question. You're not the first. Uh, um, he, he's telling <laughs> me. Uh, you, 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 uh, hesitated before when asked about medical certitude. Love him. Which is a common expression we use in the courts. Uh, and I'm trying to to 
to see what degree of, how would you phrase the degree of certitude with which you would typically respond? Well, I can, I can testify to a reasonable degree of medical certainty when I'm using the autopsy findings and the, the, the meaning of those in reference to the injuries. Um, uh, I'm, I, I'm, I, I, I've seen the video. I, as I have testified, I discussed the video with regards to his, his position when I heard the gunshot wounds discharge. Um, I can't really see what's going on in front of him at those times. So when the questions are going into those specifics, I, I don't think I can answer those uh, from the video that I watched. So I, I think I'm trying to be careful not to over uh, evaluate that video more than uh, more than I used it for, which is to, to determine what position he was in when those gunshot wounds were received. Uh, why don't you rephrase your question? What we're required, what what required here for the state certainly, but frankly for both parties, but is. Uh, degree of certitude um, which the uh, to which the physician can testify the the injuries and everything you testified to on the left hand that's consistent with nothing being in his hand it is yes thank you um i'd like to direct your attention to exhibit 41 if you can tell is this the video that you uh reviewed in terms of both the shooting deaths of Mr. Rosenbaum and Mr. Huber. It is. I ask you to play the video until I ask you to stop. Can you see where on there you, you indicate that he would be positioned with the first shot? Yes, I can I can clearly see the reflection of light on his back and I can see that together. he's upright when the first shot is heard. What kind of doctor is he again? What kind of specialist? He's the, uh, forensic forensic pathologist. pathologist. Yeah. Yeah. Forensic pathologist. I, don't I don't think he was qualified though. Hand. Like formally yeah, qualified. he was. Right. Was he? Yeah, he was. Well, is he testifying yeah. as an expert? When I wasn't here? Or, uh, yeah. But he's not. That placing would, the that. hand in that position would affect the gunpowder stippling to his lower abdomen. Uh, so I don't think the hand is involved in that first shot. So to best of your. So it's consistent that the first shot is to the hip. That's what I think. That's what I think. Yes. And the second shot would be to the hand. Yes. And then the third or fourth Which means shot. He was in a forward movement. Can you order yes. those any more specifically? No. But they would be as he's in a horizontal position, uh, perhaps falling after being struck in the hip. That's right. I'd like to uh, show exhibit 86, please. So it's not going to make Binger look good for saying he was shot in the back. I, I don't know how they think that's going to make it look good. They'll still say it. I mean, te technically it's true, it's technically but it's accurate. just yeah. not accurate. At least it doesn't have the same meaning that we, we normally would apply to getting shot in the back, that kind of a that, phrase. That's their whole case right now. I, I'm, I'm on the fence about a haircut, people, so I have to see. My, my parents say I should get one. By the way, Ron, it's, it is good to formally meet you for the first time. Same here, Viva. I like staring into the this, sky, staring off into space. It's riveting. And this is as formal as it gets. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have a time. I have, I have a time. I draw. Sidebar forever. Pause. Pause. There we go. Doctor, did you see that large amount of smoke that was emitted from the gun? Yes. Now, with that amount of smoke of an AR-15, would that impact? how far the stippling may occur? Would the smoke impact? The, 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 the large expert? amount of smoke. Would the stippling go further out than the four feet? No, I don't think there's, <laughs> there's not a relationship there. Uh, 
Oh, and that, that's not a large amount. Gunpowder particles that are flying through the air and dispersing as they travel. Um, the, the smoke is the smoke and soot. Uh, He's trying to get him outside of four feet. Is the amount of gunpowder matter in the stippling? Does any of this matter? Oh, well, draw? yes. I'm oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say it, it, it does. I mean, you know, there's uh, the number of gunpowder particles that leave the barrel of the gun are not predictable, certainly, but uh, but they will you know, travel in a, in a dense group and then disperse as they get farther away with more and more falling, falling to the side until uh, none have the energy to create stippling to the skin. Now, when you see that large puff of smoke, uh, yeah. you said that would be, that, that is what would potentially leave soot on an individual? No, uh, my my presumption is asshole. that soot, that puff was the the smoke and soot from the end of the gun. Does anyone out there know that, that large amount of soot or would be possible to vapor? Uh, no. Deposit soot further out than just a few inches? I He's don't testifying know if I outside that question. I, again, you know, yeah. test firing the weapon, you might be able to derive more for information, right but certainly <laughs> uh, so me. it's not very aerodynamic. It doesn't travel very far. Now, Attorney Richards did a demonstration of with you where he stood about four feet away and talked about the intermediate range. Now, we're... Um, I'm talking about intermediate range, you're talking about feet from the barrel of the gun, not from the shooter? Correct. Uh, to be specific, the injuries that we're talking about are from the barrel of the gun to the surface that they make impact with. So the surface of the body in this case. So it could be five feet then. Or even six. Yeah, once you're six, the gun, that's, that's taller that's than him. Rosenbaum. Yeah. Once you're touching the gun, you're touching Kyle already. It's that, that's a red herring to say. And you haven't that seen matters. the actual weapon in this case. Is that self defense, yeah. No, I have not. Do you want to look at it? You want to look at the weapon? Guns are cool. You want to look at it? <laughs> 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 it will scare the jury. Bring it out again. They are. They're doing it. <laughs> they're doing it. Of course. Yeah, they're doing it. Could you measure this gun with your eyes, Doctor? I just hope that uh, I just hope that the prosecution doesn't accidentally say foot long and get like really anxious for lunch because it's I'm coming to, up. I'm starting to feel like a robot from Mystery Science oh, Theater here. The Whereas... Yeah, you're crow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. What expertise does this guy have in firearms? Zero. No. Zero. I think what he's going to, he's just he going to testify to the apparent length. He's, he has to have some level of understanding, obviously, so in order for him to be able to do his job. I'd have to be four feet. But yeah, not No, we got a Baldwin moment incoming. So one, to, one to four feet. <laughs> in the trial, in the courtroom? Inside of nice. Four, like I said, nice. that's an outside number. <laughs> Is that approximately where I would be right now? Um, it's about four feet, maybe a little closer. Okay. Uh, it would be my impression that it's a greater distance than four feet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice try, Pudge. Uh, it's a little hard to tell, but you're you're closer. It's probably about four feet there. More, more than one of my arms lengths, anyway. More than one of your arms length. Are your arms you. four feet long? Who are you? <laughs> Kareem Abdul Jabbar here <laughs> for the prosecution. The prosecution. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things is when you're setting up a demonstrative like that, you have to be accurate. Otherwise, if you get called out, you start to look deceptive. You start to lose credibility in front of what? the jury. If, the, if, the it doesn't, has... if it doesn't fit, you must acquit, right? <laughs> exactly. I don't think the DA is, is very concerned oh, about so, appearing credible uh, anymore. Yeah, the soot is within inches. They're well past that. Intermediate gunpowder stippling is within four feet. Uh, approximately, yes. And if the first shot is... Give me that guy. Take out of my way, you I know what to do with this. Can you guys think of any way to keep the jury's interest at this point and remind them why we're doing this? Because I'm imagine that not one of them is following what what what's going on here. And 
why this matters. So if Richards our, pointed the gun at them, I think that would do that. No. <laughs> yeah. They're not even doing that. It's a little further than four feet. Okay, so I'm even a little bit further. But from the furthest he is would be four feet. He could have been as close as here with the first shot, correct? Uh, possibly, but the, the density of the of the uh, gunpowder stippling is it's pretty spread out, so I think it's a little further away. And, I, and I'm using my right hand because I'm going down. You know, these clubs got into court here about 10 years ago, and... Um, oh, got a history lesson. I there understand there are appropriate times to use them, but not everything that... I don't know why I'm using it. I don't know why you're putting a glove on. To be honest with you, you're not going to get the cooties from that. No, I, I agree. All right. It's so, so what does it make? It's a, the end of the gun, touching with my left hand like this. The heavy soot is right here. Later, you're with the right hand, but um, but yeah, I the heavy. See, then I got to go to the other side. Yeah, you have Jury. to turn around. Can you, can you switch with me? So if it's the left hand, we're gonna go like. Give us that money shot. Can you see this, doctor? You actually have to turn your hand over. Over and like this? No, nope. go the opposite direction like this. Like there you go. And it would then come in approximately here. That's the entry point to the hand, yes. Exiting where I'm pointing with my hand. So obviously, if we're having a hard time seeing There's this. No this is being here. displayed right in front of the jury so that they have the best view of this image right now. Uh, I can only say that there's no soot there. Okay. okay. I know these people are here for news purposes, the photographers. But I actually think for purposes of the record, I'd like them to come up and get a closer shot. Oh. Pro probably not the best way of phrasing it, Judge. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Andrew talking about a money shot there. Very inappropriate. <laughs> hey, listen, everybody's got a grip, Joe. I don't understand what they're doing right now. There's a video of proximity. What relevance is any of this? Yeah, for anybody who can hypothesize yes. a guess. Because they said that the the their expert test or their just so the record's clear. The guy yeah. yesterday testified Sashi. that the video showed him ten feet away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was lying. Okay. This is going to be the Johnny Cochran yeah, photo of this. Uh, we're in the front of the barrel. There would be soot here, and I'm pointing now to what would you call this part of the body? I would call it the uh, call it the outside of the pinky finger, so that it's understandable. The outside of the pinky finger, if my hand was in front of the barrel, the, the heaviest soot would be in that location, correct? Uh, you would expect soot in that location. And, no, I'm sorry, but some of the jurors I, I don't think are able to see, so let's. Uh, you got your shot. So, um, and uh, you go ahead. The pinky finger, once again, illustrating the side of my hand. If it was in front of the barrel, as it's now depicted, the heaviest soot would be here. You would expect some soot on that side of the hand. And, there's, and I didn't see. I if the soot don't fit, you must have quit. Copies of your uh, those <laughs> photos. Send copies of those photos to the clerk, please. Send copies of those photos to the clerk. Thank you. Can also, if you could take a picture now? of the jurors, that would be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Please, no. I'm joking. That's a joke. Can, can those photos be published right now by the media? I would think so. He gone. just asked for copies. He didn't ask Not for originals. Her. Did you guys hear about that nephew of George Floyd reportedly trying to dox Yeah, him? they addressed it earlier. I'm approaching yeah. the detective. I'm struck in my hip. Fracturing my hip. We get re re cross on this emphasis fall. on the re re re. <laughs> That's a possibility. Um, can I position my hand correctly with the evidence? It, you, your hand is, you can put your hand over. Oh, no, I'm 
don't know if it's over. Sorry. Well, just just in a position so that the that the the soot is on the Palmer surface. Like this. Palmer surface. So if you go in and you. So the entrance wound is here. No, the entrance wound is on the Palmer surface, the under surface. So if you do it, you know, Superman, and then <laughs> and then turn your hand a little bit like this, you can put it in a position that it. There you go. Yes. Like that. So what you're saying is consistent with being shot here, about to carry forward, and swiping at the dot. That would be consistent with the injuries you found. Those scenarios are, are possible. But well, my hand is positioned correctly to create the injuries that you found. But that's the position that the hand has to be in. And the bullet would have traveled down and potentially kicked up some bullet fragments and concrete to get my leg. That's what I think happened. And then I would have continued down, and then the shot to the head and the mid back would have occurred as, a, as I was falling down. As you're more horizontal to the ground, yes. Thank you. That occurred. Doctor. Wouldn't the aerial footage uh, show the distance? Time. You're, that doesn't cause you to go forward, correct? It, it shouldn't cause you to go forward, backward, or okay. anything. So he already, Mr. Rosenbaum, already had to have forward momentum at a force to go from the zero shot to the second shot in 2.26 hundredths of a second to be in contact or right on top of that person, correct? Yes, he had forward momentum. Thank you. Good. Boom. There you go. Strong ending. Uh, hey, Viva. Yeah. Thank you, Doctor. But again, Mr. Um, yesterday the state um, witness testified for lunch. that they were uh, 10 feet apart based on that it, video. It uh, has just arrived, okay. I think, and uh, we'll take uh, until uh, around 1230. Uh, any 12 questions? Okay. Is it a hot lunch? To, uh, talk about the case. Watch your testimony account. See you later. Uh. Yeah, those those demonstratives. You have to be you have to be really careful about how you set those up because if 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 the judge calls you out that, that you are setting things up in a way that is not exactly accurate in the way that that things have have uh, have been testified to, that looks really bad in front of a jury. Uh, the, the expert yesterday who testified that they were ten feet apart. What type of expert was that, or the state witness? <laughs> I think he's a random cop. Uh, okay, so random, random cop, but he's the detective who reviewed the footage on his iPhone and pinched <laughs> zoom to enhance it. <laughs> because um, there, there are, there are apps for golfing that can determine relatively accurately how far two objects are. From oh yeah. No, I, I know it, it was clearly not 10 feet. I mean, anybody looking at the footage, uh, when I, I was like, uh, maybe three feet, maybe four, you know, something like that. Yeah. Medical examiner says within four feet, there's no way he's 10 feet away. Uh, the, hell, there's a car right there. And, car and it's like, like the door width of the car that they're apart. So it's, um, it's, it's, all, it's all silliness. But I think that's why they're focusing so hard on it is because they have testimony yesterday from the state and they're, uh, they're getting the medical examiner to rebut it. And, and they also reviewed some of that footage earlier. But, well, um, yeah, the really, drone the drone footage really made it clear that it was somewhere between two and five feet, and you know, maximum of five feet, and yeah. probably seemingly much closer at the time that the shot went off. With him moving forward, and everyone keeps forgetting this, it's not like he's statically four feet. On occasion, away. I when oh, wait, things don't, so so help out on the in the in the record. I'll either myself or have one of the parties take a picture. So. We have experts to do it today, and the price was right. <laughs> okay. I love his here. jokes. <laughs> uh, send them to uh, Mrs. Uh, yeah. So to help out a, a guy who who has not been, I'm trying to save America from the occupation, uh, occupational self and health, safety and safety and health administration. Tell, help me out with what the distance means here. If one second. Walk, walk. Yeah. Uh, my understanding from the defense is, is uh, that we, I think there's an agreement that essentially the court will just uh, inform the jury that his testimony should be disregarded, and we're not going to go back into that. Stripping. Stripping. Okay. Right. Fair um, 
So I don't know when we want to address any motions outside the presence of the jury, but I let's go, Brando. Out, okay. out of the record. Any motions? Huh? One. Okay. No, there, there's a. Okay. Once they officially rest, as this happens. Yeah. Go ahead. There's going to be a motion when they are officially arrested. I'll tell you what it is. I'm not trying to hide from the court. They have not put in any evidence regarding a lawful order for a curfew violation. We'll be moving to dismiss that. We'll be re um, nice renewing our objection to the count six, but the court has already ruled just so it's not waived. I think then we're ready to go. Wait, Um, you're not going to motion to dismiss? Got to make the motion, don't you? Yes. How do yes, you not just, make that motion? Seventh count, did you want to address that, that there's no evidence on the... We've we had testimony from the detective that curfew was in place. No. It's not a lawful order. Uh, not a lawful order. Did, detect, yeah. did, did, did he testify as to by whom the order had been issued? Nope. nope. Dismiss it. Uh, I don't know about that one. <laughs> um... <laughs> Whatever. But that, did the defense formally close yet, or can they Just remedy the statement that a detective said that there was a curfew in effect doesn't really satisfy the the burden of proof. I will permit you to reopen the evidence, however. No, no, oh. no I don't want to. Oh, no, it, that's you why know you what? Wait. Hold on, hold I'm, on. I'm pretty per- close. I just said he closed. That's why I brought. No, 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 no. You know what? You know what? You know what? There are some judges. I. When I went to judges training years ago, this was back a long time ago, yeah. right, right after I came on the van. Back in the war I days. I sat down with some judges Vietnam. from Madison and was testifying about this. She didn't know what to do because she had just, she's got the pending burglary case, burglary case. And she says they didn't prove that the uh, uh, city of, I'm going to say Middleton, but maybe it was Madison, one of the two. Didn't Run that down. It was in Dane County, and she didn't know whether to grant the motion to dismiss or not. And I didn't say anything, but I thought to myself, you've got to be kidding me. This is here. We're here to get to the truth of things. And I don't want to mess around with um, with uh, an Technicalities. Presentation of that magnitude or what's the opposite of magnitude? He didn't have the authority in another court to issue that order. Uh, that is another issue. So actually, with the easy course would be to grant your motion. So I won't have to enter the thicket that the other judge did. But um, he doesn't care uh, about the thicket. Uh, Give it. Grant I'll it take it. it. <laughs> I'll take this weighty matter just under advisement. Yeah, I know it. I know it. Um, Taking on the advisement is good, as long as they don't put in more evidence. I'm not going to dismiss it on the ground that it wasn't proof. Whether I grant it on the basis that uh, Judge Russell did is another matter. Um, I'll have to take a look at that. And then. Should have waited. Should have waited. I'd like you to submit. I got too excited by them closing. Proposed instructions, modified version of 2176 with the, because I, 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 Mr. Cross did a nice job on the brief and reported what the instructions committee said. And so I'd like uh, uh, both sides to submit proposed instructions on 2176. Okay. All right. Enjoy your lunch. Where's the motion for summary? Where's the motion for directed verdict or whatever they call it in Wisconsin? Where the hell is that? I don't know. I I think you, you have, you should be making that as a matter of course, even if you think it's a formality, you should make it, but it's insufficiency of evidence at this point. So that's the, that's the actual motion. And they had Richard's uh, I think Richard's made a little mistake there. He jumped the gun. Um, Had he not mentioned what his motion was going to be regarding the order, they probably could have had the curfew charge dismissed because the state would have rested. And then they could have said, uh, Your Honor, they didn't bring it up. They did not actually sufficiently raise that a lawful order was in place. Just a detective said there was a curfew, whatever that even means. That's just like uh, a detective can't issue a curfew. Uh, it's not even a it's not even a patrol officer who enforced the curfew. This is a detective. Um, so missed opportunity there, in my opinion. Yeah, there, no, there is no honor, no honor among lawyers. And he'll say, well, then let me open the evidence. We haven't even gone to lunch. We'll just we'll just uh, remedy that deficiency. Whereas same argument could be made later if they formally closed and then they make right. a motion. Well, they still reopen it to 
not have it dismissed on a technicality. It sounds like the judge wants to dismiss it on the merits. Yes. But maybe not. And, well, that, I mean, and that is that is also a, a, a common tendency for judges is it, it, they don't they really don't like dismissing anything on a technicality. Usually they usually want it to get dismissed on the merits. Also, I mean, how would they at this point make that record? How, how would they make that record? Either you would. Are they going to produce a document? That they're going to get during lunch that will memorialize that that issue was entered in other words chances are there was never an order so rather than say i the you know rather than have the issue of was the evidence closed or what was was was, was the state foreclosed from entering that evidence chances are there is no evidence so it's open what are they going to do they can't they probably don't it never happened I don't know. It seems like there usually is because I, I covered a lot of these things how to collect these documents. They're probably because they were cranking out during Rona. You got to understand these executive orders were flowing like wine. You know, it was just going all over the place. So they had these template executive orders. They just roll out saying curfew here, ban here. This well, is shut down. So all you, you know, got to do is have one. Can if I, I'm can not I mistaken, in... the city of Kenosha order was a city order and it was not made under any Corona authority, but it was in response to the Jacob Blake shooting. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I think that's why they alluded that there's because uh, I don't think any of the Corona curfew orders would have been struck down by mm -hmm. uh, a higher court in Wisconsin. However, after the fact, the Jacob Blake curfew orders may have been because they may have been completely unlawful. There's no state of emergency issued related to Jacob Blake. And let I me be clear to, for everybody, I am completely against those in general for any circumstance, yeah, me, yeah. but yeah. I, I just need to point out the blatant abuse of process in the selective prosecution that Kyle was out after curfew. There are literally thousands of people that we all see video evidence, a whole riot. This whole thing happened. There's thousands of people out there. But Joe, the state decides you, to, to uh, charge right. him individually with this. It is such a blatant abuse of process that it, it's, but they get it, to do it. it's offensive. Um, people in the chat asking about the 2176 is that's possession of a dangerous weapon by a child. So what the second charge, in addition to the breaking curfew, which might be the only things they can actually have a reasonable chance of remotely proving at this point. Yeah. And uh, to be clear, uh, for those who were not here at the beginning, their motion to reconsider on the dismissal of the 2176 charge was denied by the judge. So they're filing yet another motion to dismiss that charge after the prosecution's case. Uh, just for that one, though, it seems, um, based on whatever was in the brief of the uh, the state is what it sounds like. So it sounds like the state uh, or, or they're also objecting to the jury instructions that are on there requesting modified jury instructions, um, probably surrounding the exemption that's baked into the law because the regular jury exemptions as, or instructions, as we've talked about, are are you under 18? Are you in possession of what's called a dangerous weapon under the law? Kyle checks both those boxes for sure. But there's an exemption for long barreled rifles and shotguns that does not seem to be addressed by those instructions. So and the, the state says the state's argument is that this is a jury question, not a matter of law question, which is absolutely preposterous, in my opinion. But if the state wants that jury question, then they're going to get modified jury instructions clarifying, or they're going to ask for modified jury instructions clarifying that exemption. Uh, Nick, Robert and I talked about it last night, but uh, from what he explained, there's multiple opportunities for a motion for directed verdict, and yes. you don't skip any one of them for any reason that I can possibly imagine. Are they going to be foreclosed from what anyone knows here for uh, presenting a motion for directed verdict if they no. haven't raised it before lunch? They can present it. They can present it at the close of evidence under Wisconsin yeah. statute 805.14. So they've got that opportunity. They can also still right. motion for the JNOV even after the verdict. So they've still got options yeah. on the table and yeah. they may and exercise those. Technically, since the state has alleged that they have not closed, they still can make. I mean, they said we're not yeah, making a motion. Right. If we reopened yeah. it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. If, if the state's going to say, well, we, you know. We're, we're still we're still not closed. And they can say, OK, well, when they close, we will motion for this. I mean, it doesn't sound like they're going to. I think I they say, should. They, they skipped it the first time. Why would they do it? This, why would Richards do it the second time if he didn't think to do it the first time? Does, is he not watching the trial and see how well he's, he's winning? He's going to round out the factual record, I guess. Maybe they okay. maybe they that occurred to me is he, they, they may very they may very well believe that they have 
given the the un, the unlikelihood of the judge dismissing after the close of just the prosecution's case, not the lack of merit, but the realistic lack of likelihood that yeah. they have more to gain in terms of of, of spin uh, and and how it plays in the public to let let them put their case on um, and not have a motion denied and have it reported that the judge denied, you know, again, given that reporters don't understand this for their lives, they're going to say, you know, judge sides with prosecutors and denies right. motion to dismiss. Yeah. That's yeah. actually an excellent point, Ron. I hadn't even thought of that. I'm, I'm just thinking, I'm thinking in normal criminal defense, like, yeah, you make the motion as a matter of course. Right. Uh, to and, preserve and maybe your... the, right. Maybe the judge knocks it out of the park, but in the media environment we're in, that changes uh, quite a bit. And speaking yeah. of media environments, we've got over 28,000 people watching live guys. This That's is incredible. a panel. This is a panel of great legal uh, explainers, discussioners, mm. conversationalists, <laughs> and some some people on this panel actually do real lawyer work. And I'm not talking about me, uh, but uh, some people some people do very significant stuff. All of their names are linked down in the description below. Um, you got to check out Joe. You got to check out Legal Mindset. You got to check out Ron Coleman, Viva, Legal Bites, all of them. They all deserve many, many subscriptions. If you're into legal stuff, if you want to learn more about the law, if you want to learn about how law applies in real life, rather than just in a textbook, check out everybody in the description. You just click on their name. It'll take you right to their channel page and you can subscribe. And also while you're here, Ricada Law is also only 5,000 uh, subscribers away from 200K. So if you haven't subscribed Christ. and you're watching this, Consider subscribing because this, this is, is this, this like, is what you get with him. And it doesn't take that much effort to smash a like button. <laughs> Twenty eight thousand people, and there's a lot of people who are coming here from various sources, having now realized that there's actually a live stream of the trial and a live stream lawyers. So a lot of people who may not know any of us got here through the social medias. When I put up the tweet yesterday, Nick, someone said, "Who are these lawyers reacting? Or are they even lawyers? And do they have any expertise?" Which <laughs> indicates a new crowd watching. But yeah, as I say, yeah. we're not all criminal what's, lawyers. What is the answer? We're no, no I just cosplay a lawyer. I'm Canadian. I, I don't pretend to have any expertise in criminal law or American law. I just know I can read and understand the language. Uh, I said you got. I, I covered this on my show lawyers. last last night, Viva. You got called out. Someone's like, "You're Canadian," and I was like, <laughs> "I start every video off with a Montreal litigator turned YouTuber, and I don't pretend to have any expertise. I go and make sense of it for myself and listen to but, smarter people like all of Viva, you." Viva, you're you're assuming that that Americans understand that level of geography. We've <laughs> <laughs> been called Canada um, America's hat, but um, so, uh, one of, that's one accurate. Of, Canada of, is America's hat. <laughs> One of the disclaimers I've put on every, I think every one of these live trial streams um, is, is this. We are not claiming to be better lawyers or better situated to make decisions in any of this case uh, than, than anybody involved. What we're doing is pointing out and translating based on our training and various experiences, uh, different sort of options that someone might have and, and trying to explain the process or the legal rationale behind it. That's all. We're not saying that we're making the right decisions. Our careers are not hinging on uh, the media coverage of what happens to Kyle Rittenhouse. Our client is not on the table here. We're commenting. And it's really easy for us to Monday morning quarterback because we're not yes. the ones with the strategy and the decision. Uh, we're also not getting paid the retainer. So we're just here commenting and trying to explain some of this stuff to you guys uh, so, that, so that you can benefit from our overpriced educations. For the sake of of, of, of of disclosure, this is, I don't know if this qualifies as a humble break. I did represent Kyle for about six weeks or something. Uh, first, uh, in connection with the civil action that was filed against him as sort of just a, uh, a terrorist demonstration by some activists in the Eastern District of Wisconsin, where I happened to be admitted. Long story, but we're not, and I'm not going to tell it. I ended up being rolled uh, when Lynn Wood was uh, at the helm, being rolled into representing Kyle in, in connection with defamation matters. Uh, things began to crack up and I withdrew from that situation. 
So I have, uh, I'm not, I'm not unbiased. And, and speaking of civil suits, by the way, yesterday, Grosskreut, you know, may have sunk his civil suit. I was just thinking about it. It's, an, it's something I mentioned in my video that's going to come out today. But, you know, before this, uh, you know, politics being what it is, it would not be inconceivable if the city and the feds, you know, decide to have a hush hush payment to gross crowds. Say, look, we know what we know what went down, but we're not going to blow your cover. So here's a little money, no evidence, no trial, no nothing. And I don't think they can do that anymore. And I think gross crowds, as a result of his testimony, blew any chance he had at a negotiated settlement, which might have been done oh, yeah. in quiet in the civil case. A hundred percent. Yeah. Agree. Uh, Ron, Ron, did you happen to hear about that? This happened yesterday. Um, Was this on... what he, that, 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 that piece of video that everyone on earth was tweeting yesterday. No, it was, it was actually, I never look at Twitter. It was actually before that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. You, I've, you've never even seen Twitter before. Have you? Uh, I'm still trying to understand. <laughs> no, uh, it was, it was actually before that piece. So um, in his two separate civil actions, uh, they got him on the stand to say that, he and his attorney omitted the fact that he was carrying a firearm. Um, oh, because the prosecutor asked, no, that was the one with, why no, didn't the prosecution look at his phone? Yeah. And, and, and they, and they, they told him not to, right? That, that's a different yeah. point. And then the, the defense on cross says, is this your civil lawsuit against the city? Is this your federal civil lawsuit? Do you, you read and signed this? Yes. He's like, and you don't mention your gun that you were carrying and actually had drawn in this, do you? No. It's like, oh, no. And, he says, and do you think do you think that might affect your the outcome? It's like I don't know how that works. And then yeah. it smirks. <laughs> that is the best well, part. It, yes, but that was also the most say. credible thing he said, uh, probably on the stand. <laughs> yeah, oh, come on. <laughs> yep. he's like, it's he's a, like, really? the truth of it is demonstrated but, from uh, that line of so questioning. Like, why didn't so Ron, the prosecutors oh, go after his phone? They, they they didn't go after his phone because they knew there was damning video evidence on it. Yes presumably you know, that he lied in his civil suit, they might have just given him a pass and say, well, here's a little money and, and let it go. And right. That's become, that's become the custom is to, is to give, is, yeah. to, is, is to, is for leftists to take over state governments. And re and now Biden is trying to play that with, with, uh, with the, the immigrants uh, and just give them, give them taxpayer money under the guise of settling lawsuits uh, to it, show. It, the, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. No, I was saying I represented a lot of small governments and that was happening for decades, even frankly, even under ah. Republicans, those settlements were happening. And, and once again, they'll keep it to a smaller amount, but those settlements do happen. But now there's zero air cover for it, right? Because mm -hmm. the, all the eyeballs are going to be on that. And that's a matter of, matter of public record. And, now, and by the way, just, just so nobody thinks it's only an American thing in Canada, Trudeau and the government uh, settled with Omar Khadr, who was a uh, convicted uh, up to no good. Nick uh, paid him $10 million for unlawful detention and things along, along those lines. So. You never ever call out Trudeau. Hey, Nate. You paint him as a bastion of integrity. I watch your channel forever. Every time you cover Trudeau, you make him seem like, you know, he's the idea of what a politician should be. <laughs> I you have should a Trudeau really cover this called, sort of stuff. I've got a playlist called Trudeau Corruption, and I've been going through <laughs> all of his wonderful uh, stories. It's uh, <laughs> so, I want to welcome Nate. to the stream, Nate the Lawyer. Uh, and um, Ron, I, I have a quick question for you also. As I love someone, quick questions. As How many, who, is there anyone in this panel who has not gotten a call that started with, I have just a quick question, yeah. which usually, which usually yeah. means a, a free question, Look, right? The, the, it's usually some family member or some already, friend. I, I candy gram the retainer check for. No, uh, the, the question is, as someone who has... Um, you know, been on the, on one side of potentially represent or representing Kyle, br albeit briefly in civil matters. If Kyle has gotten a, a is given a full a, acquittal of this case, a lot of people have been asking, does he have reasonable grounds for a defamation suit? Well, I guess, I guess you didn't see my incredibly viral um, t um, thread on that yesterday, actually on Twitter, where, where I opined that I don't think he's, I, I think that he, as a, Textbook law matter, he might, but as a practical matter, it's not going to happen. There, there are two reasons. Uh, first of all, and the reason I, I did that uh, thread was because so many people in the comments that I was following, Jack Posobiec's comments, and Nate, by the way, how you doing? I, I hear about you all the time from, from Joe. He's a, he's a big admirer of, of yours. Um, 
people people are, are there's an obsession with the American public, and I guess this is lawyers' fault, with X should be sued out of existence. X should and that almost nothing is ever sued out of existence. And right. certainly no government or government employee is going to be sued out of existence. What people have to hope for is that some measure of justice is achieved. And in terms of financial justice, that's almost never going to be the case. So no prosecutor, no matter, you know, you, you have to reach a Richard Jewell level of smoking gun badness, which I can't say is at, off the table here, the deeper we go into this. But it's virtually impossible to ever get satisfaction for a wrongful prosecution. Virtually impossible. In terms of defamation, which was what your question was, also virtually impossible because yeah. there, there are two things. One of them is, actually there are three. They're all related. He was charged with a capital felony. So right off the bat, you've got two different kinds of litig of, of uh defenses. One is that we were reporting, there's the, there's, the, there's the litigation privilege. We were reporting on legal areas. Now we're set. We were reporting, did you bring for everyone, Bob? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we were, so we're reporting on legal proceedings. So reporting news that somebody, A. B, it was, it was more or less accurate. Uh, based, in other words, they, they, it was, it, you would never be able to demonstrate um, uh, um, what what you call it? Uh, that bad thing you have to re demonstrate. Actual malice. Actual malice. That yeah. thing, yeah. right? Actual I malice. All I do is write about it you twenty study, hours a day. You should study <laughs> some defamation, Ron. Actual. You, you'd never be able to to prove because I don't believe it's a real thing. Uh, but you'd never be able to prove actual malice because of the to the extent you know by by relying on what a prosecutor is telling you. Forget it. Just check that and then there's number three which is that for right or for wrong he's probably a um a defamation proof plaintiff he's he simply he, so much calumny was directed at him you couldn't have hurt his reputation any worse than was done by everyone else in the world so are there going to be lawyers who might take up that case and try to write it for what it's worth. It may be because there, there, there might be more that we might find out. It maybe it'll come out during the course of this, uh, of, the, of, the, of the defendant's case in the criminal matter. Any number of things might happen, but all, all things being equal, it's a much, and, and a lot, so some people said to me, and, and Bob, you've got to close your, your ears here, but how about Nick Sandman? Isn't Nick, you know, Nick Sandman recovered, but Nick Sandman was not charged with a capital felony. Gigantic difference. So Nick was destroyed by the media. And you might say that, well, he was, you know, he, he didn't even kill anyone, defend, or self defense or not. Uh, There's I, no I'm comparison. Take objection to that. He definitely did. He was, oh my goodness, very, very. That smug face killed everybody. Mur murdered, <laughs> murdered with a smirk. It made murdered you want to punch him. I know it made you want to punch him. <laughs> you know, yes, I, the, oh, go ahead, one, Nate. What's up? The one thing I want I want to ask is that someone like the because the Young Turks they did their video and they cleaned up all their bad stuff. For instance, they said, mm -hmm. you know, he they they literally said, wrote, um, now I forget the kid's name, Rittenhouse chased down Rosenbaum, confronted him, and killed him. Right. That that was their reporting, and that was their reporting for fourteen months. Even though you had the videos, even though you had anything, right before the trial started. They clean that up. They said, oh, guess what? We were wrong for the 14 months. And they also said, we never looked at the video. So the video's been out there for, for 14 months. Never looked at the video, said we were wrong. And they, just, they said they were wrong about all the facts. So all the pertinent facts, they were false. It was false. They, then they cleaned it up. And then, so now, because I, I had thought that there may be a defamation claim there, because obviously if you're reporting false stuff as news, but the prosecution then made that same false statement in their opening statements. So I so at that point, I've been telling people, I think that covers them because the prosecution literally said that same thing in their opening. So it's like, you know, retroactively, though, Nate, but after they said their statement, the prosecution's opening statement said the same thing that, yeah, that Rittenhouse chased Rosenbaum and confronted them. I don't know, though, because because in order for that to work, the Young Turks would have to be would have to, to claim that they were relying 
on the allegations brought by by the by the prosecution in, in their opening statement. But they they made that statement before the prosecution did, so they wouldn't be able to say that. They even made their retraction before the prosecution said it. But <laughs> right. then the prosecution and, and, and said it. <laughs> Nate, you brought it up, the, the, the state lines thing, right? Which, you know, isn't state part of the case thing, at yeah. all, right? Yeah. The question yeah, would be, the if, would not watching the video before making a statement in, in any realm of the universe qualify as actual malice or even uh, neglect? If you don't view the video yourself, but you just re-report what you hear elsewhere. Um, but Robert, no, no. we also talk about this. Is, is calling someone a white supremacist or a Yahtzee even sanctionable for defamation in the United States? It should be, but it's not. No. Yeah, no, I think the people that are at risk, as I was arguing with a GQ reporter earlier in the year, what when I sued for Cassandra Fairbanks in D.C., they said that he, saying a particular gesture is a white supremacist gesture. That is defamation. So even though saying white supremacist, racist, Nazi... Basically, they say that's too ambiguous, not really a factual statement sufficient to that a jury could find as factual. Which is bullshit, report. by the way, which is complete yeah. bullshit. You can't, you can't yeah, it to be not true. But it's okay. Uh, okay, if I say an okay, said, that means. They said misidentifying the, the okay gesture yeah. is a fact. And so there was people like, uh, there are people who have done that all over the place, including some people attended to uh, the Young Turks. Uh, but, you know, people who assume that suing for Kyle would be easy are mistaken. Uh, and, it would be because of the prosecutorial charges, because of the prosecutorial immunity, suing would be very, very difficult for Kyle, uh, even with full acquittals. And uh, first of all, welcome to the show, Robert Barnes. Thank you for joining us. Um, and that's that's similar to uh, what happened in Oberlin, right? They couldn't sue in Oberlin, uh, the, the college and the bakery case, if everybody mm -hmm. remembers, because they called them racist. But the statement was more precise. It was they have a history of racist acts. And so once you allege that there's a history of actions and someone says, well, theoretically, someone could put together a list of said actions and they could be tested. And in Oberlin, no one had a list of actual racist actions that they had taken. So that's that's one of the reasons that they had prevailed. But uh, Robert, how do you how's uh, how's today going for Kyle Rittenhouse? And by the way, I am drinking Rittenhouse Rye. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, I think I only saw bits of uh, bits and pieces. So the uh, uh, I just saw the part where the coroner acknowledged that he went for the gun, that Rosenbaum went for the gun by the evidence, um, and then saw yeah. that I guess they're not going to bring a motion for directed verdict on the top five counts, which. Uh, well, I generally don't do that because usually the judge is hostile to my position and he just roadmaps for the prosecution how to clean up their case. This is obviously a different case. I thought they would uh, uh, seek that out. So a little bit surprising because in Wisconsin, if you win on that, my understanding is it's unappealable for double jeopardy reasons. Yeah. That mm. it's considered once jeopardy attaches, if a court dismisses on the substantive merits at the close of the prosecution's case. Here's the other problem in Wisconsin. If you move to dismiss at the close of the prosecution's case and then you put on evidence, you are no longer you don't get to appeal that you only get to appeal once you put on defense. I think it's a dumb rule, but yeah. Wisconsin interprets the rule to say we can only review the whole record once the defendant testifies. If you choose to put on evidence and you no longer get a chance to uh, appeal the underlying position. Um, so here, you know, they had an argument. I mean, you could make a good argument that they could just rest. They could move to dismiss and then rest. Yeah. Um, you know, they have one good expert on timing, but I mean, they got so much good out of the prosecution's own case. I do believe, <laughs> have reason to believe, they really like their defense. And uh, that's they what you were intend, saying right before you came on, Bob. Yep. Yeah. They intend to put Kyle on the stand, which I think is unnecessary. Are you and serious? Very, very risky. I, really? I, I, at this no, point, that's, that's, that's crazy. I, I, Why? I, it's a terrible it's, thing. Yeah. Not that everyone here, it's armchair, quarterback, whatever it is. Uh, does everyone agree here that that's not a good idea? Is there anyone who thinks that is a good idea? No, no. I, not only do I not think it's a good idea, I think it's insanity. Yes. I think it's insanity. You, you, the yeah. case is virtually won right now. Yes. Oh, yeah, I think only, it's the, the one thing. It's, yeah, you, what Nate was about to say, and I just stole it from him. The <laughs> one thing you could do to ruin this case is have Kyle open some yeah. door, and I think that's a, I think that's a big mistake. Even No matter how good he is, uh, on the stand, there's always the risk that he'll say that one thing. Yep. Uh, I don't yeah, know. And Law of Self-Defense said the same thing last night on uh, on Nick's uh, during the live chat on Nick's show. So everyone I've talked to said he should not testify. 
too much yeah. risk, especially now. All the uh, any fact he could adduce has already been adduced. And I and from the state's own witnesses, I mean, you couldn't have it better. Uh, yeah, so, from from one of the complaining okay. witnesses, Gage Grosskreutz, he testifies that he was scared for Kyle Rittenhouse when Anthony Huber's hitting him with a skateboard because he might get head trauma. And yes. this is an EMT that they've qualified. You got two for one with Gabe because he not yeah. only said clearly Huber, you know, he was scared about what what happened to Kyle, but by Huber trying to hit him over, bash him over the head with a skateboard. He, of course, then famously admitted that uh, Kyle didn't aim, to sh- didn't shoot him until he pointed a gun at him. So yeah, the I mean, only- and then you have Richie McGinnis saying, uh, uh, combined with the coroner's testimony today, that Rosenbaum was said F you and grabbed the gun at the time he of the shooting. The gun. So yeah. what else do you need at this point? Yeah, yeah I, you need to put I Kyle on the really stand for the prosecutor to win. I don't, I, you know, this if that <laughs> happens, it's like, it's like, what, like this would kill me. I, I don't know. Yeah. That, Snatching crazy. defeat from the jaws of victory. I, I just that would be. I just tweeted out a poll. So just so that it can be abundantly clear to anybody who's watching that it would be disastrous by everyone's account. We'll see what the poll results show, but I haven't uh, heard yes. anybody. But, you know, you know, Twitter, Twitter the, democracy. You know, <laughs> the best yeah. thing I like now is watching all the left-wing streamers, Dave Patman, and all of them eat crow. Like each yeah, and every one funny. of them have had. Well, you put out Nate was great. Pac-Man going <laughs> bad. No, actually, really, really so, bad. Really so bad. Let, let, me, let, let me just raise something. Uh, let me let, let me hy- hypothesize here because we're all we're all wondering how this could possibly be. Nate, w- general rule in, in criminal is the same as it is in, in civil, isn't it? That cross examination can't go beyond direct. The scope of direct, yeah. Right. So if you put Kyle on and say to him. Was that your, was that, your, uh, you know, I don't know. What's one of the trivial but important solitary facts? Was that, did, did you intend to kill anyone when you left your house? No, no further questions. It opens up a lot though. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if one. Right Tell me, all right, let me hear you. Yeah, let yeah, me hear your cross. Little, let me hear your cross. Let me hear your cross. On the spot? Well, now, now you're talking about, did you intend and why did you bring a gun? Why did you, you know, why did you bring a gun? Why did you go there? What ha- you start getting into that. Why did you do a lot of different things? And then you know, I, I could, I could. I'm just, just I listen. On the spot, I, I, this shooting like, from the hip. I'm just trying to imagine if, if you know, if they, if they, if they Why narrowed you, it sufficiently, could there be a ration? Hear what you're saying. Believe me, I'm, yeah, I'm trying um, to figure out I'm, why I, you would do that. I'll follow I, up on what Robert I mean, said yesterday. Robert, yesterday on Viva Barnes Law, on Viva Barnes um, Sunday night. Law.locals.com. That's that's an underhanded grift. (laughs) That is branding branding right there, baby. I thought thought that you made a great point, which is that all of us here lean from center toward right. And those who are sitting from center toward right are looking at, was this justifiable self-defense? But those people who are sitting center toward left or far left, they're all been listening and absorbing and believing everything mainstream media has been telling them. And in their mind, it's that this is a kid who does not live in Kenosha, who came to Kenosha, who in their minds brought a gun, but whatever, and to roam the streets and basically intimidate a, a, and, and agitate a BLM rally, which is why I think the only reason you would put Kyle on the stand if you if you put him on the stand to say anything at all is exclusively to talk about his close relationship with Kenosha historically, how he's a lifeguard there, how he's worked there, how his dad comes there and basically sh- tie in that he's not some random person like Gage and Tifa roaming across the country trying to find BLM rallies so that he could express his ideology with a gun. But that he's a kid who basically is like, this is my hometown. I, you know, he's sweeping up and, and cleaning off graffiti. And even though he doesn't technically reside there or even in the state, he resides 15 minutes away. And that this is where his heart and his roots have, have lied. And that's why he was in that town that night. And I think that's the only thing. And that way you're, you're not appealing to us. It's not about self-defense, but it's about to the mindset of the left or any people who have have favorable attitudes of Antifa that they think to themselves, okay, you know what? He's not just a kid trying to agitate and start a whole problem here. He's a kid who is there because he believes in this town. So, I mean, isn't isn't that that justifiable? I think you do that in a press conference after he's acquitted. I don't think you need Mm -hmm. to put him on the stand for that. And I think his lawyers or his PR team has a way to say to the media, to all of those that are upset that you thought this trial was going the other way, it's because you were told wrong facts at the beginning. And that's Mm -hmm. why you're confused now. And I think it gives them 
I don't think you need to put him on the stand to risk that. I think, and I said this yesterday, I think this is a kid that's been through tremendous amounts of trauma and has yes. sat there stone faced mm -hmm. at this trial, holding it together. And I don't think you risk putting him on the stand. He has watched this event that he has been through over and over and over. I don't think you risk putting him up there. I think he has done everything you can ask for him. And the prosecution witnesses have built the case for self-defense, especially this ME who, who really just solidified the final nail. I think so for anyone good. who's like, well, yesterday Gage said this, where's the rest of it? Well, here it is. Here's the rest of it. You've got it. The rest has shown up. There it is. And that was the yes. ME today. You know what? Yeah. Okay, Hi, everybody. Good to see you. Nick. <laughs> Nick, I, so I'm putting your playlist in the back of my thing because in the in the four million view video. But I'm going to say this: What <laughs> world do we live in where the thing is reversed? Because all of us said the ones that could be dismissed were the top charges, but then the judge is like, "Well, you know what? I'm going to dismiss the, the what's the the curfew charge and leave the other charges." It's like, what the hell happened? Yeah, I don't. Did those get and, I missed what? that. Did those uh, get dismissed this morning? Not quite. No, no the it's, curfew might. The curfew's curfew taken might, under yeah. advisement because uh, they're. Their initial, it was a weird exchange where uh, the prosecution indicated they were going to close their case. And so Richard says, well, I'm going to make a motion to dismiss the curfew charge because they never introduced evidence <laughs> that it was actually a lawful order. And they're, like, All right. and they're like, so the only evidence that they testified to is one detective saying there was a curfew, uh, nothing else. <laughs> and so then, uh, well, then the guy uh, Binger's like, well, no, I want to bring in. Well, we'll just bring in evidence then. He's like, your case is closed. He's like, yeah, well, we didn't close it. yet. So now the judge put himself in a pickle and uh, he's going to review the lawfulness of the order because apparently a higher court has already deemed the curfew order that night allegedly unlawful. I, I don't know the, the facts surrounding that, but that's what, what was it? stated in court. It was another uh, another circuit court in Kenosha ruled that. Oh, so, so not oh, a higher no. court, but an equal no. level court. Yep. The prosecution okay. looked like they were clawing on to evidence today in their redirects. It looked like they were just <laughs> grasping on. And at some point, like, like, like I say this in, in a lot of the cases I cover, <laughs> <laughs> when when everyone says you're dead, it's time to lie down, um, which is a Real Housewives quote. But um, I think <laughs> that needed to happen here. The prosecution needed to say there's nothing I, more. I know. For the, for the benefit of anybody who doesn't know criminal law, Nate uh, Barnes, uh, Ron, the extent of any cross examination, let's just hypothetically say they get um, Kyle on to testify only for that which Good Logic was talking about. I mean, what are the limits to the cross examination that it relates directly, tangentially to testimony that has already been adduced? Well, I, I want to interject real no. quick with this. Adduced with this. by that witness on direct, the scope of direct. With yeah. this judge, I don't think they get that objection, though. This judge has been yeah. very permissive on cross. He's been very permissive on redirect and recross. <laughs> but um, there's a Fifth is... Amendment issue when, if it's the defendant himself on the stand. You've got to, sure. you cannot be, uh, you know, the, the, we have a general principle, right, that, the, that this is, a, that a trial is a, a, a you know, a truth-seeking enterprise, Fifth Amendment changes it when the witness is when the, when when the defendant is on the stand, especially if it's a an artificially cabined. And this is something I I just completely made up. But if you if you come up with this, That's how this, lawyering works, you know, <laughs> if you come Don't up, tell everybody. everybody. What does Google say? <laughs> no, for, Emily, no further questions. Emily, have you ever seen them just read police reports and other? prior statements been, into the record like this i look i wish i had seen a trial like this as a new prosecutor because i would have been like why am i trying so hard if this is <laughs> yes. the standard why am i up till 4 a.m and waking up again at 6 a.m and then putting on makeup so that a jury but why am i bothering with all of this um because i'm shocked by the way they're just kind of ramrodding in evidence without foundation and it says a lot to how strong the defense believes their case is when they're just like, we're not even going to bother because the prosecution yeah. has started to look a bit desperate and they don't look like they're in control of the courtroom, which loses your jury. Even if the jury was close on this evidence, I think they've lost trust in the prosecution guiding them. Even when they were doing that demonstration and the judge is like, that doesn't look like four feet. Like you have to be that right. And it. I know Alita was saying it, yep. you have to be right on those things. And as a prosecutor, 
you don't start to make up demonstrations. I've never mm-hmm. seen it go well. Mm-hmm. I've only seen it go badly for the prosecution. So Emily, like, is it uh, possible that there were the, stipulations uh, though? Could you please uh, put the gloves on OJ. You mean those? Oh, are yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look, as, there, a, there were, as a young DA in LA, we did a week of training on the OJ case with the OJ prosecutors. So I had the benefit of getting to ask those questions and have that training as a young prosecutor about the decisions oh. that were being made, the effect of the media, the effect of the media on the DAs, what it was like having their kids escorted to school because they were under constant threat during that trial. We had those conversations. And I think one of the big takeaways is um, you you can't get swept up in the moment when it comes to democracy. You can ask the question, but even then you need to have some idea where it's going. And if the other I, thing is, if your witness York, goes south, everybody, don't do this. Right. Yes. <laughs> no. yes. 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 The, the memes. Was, the memes, the memes are creates. amazing. No, but as, Emily, that was as bad of a moment as Joe Biden, like, clutching himself when he's on stage. And Doing just his to Beavis, the uh, chat. Nobody farted, by the way. It's my chair, if you've heard <laughs> I, 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 Oh, sure. I've heard that excuse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Viva <laughs> Swalwell. It's a lovely story. Just own it. Just Nobody own it. farted, so people. I, I, I think that's so fascinating. In, in California, they do OJ, because in New York, they do the Central Park Five. But well, that, in L.A., the case I, I don't to... think they do it everywhere, but in L.A., I mean, that was the L.A. County District Attorney's yeah. Office did this case. It was nice to be able to have training top to bottom of what the case was. And then as a law clerk, I worked in an evidence locker because they had, like, squared out some desks in an evidence storage. So the evidence boxes for the O.J. case were- I was like, raised in an evidence drop. locker. <laughs> <laughs> so, of where but, we that's dark. But back to, back yeah, to it was very making dark. faces, back, back to making faces and, and the memes and, and whatnot. Um, I got a question from someone asking asking uh, you guys um, whether, uh, whether, whether you guys think that the, that the prosecution or the defense, if anybody has had a chance to see any of these memes or these videos that people have been creating, I don't think so. I think they're all very, very busy with their, with their heads and their papers. No. And <laughs> there's no way, there's seen. no way. They have you have absolutely. You, you might not want to look at it, but they have. I'm sure. they have. I don't think Why do you think the prosecution guy was on it. his phone? I mean, he yeah. was on his phone. We saw him during the <laughs> And that's why he's, he's still there. Yeah. I will tell <laughs> you anything that they've seen, that all of them have seen that clip that, by the way, great job, Viva. Well, their moms the might have tended to Yeah, Viva, you would the clip. Either. That was an awesome job by you, Viva. Copyright no infringer you. from <laughs> Sam. <Santa. laughs> <laughs> so, so so how many views does that clip have now? Three million? Somewhere around three million. Yes, no, it's over. It's like 3.3 the last time I checked. I tweeted the first time where I put the tags in the original tweet. Then I realized I tagged the wrong legal mindset. So then I it. <laughs> but then I realized I didn't put the tags in the tweet. But then it's already been retweeted a bunch. So I was like, okay, well, I'll put it in the next uh, in the response. And I still tagged the wrong. There, go, there goes your retirement, <laughs> huh? But, yeah. but oh, I, 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 I rectified it. Not using I rectified yeah. it after it went viral. It oh, was no, fine. I, Thank I, you. I, well, I, I also think <laughs> mistakes happen for a reason. Maybe it would have been less appealing to retweet if it had a bunch of tags in it. So. The, the, once it once it hit Megan Kelly, it, defiant L's, defiant oh, wow. L's retweeted it. So, oh, uh, it's yeah. great. I have I have people. I it have was, people that I haven't one spoken. On Reddit. Yeah, yeah. I have people yeah. that I haven't heard from since high school that yeah. are are messaging me through Facebook, like, <laughs> "Hey, I was scrolling through Reddit and I saw you on there. You're famous. I know you. This is weird." <laughs> it's, it's I love that the high school that's people great. have come out of the woodwork. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> You always no, know I, that's when I just love that really it is, I need to go to the reunion for a reason. <laughs> it's the literal, it's the literal tide that lifts all ships in this, and it's an it's an amazing thing what has happened, and that thirty thousand people are watching this. Actually, I just tweeted that out to see if we can get to thirty thousand now. Uh, it's, yeah. it's an amazing thing. No, it's 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 crazy uh, how much how much of a, a weird market there is. For this, because you know, what, because none of us is getting paid. For, oh no! For facts, people want to hear what's actually happening. Right. Wait right a minute. Without it being spun. That's what's weird. <laughs> facts I, and jokes. Well, that's it. That's all that's here. Facts, jokes. Facts that's and it. jokes. We're crushing. That's what America we're, wants. We're crushing. <laughs> Give PBS. the people what they want. We're crushing PBS. We're crushing Washington Post, ABC. We're crushing all of them uh, because people look. You've got. We're not all criminal defense attorneys who have all done self-defense claims or whatever. It doesn't really matter. You've got a level of expertise that you cannot find anywhere else uh, in mainstream media. Because even your your like CNN 
legal correspondent is going to be some poor sap fresh out of law school who's uh, all their whole job is to read Supreme Court opinions training. in eight minutes. Right well, all, or my old buddy uh, Dan Abrams, who uh, <laughs> got Russia Gate wrong and get hasn't tried a real case in about twenty years, Dan. So you know, yeah. I mean, a lot of lawyers, you know, the old saying: if you don't, if you don't do, you teach. Well, actually, if you don't do, you go on CNN. I mean, uh, <laughs> these people yeah. are just not good at their job. Barnes, they're not, also not you into don't you do, YouTube. It. Did a, did a <laughs> judge, I'm owning it. I own it. Right yes, now. I own it. Did a judge Look, pull I'm out YouTube? Like, I'm done. done. Now I YouTube. I am done. I am done. And now YouTube. I, well, I'll tell you. I think. I think the number one value added thing to this format is the fact that. You don't block the comments. You don't ignore the chat. In fact, you use the chat to gain aggregate knowledge in real time of the internet. And it's, it's beautiful. You go to like other, other live streams, they've disabled chat. You, the, yep. the people on CNN do not engage with uh, the, the lowly people. Whereas by tapping into that aggregate knowledge, we actually learn and react faster in real time than the people in the courtroom. It's uh, what I also and, love yeah. about the chat is it gives you an understanding of what maybe we're not breaking down enough mm. to help yes, people understand true, yeah. what's happening in, in happening in court because we all have right. a certain amount of legal knowledge. These people are like, wait, wait, what is a directed verdict? And I'm like, ah, we'll talk about this yes. again because you say it enough, but people we understand, but making sure that the chat understands, I think is what makes law more accessible and why people can now understand why the reporting is not necessarily accurate because even the clip you shared, the reporting on it, that was not their main takeaway from the day yesterday. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, also, uh, where else can you go and get trolled by someone named Limp Wrist, as I currently <laughs> am? That's fair. <laughs> That's also fair. No, I'm it, practicing it, to be a legal analyst on CNN right now, so the, that's why I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm working with the camera, tube making sure I know don't when it's on, when it's off. Oh, no, <laughs> no Tubin left. The, Tubin thought he had muted the video, as he said in multiple interviews. He was uh, like, "I thought I had muted the video." Mm -hmm. But not turn off the camera. So that, <laughs> that's that's a great meeting, meeting transition. Though, right How do you go from <laughs> muting video? I'm going to masturbate now. I mean, what, what, oh, because he, he was on, was on a Facebook call. Great video, right? Come on. I covered what? this. YouTube <laughs> totally throttled it, but I covered this. He was on a FaceTime call with somebody who he had an arrangement with for that type of a call that he an was squeezing he was in in the break of his business meeting. Oh. I don't want to see the fur suit and diapers that were on the other end of that call. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> I hope can this I, break is going to end guys, soon. Can I ask you guys to discuss? You, I think this is something that the, the public might want to know about. And this, we have a really good panel here to address this the whole doxing thing that's going on with this nephew of Floyd oh. and the ramifications. Can you on, explain on this what trial. happened? I haven't seen that. Yes. Let me, let me explain what happened today in court. Um, so, yesterday, there was an allegation from the nephew of George Floyd, or, or the day before, the, the night before, uh, that, uh, that jurors were being filmed and that they needed to produce a verdict that was the same as Chauvin. Otherwise, they would be doxxed and harassed, was, uh, was sort of this video's theme. Now, today, uh, or l last night, we saw them go into chambers with the judge at the end of the show. Uh, and then it looked like today, the judge addressed that what they were talking about was that and that there was a video taken of them uh, being picked up by a bus. So the jurors are are probably go park at some off-site location that is away, you know, that is somewhat secret. Uh, someone oh, saw them uh, getting into the bus, and then that was uh, that was addressed. That that footage has apparently been obtained and destroyed. And uh, if it's done again, there will be repercussions. However, the judge is still permitting people to take video in court or not to have their cell phones in court, which is still, that blows my mind. That blows entirely. me away. Yeah. yeah. Do not, yeah. do not, do That's not crazy. fuck with the jury. Like this is Don't how our it. system yeah. works. And but, if, but if you, you ask them nicely, the FBI, they won't use their cell phones. If you screw with a jury in a case like this, you're not going to get good and reasonable citizens to ever serve on a jury. And mm -hmm. what we need is people without an agenda who are from mm -hmm. the locality to still serve on juries yeah, but, and, and we, that and you're going to get a feature. mistrial. That might be right. the feature, not the bug, though. That might be the long that's term. That's true. I, yeah, his, his agenda the rule is of law. to get only leftists on, on the jury. That's his agenda. Mm -hmm. And But that might be the plan, though, to try to get a mistrial here, because everybody knows Kyle was winning this, right? So. Yep. I mean, he's, yeah, he's, he's, if he's not winning, uh, I don't know what winning is. Um. <laughs> but the question is, would, would the prosecution actually choose to bring it again if, it, if there's a mistrial? 
That's another question. Oh God! Do, does Binger want to go imagine. through this again? No. That's, like, no. He's, this trial he's is not is punishment. a loss. That's a loss for. That's a big, big loss. For yeah. Kyle. Yeah. That yeah. Cannot happen. Kyle. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 it gives the cop prosecution a, a chance to 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 fix up all their ridiculous mistakes, to to maybe get you know <laughs> maybe get higher lawyers to, to try the case. Use, <laughs> but they so could use the negative testimony from the state in the in the second trial, assuming that they want to. Yeah, trial, but 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 that is but that's cl again. but it's clunky. It's clunky. You have to, yeah. you have you have to, you know, they're going to say their improved yeah. and polished testimony, and then you impeach them with it. It's not. Yeah. It, it, there's of no course. comparison. Of course. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if I um, casually duck out at some point in the near future, thank you all very much, and I'll try to pop back in a little later today. I, same, Absolutely. same. Thank yeah. you One, for saying it, David, because I, I will have to, too. One last thing uh, they did at, uh, at the break was they dismissed and, uh, the evidence, uh, the testimony of the FBI that agent. That that whole thing is gone. Strike That's it. That's what they're talking about now. And, okay. uh, then, uh, I had indicated before. Could we open the piece on the forfeiture action and just get evidence on it? We already stand on the record as it's currently uh, constituted, Your Honor. All right. Uh, I think the evidence you Does offer that say it's Scarface the in the. Uh, Great. By the city council police officer that uh, there was a perfectly uh, thick, and that's the extent of it? Yes. I don't believe that that's sufficient. It's not. A motion to dismiss. Oh, so the, the the curfew charge is gone. Granted, the motion to dismiss that. Uh, anything else before we start? That so so as I or said, he gave uh, them the chance to come up with something. They had nothing. Nicholas. Now he's now it's dismissed uh, on the merits. Mr. Binger has informed me that, you know, I guess I can let him tell you this, but that he has two juvenile adjudications. Um, the year. Can you tell me the years? That's a huge April moment, 30, like in all honesty, but yeah, in my opinion, but. So I, I don't know how last time. He would have been 16. He is now 23. So they're talking about the defense um, first witness. Can you hand me the, uh, there have been other criminal cases since then. Um, there were three or four pending criminal cases that were resolved with pleas, uh, to, one to disorderly conduct and one to violation of a temporary restraining order. That was from April of 2016. And then in May of this year, both of those uh, adult convictions were expunged. So you can violate a temporary restraining order because it's still a restraining uh, order. Okay, those, <laughs> <laughs> it all depends on who you talk to there. <laughs> is this for purposes? This is for purposes of, of impeaching his character. I think so. Yeah, which you can you can do when some when there has been a criminal conviction. One of the few examples where you can where, where a witness can be impeached based on who he, who he is, unrelated to the actual testimony or to a prior inconsistent statement. And the jury is not in the courtroom yet. To be clear to the audience. But usually juvenile convictions are not, um, you're not allowed to impeach with those. Yeah. Yep. And this and is when juries too. are out and they're like, what took so long at lunch? This is the kind of stuff that takes so long at lunch. But that was a quick lunch. Or, yeah, they court, came back a little early. Trial yeah. day lunches are quick lunches. I think they came back a little early to deal with the motion. To I don't think I ever you. ate lunch when I was in trial. I was always either getting witnesses <laughs> lined up and ready or interviewing people for the trial that was behind uh, it. I, I always took a nap during the break. Real, real quick to the to the chat. You guys are saying, shush, we can barely hear the courtroom. The courtroom's volume isn't actually very loud right now. No one's talking into their microphones. It's uh, that's that's kind of how it's going. Um, but don't they come and, here to hear the commentary, though? It's like, and Nick is going to unleash. In about 30 seconds, Nick is going to unleash. If you want to just hear the audio, go to Law and Crime and don't come <laughs> here for, for the commentary. Yeah. Do it raw. Yeah, <laughs> leave. Leave. Uh, you're, you won't get this on Law and Crime. You'll, you'll hear boring testimony, and you'll you'll want a written house yourself, but you won't get that. Uh, and by that, I mean you'll have to go to trial. I do not mean – no, no, no. He is still alive. He's fine. <laughs> the, but, and bottom line, you'll you'll watch it without commentary, and you won't necessarily understand what is actually going on. You'll you be like, "Why are back. they all sitting there?" 
Whereas we don't understand it, but we are talking. And that's a gigantic difference. Those who don't understand become lawyers. <laughs> there you go. I'm joking. I, I was positive you were going to say judges. I, I, but um, I thought I was going to be very C offended. Students. Those are the C testimony students. starts. I'm going to run to the bathroom. I'll be right back. And this is the part of law that even as a law student, you don't fully grasp is that there will be time to look these things up. There will be time to figure these things out. There will be conversation. It's, it doesn't move as fast as you think. And good lawyers are good researchers. And that matters. Um, I always had tons of notes. And now it's hard when my kid's like, why do I have to memorize all these equations? Why can't I write them on a paper and refer back to them? I'm like, you're right. It's dumb. Does anybody know the blonde woman who's sitting in front of the witness on the right-hand side? Um, is she a clerk or is she a stenographer? I haven't reporter. been able to tell if she's the clerk or the court reporter. I just noticed I that her, her face reporter. during that during that uh, court reporter. Okay, so during the uh, that bombshell moment from yesterday, her everyone's face in that clip was priceless, including. It would make sense that she's the, the court reporter based on where she's sitting because she they're normally sitting closer though. to the witness box. Okay. Did she swear someone in? Yes. Then she's probably the clerk. Yeah. Because the court Yeah, she'd be the clerk then. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, she swore swear somebody in. in. Well, it's I funny when... Sometimes... <laughs> Go I mean, ahead, Robert. A... Did you, want to say you can't swear them in and, and record it at the same time, though. So the question is, have you ever been... Or can you? Delinquent. Not convicted of a crime, right? Right. Okay. All right. Just so. So they're going over what question is allowed. And that's the only thing you answer is that number. Okay, ready to go? I am ready. Okay. These lawyers have worked respectfully yeah, together this whole trial. You have seen them work pretty well together. Chat is saying we just hit 40,000 or Nick did. Uh, which comes Congratulations, Nick. They're all standing for the jury to come in. It, it happens when he's in the bathroom. He was the 30,000th. <laughs> <laughs> he's watching from there. Um, so they all stand for the jury to come in. Everyone in the audience stands for the jury to come in. And that's how you know when the jury's coming in. Everybody stands up. The judge reminds me of an actor, and I have to remember which one. It's not Robert Duval. It's interesting. In the um, in the Theranos case, she stands up and turns around and like eyeballs down the jury every day as they walk into the courtroom. Um, and not all jurors appreciate that. It, it's off-putting. <laughs> Nick, so, when you were gone. Sociopathic behavior, yeah. It's a very well, tricky you know, question to decide yeah. what to do, what, whether to make eye contact, what's a little eye contact, what looks like you're afraid to make eye contact. Yep. What you can say confidently is that whatever you deduce from my contact, you're wrong. What's up, Viva? What, what happened while I was gone? Uh, you, you, you broke the 30,000 live viewer barrier. That's on you, chat. Thank you. That It's your uh, fault, chat. So Y'all should subscribe south. to Nick. Let's get him to 200K. He's going to have to drink that whole new bottle of whiskey. Whoa, Phoenix Ammunition says, thank you guys very, very much for the stream and the commentary. Do you legal eagles? Oh, don't do that, Russ. <laughs> think, the <de> <laughs> think the defense will call a use of force or firearms expert to the stand. Some of the firearm-related terminology and testimony is awful. All right, uh, John um, Black um, is those things, but his testimony and, may be limited uh, things, uh, in those regards. The, uh, we'll see. We'll see. He's letting uh, the jury know what's going to be. Stricken. There was testimony given by um, Brandon Craven, <clears throat> an employee of the FBI, which was incomplete was interrupted and um, because it was interrupted it wasn't heard in full and for that reason uh, I'm going to strike all of that testimony and you must disregard that entirely any question about that How do you okay just, uh, you number know, two you know, he's not guilty anyway so <laughs> he's um, not guilty anyway so why would we even worry about it <laughs> the chat's saying the judge looks like Jeffrey Tambor does that help Viva uh, accuse the defendant of no, he's not Jeffrey Tambor. curfew and that case is no longer part of the action here. So the information remains with six. No, Justice Breyer yeah. is, is Jeffrey Tambor, Most in my case. opinion. But this That's fair. Out of curfew violation is no longer part of the contest here. Okay. Thank you. you uh, instruct them to not consider a curfew um, violation the in their decision. Rest its case. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, state Mr. rested its case. Uh, Sir Officer, the defense. Yes, Your Honor. We Smith. 
Here we go, baby. This is the former car source employee, I believe, who was also there that night. He was the guy in the hat, like with the the cross on it. Mm -hmm. A cross. Yeah, oh, she's got to right. be the clerk because she's swaying them in. Yeah, see. Be the truth, the whole truth, and the if you look at her reactions sometimes, they are classic. Like like yesterday, her eyes popped up when he said when the guy said correct. He was mm, oh my Can god. You please state your name and spell it uh, slowly. Nicholas Smith and I always loved getting wow. the court clerk yes. and court Smith. staff's reaction as my witnesses when I was in TH. trial. It was always very helpful. And Mr. Smith, um, I'm not looking for your specific physical address, but where do you live? Here in Kenosha. And how old are you right now? 23. Have Please you don't talk to yourself um, on ever been adjudicated delinquent? <laughs> yes, I believe. How many times? What does that mean? Can you clarify what that means? It means, it means more than once. You don't know what you've answered it now. One, I believe, as a delinquent. If I told you it was two, it might be. Okay. The defense now, started off shaking our right? Yes. place. Um, yes. And what kind of work do you do? I work at a factory. Right. And um, if I could, uh, have you, are you familiar with uh, a business called Car Source? Yes, I am. And how are you familiar with that business? I worked for them. You worked for them? Yes, I worked for Car Source, and my I've known the owners for ten years. And who are the owners? Um, Sam, Sal, uh, their dad, their mom, and their. Yeah. And do you remember when you worked for them specifically? Twenty eighteen to twenty nineteen. So you worked for them 2018 to 2019, but you've known them for about a decade? Close to a decade, yes. And what I want to do, if I can, is um, uh, direct your attention to uh, August 24th of 2020. Okay? Okay. Uh, so that would be the day prior to the shootings involving Mr. Rittenhouse. Yes. On that day... Uh, did you have any contact at all with anybody from Car Source? Yes, I did. And who was that contact with? Sam. Okay. Can you explain to the jury what that contact Good. was? Uh, the night of the 24th, I received a phone call from Sam stating that his uh, car doctor was on fire and asked if we could do anything. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you. By the way, just What's a car doctor? It was another business in a oh, different town, but uh, thank that, you. that guy that testified here, that they didn't ask anybody um, to uh, defend the business. Now they're, if they're I said to impeaching. You, the car doctor has been thank you. previously pointed out as this car source right here between 59th and 60th. Is that fair? Correct. Okay, and that is uh, what is commonly known to you as the car doctor. Correct. All right. And you had said that Sam had asked you for your assistance. Me and one other. Do you know? Do you have? Do you know who that was? I've got one other person. Yeah. Yes, that was Justin Hamilton. And it, to your knowledge, did Mr. Hamilton had he worked for Car Source in the past? For ten years, yes. And on the twenty fourth, what was? Uh, what were you asked to do? Sam had asked if we could uh, do anything about the fires. Asked both of us. And did you? Yes. Can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what you did? Um, approximately around nine o'clock, I'd received a phone call from Sam stating that car doctor was on fire and asked if we could do anything. And then not too long after I received a phone call from Justin stating that he was going to car doctor to put out the fires. Um, when they arrived, Justin and his son, Austin, who was a previous employer for car source as well. Um, when they arrived, uh, we called Sam and Sam had said that the body shop door, garage door was unlocked and to gain entry so that we could access the power washers and the buckets with inside the car source so that we could put out the fires. So was Sam, uh, he wasn't down there with you. Is that fair? No, he was not. He just had given you guys information as to what he was hoping that you would do. Correct. And the information as to um, 
well, I'll ask it to you this way. Was the car doctor building locked? No, the front door was, but the back door was not the body shop door. And did you gain ex access then to the, to the shop? Correct. He gave us permission. And what did you do upon gaining? Uh, we turned on the lights inside the building so that we could I did locate the uh, power washer and all the buckets. And we proceeded to unlock the front door and put out the fires. And we had numerous amounts of uh, bystanders help us as well that were also helping us put out the fires. Now, on the 24th, was there anybody there um, physically protecting the business? No. And when you got there, what was the condition? I'll ask you, were there fires going on at that point? Or yes. Not? And that was at the, the car doctor location? Correct. So were you able then to combat the fires, deal with those fires? Correct. Okay. Um, at any point on the 24th, did you see um, anybody associated with car source or car doctor down there? Uh, in the morning of the 24th, yes. Morning of the 24th or the 25th? Not at that night. No, I did not. The morning of the 25th, I did. Sorry. So, okay. So 24th, you're putting out the fire. Correct. You then go home at some point? Correct. What time do you think you left the car doctor? 1 a.m. Around 1 a.m. Anywhere between 12 a.m. and 2 a.m. Now, if I can ask you about the 25th. Um, on the 25th, do you have any contact with anybody from CarSource? Yes, I do. And who is that? Sam. And how do you have contact with Sam? He calls me in the morning of the 25th asking if I could provide assistance to watch over the building later in that night. He called me and uh, Justin Hamilton. So at that point, he's not asking you to, if I have this right, he's not asking you to put out fires. He's asking for help protecting the business. Is that what Correct. you said? And how do you respond to that? I say, yes, I can, I can help him. I can watch over the building. And have you at that point kind of formulated a plan on what you're going to do? Yes. And what's that plan? Um, I had called my other friends that who also had previously worked there. And our plan was we were going to set up on the roof and okay, stay there. Chris, my watch there's the objection. And when you say that you had talked to your, or were planning on talking to your friends, who were they? Austin Hamilton, Colin Doherty, and Justin Hamilton. And did you uh, have contact with those people at some point on the 25th? Correct. Uh, can you, I'll ask you this way. What time did you get the call from Sam? Early in the morning, anywhere between 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Not 10 p.m., 10 a.m. And what time do you think you had um, contact with or spoke to uh, the Hamiltons, the people that you were talking about? Uh, around 11 a.m. They had they first called me and then I called Colin. And that this was does mean that Sam, this does mean that Sam was so evasive for obvious 11 reasons. AM, you, is it fair to say that you believe you have like a plan in your head and people to help you with that plan? Correct. Um, after 11 AM, um, is there anything else or is there something that happens uh, that puts you in contact with anybody else that ends up there that night? Yes. And who is that? Dominic Black. And can you tell the jury what that contact with Mr. Black was? I had noticed uh, Dominic Black around the afternoon, 3 or 4 p.m. Uh, he was downtown and I needed somebody to give me a ride to go buy some body armor because I had not planned on being armed that night. Um, and he said he would give me a ride and Kyle was with him. Uh, they came to my house around 4 p.m., 3 or 4 p.m. in that afternoon, picked me up, and I do not remember exactly what transpired after that, but I ended up, uh, Kyle ended up lending me his body armor and dropping me off, and they asked where I was going. Okay, I'm going to slow you down for a second. Correct. Okay. So um, you had said that you saw a Snapchat. Correct. It, I'm not familiar with Snapchat, but so it's like a video or something? Yes, correct. I saw a Snapchat video of Dominic downtown. And Kenosha. 
you then from that Snapchat reached back out to him? Correct. I reached out to Dominic. And you had mentioned that you were looking for or wanted uh, some, some body armor, right? Correct. And that you tell me what you wanted that for. I had not planned on being armed and I wanted a means of protecting myself and body armor was the next best suit for it. Now you had said that you didn't plan on being armed. Um, was there a particular reason that you didn't plan on being armed? We planned on being on the roof and I see no reason that I was going to have need them to be armed. Based on your location? Correct. We were going to be on the roof. I did and not see, foresee myself needing a firearm or having any confrontation with anyone needing to have a firearm. And you had said that, if I have it right, that um, Kyle Rittenhouse then had offered you his body armor. Correct. So did you accept that? Yes, I did. So to your now, and if you know, Mr. Interesting. Did Mr. Rittenhouse say Very anything that would lead you to believe that he had another, like he had two sets of body armor or anything else? No, he did not. So what time, so you go down to car stores, right? Correct. And who do you go there with on the 25th? Myself at first, and then I end up meeting Kyle and Dominic there after I left my house about 15 minutes. I had arrived at car source and they met me there within 10, 15 minutes of being there. And was that a, a, a planned kind of location meeting? Yes. Um, were you aware whether or not Mr. Rittenhouse and or Mr. Black had spoken to anybody from Car Source earlier that morning? I was not aware. So you, if I have this right, you're there about four o'clock. I arrived there. I would say five o'clock. We went to go get uh, the body armor around four o'clock. So you and which car source do you arrive at? Uh, 59th Street location, car doctor. And you said shortly thereafter, uh, Mr. Rittenhouse and Mr. Black arrive? Correct. And what do you do? What happens then? I meet with the owner of uh, car source, Sam, and tell him what's going to be going on. Okay. So. <laughs> At about five ish on yeah. the 25th, you have contact with the person you know to be Sam. Correct. And he, that is at the 59th Street Card Doctor location. Correct. And when you get there and you see Sam, what does he do? Uh, gives me a hug and tells me, thank you for coming. He didn't tell you at any point to get off that property? No, he did not. He didn't tell you that you were trespassing or anything like that? No, he did not. Well, it was alienating. Was there any conversation <laughs> that you had with Sam uh, relating to any any type of payment? Or were you doing this for free? Or how was this going to happen? When I had arrived at the location, uh, he said he would throw throw me some money to split between the guys that were helping us. Oh. Did you ever do that? No, he did not. That's, that's new information. So you... You hug Sam, you, you talk to him for a little bit. Does he you cuddle Sam? What does he do, <laughs> if anything, in terms of kind of helping you guys with buildings and things like that? Getting into buildings, anything like that? He uh, gives me a set of keys to the uh, you know, street location. Liability is going up. So that's the, the car, car doctor location? Car doctor, yes, correct. Yep. Yep. Sam is Sleazy car people, people, that's a first. So you can go in? Correct. <laughs> well, he had actually, um, we talked briefly and then he said he was actually heading home uh, and then his brother, Sal, uh, would give us a ride over to the 63rd Street location because he was locking up and that his brother, Sal, would give me the keys. Yeah, and did you end up meeting up with his brother, Sal? Correct. His brother was there. Rip. And did his brother, Sal, then give you the keys? Correct. Yeah. <laughs> you had testified. <laughs> Sal. I mean, his name is Sal. Is. Come on. Sal. Sal. To be on the yeah, roof. I guess they didn't use tires right. to climb onto the roof. How were you planning on getting up there? A ladder. And where was, if you know, a well, how did you know that you, there was a ladder there? Uh, I had previously worked there and knew there were ladders, and Sam had also showed me where the ladders were at the um, car doctor. And when you say Sam showed you where the ladders were, do you mean on the 25th? Yes, correct. 
So you then make contact with Sal. Correct. And are there other people there to help uh, you protect the car doctor? Not at the moment. Uh, when we had arrived at 63rd Street location, we'd sit around for about 10 minutes, and that's when uh, another group of individuals in their cars had pulled up and asked if we needed any assistance that night. And what did you say? I said if they want to, we'd appreciate it. Okay. Uh, did you know who they were before they got there? No, I did not. Do you know the names of any of those people today? I know one of the names. And who is that? Ryan Belch. And to be fair, um, at the 59th Street car source, Dominic Black is armed. Is that right? Correct. And Mr. Rittenhouse is armed as well? Correct. Mr. Bulch? Correct. Okay. So how long are you at the car source, car doctor, before Sal leaves? We were not at car doctor when these people arrived. We were, he'd given us a ride from car doctor to the 63rd street location. And that's where we met these people. And then, Sa okay, hold on. Sal gave who a ride? Me, Dominic and Kyle. Oh. We were waiting for uh, Justin, yep. Colin and Austin to get there. And Sal, do you remember the car he gave you? I don't not, do you remember the make of car he gave you a ride in? It was either a Mercedes or a BMW. And oh, went from fancy in German. down to 59. No, 59 to 63. Now, there has been, uh, this jury has seen a photograph. Correct. Where was that photograph taken? 63rd. Okay. Sal and Sam are hoping for an acquittal more than anything on earth right now. So that it's justified. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. They're uh, applying for their Antiguan citizenship right now. <laughs> the, acquittal, the acquittal, though, just means beyond a reasonable doubt. That doesn't mean they'll get past the science yes, of evidence. So. No, Which it's one true. Of those people is you? I'm the one wearing the red cross on the helmet, the white helmet. Okay. So you're fourth from the right? Correct. Okay. And there's been testimony that the guy on the far left is Sal. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. Um, <laughs> Sal is done. Yep. After that, comparing this witness's testimony now, to the previous, you, the performance is night and I day. I want you to leave here. I don't want you here. You're causing problems. Anything? Does he say anything that no. would indicate he doesn't want your presence? No. He was very grateful for our presence. <laughs> so what happens? Let's see how this plays out on cross now. now. Insurance we'll company's you, already you calling. Me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who the hell is Sal? <laughs> yes. Um, actually, shortly before, shortly after Sam had left, uh, another group of Latino Americans had a Arrive in the parking lot with a uh, melee weapon. Latino American. Latin X. Watch that location. Let's get it right. <laughs> and after that, we had made our, uh, we walked down to 59th Street location to meet up with Austin, Justin, and Colin. And when you get to the 59th Street location, uh, who's with you? Um, Ryan Belsch, two of his friends, it was either two or three of his friends, uh, Colin, Dominic, Kyle, Justin, and Austin. And are there, for lack of a better term, kind of uh, locations that people are going to kind of be at for the night? Correct. And what is your what is your location going to be? The roof. And if only if you know, do you know what Kyle's location is going to be? Did not state where he was going to be. I'll ask it to you this way: Was he on the roof with you? No. Um. At some point, when you're on the roof, do the protesters, rioters, whatever, do they move? Are they starting to move south down Sheridan Road? That is correct. And about what time is that? They would previously done it before I went on the roof as well. Okay. Um, around, I would say, 830. And at that point, are you on the roof? I am not on the roof at that point, no. Once they once they start moving south on Sheridan, do you take a position on the roof? After they dissipate within ten minutes, I do take position on the roof. Yes. And while you're on the roof, um, does anything happen to you? Uh, yes, our group we get uh, chemical bombed from the protesters. 
And when you say chemical bombed, can you just explain kind of what you believe that means? Um, I believe it was an ammonia and bleach bomb that they, they made inside of a plastic bottle and threw it up on the roof. Now, to be fair, you didn't see who did that, right? No, I did not see who did that. And anything else that was happening to you while you were on the roof other than the ammonium? Bricks. They were throwing bricks at us. And again, to be fair, you're not sure who that was. No, I am not. You um, might not have known that night, but there was a gentleman there by the name of uh, Joseph Rosenbaum. Correct. That night, did you see him? No, I did not. I was not paying attention. So there was uh, no contact between you and Mr. Rosenbaum? No, there was not. Did you see um, Mr. Mr. Rittenhouse that evening? Yes, I did. And can you describe uh, what, if anything, you noticed that he was doing? Uh, he was standing in the parking lot. Okay. There's been testimony about him repeatedly yelling medic, medic, medic throughout the evening. Did you ever see him do anything uh, as it relates to being a medic? Um, I do not know. I was not paying attention. Okay. Do you have any medical training? Some. Okay. Um, is that in part the reason for the Correct. cross on the hat? And can you just briefly tell us a little bit about your medical training? Uh, my brother, who was an infantryman in the Marine Corps, has taught me CLS, Combat Lifesaving, which is... Yes, my, um, my brother, who was in the infantry, was in the infantry in the Marine Corps, had taught me uh, CLS, Combat Lifesaving, and taught me briefly on what to do with gunshot wounds, uh, lacerations, and things like that. Was there any... At any point that evening, sir, did you um, become armed? Yes, I did. And when was that? When the first crowd had uh, pushed toward us, when the police had pushed the first crowd down Sheridan Road, uh, Ryan Belch handed me off his pistol and said, just in case. And did you feel at that point that it was necessary or not? Yes and no. Okay. I'll um, explain it. Yes, because there was a massive amount of people. I would say anywhere between 150 to 250 people. No, because I didn't see any need to have any I non-lethal. Uh, was your location a factor in that at all? Yes, it was. I was on the ground at that point. Okay. Um, did you then move back up to the roof? I had not moved up to the roof yet. That was when I had moved up to the roof. Uh, when the crowd had engaged us, not engaged us, uh, pushed towards us. We, uh, the people that were going to be on the roof had at that time figured this is a good time to go on the roof because the crowd had dissipated and pushed themselves back towards the courthouse. And that's when we went on the roof. And do you, um, when you're on the roof, uh, there's been videos shown. Uh, do you see uh, Kyle Rittenhouse at any point after you go back up on the roof? On the roof? Um, a couple times throughout the night, I see him walking around. Okay, so you see him, if this is fair, has he left your location and is he moving from location to location? Correct. At some point that evening then, do you hear what you believe to be gunshots? That is correct. Right, and when you hear those, where are you? I am on the roof. And so to be fair, you don't see what had happened. Is that right? No, I do not. And there has been testimony regarding two instances, one involving Mr. Rosenbaum, the other involving Mr. Huber uh, and Mr. Grosskreutz. Do you see either one of those happenings? No, I do not. Is there a time? Well, let me ask you this. When, when you hear the shooting, do you get off the roof? I get off the roof uh, because Dominic had received a phone call at the time I had not known we received a phone call from, and he had stated that we have to leave. It is getting uh, hectic. And the prior events that just occurred, gunshots, um, we all concluded that that was safe bet, that it was getting crazy. So we'd all, everybody that was on the roof had now got off the roof. So when you get off the roof, do you see Kyle Rittenhouse? Yes, I do. And where do you see him? Inside the shop, sitting down. And how does he look to you? Um, 
sweating, pale. Does he say anything? Uh, he repeats, uh, I just shot someone over and over. And I believe at some point he did say he had to shoot someone. Um, what happens then? I tell him to walk outside and turn himself in. That was a safe bet for him. And I told him to walk outside and he had said, I had to, I had to shoot someone. And at that point I'd left the location because I was in fear that the protesters were going to come to that location. Excellent. Okay, one moment. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good detail to the bad fact that he says I shot him and may not have had to, but now he knows he's in more danger. And the fear of the protest and how, yeah. Yeah, how potentially dangerous they are. Yeah. By the way, this is an exception to hearsay on their excited audiences. Yes. yes. Uh, a present sense impression. Yeah, present sense impression. Present impression. Yeah. Did they just finish I mean, with him? They just finished with him? Yeah. yeah. That's all they needed out of him. Uh, undo yeah, undo the testimony yeah. of Sal and Sam. Get on the record that Kyle Mr. was- Mr. Smith, uh, you have ready. actually two- Juvenile adjudications for hmm, right to his uh, character violations huh? of the law, correct? I believe let's so. Yes. Yeah. Let's see how bad these. On April thirtieth, two thousand. Yeah, you can't. No, no. Yeah, you can't go specific instances. You can't go into the details. The answer was I might. He didn't ask. Me. Well, look at him trying to get a yes, technicality. With it. I don't think we conducted the usual discussion prior. And you're stuck uh, with the yes. answer. And. Um, I explicitly said two, and I don't know what happened, but the, the matter is covered. Yeah, you, yeah. You, can't, you, can't, you can ask about it, but you can't go into the details. It's a trial within a yeah. trial. All right, people, I'm going to check out. I'll see you all this afternoon. See Later, you, Viva. Viva. See you, Viva. Ciao, David. He, would, he should know that, though. He should know that. He so, does know it. He, he knew yeah. it. Yes. He knew it. You indicated <laughs> that you met up with the defendant and Dominic Black and borrowed the defendant's body armor. Is that right? That is correct. Can you describe that for us, please? What the is body that? armor? Yes. Uh, it's a plate carrier. It's a vest. Um, yeah, a vest. So it's not like a suit vest. No, it is not. It's like an armor vest that you would see somebody in the military wearing. What is it made of? Um, I cannot. I do not know, but it does have uh, body armor inside it. I'm uh, not soft a armor panel expert. Do you know what it is designed to bullets. What kind of um, three A, so three fifty seven. Anything up that to three fifty seven. A three fifty seven is a caliber that's typically seen in handguns, correct? That is correct. This is not the type of body armor that would stop a rifle, correct? That is correct. He doesn't know that. You're familiar with the AR fifteens that the defendant and Dominic Black had, correct? That is correct. Have you ever shot or used one of those in the past yes i have those typically fire 223 or 556 five, caliber is that right that is correct and that's the type of caliber that would go through your your vest that is correct where physically in the world did you go with the defendant to pick up that body armor on Tuesday, August Bermuda. 25th. We got a nice hotel. I do not recall where I went. I know it. I pretty sure we left to go to my bank to pull out money. Um, I do not remember what transpires afterwards, but Kyle does end up giving me his body armor because we never went and got mine. I do not remember why or what transpired to why I did not. We did not go and get it, but Kyle does end up giving me his body armor. If I understood your testimony correctly, Dominic Black and the defendant came to pick you up that day. Is that right? That is correct. And I'm not going to ask you your address, but you live relatively within walking distance of this area, correct? That is correct. And they didn't light docks pick you up to drive yeah. you this area. They drove you someplace west or south of here, correct? I do not remember. When they came to pick you up, whose vehicle were they driving? Dominic's. Was the plate carrier body armor already in the vehicle? Yes, it was. From the defendant? That is correct, the defendant's body armor. And you said that you chose not to have a gun that night because you felt 
the body armor would be sufficient protection. Is that fair to say? That is correct. What were you worried about? Um, the way at the previous nights of what I'd seen, I was worried somebody was going to shoot me or anything. You know, I just wanted a means of protection. I'll be right back. What had you seen on the previous night that made you feel that while you were protecting a business here in Kenosha, someone was going to shoot you? A lot Thank of you being here for that question. Rifles and pistols. Mm. That can erase bad throughout answer. the nights. Did you very bad answer. <laughs> of anyone who actually shot anyone on those prior nights. No, I did not. But it's fair to say that when you came downtown on Tuesday, August 25th, you were concerned about the potential of violence, correct? That is correct. You Good affirmative were answer. really concerned that that violence would come from the people on the street, the protesters, demonstrators, whatever word you want to call it. Is that fair to say? Brick throwers. You felt that they not only posed a danger to the physical property you were at, but you personally for guarding that property. Is that, that fair is to correct. say? When is the last time before August 25th, 2020, that you worked for Sal or Sam or any member of their family? 2019. I want to make sure we're very precise about the properties that we're talking about. Um, you've got a map there behind you, and I'm going to represent to you, Mr. Smith, that there is a location uh, that is marked car source that is on the northeast corner of 59th Street and Sheridan Road. Do you see that labeled car source? Yes, I do. Would you agree with me that that location is properly called car source? The dealership or the mechanic shop? The one that's on the northeast corner. I have a laser pointer if that would help. Yes, it would. I'm talking about this location here. Yes, that is a uh, label car source. And is that the proper name of it? Yes, sir. There is another location that is on the southwest corner of that intersection. Do you see where I'm pointing? Yes, I do. It is labeled on that map car source. Is that accurate? Yes, and no, they use two different names. What is the other name they use? Car doctor. When we're talking, if it's helpful, if it's okay with you, can we refer to that as car doctor? Yes. Okay. And to be clear, Sometimes. that is the location, car doctor, where you spent almost the entire evening uh, on the, and mostly on the roof, fair to say? Correct. There is a third location at the corner of 63rd and Sheridan that is also marked car source on that map. Is that accurate to call that car source? Yes. Okay. Is it correct to say that your plan personally that night was to guard the car doctor location. That is correct. Had you, you mentioned you had last worked for these folks about a year before this, fair to say? Correct. Had you ever worked at that car doctor location? Correct. Were you familiar with the things that had been inside the building when you last worked there? Yes. When you were there on Tuesday night, August 25th, did it appear that some of the property inside had already been moved out of there? Some of it, yes, but so not all of it. A lot of the mechanics, tools, and diagnostic equipment, things like that? Mm, not a lot of it. There were still uh, actual mechanic benches still in there, the actual rolling benches. So those were still in there. I don't know if they were possessed any tools inside them, but there were, from my knowledge, tools still inside the building. And I tell me if I'm wrong, but when that location was being used to do mechanic work or detailing or whatever would be done, there would typically be cars that needed to be worked on that were parked in the lot. Is that right? Correct. On the night of August 25th, those cars had already been moved out of there. Fair to say? Some of them. And the 63rd Street location, the one farther south, that also normally would be a lot that would be full of cars to be sold. Fair to say? That is correct. And when you were there on Tuesday night, August 25th, those cars had all been moved out. Not right? all of them, no. 
you indicated that on the night of August 24th, you were helping to put out fires. Is that right? That is correct. Was that at the car doctor location? Yes, it was. Where were the fires? In the parking lot right next to it. Were they cars that were on fire? Yes, they were. Not the building itself? No. And you said that on that particular night, none of the owners of the company were physically there helping to put out the fires. Is that right? Yes, it is. So they were relying on you and, and other folks to do their work for them. Correct. Is there a direction that I'm missing? I have no idea. I don't know, but keep in mind. Similarly, the next day when you spoke. It's to easier to do Al cross. Sal or both of them. to do direct. Direct examination. The plan was you were going to guard. The hardest the thing to do. At the property. Mm -hmm. And those owners weren't going to so be. So he sounds more right? together. Correct. He does. They were going to pay you a couple hundred dollars. And that's to some right. extent. And you never got any of that money. No, I did Rehabilitating not. him. Hmm. <laughs> okay. For what this witness has high credibility, though. <laughs> I mean, he's coming across as being very credible. And, and yes. Yeah, he's being and very cooperative yeah. and respectful. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Meanwhile, Binger is still swarming. You indicated that your personal plan at the car doctor location was to spend the time up on the roof. Is that right? That is right. And you didn't feel you needed a gun up on the roof. Is that right? That is correct. I did not. How were you going to protect the building from the roof? I had multiple other friends there with uh, rifles. So they were the ones? Correct. Who were going to be protecting it with their rifles? Correct. I was providing overwatch. What does that mean? I was watching the building. Over. I was watching the building from the roof, making sure that nobody went inside or damaged property on the building. The cars were burnt, so we didn't care about the cars. So whatever cars were left on that lot were a lost cause. All of them. You were worried about the structure. Correct. That entire night, there was no damage to that That's structure. That's correct. No fire, correct? Correct. No stolen machinery or equipment, correct? Correct. You said that you didn't see any reason why you would need to confront anyone with a gun that night. Is that correct? That is correct. Is that because you didn't feel that using a gun to protect a building was appropriate? Hmm. Yes and no. Um, it was appropriate in the needs when the situation would arise, but at the moment throughout the nights that I had previously seen was not required. That's potentially what sort of situation for would arise with regard to that car doctor building where you would feel it would, would have been appropriate to use a gun. A jump to the action. He, he didn't testify it was appropriate. Yeah. It's in, in his judgment, of course it's what he would consider appropriate for him might be a, a different judgment than another person. Excellent. Except he didn't have, he didn't, but he didn't bring a gun. Was there ever a time on the night of August 25th, where you saw a situation with regard to the car doctor building that you felt it was necessary to use a gun? No. I don't think that's a good question. Where was the car? Was the car source, right? Or was he at the car doctor? Well, they were at car source. Binger is doing a good job of literally painting fiery, but mostly peaceful, that it wasn't that mm. bad. I'm, I mean, it sounds funny, but he really is trying to paint. You were shown a photograph that was taken video, though. Uh, On redirect, were you evening. chased were you by a raving lunatic that night? That yeah, that's exactly where I would be going with it. Did anyone try and take a gun that's from anyone around six, you that uh, night? Number 30. So, Mr. Smith, you are the individual wearing the white hat with the red cross on it. Is that right? That is correct. What does that hat mean? Oh, sorry. Um, also interesting to point out that he didn't feel like he needed a gun because he's surrounded by people with guns. I would probably hit that on redirect. Yeah. As well, you didn't feel yep. like you needed a gun, right? Well, you, I guess you can't lead him. 
But uh, okay, so you have did you feel you needed a gun? You testified earlier that you didn't First grow up with a gun. Was that your way of letting everyone know that you were there to treat people that had a medical situation? Yes. Did you ever treat anyone? No, I did not. So he was on the I don't room. why wear a hat telling people that you're there to help when you're up on the roof and can't? Provide an aid for my guys up on the roof. So <laughs> your intent was to let the three or four other people that were going to join you on the roof know that if they needed help, you were there for them. Correct. Did you have medical supplies with you? Yes, I did. What kind of medical supplies did you have? Uh, I had what's called an IFAC, an individual first aid kit, which has chest uh, seals, clotting powder, um, tourniquet, and uh, that's about it. A couple other medical supplies, gauze. Did you ever have to use any of that? Uh, no, I did not. Oh, so killer there, question. Despite the chemical bomb, the bricks, and whatever else was going on at the car doctor location, no one in your group got injured. No. Is that fair to say? It is fair to say, yes. The implication is you indicated no one got that injured. once you got up on the roof, you really weren't aware of where the defendant went the rest of the evening. Is that fair to say? That is fair to say, yes. You were asked earlier about Joseph Rosenbaum. And I just want to be clear. As you sit here today, a year after all this happened, you know who Joseph Rosenbaum is. I do know, yes. At the time, that night, had you ever heard that name before? No, I did not. And looking back, do you remember encountering him at all that night? Not at all, no. I'm going to ask you the same questions about Anthony Huber. You know who he is as you sit here today. I do know, yes. On that particular evening, did you have any idea who he was? Nope. Did you ever see him as far as you remember? No, I did not. Same thing with Gage Grosskreutz. You know who he is today? Yes, I do today. On that evening, had any idea who he was? No. Nope. Ever remember seeing it? No. Nope. So these rocks or chemical bombs or bricks or whatever was being thrown at you on the roof, you are not roof. here telling us Joseph Roof was doing that. Roof. Uh, right. Welcome I to Wisconsin, could Ron. not see who was throwing them. Wisconsin. Your Honor, he's up on the roof. She's had in the park, in the car park. The police said we don't need a water. Let the mother burn. You, and maybe I misheard you. I thought I heard you say at one point that. Oh, that manipulative bullshit. Maybe I misheard you. Correct. What do you mean by that? Pepper spray and a pepper gun. What is a pepper gun? It pepper shoots spray pepper spray out of it. On the roof? I just want to make sure I understand. You listed oh. pepper spray and pepper gun. Are those two different things? Um, I believe at the time that I had what they, uh, it had pepper balls in it. I don't think it was actually like pepper gel. It was a pepper ball gun. And that's something that you or two carried that evening because you could use that to defend yourself if there was any. Correct. Deter, not defend. Deter somebody. If, if the situation arised, I could deter whoever was coming at me. Deter. Deter. Deter, deter, deter. like scare them off or. Correct. Ward them away. Correct. No, it was a no, that was a gentle way for him to time. correct him. That, that was fair. Well done. You indicated that after you heard the shootings, the defendant came back. You described what he looked like, and you said he had said he just shot someone and that he had to. Correct? Correct. Did he ever say who he shot? No, he did not. Did he ever say how many people he shot? I do not remember. Did he ever say anything about the, the condition, like, whether those people were armed. Uh, he did not say anything about them being armed. Did he ever say that they threatened him? I do not remember. Did he ever say he feared for his life? I do this not remember. A, he always does it three. Did he ever say anything about any weapons that he saw on any of the people that he shot? No, I do not remember. Well, he was and he running didn't tell you how many people he shot after no. shooting someone. I was a little confused by the end by of your testimony because on one, he stopped on one and have statement coffee you with said you? you told him to go outside and turn himself in, correct? Correct. But in another statement, you said you left because you were fearful the protesters were coming to that location. I left after I told them that. So help me understand, if the protesters are coming, you assume these protesters were coming to harm you or the defendant or members of your group, right? Correct. So putting the defendant outside was going to put him in danger, right? Yes, it would have, yes. If the uh, protesters were coming, yes. Did you know whether they were coming? I did not know whether they were coming or not. 
from the roof, you could see the line of police cars along 60th and Sheridan, correct? Correct. So you knew the police were there? Correct. In fact, by that time of the evening, the police had pushed all the protesters south of 60th, right? Correct. There was there were no more protesters around that car doctor location, correct? Correct. As far as you could tell, there was no more danger to that building, fair? Correct. Why were you still there? Um, to just watch over the building the rest of the night. I mean, the prior nights, uh, a lot of the stuff had died down, or so we had thought. Uh, there was fires around 8 o'clock prior nights, and then later in the night, around 2 a.m., on the first night is when uh, car source got lit on fire at 2 a.m. So you were planning and staying all night? Correct. Up on the roof? Correct. But after the defendant comes back, you leave? Correct. Why? I was in fear that the uh, protesters or the crowd would retaliate or any means. And I, at that point, had deemed that building a lost cause. Mm. If you didn't know how many people the defendant had shot and you didn't know who they were, why did you assume it was the protesters that were going to be upset with the defendant at that moment? Which was <laughs> what? <laughs> what else? <laughs> You it wasn't huh? told someone else in your group, Joanne Fiedler, Am I stupid? that the police were <laughs> in the building, didn't you? I do not remember. Uh, um, never mind. I mean, the police coming to the building isn't really relevant if the protesters are also coming and are already So you never came back to that location and told Ms. Fiedler that the police were coming to the building. Is that correct? I do not remember. I mean, it's been over a year, so I do not remember. Obviously, if you think the defendant should have turned himself into the police at that moment and the police were coming to that building. Objection calls for you speculation. You would have wanted him to stay there, correct? Correct. I have nothing further. What that wasn't a good answer for Binger, actually. No, it's just like but, but he just why undermined his police are coming. He, he's uh, ended limp repeatedly. <laughs> Mr. Binger had asked. That's a launch. He shot his That's what she said. and ended limp. <laughs> Joe, are we going to have to discuss this? Fire. <laughs> I don't understand. Yes. I'm just saying. At any point uh, on the 25th, were you, know ever, <laughs> were you your father at the car doctor? Were you ever attacked? I appreciate you, Ron. Fire. He's not. He just asked anybody if he was ever attacked. Threatened Very to innocent kill you comment. at that location? I do not recall, no. Did anybody threaten to kill you to your face? Meaning no. they walked up to you and said, I'm he said no. No. Did anybody chase after you that evening? No. Ah, nice. I nothing like, else. I know what he's doing. Nothing, nothing else. else. How? That's what happened with Kyle. Anybody threatened to kill them. you? Anybody <laughs> chase after you? No, no. Exactly. Get out of here. That's right. You called it. You called it. <laughs> you didn't know that. Yeah, good cut. Good call. And this is why people need to watch here, down. not PBS, because we tell you what's going to happen in five minutes. <laughs> uh, you get a preview. It's not on stream called in Kenosha Kojak. But you know what though? That witness didn't help their case at all. It really like it, it didn't move the needle for me. He, he, right? He that went after Sal. Sal and yeah. Sam. He 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 <laughs> yeah. undermined the credibility of Sal and Sam. I think that was the main thing. No, we yeah. did have access Great. to the building. They did ask us to be there. They Good. gave us the keys. Oh, they drove us to the location. Kyle was with me, even though I've never met him before. So he must have had contact with Sal. I think that was the whole point of that testimony. They, and then they took the, the picture with him. Extra. They were appreciative of everyone being it there. Get, it gives justification for Kyle's presence there. Yeah, yeah. but it's still, it just doesn't move the needle. Like we already got the win. It's just like don't, that, that could have hurt us more than it helped us. Uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Right, here we go. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mim. Oh, hello. Uh, will you uh, please state your name and spell it for the record? Joanne Fiedler, J O capital A N N Fiedler, F I E D L E R. And Ms. Fiedler, I don't need to know your specific location of address, but can you give us uh, the city that you live in? West Bend. And um, how old are you, Mim? How old am I? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You bastard. <laughs> I got to add to that. Um, <laughs> you wrote? There's probably like, like a million people on this. Where you work? Just, you tell 21. Me work in manufacturing. 21. Um, you were Since 1947. Right. 
interviewed by the FBI as it relates to uh, the incident on August 25th, 2020. Is that right? Correct. Now, if I could ask you, uh, in the summer prior to August 25th of 2020, um, there's been conversations and testimony about civil unrest throughout the country. Was that something that you were paying attention to? Yes. And can you tell the uh, jury what you were thinking about it? What, if anything, you did about it? Things like that. Well, I understood um, when BLM was one of the march. We were all with them and everything, but then they started destroying their own communities. And I didn't nice. believe in that. That really struck me hard. <laughs> and then uh, the 71 year testimony disorder that got beat down, that bothered me a lot. Veterans bothered me a lot, and the elderly bothered me a lot. And, and children, of course, too, but that just didn't sit right with me. And, and you keep hearing everybody always saying, somebody's got to stand up. Somebody's got to stand Whoa. up. So How is she thing? letting this get <laughs> in? Your Thank God. Fingers asleep. <laughs> that was nice. Can you repeat that? Sure. Was there anything that you had actually done? Uh, any groups that you started? Anything oh, you participated yeah. Yeah, in? Yeah, we to to grandma. Um, <laughs> and what you were observing. And yes. Actually, we started a, a patriot group. That's uh, United Citizens for Patriotism. We wanted to show support for the country, um, support for the police, because you know, they were asking to be defunded. Um, support for all the emergency workers that were going out there into these riots, uh, cleaning up, firemen. So just everybody that serves their country, our community services, and just show support for them. And we just stood out with our flags to let everybody know that you know, we were thinking of them, we were there for them. We tried to do food drives. Uh, we tried to get the fire department involved. Uh, we got the police involved, but everything was limited or they were, weren't able to bring out their trucks to do community things because of COVID. And um, prior to August 25th of 2020, uh, did you know who Kyle Rittenhouse was? No. Uh, had you ever had, to your knowledge, any contact with him whatsoever? No, none. And um, so this, this group that you had talked about that you had stood out and kind of waved flags. Um, were there other people uh, relative or uh, as it relates to this case that were part of that group? Yes, yes. There was uh, Dustin and Danton. Okay. So me and Danton more or less started it with an, another guy in the, in the area. And then just more people came up to see what was going on and just talking to them and what we, you know, what we were standing there for. Uh, we met Dustin that way. Does the name Ryan Bulch mean anything to you? Yeah, he had, he had walked up one day when we were standing, um, I think three weeks or end of July, beginning of August, walked up in his military uniform and started talking to the guys. I didn't really have communication with him at that time, but he was talking to the guys and made friends with them. So if I could then kind of direct your attention to uh, 25th, 24th, 25th of August, um, was there a time then that you had uh, made a decision uh, that you were going to come to Kenosha? Yes. And when was that, if you know, when was that decision made? Um, just after seeing all the, the violence and the fires going on, um, I just got a phone call and said, hey, we're going to go down and help protect businesses. Do you want to come along? And what date was that, if you remember? I think it was the 25th, correct? I'm not. You tell me. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. It's we'll the 24th or the 25th. Okay. And based on that call that you got, um, was there some kind of plan put in place or some discussion about what you were going to do? Not that I'm aware of. I just know we were driving down. Okay. And who were you driving with? I was driving with Danton Merritt's. And were there, so it was just the two of you? Just the two of us to start, yes. Okay, so you said just to start, were there other people that that are relevant to this case that were part of that? Yes, we met up um, at a park and ride and met um, Dustin and Ryan. And that's Ryan Bulch? Yes. And if you, if you know at about what time do you think that you 
met up with that department, right? Uh, five-ish. No. Okay, so five-ish on the 25th? Yes. And did you know of any specific location you were going or plan that was in place on what you were going to do when you got there? I didn't really have the specifics. No, I didn't know of any plan. So to be fair, you drive down with Danton, Mertz. Yes. Where do you go uh, in Kenosha? Do you remember? Yeah, we came down um, Sheridan and we wound up at the car, car source on 63rd. And was that just you and Danton or was it, was Ryan Bulch and Dustin also there? With Ryan Bulch and Dustin, they were, they are, they were in front of us. We were following them. So and they pulled in there. Sorry. And to your knowledge, um, was car store going to car source just kind of happenstance, meaning was it a plan that was in place? You know, to me, it was just a happenstance. And when you, about what time do you think you got there? Uh, it had to be at least seven ish. If I estimate the time, how long it takes to get here. And when you got there, um, who was there? Um, Nick was there. He had the no, hold on. Nick is Nick Smith. Yes. Did you know Nick Smith before you got there? No. Okay. So you met Nick Smith that day. Yes. Okay. So Nick Smith is there. Yes. Not a conspiracy, okay. not some kind of okay. um, militia. Him, we got out. Yeah. Uh, he came up and you've never met any of these people. They just showed up. What he, what Nick introduced us to by was invite. the owner of car source. Okay. And do you recall that person's name? I didn't. He gave me like the full Indian name. I couldn't. I no. Guru Vayarban Venkateswaran Subramanya. Spell it like you say it. And demonetize. Your hand did he look at you? That happened as soon as this live live stream started. That's because I was here. That's because I was here. YouTube demonetizes any time my face shows up. I heard it's because they heard that that we weren't getting a cut. We came up to that. <laughs> YouTube doesn't like that. He had told us that he had over a hundred cars that were burned that night. So, so I'm sorry. When you said he was crying, there's various, there's crying, happy crying, sad crying. Do you recall? No, it was sad crying. He was, well, I, I, I don't know if it was sad or happy. I, I know he was happy to see us, but I know he's sad about his hundred cars, you know, the situation. So, um, exhibit 30, which is this picture, I just want to make sure there's, you're the, if I'm right, you're the person third from the left. Yes. Is that right? You have the, the oh, white hat on. Yes. Grandma's in the picture even. Wow. Oh, man. man. Uh, is the person. I was wondering what they brought grandma. her up for. Frontline <laughs> mama. Would say was crying. America's and, grandma. Yes. That's the man that Nick introduced as the owner. And after you were introduced uh, to the owner, what happened after that? Did he stay? Did he leave? If you know. He just disappeared. I didn't see where he went. He just disappeared. We parked our cars and just met back there then. Now, is this the location that you met Kyle Rittenhouse at? Yes. And I think you had said um, you had met him before but was he there when you got there no so he showed up after you were already there yeah i believe we actually took two pictures before kyle showed up and if you recall um of those people who did he show up with if, if you remember uh dominic which i think is on the right of kyle the guy that's on the far far right yep your far right, right. yes and don't, don't say far right, man. Was there a <laughs> far, far right? Did you say he's on your alt right? So after you take this picture, <laughs> is there kind of a plan in place on what you all are going to do? Uh, just from what I remember, um, Nick wanted to split us up. He mentioned there was three businesses and he wanted to split us all up and one group go here, one group go there. Did the person on the far left, the owner of the car source, did he ever tell you to leave? Did he ever, did he ever say that to you? No, not at all. 
Did he ever tell you that you were trespassing and he didn't, he didn't want you there? <laughs> no, not at all. She laughed. So you leave and where do you go? She's welcome everywhere in Kenosha. To the 59th in Sheridan business. It was kind of kitty corner where he had all the cars burnt down the night before. Okay, and who, if you recall, went with you? Um, that was Nick and me and Dustin and Danton and Ryan. I think there was another kid in there, which I don't recognize, and then Kyle and Dominic. Now, if you know, was there a, was there a. The if you know stuff is not good. He keeps saying doing, he's doing it he too much. That the owner said, or somebody said there were. He's trying to avoid a foundation objection, but it's not necessary. After all three, were you just assigned to one? Do you know how that kind of played Yeah, out? Binger's as asleep. Far just as asked. I recall, it was just to protect the one on the 63rd in Sheridan, and the other one was on the. Binger's the updating his resume on the <laughs> <laughs> Yes. He's like, you know, just um, Binger cosplay. It's like, is monster.com. So when you get to the 59th in Sheridan, are you. Are you armed? Yes. Okay. And what what do you what kind of what are you armed with? This is brilliant. Putting grandma up with her gun. So it's okay. not a bunch well, of marauding pistol, young is that pistol teens. On your person? It's a regular Americans. I don't know if it was. Yes. Oh, man, I hope I she doesn't second, describe the pistol or the chat will lose their have. minds. They're no, already talking about uh, based grand. And when you go to the 59th Street, <laughs> it's, it's also good that she started by saying right we all supported BLM, but that doesn't mean we support like, you, the, the destruction and rioting and looting. Route, so this way she doesn't seem like she's alt right, but that's just just normal. And can you tell us who else is on the ground with you? Um, Kyle, Dustin. Ryan. Yeah, four of us were on the ground. So how close three of the widest names in America you is Mr. Rittenhouse <laughs> at the 59th Street address? Tell him Ty. I maybe <laughs> five, him, actually. to my left. So at that location, he's standing near you for at least a portion of the night? Yes. And when you see him at that location and he's with you. Um, what is he, what is he doing? He being a spirit counselor. To begin with or? Well, you're, you guys are just there on the on 59th uh, as the night is progressing. Right? Yeah. Is he doing anything? Is he staying there? Is he leaving the property? What is he doing? No, he was staying there. We were all staying there. Okay. Um, there's been conversations about, and I'll ask you if you look at that picture, there's a, that little orange box in front of him. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Was there any time during that evening that you saw him doing anything other than simply standing there? Oh, yes. Okay. Can you tell us what you saw? Yeah, I'm sorry. He, um, there was other people that did walk by before, like the bigger crowd of the protesters came through and he was offering medic services. We had a girl walk up that, I don't know if she broke her ankle or twisted her ankle, that he actually helped bandage her up so she could walk out because her boyfriend had to kind of carry her. And when he did that, when he was doing that, um, did he ever ask you for any assistance in terms of, as it relates to his firearm? Yes. And what did he ask you to do? He just asked me to hold on to his gun and I did. So he would take it off, if I'm hearing you right, he would take it off and then while he was working on- What would you give for a picture, picture of her with the yes. AR? <laughs> and- Is this you? She's comfortable with it. Yeah. Oh yeah. That evening, do you remember seeing the man in the front? Yes. Okay, which I'm talking about the man with the red shirt. Correct. Okay. Did you know who he was that night? No. He's no. a pedophile, right? No. <laughs> Do you remember him from that night? Very distinctly. Okay. Oh. You tell oh. the people on the jury why you remember him. I remember seeing him with his red shirt, and the thing that caught me was the green earring. And this was when BLM had just come down in front of us, and there was some other gentlemen that were talking with Ryan. They were talking. Things were calm. And then I saw him and um, it was kind of a back and forth because I had some of the female protesters that were standing. Look at the way she's addressing the jury. Me. 
This looks so natural. They wanted they yes. were comparing that to gross plates yesterday. Right? And I just wasn't taking a side. I was just there Good to pick up there. the business. So I would look and survey and go to them. And I would look and survey. And I would see Rosenbaum um, standing there. And I saw the plastic bags in his back pocket. I didn't know what it was. Um, and then, can I can I go on? Well, uh, please, <laughs> Grambo. Please nice keep talking, <laughs> Grambo. <laughs> nice. Uh, yes. Notice of or would remember. Yeah, that's the part I was kind of getting to. Is okay. um, I know you guys call him Mr. Yellow Pants, and that's kind of what we called him. <laughs> Mr. Yellow Pants. The car. And everybody pants. started screaming, "Get off the car!" And Black Lives Matter was screaming, and he was shouting, and Rosenbaum started shouting back at us, but he's going to pardon the judge for saying this and everybody else. He's going to kill us motherfuckers, motherfucking niggers, and kill our heads off. Wow. Oh, oh, hard R. Oh. 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 And, um, hard R. Pardon me, judge. What was every, what was your people, dear. response to that, if any, when you said that? None. We just, you kind of are frozen at the verbiage and the threats coming out of them. I mean, the whole night was quite shocking, but we didn't really do anything. We just kind of stood there. You, you have to ignore that. Was there anything um, else wow. that you saw? I was, him, that was a very big NLM uh, supporter. That you remember. Not BLM, yeah, um, NLM to him. Pants was <laughs> screaming. I saw that. I was going back to the uh, ladies that were taunting me and going back and, and looking at him. And as I looked at him, I saw his arm go off and like something, like he lobbed something. And then within seconds, my eyes started watering. My nose started watering. I started coughing. Um, I, I didn't know what a chemical bomb was. I didn't know else, and I just heard guys screaming, chemical bomb, chemical bomb. And I just pulled my mask up. Did you see him specifically throw something? Yes. Do you remember what it, I'll ask you this way. Do you remember what he, I'm not asking that you say he threw a bomb. I'm asking if you know what was in his hand that he threw. Yeah, he went back and threw like that. Do you remember what he threw? Meaning, did he throw a, what was it? I don't recall. Okay. That evening, did you, while he was in your purview, your sight, did you see uh, Mr. Rittenhouse threaten anyone? Oh, no. Did you see him oh, no. point his gun at anyone? <laughs> oh, no. No, he's a good boy. He's a nice boy. boy. Was don't there anyone that. there that- Don't um, say that, Grandma. <laughs> Had Could have scripted that, I man. guess oh, strike that. Um, <laughs> after you see Rosenbaum and he does what you say he does, uh, do you see Kyle stay there or does he leave that location? Uh, it was later in the evening after uh, the police finally moved him down. We were all standing outside because we kind of thought it was over. And then you just heard the ruckus going on down by the gas station. I think it's the ultimate. And then we heard gunshots. And that's when Kyle and uh, Ryan and Dustin and Lurk, I think his nickname was Lurk or Work. Okay. Um, they, then they left. So did you see, well, I'll ask it to you this way. So you heard are you, are you telling me that you heard gunshots and then Kyle left? Yes. And if you recall, how close in time was that to about 1150, if you know? Oh, to I, the, I'll ask it to you this way. How close was it in time you know now that Kyle ended up uh, being chased by Mr. Rosenbaum and shooting? Oh, that was way before. Way before. Yes. Okay. So okay, I kind of just got to say that. That was beautiful. Night, was there a time that you were aware that Kyle tried to get back to you? Oh, yes. And couldn't? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. 
It's been a Why while. Why isn't Binger um, objecting to leading? So we did see here. it because I, I wow. was he did it himself. The wall Hot calling the, the kettle, yeah. When you came it was up still. So I was saying up front, and I was watching because the well, he's also, Richards doesn't know he also how might to reject. He, he also might be the corner. waiting so for he cross. He did come back. He had his hands in the air, and he even said, I'm working over at that business over there. I could hear him telling the police that. And they told him, no, turn around. You can't go through. You have to get back. And we were even yelling, let him through. Let him through. Did you see him then turn around Police's and go back? Police's fault Kyle were there. Yeah, I thought he was going to go back to the ultimate there. gas station. It looked like he was going over there. So, And is that is that the last time before the shooting that you saw him? Yeah. Now, from your location... You don't see what happened with Mr. Rosenbaum, Mr. Just let me finish with Mr. Rosenbaum, Mr. Huber, and Mr. Grosskreutz, right? Yes, correct. Do you see Kyle after that? Yes, I do. When? Um, I think after everything had happened, um, he had come back up. I heard from the guys on the roof. They're like, "Open the door, it's Kyle." So I opened up because we had to keep the front door locked. Um, I opened up the door and he kind of came running in and kind of fell into me and there was a chair right there. So he sat down there. I saw him, I saw him after everything had happened. How did he look to you? Uh, totally in shock. Can you give me some physical uh, descriptors that would make? Yes, I'm sorry. Kind um, of you he was pale, uh, sh uh, shaking, uh, kind of stuttering, stammering his words. He was sweating. Do you recall him saying anything? Yes, he he had come in and he did. He looked at me. He said he said right out that he had shot someone, and he kind of sat down in the chair and he was looking for his brother. He's asking for his brother Dominic, and he sat down. I remember him pulling his hair back, and he pulling it back really hard. And just his comment was, "My God, my life might be over," and just we're just like, "Okay, calm down." Did it, after he said his life might be over, did anybody ask him anything about the circumstances about what had happened? Yeah, uh, Dustin had come in at that time and Dustin had commented. Dust, Dustin was kind right. of. I'm going to check. Yeah, yeah, don't, fair enough. Don't, I don't want to know what Dustin said. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Did I'll ask it to you this way then. Did Kyle <laughs> respond to anything that was said? Yes. What was that? That was that he had to. Um, that's a hearsay objection. Yes, he's not an average after party he right said now. that. No, no, it's, it's not for the truth oh, of the matter. Did you he, say he well, didn't? She's not testifying whether he had to or not. No, um, correct. He wanted correct. his Thank brother you. Dominic, and I know Dominic was on the roof. Um, I took his gun, uh, like I said, he was just shaking, so I took his gun, I ran out back, uh, I set his gun on one of the trucks out back. And then I went up the ladder and I called the guys and I yelled, Dominic, get down here. So he Gave came him a down. Massage. I made him some And when soup, I came back in, knit him a sweater. <laughs> you had, my last question or two is you had said that you had used, uh, you had climbed up a ladder to get up on the roof. Yeah. You just said that. Okay. Um, where did you, do you know where those ladders came from? Um, no, I know we went in the business yeah, when we first got there and they were all in the back. So it's like a building, and then there's like a back parking lot that's fenced in. Okay. And in that back, fen uh, back fenced in areas where they have the sheds and all that, Nick went in there and pulled everything out. And that's how the guys have got up on the roof in the back. During the evening, um, throughout the evening, uh, was, was there a period of time that other than doing medic work or medical work uh, that you saw Kyle doing anything else to kind of assist in the community? Um, yeah, actually, me and Kyle ran, excuse me, <laughs> we ran, I think it's north, is it this, this way up Sheridan? I don't, can't see it. So, okay. Sorry, my direction is a little off right now. 
She comes off very endearing, I think. Oh, there yeah. Is. And Bigger's yeah. got to be careful not to hard cross her. That would be. I was going to say, yeah. would you, would yeah. you do her? Oh, yeah. Towards just... St. James Church. Well, I hope he sends right. Kraus so across. That would be great. We ran up here because there was, um, they were starting yeah, a man, fire on the. You need to get on a diet. Plant the plywood doors. They had covered up all the doors and they actually started, or whatever they. What do you call it? Fluid, whatever you want to start a fire. They threw it all over that door and we're trying to start the front door of the church on fire. So me and Kyle had actually run up to that area to try to put the fire out. But somebody, people that were running along with the protesters had gone up there and, and put the fire extinguisher out and then we just walked back. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Burn the church down. Oh. So, Ms. Fiedler, what's about with the church? Neither you nor the defendant actually put out any fire at the church. No, not at the church, no. Someone that was with the protesters did that. I believe they're with the protesters. Oh, you see, protesters are good. You spoke to the FBI on August 31st, 2020. Is that right? I'm not sure about the date, but yes, I spoke with the FBI. About six days after this all happened? Yeah, probably, yes. And you told them that you contacted the defendant's mother the, the morning after all this happened and told her to be strong. Is that right? Probably, yes. That's you also said that after this mistake. incident, you Everybody's been doing had it. been in contact with the defendant's attorney. Is that right? Uh, no, I, don't, I read that, and, and I don't leaves. know what he meant by that, because I wasn't. I've never spoke to him. So you've read your statement to the FBI? Yes. That was a statement uh, that was a summary of what you said. To, off, to Special Agent Tim Walther on August 31st, 2020. Is that right? Yes. And in that uh, summary, it says that, in addition, Fiedler has been in contact with Rittenhouse's attorney, John Pierce, regarding the incident and has provided information she deems helpful to Rittenhouse's legal defense. The, uh, actually, the only thing I ever sent was any kind of video that I had. That is it, which I didn't have much. I'm not a video person. So as far as verbal communication, no. Did you provide video to the defendant's attorney? I might have. I don't know if it was mine personally. I really don't remember because I don't even have it anymore. But shortly after this incident, whether it was your video or someone else, you gave something to the defendant's attorney to help him. Fair enough? I don't would yes, I guess, yes. And you don't have that video anymore? No. You didn't provide it to the FBI? Uh, that's not true. I gave them everything I had. Ooh. You gave Ooh. them that video? I gave, yes, I gave them everything I had. I showed them my phone. I showed them anything I had. You, you gave them Whoa. text messages? I gave them everything I had. So when you say that I gave something to the defense attorney, I don't think that that was my video. I think it was probably a video I seen or something I passed along because I didn't take any video. So it's fair to say that whatever you gave to the defense, you were trying to help the defendant, correct? It, yes, I was trying to help the case, not just the defense. And you have watched a lot of the videos that have been put out on the internet of this evening, correct? That is not true. Have you watched any of them? Yeah, I've watched some of them, yes. The reason I ask is because you reference this, these words that Joseph Rosenbaum allegedly said to you and the members of your group. That's not on any video anywhere, is it? No. <laughs> so you are so from West Bend. what does that have to do with her watching West. videos? You don't live here in Kenosha? Nope. You don't work here in Kenosha? Nope. You've never worked at CarSource? Nope. Never bought a car at Car Source. Nope. Probably had never even heard of Car Source before all this. No, I haven't. You came down here that night with no plan of where you were going to be, what businesses you were going to protect, or anything along those lines. Fair? 
I personally had no plan, correct? And you were coming way, down with West a group Bend of is other about people 10 minutes from West Bend area, correct? Yeah. Yes. You knew there was a curfew in place that night? Actually, I Objection. Did. You knew that they were closing off the on-ramps, off the interstate, <laughs> so yes. people couldn't come in from out of town to our community like you, correct? Yes. In fact, that's why you came down a little earlier to try and beat that. that was... No, that is not true. This is prejudicial. This you brought a community stuff. A three eighty pistol. Yep. Yes. He's definitely you were trying going to, to use that to paint her as an her. outsider and my invading yes. the community. Yeah, I mean the problem How is you live in Kenosha. West Bend is right up the road. Property. Yeah. I mean, Sometimes the presence time. speaks louder than a lot of things. <laughs> the presence of what? <laughs> The presence of having the gun and being there at the business. Were you openly carrying the gun? Yes, I was. So you didn't have it in a holster or in a waistband? Have, yeah, I'm sorry. It was on my side in a holster. But you figured... She knows a lot. ...saw that, they'd be scared off. Somewhat. Like I said, it's a presence. It's knowing that somebody's on the... On the um, in the area, on the ground, standing there. The Armed society is a kind polite of a deterrent. society. Yeah. keep them away from the business and you'd agree with me that the ar-15s that the rest of the group had was an even bigger deterrent correct a gun is a gun Object. and well a gun's not that. just a gun you how many guns have you, are you familiar Objection with asking. uh quite a few we grew up with them including uh -oh. rifles rifles shotguns yes ar-15s yes so you understand there's a big difference between an AR-15 and sure. a pistol, correct? Between an AR-15 and a pistol, yes. There's a size difference. One's much bigger, correct? And scarier. They can all do the same Very thing. Very scary. They can scope, all do the scope, same scope. Thing. Got her. Got her. She, she got him. Change what can happen or what it does. Ma'am, did oh, you hear my question? Oh, the in love with grandma yes, now. Yes, it is much bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Please answer. I'm sorry, yes. The AR-15 fires a different cal caliber. That's a big bitchy guns, to correct? grandma. Yes. It fires at, a, at a higher velocity, correct? Well, yes. well he's testifying now? Where's yeah, the objection? He's testifying. He's been testifying. Farther for... away. What? It's, yes. it's a cross-examination, though. He's, In fact, he's allowed the AR-15 rounds are capable of penetrating body armor, correct? Oh, I didn't Some know. degree of relevance to that. the scope of... Correct. Your Honor, this witness is not a gun expert, has not been qualified. So you follow this group of people coming down to the 63rd yeah. Street Park Source. It right? makes him look like a POS. Right, he's beating Before him himself up. You had no idea. Yeah, yes. and remember, they're yeah. looking at the jury. Park so they... anything like that. Fair to say? Correct. Yes, correct. You said at that time you met up with someone who identified themselves as the owner of that location? Yes. You personally didn't have any interaction with that owner, did you? Yeah, I had a conversation with him. Do you remember speaking with um, Steve Spingola, a, uh, an investigator, with regard to this incident? I, that sounds like an outsider name. It's <laughs> On September 8th, 2020, you had a phone call with him at about 5.30 p.m. Do you remember that? Uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't recall what... You said you've seen your statement to the FBI. Have you seen the statement that you gave to Investigator Spingola? Uh, I guess not, no. Let me, uh, may I approach your Sure. Well, I think you should first. <laughs> sure. It's this my house. Not acknowledges the conversation because up to yeah. this point, she says she doesn't know if she had such a conversation. And so I'm so trying to help. Go help. ahead. Thank you, Judge. But this is, Thank not, you, Judge. this is not a prior statement. <laughs> she, that's not a sworn statement. That's hearsay of. The detective. It is no, this is the only here. court where this nonsense has been allowed so routinely. And, uh, this is not admissible in any American back. normal court. And he's not going to, he's going to now ask her, didn't you say, didn't you, you say, that. That's not but, he, but, but, but watch him try, but watch him oh, try. Oh, he will, and the judge will, yeah. and the defense won't object, and the judge will let him get it in. But this is, if those that don't know out there, you can't do this in a normal court. No, I've never seen this. Here we go. I've never seen this, she said. Well, that's in the story there. <laughs> well, Grandma that's how she cuts them always there. lay always lay your foundation on direct if you can. Cross it's you it's told rough. this individual, Mr. Spingola, <laughs> that you didn't have any interaction with the owner of Car Source that night, didn't you? No, I don't even recall the conversation, and that's not true. Whew. That's What's why we're gonna do now, go, I guess. 
Also, does she know who the owner is rather than the manager or operators or stuff like that? Who cares? She just blew up his line of questioning. Look at him. <laughs> yep, yep. 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 That is exactly the body language. Right. You're 100% that, right. That, right. That you were going Tur what else do I have? At 59th and Sheridan. Is that correct? Uh, uh, uh. Well, that was decided for us, but yes, that was the end plan. Yes. Who decided that? Um, I believe that was the owner and Nick Smith. That was the first time that night that you'd ever met Nick Smith? Yes. You didn't know anything about him before? Nothing. And yet, based on his decision and the owner's decision, you agreed voluntarily to go to the 59th Street car source to protect it. Is that fair to say? Yes, that's fair to say. Nobody made you do that? No, correct. I think he'll ask the bailiff for his balls back. <laughs> you indicated at one point that the defendant asked you to hold on to his gun while he was helping someone. Is that right? Yes. What are you, what are you getting at, boy? Do we have it with us? The gun? Can you get it out, please? I watch that. Oh, the gun again. Switch. <laughs> Do you recall how the defendant was wearing that gun that night? Wearing? Uh, he had the strap around his shoulder and body and then the gun pointing down. Is it fair to say that the gun was sort of hanging down the front of his body in the middle? I think when he was walking, yeah, but I know when he was standing there, he, he would always have a hand on, across the front of it. Okay. So, yeah. I think it's weird to have testifying I'm going to ask and Detective, Detective Howard to hold table. on to that We're gun and, the stand and show gun you again. as much as they can. Check it again, please. Do you notice how big and powerful this AR-15 is? How big and manly. What Even if you didn't have any bullets, have you, you could probably beat a man like, to I death with I don't like the Smith and <laughs> Wesson. Uh, stand back a little bit, Howard. Door. I want you to be where the jury can all see you. Why don't you step a little bit this way? Uh, Ms. Fiedler, can you uh, tell us in your own words, and I'll try and have Detective Howard sort of demonstrate, how was the defendant holding that AR-15 when he was on the 59th Street property, if, if you know? Well, He's amplifying the importance of her testimony. She's now been mm. on cross twice as long as she was on direct. Yep. Yeah, this, this is a weird strategy by Binger. One bold yep. strategy, yes. Cotton. With the gun. <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> Hold on to it. Just like How that. could he gain by having okay. her describe So this? holding it with his right hand He's on the pistol grip? He's yes. using her as a proxy for Kyle. And of sometimes holding with his left hand or not. Community. But that's a trap yeah, I mean, because it's grandma up there. I'm sure that's so, me. you know, you're yeah. not going to scare the but jury when it, with grandma. When it came time for him to help someone out, he took it off and asked you to hold on to it. Is that yes. right? Okay. Thank you, Dr. Sector. I thought he was going to be dumb enough to ask her to put it on. But you obviously. indicated that there was a time <laughs> in which <laughs> some females <laughs> came to the property and were taunting you. Is that yes. right? Yes. And I you indicated the that they were chanting Black Lives Matter. I did. Yes. I did and you too. took that to be them taunting you? No, they were saying other things. You'd agree with me, though. The only thing you've told us so far is the words Black Lives Matter. Uh, yeah, but I could go into the whole story, but we'd be here all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you also put the man with yellow pants. Oh my God! You got Grambo up there. Yes. Is that right? See, the the that chat has the uh, called her Grambo. Look at Big so Boy. And he the members terrible. of your group told him he's, to get off. He's going to have a heart yes. attack. Before and this in is fact, over. pointed a gun <laughs> at him out. while telling him to do that. Correct? Yeah, he pointed his gun at us first. Oh, the man in the yellow pants had a gun. Yes, he had a gun. He and had a couple guns. And then your group pointed guns back at him. I don't know who pointed a gun at him. I don't know if they did or not. I didn't. I was busy watching my areas. He pointed guns at us. I don't so even know if we pointed So you guns indicated back. earlier hmm. that you brought along your Good pistol response. to protect yourself and property. Is that right? Yes. How were you going to use it to protect property? Oh. <laughs> She's not on trial. She's not on trial. The armed while protecting one's property. Oh, hey, we got that. Uh, it is not lawful to use deadly force in the protection yeah. of Thanks. property. There you go, Judge. And it's important. In Wisconsin, you can have a gun to defend property. Get confused. Oh. I'm not trying to confuse the issue, Your Honor. I'm asking yes, how you she are. planning on Coward. using Thank God the judge came to the rescue. Stepped right in. Boom. Yeah, seriously. 
I don't believe, I think I'm, I was going to come back to it. Uh, I'm sure. I'm going to use that just skip a bigger, a little bigger. property. Like I said, it's a deterrent. You weren't you planning were... on firing it to protect property, were you? No. You weren't planning on aiming at anyone to protect property, were you? No. Most people who carry a gun aren't planning on doing anything with it. You indicated that the, Mr. Rosenbaum made some statements, and I'm not going to repeat them all. But uh, you indicated on, that no one it. in your group responded to anything he said. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that's very fair. You <laughs> said you pretty much have to ignore that, correct? Yes. It's fair to say you didn't consider him an actual threat to your safety at that moment, did you? Not for the distance and for the group that was around. Not for the distance. Mr. Lakowski characterized him as a babbling idiot. Would you agree with that? I didn't hear him babbling. I just heard him. Well, I don't know if babble is a good word. If I may, he was just bitching. <laughs> it was a little bit. <laughs> I, I thought it was a oh. oh. The court allowed her to say it. Remember how, what's his name, got in trouble for a holes? You said he, Mr. He Rosenbaum, arm went lady. up. <laughs> And he might have thrown something, but you have no idea what. Isn't happened. it true? Right. You He's have no idea. <laughs> you were then asked about ah. a period of time in which the Kenosha police pushed the crowd past the 59th Street location. Do you remember that part of the evening? Yes. And this you is can't, the as you sit here today. And it has. Uh, gone south of 60th, and you said he tried to come back at one point, etc. You remember that time period in the yes, evening? Yes, yes. There were no protesters around 59th Street after the police pushed them back at that time, correct? That's not totally true. There <laughs> was an empty lot directly across the street from us, and there were protesters that were walking on the other side of the Bearcats. The police were screaming at them to get away from there, and they just kept walking through. She After said to him, that's not crowd. true about nine yeah. times. Did uh, any she is an amazing eyewitness. She was born for this moment. Street car After they pushed them past yeah. 60, they didn't push them past 60, excuse me, past the gas station. <laughs> let, me, let me make sure I'm being clear here. Okay. Ms. Fiedler, okay. I'm going to use the pointer here on the map behind okay. you. And just, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this map, so let me, uh, yes, there's please. a there's a yes, location sorry. on the map that is marked car source, and that is on the southwest corner of 59th Street and Sheridan Road. You would agree with me that that's the property that you were at the whole evening, correct? That's south, the one you were pointing at? Um, I'm pointing, you can see where I'm pointing. Yes. That is on the southwest corner oh, I'm sorry. of 59th Street and Sheridan Road. Yes. You'd agree with me that's the property you were at all evening, correct? Yes. And there's a time when the police move down Sheridan, past that location south, and establish a line of armored and police vehicles here across the intersection of 60th and Sheridan. Do you remember that? Yes. After that, no protesters come back to 59th Street, correct? No, that's not true. You <laughs> talked about the time when people were walking through the pile of rubble. Is that right? No. I Who? Didn't what? That. What protesters came out and stood in front of 59th Street car stores after the police pushed them past? They He's winging it. The police also turned their bear cats around and backed up, and all the protesters then came at us, and bricks were flying, bombs were flying, everything. They came at us with full force. That's why I had to go inside. Okay. And I apologize. I probably have not explained myself properly. Let's no. go to the end of the evening. Question. You remember the... The defendant coming back, the shootings, all that. Leading up into that, the, the few minutes before that, that was the second time that the police had pushed everybody down to 60th, correct? Yes, correct. I'm talking about that period of time at the end. After that, when the police come by that final time, the protesters have all been cleared south of 60th, correct? No. That's not true. Do you remember protesters around 59th Street car stores after We that? were pelted. For almost the whole night, from after the Bearcats backed up, they came and they bombed. They bombarded us, 
And then they left again because we had come out again and we, they heard shootings and some other people had left, but then they came back at us and I was in inside the building basically probably the rest of the evening. You testified in response to one of the defense attorney's questions that you thought it was over when the police pushed the protesters south. Correct. And they stopped there. That was before they had backed up. We had thought it was over. Okay. So you talked about the defendant returning to the 59th Street car source location. Yes. Correct? Now, let's be clear. You never saw any of the shootings in this case? That's correct. You uh, don't have any personal knowledge about any of that stuff? Fair to no. say? Yep. None. You've been asked about Mr. Rosenbaum. At, the, at that evening, you had no idea what his name was. Correct. You've described Ooh. what you saw about him that night, correct? Yes. As you sit here today, you know there's a person by the name of Anthony Huber, correct? Yes. That night, you never saw him once, correct? No, I don't. No, I have not. Okay. You'd agree with me it's correct. You've never <laughs> yes, seen Yes, I'm it. sorry. Yes, you're correct. You know now, today, there's a person by the name of Gage Grosskreutz. Is that correct. yes? Correct. That night, never saw him, had no idea who he was. Correct. correct? You indicated that when the defendant returned to your location, he said to you that he had shot someone. Is that right? Correct. Meaning one person. Objection. Objection. That's what someone is, I guess. He never said to you he shot three people, did he? No. He never told you that any of those people had a gun. Did he? No, he didn't really describe anything about what had happened. He never told you that any of those people threatened him in any way, did he? No. He never told you that any of those people had any weapons on them, did he? Oh Let's run through a list of things he didn't say. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. He could have started off with this, though, and he'd have a cross-examination here. There came a time in which he never Nick said Smith he pizza to came back to that location and said the police were coming, correct? Yes. And after that, all of you got out of there, correct? Not immediately. In your FBI statement, you said soon after Nick came into the location and this stated an that police were coming to the building. Right. It's not, it's not Everyone the then left the building, correct? No, no, I had to go get the guys off the roof. But then everybody left. Correct. We came down and everybody else that was down there previously was gone, yes. Including the defendant? Yes. After hearing that police were coming, correct? I, I thought they left with Nick. I didn't know. Are they going with fleeing the police here? Yes. When he turned himself in that night? After he got pepper sprayed uh, by said police? You were asked about Mr. Rosenbaum and there was questions about uh, how you would describe him and how others had described him. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. Um, did you ever have any direct contact with Mr. Rosenbaum? No, it was just it was just that when we were standing at the 50 or yeah, 59th Street, just seeing him when Yellow Pants was jumping on the car. <laughs> so Mr. Rosenbaum had never directed, if I'm right, had he ever directed any threat specifically to you? No, not specifically to me. Had he ever physically ran after or chased you no when you said that you were being harassed or i think that's the word you used taunted taunted sorry um young man what were some of the things they were saying to you uh they were calling me out uh, come on blondie come on out here um not so tough put your gun down as soon as I didn't give them their power sign, they just got a little bit more aggressive because they were actually kind of friendly at first. Everything was very friendly at first. When you, um, Mr. Binger said you never actually saw Mr. Rosenbaum throw anything. Remember him asking for saying that? Yes, I remember. Okay. Is this fair? After you saw his arm move, did you see a gas bomb explode? I believe that it landed on the roof. 
I don't know because immediately, like, the eyes started watering, the noses started running. So I can't say that I saw anything like that. No. And Mr. Binger was asking you questions about you never, uh, what uh, Mr. Rittenhouse didn't see when he got into the building, right? He didn't tell you specifics about what happened. Is that true? Correct. But he did say that he had to do it. Is that right? Yes. I don't have anything else. Any questions? There you go. Mr. Let's take a break, folks. Uh, please don't talk about the case during the break. Uh, we have you. another legendary witness from this trial. Yeah. yeah. The only Thanks the only part that I think it. the only part that I think maybe didn't go as well was the part where they were talking about the videos that she was maybe sending to the defense, maybe sending to the FBI. Um, she, it it's it just it seemed like she wasn't as tight in her answers uh, with. Like as as that line of questioning went on, she almost well, seemed like she was starting to contradict she herself. Got wound up thinking that they were saying she sent videos, and she was saying they weren't my videos. I wonder if the jury know you know saw it that way though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I mean overall, I thought she was an excellent witness. Mm -hmm. Um, and he and was just, that he that was excuse me, Judge bitchy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. I wanna I wanna welcome to the stream. <laughs> Uh, Robert Grueler, criminal defense attorney. How's it going, man? Hey, Nick. Good to see you, brother. Good to see everybody. Hey, and there's I Bob. A lot of, we do uh, have some. There's, yep. Got a lot of new faces. I haven't met a lot of people sort of, uh, you know, circling around each other from, from, you know, the YouTube <laughs> nice. bubble, but it's good to see everybody yeah. here. Uh, here are the yeah. Uh, yeah. photographs, um, which were um, graciously sent to us by... <clears throat> So these are the photos that they uh, took the of the physical and, demonstration. Um, please take a look at them. Uh, unless you have objection, I intend to offer them as the next six sequential exhibits. Objection is killing my case, Your Honor. <laughs> Man, th this has been uh, this is this has been a good day so far for the defense, um, in my opinion. I don't know, Robert. Have you been able to catch much of it? I'm just getting caught up. So I just joined and I just saw sort of the second half of that cross with this latest witness. So I watched a little bit of the state's closing this morning, but, uh, but, uh, but not really. You see okay. these uh, uh, photographs? I understand. Sure. They're exhibits. The reason I had them prepared. Sorry. I do. It's because okay, I'm the coolest judge mics. ever. Get your mics. He does more work for the defense than the defense right. does. I'm gonna, uh, he's even, doing these, he's even uh, making their paperwork now. An unusual practice that I will have a photograph taken either by one of the litigants or myself uh, so that it's better in the record than just somebody trying to describe what's being portrayed. So I had the photographers who were kind enough to uh, take these pictures, and um, they are now exhibits A through E. Um, in the record, is there any objection? And they are exhibits in the case, which you may use if you wish. Okay. So he took photos of the people exhibits. doing demonstrative physical ex exhibitions. Um, people out there watching. And that, that was specifically with the uh, with the right. medical examiner <laughs> and demonstrating um, how, how far uh, Rosenbaum was from the gun when he shot his hand, and it was like within inches. Yeah. And the letters of A through E rather than numbers indicates it's for the defense rather than prosecution, no? Well, it makes sense. Uh -huh. Oh, wait. No, that's, that's not That's how that we would do it here in New York. In New York, you, you separate yeah, I'm not sure. and defendant based on one will be numbers and one will be letters. We've been hearing number yeah. exhibits all along. It, it depends. Everybody's different. For the most, a lot, for usually in federal court, it will be, you know, A, you know, they'll choose an A, and then, and then defense is B or whatever. You know, it starts with a different letter, same number. Right. Some will have just, I've never liked that. I prefer everybody, no, uh, just numbers all the way through. Right. Because otherwise you have like two exhibit number ones and two exhibit number fives and right. so on and so forth. Ooh, so uh, does anybody have any opinions on how this is going so far? We've moved into the defense's case in chief. Um, any opinions on how that is actually uh, playing out? I mean, I think, I think Grambo is. I thought, thought Grambo, yeah, Grambo did Grambo's such a great trending. Job. Grambo is, yeah. <laughs> she Grambo's, literally, she, she really? literally is trending. I think yes. uh, Posobiec did tweet out Grambo. 
Yeah. 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 Nick, that's your fault. The gun. It's the chat. Yeah, that, that, that's your chat, chat, Nick. They, 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 they made her famous. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she, she was great. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting to see. You know, it's funny because when Richards dropped the hard R and opening, I'm like, oh, uh, uh. but the way she did that, and and I'm sorry, Judge, I just have to quote these miscreants, and then she <laughs> yeah. drops it. I'm so sorry, and it was like, oh, how can you be mad at this lady? Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. man. No, she she did that very well. And Binger made the mistake. He should have limited his, his cross to uh just the issues about, you know, his story about they fled the police, which is nonsense, but you know, he, he's got his inferences there. And uh and maybe it's something about her not using the gun. She didn't use it, wouldn't feel you know, a little bit there, don't go too much there. But that's it. Not try to make her an example of see, this is why we have to prosecute Kyle because these out of towners. From these the grandmas, wild town of armed grandmas, yeah, town. Old, old town of West Bend, you know, which is ten minutes up the road from Kenosha, uh, you know, it's a working class suburb of Milwaukee, uh, which is kind of what Kenosha half is, and the uh, is coming into town to cause trouble, and nobody's going to see Grambo and think, oh man, we got to keep Grambo out of town, and he yeah, stepped into but, it by making her the, a substitute proxy for Kyle, which is exactly what the defense wants her to be seen as. In defense, um, in defense of Littlefinger, though, one of the toughest type of witnesses to cross-examine is a little old lady. I mean, I think that's second yes. to, like, Yeah, that's why you stay away from A seven-year-old child help himself. is worse. It's harder to do, it like, a little kid. But, like, after that, a straight-shooting grandma is really tough because... He should have learned his him, lesson by now. After Richie McGinnis slapped him in the face, yeah. uh, he should learn, <laughs> keep his ego in check. Don't You can't take apart everybody you don't like. Yeah, yeah and, and to have her consistently say... That's not true. Yeah. That's yeah, like not 10 true. Times, yes. 11 times. Because oh. that's what yes. he does. The guy lies. Little Binger's so, a liar. So very different from the cross with, with Grosskreutz the other day, or yesterday. Good Lord, all these days are mixing together. Um, yeah. So much streaming. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, but you great. know, where, where, where he was just whipped into submission relatively quickly, and then he just he just just followed along with the questions. Um, in this case, videos. that she was she was very adamant that she said, nope, that's not that. She I never said that. Feisty. That's not accurate. That's not true. And did, you that talk, possibility? did you talk to this Italian sounding detective that definitely doesn't sound like a Wisconsin <laughs> name? I don't remember that at all. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> By the way, that's the uh, defense investigator. Oh, is it? <laughs> and so they, pr they produced a printout of her statement to them. I don't think that's subject to discovery. I, I wouldn't have necessarily done that, but I under, but the, as a precautionary, they did so. Though, like we've all been saying, that this habit of introducing somebody else's printed, written up, uh, written notes or printed up notes of your inner their interview with you is not admissible evidence. Yeah. It's not a prior consistent statement. It's not a prior inconsistent statement. If I try to do that in court, I'm sanctioned by the judge for even trying to do so. Yeah, you, you know, got to bring includes, the person who published this or who's written the statement and ask them about uh, to testify that they've um, actually generated the statement and what they, right. I guess the grounds for which they've done it. And you have to have the other person available to cross examine uh, or examine as it were to verify the statements itself. Uh, exactly. I mean, a prior consistent inconsistent statement really means you, the witness signed it under penalty of perjury or took it under penalty yeah. of perjury, which none of these statements are. They're all right. out of court hearsay of a third party. Yeah, very, uh, very fiery uh, testimony. I, I wasn't sure how today was going to go, and it started off so boring um, yes. with the uh, the forensic uh, video expert who couldn't tell you how to timestamp a video or or if you could sync it up via sound. I mean, that was uh, that was a weird sort of thing. But he was, you know, breathing into the mic. He's testimonying the most laborious way, but it's turned out pretty pretty exciting so far. I, yeah, and Grambo is is icing on the cake. I'm curious who they're going to call next. And yeah, give... I mean, you can't beat that affability. I mean, that really, yes. you know, compared to Grosskreutz and exactly how disingenuine he was looking at him, the turning there, turning back, the jury is so able to see that and read that and say, hey, we're not going to trust this guy, but this woman who's looking at us, she's looking us in the eye, she's stable, she's steady, she's not twitching, she's not smirking like the detective or officer who said, oh yeah, I pepper sprayed uh, Rittenhouse, and he knew, he knew what he was doing, you know, when he did that. Yeah, He's and not then, having yeah. any of those negative tells. And it's also, 
And also, I was going to say that it it uh, it also um, really kind of combats this whole idea that all of the people that were there with with guns were part of this like militia group. This like like these these men that are there with you know with giant guns and whatnot. She she seems much more kind. She seems much more empathetic. She's like, hey, look, we were with them with their with their protesting what they were doing. We were supportive, you know, up until violence started happening. It, it, it definitely paints a very different picture of this overall group that she is a part of. Gurley well, must the, be the, reading the, uh, reading the, the chat because he's got that big smile. Well, no, I was just going to say the defense, you can just tell we were making these comparisons to gross crudes. The defense didn't facepalm themselves at the end of this <laughs> testimony. <laughs> yes. Yes. It, it, it's also true. That's a win right there. In this show, that's a win. <laughs> the, yeah, I mean, the that... amateur hour from the prosecution has, well, uh, the you know defense hasn't always been the best, but the prosecution amateur hour has been off the charts. Especially, yeah. I mean, <laughs> go ahead. The big guy, uh, you know, doing his Chris Farley imitation from Saturday Night Live with a suit outfit, a little small, but the uh, is uh, is very much uh, his his reputation is smart but lazy, and he's lived up to that reputation entirely. But his expressiveness has been a pleasant surprise. The whole oh god, not again. That routine. Checking yeah, it's phone. uh, and and that's why I was suggesting, or why why I've been screaming, please object. Is yes. what what you see consistently with, uh, with the state is when they are objected to, they become flustered very quickly. Uh, it throws them off their game. Whereas when you see Sharifisi get objected to, he sits there, he waits through the objection, and then he proceeds on. It's it's like he's worked through the problem very quickly, and now he's addressed it. He doesn't visibly do it. He does it while the judge is talking about the objection, and uh, and it, it's a to me, it's a noticeable difference in um, in their performance. And and I think uh, I'm saying please object, please object, because every time you do, the guy has to spend thirty to forty seconds of dead air. Uh, waiting to waiting to figure out what to say. And whereas Binger uses glasses like Rick Perry to make him look smarter than he is, uh, you know, the uh, uh, I just call him Corey because I'll get the last. I'll put, I kept butchering the last name when I was part of the team. Anyway, so uh, Corey from Madison, he uses glasses great. He uses the way uh, actually Snipes once in the middle of our, our trial stepped up. He goes, Barnes, can you do this? Do this as a lawyer. And he did a lawyer quickly. And part of his prompt was to, prop was to do glasses like that. Uh, and Corey does that very, very well because it has that sort of scholastic erudite, particularly for, you know, during parts of cross. That's a really nice use of a prop for a lawyer uh, that looks authentic and not uh, fake. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, that that's been well done. But also, you know, I thought Nick uh, was good at presenting testimony, not only about, you know, safety and why they were there that night, but obviously rebutting the clear perjury of Sam and Sal, uh, cool. the who can't don't know whether to commit perjury because they're tax evaders don't know whether to commit perjury because of their insurance fraud risk don't know whether to commit perjury because they might be civilly sued for having unlicensed security guards on their property but boy th those boys just he took apart quickly just how much they perjured themselves perjured themselves about the ladder perjured themselves about the keys perjured themselves about access perjured themselves about hiring them per perjured themselves about communications perjured themselves about car you could prosecute both of them for a half a dozen perjury charges from what they did uh, last week if they weren't state witnesses yes exactly. <laughs> i mean a real prosecutor a prosecutor wanted to clean this case up like who came in later and you know got replaced the loser who's running the office and I mean, the, the head guy chose not to prosecute this case because he was he only takes cases he thinks he's going to win. So he was scared of this case. That's why little finger, little binger stood up and, and took over it. Uh, and little binger lived in his liberal echo chamber. And basically, the only thing he's got potentially going for him is the jury. If, if, if he got a certain kind of jury, he's still in the game for a mistrial. But uh, if he didn't, you know, a typical Kenosha looks like Grambo. That, 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 that's who Kenosians look. They're working class, middle-aged. They look like the, 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 the demographics of West Bend and the demographics of Kenosha are nearly identical. That's why the defense put her up there. And that's why it was a huge mistake of Binger to go after her. Don't, don't make her the – if you go after her, they start to see Kyle through her. And that's mm -hmm. not a favorable portrait for the prosecution. It is favorable for the defense. I mean, look at her and look at Wendy Rittenhouse. They look very, very similar because they're working yeah. class Midwesterners who've done a lot of hours. And she's and, a no-nonsenser. I mean, she's like a mm -hmm. lot of Wisconsinites. As she kept saying, nah, you're wrong about that. Nah, that's not true. Nah, not wrong. Wrong again. Nope, you missed this. 
Um, and yeah, I had a gun and I was packing. Yeah, maybe it was in my holster. I don't remember. I mean, that's 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 Wisconsin. That's the that's the right side of Wisconsin, in my view. And uh, someone, and it, you know. uh, someone on the panel said, like, please put the gun in her hands. Yeah, oh, please. Oh my God, yes. Have her yeah. demonstrated. Yeah. Yeah. I thought she would he wrap that. No problem. That thought went yeah. through his head. I mean, I yeah. guarantee it did. The way he was talking, and then he thought, maybe that isn't what I want. Um, <laughs> you imagine she <laughs> grabs that gun, she looks at it, she clears the chamber, yeah, makes exactly. sure there's no Charges magazine it. in there. And then, Your Honor, I'd like to qualify her as the first ballistics expert in this entire trial. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe she, she uh, says, you know, points it out to Little Binger. No, no, he was pointing the gun down. Not pointing it at you like this, Little Binger, but pointing it down like this. Could have made the point quite demonstrably. So... But yeah, I think both of those witnesses helped the defense. I hope they, uh, I assume everybody from so far, from what, uh, curious what you think, Ruler, uh, as to putting Kyle on the stand. I don't see that as necessary, or uh, yeah. I see there's more risk than reward. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't think there's any reason to do it. I mean, you know, I know a lot of people would like, you know, to turn maybe a uh, a win into a grand slam, you know, to, to turn something that's already positive into just a home run, but. I just think it's too risky. I think what we've seen so far, you know, I mean, the, the big question that we've sort of been kicking around over on our channel was, you know, directed verdicts or, uh, you know, the judge sort of taking this away from the jury just just on a motion for a dismissal. You know, again, we've talked about that as being something that might be a little bit too politically risky, just because the judge has talked a lot about legitimacy and wanting to, you know, to make sure this thing is done right. And so, you know, there's I think there's a lot of these low possibility permutations, but I don't think it's going to be all that exciting. I think, you know, the cases are kind of going to wrap up. It's going to go to the jury. And I think it's probably going to be a, a good outcome for Kyle. If By the way, they, the defense chose uh, not to bring a motion to dismiss anything but the curfew charge, which the curfew charge was dismissed. Oh, uh, oh well, I, okay. So as of yet, mild, mild, but they, I, they did I not even they... request a directed verdict on the rest. They didn't do that. that? We said no. No, no. They didn't. Oh, so I'm just getting caught up to speed. So I apologize. So we're already way past that. Oh yeah, yeah it's prosecution also not, already it's closed. Not now they can do it verdicts. again after close of defense. It's right. Not, okay. Insufficiency of evidence. In Wisconsin. It's insufficiency of. It's a motion for insufficiency of evidence. And I think uh, someone said that if they brought, they, yeah, you can't bring that motion, and and bring it on appeal, right? You can't appeal it if you if you if you present a defense. defense. Yeah. It, yeah. The, so it was a, you, there's no appellate in Wisconsin if you bring a motion for directed verdict at the end of prosecution's case and the judge denies it, you can't appeal that unless you don't present a defense. So if you why, present a so, defense, then the standard is what happened at the close of defense evidence. Okay, okay. Still. So, well, no, yeah, so, so interesting. The judge might have said yes. Yeah, yeah I, so I, he did. I thought in this case they should have brought – I would have given it a chance, but they decided not to. And maybe for the reasons Gruler mentions, didn't want to put the judge in a, I, I don't know. This judge situation. doesn't care in part. I mean, you know, there, there was one judge who would grant a motion. Th this guy would. He's been the cutting off a little binger a couple of times, which has been great. He's like, oh, Matt, man, you're wrong that... about guns on that. No, you can have a gun for property. You know, just sua sponte. This judge is beautiful. He's going to quote yeah. the history of Rome, throw, throw in some Bible <laughs> verses. Talk about the last time when he was at a judicial conference 35 years ago. Let me tell you something, son. You know, Trauma, of course, all of that gets characterized as some weird right-leaning rant. Yeah. That's a, a lot of, he's a southern was judge I who happens to be in Wisconsin. Heard Walter Brennan every time the judge speaks? Was it just <laughs> yeah. me? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, Maybe yeah. that's all I hear is, is, let me tell you a story for literally anything that you could possibly experience in this courtroom, because I've been through all of it. <laughs> and, the uh, court of Robbie. He's I think usually known subtle... as a, a oh, pro-prosecution judge, by the way. Yeah, really? I, I think that's in Kyle's favor here, though, because... Yes. Um, that judge knows uh, he's read this complaint and he looks at this and he goes, cause uh, we all re have read the complaint and I think come to the same, same idea. This looks like a, this looks like a self-defense case. And so the judge is normally prosecuting Rosenbaum. In fact, if Rosenbaum was in Kenosha for another five days, he probably would have had a case on the docket, uh, to be fair. Uh, he's probably prosecuting a Huber or a Gage Grossbritz. All of these guys have criminal histories of some sort, even if not, the full records are admissible. And this judge goes, I, you know, I don't know about this. And so he's coming across as someone who would normally be taking on these people to me. Uh, that's my impression. Oh, no, no doubt about that. And he has that, he, you know, he and Granbo probably get along. 
put it that way. Politically. Yeah, I said in, uh, in the middle. I was like, these guys Checked play bridge lunch. together. <laughs> yep. Well, you even saw he was like, go ahead and say it. I can't. Can, I, forgive me, Judge. Can I say it? Go ahead, honey. But, <laughs> right now, the DA's, he was the just DA, a little bitch up there. The DA right now, their best hope is a mistrial. That's really what they're left yes. with. I don't think yeah. they can hope to get 12 people on their side the grounds on the major charges. Best well, hope well, split. is a mistrial. The, a the mistrial of a hung jury. Oh, oh there okay. is, yeah. yeah. Sorry. There, there always is a possible split verdict. Uh, but yeah. this, I, the way this case has gone, they will have had to get a little bit unlucky in jury selection to get a split verdict. Because normally a random jury, and I think that's kind of what they got, given how fast the jury was picked uh, in Kenosha, was a... Uh, was a mistrial was the norm. Split verdicts only happen if you didn't have hardcore people on both sides. You, usually you had two to three people hardcore, at least on both sides. And the hardcore people just wouldn't compromise, period. And that's why you kept you, you would keep getting mistrials over and over again. Um, uh, and and that's, that's Kyle's only risk at this point is taking the stand unnecessarily. And if they didn't do great with the jury, if they got unlu- a little bit unlucky with the random jury selection. Now, uh, Robert and Robert. Uh, what do you guys think about the idea that is there a purpose of bringing Kyle to the stand solely to uh, to hit the motion to dismiss at the end of the defense's um, testimony where they, they just want to build enough of a factual basis, basis with him? I still think it's a bad idea, but do you guys have a different opinion if that is the lens that the defense is taking? Well, my own view is that this judge – was un- unlikely to ever grant a directed verdict just because he wants to prove that a Kenosha jury will acquit. He might grant one after the verdict. You know, if a bad verdict comes in, it would be yeah. the kind of judge who might set aside the verdict. And because he knows that's appealable and, you know, can be dealt with under in due time. Um, but the, uh, uh, but I think he thinks it's going to be an acquittal jury too. And that's he, a disagreement between me and the other defense lawyers was, I thought it would be useful to let him know how bad the jury pool was in Kenosha from the pretrial publicity, because I thought he would then factor that in to how he handled jury selection and what he did at jury trial. I think he thinks this jury is totally an acquittal jury. And I think consequently that makes him less likely to even consider a motion to dismiss because he thinks the jury will cover for me and give full acquittals anyway. So I don't have to step in on this. Uh, he, but yeah. that's why I think he might step in after the fact, but I don't think they should put Kyle on the stand for anything too much risk, too little reward. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think that this judge, some of his comments, even you know, about being bored, I think in day three, you know, he, he was very over the prosecution's case. And I think that when you, listen to comments like that, you know, the judge can read the room in a way that we can't, we are all watching just from one, you know, one angle or two angles from the camera that we see, but the judge can see what the jury, if he's bored and the, 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 you know, he's willing to sort of communicate that to other people. I'm going to guess the jurors are pretty bored during the case in chief of the prosecution as well. So he doesn't really even need to take it. I would say from them, he can probably just read the writing on the walls and, you know, just let it go as it, as we've already been seeing it, it unfold. Yeah, and while it's not supposed to happen, uh, often bailiffs with jurors overhear conversations that tend to end up back in the judge's ears. Yeah. Uh, and so, like, I've had cases where they know right away what's going to happen one way or the other. It's like, how exactly is that the case? Because supposedly they weren't discussing the case and all that jazz. So, uh, you, But usually judges have a pretty good cue on what the jurors are doing and, and what they're up to. Um, but you, you never know for sure, of course. And uh, there were there was a core of liberal Democratic oriented people that I mean, that's who kind of Binger was arguing with Granbo for is you're the, is, hey, look, she's one of them to, to the liberal. If there's any liberal Democrats on the jury, she's one of those Trumper types. Look, I, I don't normally bring stuff from my discord, but I had to bring this one. Oh, that is so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I love your man. degenerates. They're the best. <laughs> no binger. I don't want to get a salad. <laughs> this is going to replace all those Biden Obama memes. That picture right yeah. there. All those Biden Obama <laughs> where like little finger is going to become Joe Biden and, and, and big boy yeah. is going to be Obama. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Kraus, Kraus. I have to remember his name is Kraus. And stop calling him Big Boy. I that, just, that's I'm, me. You can put that on me. I started that, Nick. I'm trying. <laughs> so Would you come hard. down, please? Yeah. Thank you. 
Oh boy. <laughs> Just once, I want him to order a pizza instead. When he's <laughs> on the phone. Is this a hot mic? Is this he, he doesn't realize he's on, does he? No, he, he he's been he on he's been calls. on mic every time he calls the jury. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh gosh. Would any of you guys just uh, rested if you were the defense and not called any witnesses? No, I was would have been very me. would have been very very tempting, but they had a these two witnesses are good plus their expert is good. I don't know no, if we need to call anybody beyond that. I think I they was, want their expert in there. Yeah. I th I think John Black is uh, from his from his wadi or from his uh, what you would call it Dober hearing. He was just like he's really well presented on. Uh, on his uh, ability to speak. And I think he'll play really well um, in front of a jury. I, and, and I think they yes. really want to get those timings down. This is quarters of a second we're talking about between uh, Huber and Grouskowitz getting shot. It's like three seconds. It's so fast. Do, do one, uh, but, by the way, uh, Nick, congratulations on the Grambo, <laughs> which is going to be <laughs> added to the dictionary now. Uh, what, what, what she said that was amazing that I didn't fully appreciate either. Uh, she's depicting them as being holed up in that house for fear of this mob that, that keeps returning after the incident. I mean, uh, they're painting a picture that I don't think anybody ever heard of the Kenosha riots and certainly less of what happened to Kyle that evening. Yeah. That's what called Nathan DeVroom. I'll be, I'll be right back. If the record reflects that uh, Mr. represented by Terry Rose, Rose and Rose attorneys. For a testimony about to give this matter be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you guide. I do. You may be seated. Good afternoon, sir. Could you please state your full name, spelling your last name for the record? Nathan D. Bruin, D. E. B. R. U. I. N. Mr. DeBrun, where do you, not your address, but where do you reside? Kenosha. And are you employed a local business? Um, in the area. Okay. And do you have any hobbies? Photography and photojournalist. Okay. And are you what would be considered a freelance photojournalist? Yes, sir. And in the course of those duties, um, did you come down to the Kenosha demonstrations and riots. I did. Okay. And could you describe for the jury, please, what was the first night, Sunday night like? There was a lot of people. Um, I started um, taking or capturing pictures um, over by the Jacob Blake's residence. Um, there was a lot of police presence over there. Um, so I started over there and it eventually went down to the area of Civic Park. Okay. And now on that night, was there a lot of property destruction? On Sunday? Yes. Not necessarily property, I would say. Okay. Well, um, I saw a lot of police cars damaged um, and police like sheriff vehicles damaged. Okay. And where was most of that damage centered, if you know? Um, the, by the, I don't know the avenue, but where the Jacob Blake's, like where the original situation happened. Okay. Did you spend any time in downtown in Civic Park? Or I did. Anything like that? Did, was there any damage or destruction down there? Not that I recall. Okay. Now, directing your attention to the night, the second night, which would be Monday night, did you, um, come down and cover the civil unrest? I did. Okay. Was that night different than the first night? Yes. Okay. Could you describe for the jury that difference, please? Uh, the difference was um, there was a lot of vehicles um, that, that the city used as barricades that were um, <laughs> ended up being torched, lit, lit on fire. Um, there was a heavy police presence. Um, also, when the police were present, there was a lot of rioters, protesters throwing objects at the police. <laughs> and during the night of the 24th, you took a lot of still photo photographs? Yes, I did. And you also took video photographs, correct? Yes, I did. And a lot of those still photographs and video photographs were of interest from that evening to law enforcement regarding the arson that was occurring 
in the community, correct? Correct. And you provided all of your information to the ATF, FBI? Yes, I did. You let them download your um, cameras and phones? Yes. And eventually that same information was turned over to the Kenosha Police Department, correct? Correct. And you met with Detective Howard sitting at the table? Yes, I did. Okay. And you told him about your observations of that evening? I did. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you were able to tell the story through pointing at pictures that had date stamps, times, and you were able, because you're a resident, able to tell places. Objection leading. When you took a photograph, did you know where it was taken? I did. <laughs> did you know what time it was? I did. How'd you do that? The time stamp on the camera. Okay. And then my knowledge of being a resident. Honestly, it gets better America. testimony to not ask and leading questions anyway. You're the first witness that has ever done this, but you brought your own exhibits, correct? I did. Okay. And I didn't ask you to do that? You did not. Okay. And there's a series of like 24 big photographs that I'm going to go through with you. Do you know who took these? I did. Okay. <laughs> Someone said, if the Discord was you. a person. It's the avatar of your Discord. Uh, oh, God. I am standing on the corner of Ruther's yeah, High School parking lot, um, just about to walk towards Sheridan Road. And what does that picture depict? Uh, the police lining up as uh, they started to clear out Civic uh, Park. You know what time that is about? Uh, 9.03. So I do believe 10.03 because my camera was off one hour. And you and How <laughs> Detective Howard worked out that problem, correct? Yes, we did, but it's not going to reflect on this. Okay. Because your times were off by one hour, correct? Correct. Because compared to all the other evidence. Yes. And... You know how that happened? Yes, because uh, just prior to that, I was on vacation in South Dakota. Okay, and that's in a different time zone? Yes, sir. Showing you what's been marked as Defendant's Exhibit 112. Could you tell me what that is? Um, I'm, move I'm moving closer towards Sheridan Road. Um, I'm out now on the corner of Ruther Central High School on the grass just before going onto the sidewalk, and the police are closing the gap on Sheridan Road. What night are all these exhibits taken? August 25th. Showing you what's been marked on the front as Defense Exhibit 113. Could you tell me what that is? I am now on Sheridan Road and hugged up against Ruther Central High School. Does Ruther Central High School have any significance to you? I did, um, that was my high school. And this photograph would be looking down Sheridan Road in a northerly direction from your point of view? Yes, it is. And what does it depict in the back part of the photograph? Like you saw in the two photographs earlier, the police were still in Civic Park. Now the police lined up actually on Sheridan Road. Okay. And there are other individuals, um, demonstrators or rioters or whatever you want to call them, and they're more to the right. Correct. Okay. Correct. Could you hand that to the judge? Showing you what's been marked as exhibit defendants 114. I am still advancing southbound on Sheridan Road, and I captured a photo when the police started using the tear gas, gas bombs. I don't know the technical term. Can you tell me what time that is? That is at 9.43. And that's 9.43 real time? Yes, I do believe. Okay. Showing you what has been marked. Well, let me back up a second. Through your involvement in this case, reading things, you became aware of who Joseph Rosenbaum is? Yes. You became aware of the significance of him? Yes, I did. And you went over that with Detective Howard from the Kenosha Police Department? Yes, I did. Showing you what's been marked as on the front, Defendant's Exhibit 115. Could you tell me what that is? That is a picture of a cone that is on fire with Rosenbaum with his hands up with his 
what I assumed to be a bake that you just got out of jail with at the time um, in an angry stance. Okay. And where is Mr. Rosenbaum standing? The ultimate gas station. Okay. In the street? Um, yes, just off, off of the driveway to go into <laughs> ultimate gas. Okay. And in the four of the picture, there's some people trying to get some cones burning? Correct. And there's everybody's attention seems directed at somebody or something. Do you know who that is or what it was? It, Your Honor, I wasn't quite done. Oh, oh, I'm yes. sorry. <laughs> Everybody seems to be looking in a general northerly direction, correct? Correct. Do you know who or what they're looking at? Um, there was recently a dumpster fire that was on fire. I do believe that was before this. 116, once again. Uh, once again, um, there is some protesters, riot, rioters, um, adding to the fire, um, adding more cones to make the fire bigger with Rosenbaum in the back still screaming um, and almost in the exact same location. Yeah, what time is that? That is at 10.08. Fence exhibit 117. What does this depict? This is a garbage can that was just recently on fire, and a gentleman, I do not know who it is, um, holding a loaded pistol. And um, he's, did you see him? What was he doing with the pistol? He's just walking around with a pistol out. When people in the ultimate gas station started arguing and things started heating up. Um, he pulled out his uh, pistol from his waistband, cocked it, and held it at his side. When you say cocked it, describe that for the jury. Um, he took it. From, he took it from his waistband and loaded it, pulled the uh, rack back, and it was armed. Then, ready to shoot. Directing your attention to defendants' exhibit one eighteen. What does that show? So there was a time where the police pushed us towards the ultimate gas station, but then they retreated. And that's when the rioters and protesters advanced again back northbound um, on Sheridan Road, so closer back to um, Ruther Central High School. But in this photo, this is a photo of Rosenbaum walking to the St. James lot that was under construction at the time. And this is where just before he tips over a porta potty. Okay. And just so this record is, you're not just taking pictures of Mr. Rosenbaum, correct? I am not. Okay. I did not know who he was. Okay. You're just taking pictures of everything you see that interests you? Correct. And then later on, you turn those over to the state, the ATF, and you go through them and you start seeing what you think might be important. Is that a fair statement? It is. And could I have a time on Defendants 118? 10, 15 p.m., August 25th. Showing you what's been marked as Defense Exhibit 119. Could you tell me what that is? This is Mr. Rosenbaum um, with another gentleman who I do not know, um, tipping over a porta potty that was in the St. James lot that was under construction at the time. And so where is the St. James lot as you refer to it in relationship to car source at 59th? It is directly next to it. Okay, right, right across the street? There is a road, yeah, there is a road, and then the uh, car source. And that porta potty had been in an upward position? Yes, it was. And Mr. Rosenbaum and this masked individual um, tipped it over and threw it over the fence? They did. And what were they trying to do to it once they got it out in the road? It looked like they were going to use it as a barrier. Okay. And in that picture, describe Mr. Rosenbaum's clothing. <clears throat> He has, it looks like black shorts on, a reddish a reddish t-shirt, a blue bandana wrapped around his entire face. And a, he's holding a plastic bag in his right hand. Show 
showing you what's been marked as Exhibit 120. Tell me what that depicts. This is a, a trailer that was also in the St. James parking lot at the time. After they flipped over the porta potty, they went back for a trailer, and Mr. Rosenbaum helped pull and push this trailer out to the road that was eventually tipped on its side and lit on fire. And when you took the picture, did you know what they were going to do with the trailer? I did not. Did you see any chains or anything like that on that trailer? Did you notice anything on that trailer that might later be used as a weapon? Uh, I'll allow it. It, it is leading. A leading yeah. question is yeah. one that you, we talked about that already. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's leading. Did you notice anything on that what? trailer? Let, I'll ask He's asking a yes or no question. That, that is leading. Anything from that trailer? Yeah, you got to yes, ask open did. any he, questions. Yeah. Once it was out on the um, in the middle of the road and set on its side, there was chains dangling from the what I perceive the front end of the trailer that you would connect to. Even a if you get stuck was in a leading question like that, from there the witness also hears the question that you tried to ask them, so it also clues them into where you're going. Mm -hmm. Yes. You only bang the bell. You don't need to like from the trailer what to a vehicle. It's going to tow it. So if it were to separate, yes, sir. it's a protective chain, correct? Yes, sir. These aren't little thin little chains? No. And you personally saw him take those? Yes. He's still leading. I <laughs> still leading the hell out of Yeah. <laughs> August 25th, 10, 16 p.m. There's no leading in this court. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can look at the report when I'm done. Clear that up. Uh, to the chat, I was off camera because the chat was making me laugh and I did not want it to come across as I was being mean to this individual who I'm not. Um, mm. When I'm going to be mean to mm. someone, you'll know because I'm directly mean to them. Shame on you, chat. Yeah, and he's, equal he's he's chat. And, it'll, and it'll be jokes. Consider and, yourselves and, chastised, chat. Are off by one hour, correct? Again. Correct. Okay. And they're on South Dakota. And I've got to say, this Correct. witness is coming out across so genuinely and pure hearted. Yes. So yeah. if it were to say. It's going to be hard to cross him, least, I think, maybe. They're printed off from yeah, if Bigger pulls another yes. Grambo, he's in the for some trouble. Here in the back of the. Has a JPEG number? Yes. So you don't really know as you sit here today. Correct? No, I. <laughs> yeah. I know, it's his own witness. <laughs> it's it's like, cross examining yes. it. Okay, so if a time. Is it, it just is me, or is that yeah, as you I sit here today, nice like stuff. fingernails on the Correct. chalkboard? Oh, I, the worst. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, were you lying then, or are you lying now? I, I give them a little leeway because it's, it's highly publicized yes, and a year later. Showing you what's been marked, Defense Exhibit 1. But there are there are better ways to phrase that. This is how, cliche. like I said earlier, a uh, trailer was pulled out of the St. James parking lot. Um, this is the trailer itself tipped over on its side. Um, and being lit on fire next to a garbage can. And you can also see Mr. Rosenbaum armed himself with a chain, and there's still also chains hanging from the trailer. Okay. That would be in Mr. Rosenbaum's left hand, correct? Yes, correct. And there's a, a length of chain on each side of his left hand hanging down to the ground. Correct. Goes through the hand. There's a chain here oh. and chain here. Two separate chains or one chain? I don't think the picture can tell. Okay, gotcha. I like you know that the judge is so interested. In I do testimony. believe it was He's just one chain. Clarifying <laughs> question. And go ahead. Defense Exhibit 122. Once again, this is also uh, another picture of Mr. Rosenbaum with his what I assume to be. Did he move these into evidence yet? In his right hand. He did. And Not yet. The I, think chain so. I thought he did. His left hand. Maybe he did. And they've been doing it a lot. Now they, the chain is up. So they have the, the witness look at something, Not hit. Not uh, authenticate it, and move it to evidence. Correct. Even when they show the jury, it's weird. Exhibit. But this is the way, publishing. He's describing the picture. He doesn't publish which one he's talking about. I do. This is Mr. Rosenbaum. Well, he already authenticated. He already authenticated them all. He took. I'm holding his chain. How's the jury gonna know which ones they're talking about? The bag that I described. You just said exhibit I assume they're on 23. The they're on the screen. I assume. And they're they marked. We can't see it. They, they have a jury book. Or? Continuation of this series. Yes, it's still the trailer that is and, lit on fire. 
Are you that close or are you using a lens? Do you know? I am pretty close. Okay. 121. I'm assuming people in court can see these this is exhibits. A, uh, farther away picture of the trailer that because was if they can't. inside. Um, Mr. Rosenbaum is a waste of time. away from the fire. He's the, uh, the jury can't see this. He's still holding him his. Um, if he didn't move it in, they can't. I cannot tell what is in his other hand. And it was brought to my knowledge that another person in here is named Joshua Zeminski. Okay. And Mr. Zeminski. How is this helpful if the jury isn't seeing the picture at the same time as the testifier? They're probably yes. just going to use and it during, during uh, closing it looks or, like or, he or is through another witness. That's ridiculous. More debris into the fire to accelerate it. Okay. Just take a minute to publish it so the jury can look at the picture you're looking Would it be at. Fair so, to right? say that that I think they're laying foundation for the pictures. You're further away when the picture is taken. Correct. Maybe they're putting the photos on some kind of projector. That's one twenty-five. That's what I'm. That's what I've been assuming. I was advancing um, again south on Sheridan Road. I am now at almost they the corner or offered where the gas station next to car source is um and the police just released more gas or tear tear bombs i don't know the okay. technical term now i'm going to show you some video later on but were you anywhere near um the gunshots that eventually broke out about 10 to midnight yes i was okay could you hand it to the judge showing you what's been marked as Defense Exhibit 126. Do you know what that is? Yes, this is one of the very last photos I took from Sheridan Road in 61st, I want to say. This photo is of the armored sheriff vehicles um, showing up to a 10 2 gauge that was just shot in his bicep. And you can even, I mean, your picture is so good, you can read where that is from or. Yes, uh, it says uh, sheriff's rescue vehicle. It doesn't. I don't see a name okay. or a city. But that's. I mean, this is before the area's even been cordoned off. Correct. Correct. Okay, go ahead. If you, why don't you give me a time on that one? August twenty fifth, ten fifty one p.m. Showing you a picture of the South Dakota time. After the shots were fired um, and it started getting really intense, um, I decided to retreat and go back home for the night. I did not have a vehicle down there. Um, I was walking back towards 22nd Avenue and there was gunshots going on all around me. And there was a group of police outside i don't know the technical term i think it's like a correctional use facility here in kenosha um they were out there with their rifles out and pistols drawn and i had a black camera around my neck and they pointed their lights at me and i raised my hands um and they just told me to keep going and i asked what's going on and they just confirmed that there was multiple gunshots and that was at august 25th um 11 04 p.m Defense 128. This is a little further up 63rd Street, just past the last officers that I talked to. Okay. And this one somehow got a little bit out of order. I'm going to show you a defense exhibit 130. Can you tell me what that is? This is a photo of a gentleman walking through some, some tear gas outside of our courthouse in Kenosha. Okay. As, ge as gentlemen will do. 811. <laughs> PM August twenty fifth. Okay. So that would be for real time nine. Yes. And lastly, showing you defense exhibit one twenty nine. Could you tell me when that photograph was taken? This is the very last photo I took of that night. Um and this is of where Rody's camera shop used to be. Okay. And where is Rody's camera shop in Kenosha? I'm gonna drift the role of this line of questioning. This is not happening. <laughs> This evening, it's his opinion as to what was going on and why he covered the story. Well, yeah, it's a little bit much. Sorry, what was the judge's ruling? Sustained. 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 Oh. 
Does Rhodey Scamper have a special significance to you? I don't want to get sidetracked. Okay. Protection is sustained. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. These have or haven't. That one oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Wondering why they chose then to pipe up on objections. If he's he's just introducing a bunch of pictures that are uh, inflammatory, shall we say? <laughs> Maybe. Ooh. Thank you. Thank you. I will be here a, all night. <laughs> the Try the field. Try the field. Oh, you very large photograph on the back marked Defense Exhibit One Thirty One. Do you recognize that? I do. Can you tell me what that is. This Anybody is want to go with me to the art museum, by the way? Of a bunch of <laughs> tell you about all the uh, people stuff cleaning that's on the wall. graffiti off from the night before. Okay. Is there, when you took that picture, did you know anybody in it? I did not. After knowing about this case and meeting with Detective Howard, did you know the significance of this picture? I do. Uh, and what is it? Uh, he got there. Uh, Mr. Rittenhouse is cleaning graffiti off of Ruth of Central High School. <laughs> and, and that's really valuable testimony. How many people in this photograph? Nine, including Mr. Rittenhouse. Okay. And could you tell me what time that photograph is taken? August 25th, 1143 AM. Okay. So that would be right after, right before one o'clock. Correct. Real time. And this photograph? This is of a group of protesters. I do believe the night before, August 24th. I don't know what, uh, what, why don't you put in a question? You were covering all three nights of the demonstrations and riots, correct? Yes. During the photograph, the large photograph, and I can't see in the back. I think it's 134, 133. Look on the back of it. And can is you point the front towards the jury a couple times, please? Things turned on. <laughs> gotcha. What happened that I, I August 24th is relevant to this. You I've guys asked, have introduced. I mean, that they not be shown to the jury while it's the process of figuring out the crime. Huh? Here we go. This is exactly the point. What kind of what kind of presentation is this though? He's been talking about oh oh the, ah, so this is this one is different from the other ones I think. This uh, one's from two nights before or the night before. I don't see the relevance. Two. You schlepped that all the way into court without being able to argue for relevance. I know, he even put up a counter argument, like like an to make a proffer. And he has to send out the jury if he makes a proffer, and the judge is going to get pissed off at him heard any statements from Mr. Rosenbaum. Is that a fair statement? Yes, it is. And do you remember what Mr. Rosenbaum... He didn't make very many objections, and he doesn't seem to make night? any arguments against objections. Yes, I remember it's, a few phrases. Oh, okay. yeah. It's a, it's hey, a style, bag. right? It's a style. Do you remember that? <laughs> yes. And I guess. About the source of the it's bag? a style of appeasement. What He's like the Neville you? Chamberlain of, of lawyers. <laughs> Why did you believe that? That he just got out of jail? That's what you want in a capital oh, wait, um, wait, wait. crime, a uh, capital. Yeah. <laughs> you want that whole chamber. It right, just goes with the flow. Uh, you don't want someone to be too uh, too aggressive. I read something some time ago, which That's gave it, well. Love it. There we go. And? Our argument uh, is still present sense impression. Why did you think he just got out ago? of jail? There was paperwork came in here that made somewhat different from what has been stated here in testimony as far as the mm. origin. Mm. It was that is that somewhere in the evidence? Yes. I mean in the available evidence, not in the evidence that's been presented. No. Yes. This is this goes to what the court said could be gone into about Mr. Rosenbaum's behavior. Those statements. Well, there, there's an, a specific statement. Is there, is there an available witness that's going to testify to this? Yes. 
I think I know the court's going. I think there's a misunderstanding we should discuss. Uh, you know what? Let's. Um, Jerry's got to go. Right. I have to go upstairs. You're welcome yeah. to do so. Yep. But uh, in the meantime, let's remind the chat the, uh, that the problem with this is that Rosenbaum is a uh, convicted library. child rapist, and, and they have to be uh, very uh, careful about not saying that because. The jury might be okay with someone shooting a convicted child rapist. <laughs> I would hope they are. Yeah. yeah, I think it's worth doing. I mean, not. A, I would not saying that as a lawyer, but as a, a <laughs> but as a, an extremely ignorant person who might be on a jury. Oh, the sidebar is off the record. No, I think they're just waiting for the, the audio to leave. No, they're waiting. I think that they're, they have a really high noise gate on their. It's weird. Like, I think someone's live in the courtroom doing audio and they crank the gain on the mic that's active. And then the others have a really high noise gate so that little squeaks and creaks and uh, stuff don't come through. That's why we don't often hear Richard say I'm objection. We hear one point objection. I read uh, that uh, uh, remark was attributed to Mr. Rosenbaum. I just got out of jail. And I'm not afraid to go back or words to that effect. Did he I did say did that? I, I saw it on the video. You say you have a witness who could testify to that? Yes. Oh, he heard it? Yes. It was on the video. Your objection? My objection is discussing this belief of uh, where this bag came from. He doesn't know. If he wants to, I mean, I regret the hearsay to this, the Rosenbaum statements because obviously there's enough context, and Mr. Rosenbaum clearly is here to testify so i do believe they are hearsay although i understand the court's pre-trial ruling uh Isn't but that the hearsay uh, my, i thought we were getting a little mixed up here yeah, which, I, which I wanted to clarify exception i thought that when your honor was talking about things coming in that indicated something else i thought we were going to this declarations so. line of questioning that mr rosenbaum was getting out of jail which i believe is not in dispute that he's getting out of the hospital so I just wanted to clarify that I do believe if they want to ask him what he heard, fine. But I don't believe the, the proper form of the question is where, how did you get your belief that this bag was from jail? There's no dispute that this bag was from jail, that this bag was not from jail. Uh, and I think to repeatedly mention jail when it wasn't an issue in this case is. But, you know, I, I, I'm not in a position to know, you say it's not a dispute and that may not, that may be that it hasn't been a dispute up to this point. If the witness is, that is his recollection, it's not for me to slam the door. Mm. I understand what you're saying, but if the no, witness bullshit. recalls that, you're certainly <clears throat> welcome to cross-examine him on that. It's and not necessarily the truth of him being in jail, just the claim that he made he was in jail. Censor the evidence. I, I, I just knew the form of the question is appropriate, which is That's how right. did you form your belief that the bag was from jail? But didn't that the witness already say that? No. But he just said it. So now he's asking him, why do you say that? Am I, am, am my memory just... And I'm trying not to lean him, so I was setting the stage for the statement. I mean, he want me to... What did you, what did you hear him <laughs> say? There's three different well, statements. I, 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 okay, I, I, the objection's over. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Gotcha! It's not the truth of the matter that's being asserted. Right. It's just his right. just made the statement. Impression. It's not hearsay at all. Based on claims that could have been BS that were made by Rosenbaum. We mm -hmm. don't know whether which would, Rosenbaum which, was in jail. We just know he Listen, he had to make the objection. He had to make the objection. Yeah, yeah he, yeah, he yeah, can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he it's the right have, ruling. He can't have this guy coming out of a mental hospital or a jail or the fact that he's a child rapist. Like, the, the, if that happens, if they get to all the way back, the state's uh, case is obliterated immediately. That's their big issue here. Yeah. I don't think I don't think he should let it get back there, honestly. Like I don't morally. think that, I don't think they I will anymore. Could. I wish he could, the, but I'm saying the girlfriend was the catalyst. The girlfriend was the catalyst to get back there and they didn't they didn't go after her hard on cross. I don't think they'll get back there. But the jail thing and the hospital thing, based on his statement, I'm not afraid to go back to jail or I just got out of jail. Yeah. I mean that that it should tells come you his in. mental state at the time. Yeah, those are his mental states, how, how crazy he was and how, how threatening and menacing he was to Kyle. You guys, so that that, was, yeah, that was not so much video. about his mental state, but his, his behavior that was that was observable by the people around him. Objection has been overruled. Go ahead. Sir, did you hear Mr. Rosenbaum say anything about the bag? 
I did. What was that? That he's not afraid to go back to jail. <clears throat> and you told the detective that when you were interviewed back on September 11th, of 2020, <laughs> correct? Correct. <clears throat> Never forget. Now, directing your attention <laughs> to the ultimate gas station, approximately 5900 Sheridan Road, did you see um, an incident regarding a dumpster? I did. Did you see who was lighting and pushing that dumpster? I did not. Did you see what happened to that dumpster? I did. What? It was, the fire was put out okay. by a fire extinguisher. And when the fire in the dumpster was put out by the fire extinguisher, was there any reaction from the people who were starting the fire? Yes, a very angry reaction. Okay. Did you recognize or notice anybody's specific reaction at that time? I did, Mr. Rosenbaum. Okay. Describe that, please. He was very agitated. Um, he was yelling, fuck the police over and over and over. I'm not afraid to go back to jail and shoot me N-word. Shoot me N-word. But he was using the whole word. Correct. At a Black Lives, Lives Matter rally? Correct. And he had to be held back from attacking people. Is that a fair statement? That is a fair statement. No. 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 What? Come on, stream. Oh, no. Mercado, what's wrong with your internet? It's not my internet. Nick, you broke the internet. Oh, Oh, man. (gasps) Hold on. I'll get it back up. Damn it. I I have an alternate. Yes, a very angry reaction. Okay. Hold on. Did you recognize or notice anybody's specific go. reaction at that time? I did, Mr. Rosenbaum. Okay. Describe that, please. He was very agitated. Um, he was Wait, yelling. So we went back a couple seconds, actually. Fuck the police over and over Ooh. and over. So we won't miss I'm him. not yeah, afraid to go back again. to jail we'll and shoot me around. N-word. Shoot me N-word. But he was using the whole word. Correct. At a black lives Lives Matter rally? Correct. And he had to be held back from attacking people. Is that a fair statement? That is a fair statement. Done. It's done. It's in. Overruled. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's not meaningful. I mean, you, it's, you, you can ask him two questions That's instead of one. The pictures you brought, correct? Correct. And you told Detective Howard about that? Correct. And the incident regarding the chain and that he kept it and was swinging it around. You told the detective about that. This is all leading. Um, Necessary to develop the testimony. Rephrase your question. Did you? Did the topic of the chain come up in your interview with law enforcement? Not that I recall. Still, Still yes or no question. If it's contained in a report taken by the detective, you wouldn't dispute that, would you? I wouldn't. That's why. Answer, I would. I wouldn't dispute it because I'm now, a nice guy. You went south of 60th and Sheridan, correct? Correct. And you were taking photographs, observing. Yes, I was. And what direction were you walking? Southbound. Okay. Did anything strange or out of the ordinary happen as you were heading south? Yes. Um, I saw a, a gentleman um, start running, and then a crowd kind of followed behind them. Okay. The individual who you saw running, do you know who that is? Not at the time. Okay. Did you know the significance of him running at the time? I did not. Had you heard anything before you saw this individual running at you? Not running at you, but running no okay and do you know who that individual is now i do and how do you know that through identification through photographs in the media i guess i could say okay and who is that person uh kyle rittenhouse okay describe what you observed what direction was kyle running he was running southbound towards 63rd street okay so he's running away from the 60th Street? No, hang on. Running south. 
if that's easier. Okay. And how, how far did you see him get? I saw him enter, I don't know what car source it is, but the car source that's on the corner across from the hospital, I saw him up, go up in that driveway. And that was the last. This pointer? Uh, pointer? Yes. Oh, oh. No. This pointer? See the laser one? Yeah. Do you see the map behind you? Orientia. This is north. Yes. This is south. So this would be east, west. Here's a car source, gas station, ultimate. Car source, car source. Where did you first see Kyle Rittenhouse on this map, if you could point with the laser pointer? Is that the hospital down here? Yeah, this is the hospital parking lot. Um, is this Sheridan Road? Yes, it is. Um, I would probably say I saw Kyle right around here. Okay. And he was heading in a southerly direction? Yeah. And he goes where? To car source. Okay. And when he goes into the car source parking lot, could you see him anymore? I could not, know. Did you follow him? I was making my way up there, but not in an urgent manner. Okay. And making my way uptown. I heard what <laughs> seemed to be like a firework. And then I heard, I could tell between them, uh, there was multiple gunshots. And then what did you observe? I observed Kyle walking down the same driveway that I witnessed him going up and then pick up his pace as he continued northbound on Sheridan Road. Okay. Was anybody taking note of Kyle as he headed in the northward direction on Sheridan? There was people screaming at him um, and also following him. Okay. Did you see anybody run up to him? I did. Okay. And how close were you to Kyle when this individual ran up to him? 15 feet, maybe. Okay. And that individual who ran up to him, what happened? Um, what I seen was an individual run up to him with a skateboard and swing it at him, letting go of the skateboard and it hit Kyle between the neck and I would say the mid back and the skateboard. I don't know if Kyle kicked it cause he was running when the skateboard fell, but the skateboard flew off to the side. Okay. And did that knock Kyle to the ground? Just, just tell us what you saw, sir. Was the he stumbled. He wasn't necessarily on the ground at that point. Okay. And then what did you observe? The next thing I observed was at the time, I did not know who it was. Um, now I can say Anthony Huber. It looked like he was trying to subdue Kyle. And that's when everything happened in a matter of a second. Um, that's when Kyle turned. It looked like he turned because Kyle was on the ground at this time. And that's when he kind of turned and he released one shot and it hit Anthony Huber in the chest. Okay. Did you see Anthony Huber do anything with his skateboard as he's trying to, as you said, subdue Kyle? Yes. Um, he also whacked him. I don't know if it was on his head or like his neck area again. Okay. It was all happening very fast. <laughs> yes, it did. Okay. And there was also a lot of people on my side of. Can you bring up the exhibit, please? That may become a point for cross examination. The people yeah, that were I in his way, be. maybe. For visibility. I want to point subdue out the, the, the state is using objections really effectively and it's getting to Richards. He needs um, to calm because down and just he, ask the questions right. He has a frustrating witness. I mean, he's a good witness, but he doesn't keep going. He's not, yeah, highly literate. You just want to say, and then. Did, were you able to see that video? If you could play it one more time. Can you go back even 10 seconds earlier? Was hesitant um, of approaching him, um, but then he, Kyle Rittenhouse fired their shot and it hit Anthony Huber. Hey, did you see anything after that? 
um, uh, he, who I now know as Gage, um, took a couple steps forward towards Kyle and um, with a gun and Kyle shot him in the bicep. Did you see what Gage Grossquitz was doing with his hand? Yes, he had a firearm in his hand. You could see that? Yes, I could see that. And he was approaching Kyle with a firearm in his hand? I don't know if he was running with it, but once he got up to Kyle, I did see the firearm. Okay, and what did he do as he approached Kyle? So I would have been on the back side of Gage, so I don't know. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Kostkoitz. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, Mr. How do you say his last name? Grosskoitz. Grosskoitz. Good enough. For okay. Um, <laughs> Mr. Grosskoitz's <laughs> back was towards me. Um, well, it was at an angle. I wasn't directly behind him. So I only could see they should have one let him of his stick hands. With Gage. Okay. And describe what you saw happen. He had his firearm out um, pointing at Kyle. Okay. And oh, no. as the gun's pointing at Kyle, what happened? Kyle shot Mr. Grosskreutz. How close was Kyle Rittenhouse and Mr. Grosskreutz from your vantage point? If I would have had to have guessed under three feet. Now, you I were waiting for the for the uh, prosecution correct. attorneys. Does it have to be to watch witnesses answer questions like you expect? Cross, correct. And, correct. And there was <laughs> detention in that room, correct? There was. And they weren't happy with what you were telling them. Is that a fair statement? That's a fair you, statement. Uh, a, it is leading, and B, I want no reaction. Facial reaction, please. <laughs> Describe oh, your meeting interesting. with Mr. Binger and Mr. Krause in their office. Overruled. 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 Please. Um, I don't know the date off the top of my head, um, but I was called down to the district attorney's office. Um, I met with Mr. Binger and I don't remember his name. The individual who's in the blue. Um, and we were, I was called into a, a room, sat at a Krause's table, um, handed my police <laughs> statement, um, got to read over my police statement. And then I was asked if I would like to add anything um, to the police statement. And I said, I would not. Uh, Mr. Binger pulled out a cell phone and showed me a video and also a photo which was actually one photo that I brought today and asked me to, if I knew who a gentleman was in that photo. And I said, I did not. And he asked me to, or he, um, he said, this is uh, Joshua Zeminski. Um, I, he, Mr. Binger also has a case with him and I am subpoenaed for that case also. And he says, well, that's who that is. He put the phone down, he picked the phone back up and says, who is this? And I confusingly said, like, Joshua Zeminski, and he's like, would you like to add that to your statement? And I just felt. <laughs> I wow. My wah, wah. And as a result, what did you do? Um, I hired an attorney. And that's Mr. Rose. <laughs> <Yeah>. Smart. Smart. <laughs> Smart. Yeah. He's Smart. 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 <laughs> this dude's yeah. amazing. No, he's not an idiot. Um, no. Uh-uh. Except for the ones that are objected to relevance, yeah. No. I, well, the one, I, the one that I, uh, I guess there were two that I sustained objection. The remainder will be received. Two bigger. The two, big. the two big ones, and then the third big one wasn't uh, even presented. So all the big ones are rejected. The, uh, well, two of the big ones are rejected. One of the big ones was not offered. I'm sure they'll be very happy uh, wherever it goes when they're defined as the big ones. But, uh, but, uh, uh, Does all that just make a smaller sex joke? Number, uh, I don't think so. Is it He's the court's like ruling that, that, that size matters? <laughs> that was the name of my master's <laughs> thesis, by the way. That's fine. Okay. Who's your master? Mr. De Bruin, you said there was a lot of tension in the room when you met with me and Mr. Binger and Ms. Beasy. Yes. Is it fair to say that you were very nervous? 
Absolutely. You. And we did have you read over your statement, right? Correct. And we asked if you knew anything beyond that statement. Correct. We didn't ask you to change it. You, yes, you did. Identify Mr. Zeminski. Or if I wanted to change any details to, um, how, to how I, if I remember anything else throughout that night and to add Joshua Zeminski. Now we met for the case against Kyle Rittenhouse. It's correct? not perfectly, correct. perfectly unclear what he's talking most about. Most of the discussion involved Mr. Zeminski. I would say probably half of it. Because Attorney Binger is prosecuting Mr. Zeminski for arson. Apparently. And you <laughs> took a number of pictures of that perhaps include Mr. Zeminski, correct? Correct. So Mr. Binger was verifying if you knew that was Mr. Zeminski and asked you if you saw him in some pictures. Is, is that testimony? Apparently. And it's I, like testimony. And, and, I, and I did not know who Joshua Zeminski was. It's now, never good when most of your cross has been trying so to say, hey, we didn't do anything it. unethical when we spoke to you. That's <laughs> <Yeah>. a, <laughs> screw the case. Don't prosecute us. Look at Binger's face. Why would his case against Zeminski is being torched? So your, your testimony is that the state torched, good word. Face, the case against Kyle Rittenhouse <laughs> wanted you to present incriminating evidence against Mr. Zeminski. I don't know why he asked me that question. It, I it, found it odd too. Is it possible you didn't understand the question? No, he was pretty clear. And then you said you went and you had an attorney? I did. How did the meeting end? What do you mean? How what did, did end? I mean, how did our meeting end? Our what meeting a my dumpster own. fire. No, I can't ask about the attorney. I mean our meeting in my in my office with Mr. Binger and Ms. Beasy. Um it ended with Mr. Binger saying that he would be in touch with me in regards to the <laughs> Zeminski case. Because we indicated that we would subpoena you for that case. You did subpoena me for that case. And that was the absolute <laughs> end of the meeting? That I recall. Do you remember that afterwards you and I spoke about your photography and I complimented your photography? We <laughs> talked about your photography? That was in the beginning. <laughs> what? And at the end? <laughs> Mostly in the beginning because we were waiting for Mr. Binger to get in the room because <laughs> I don't know Heather maybe. Do you remember I was being really nice uh, to you? I was in the room when we were just waiting for Mr. Binger to get in the room. You it's can't fight like, with an eidetic we, memory. So we you said we'd be friends. In about or changing the thing about Kyle. <laughs> I gave you that juice box. Not specific. No. <laughs> because Kyle Rittenhouse, that name doesn't even appear in your statement, does it? <laughs> I don't think so. Not to my knowledge. And. So the discussion about changing statements, did, did we actually ask you to retype your statement out? No. So oh, what do you mean really? we asked you to change it? I'm assuming <laughs> there wasn't details. Bad question. So I'm either add Kyle's name or because I was also showing a video off of a cell phone by Mr. Binger. I don't know what that video or whose video that was, but it was of the shooting. And that's when I was asked Keep if going. I wanted to add anything Keep else. Keep elaborating. Statement, and I said no. And you took that literally, like actually writing out your statement? Yeah. Yeah. You did not take that to mean, <laughs> is there anything your statement doesn't cover or that oh we should know? Oh, God. Fat boy, no. let it go. I don't mean this mean, in a mean way. Have they never talked the to someone that you who took November has 11. autism? He, he didn't say retype it, but he said, do I want to add anything to that? And to how I interpret that, that's pretty much altering my yes, statement and of I felt uneasy about that. Seriously. You added things to your statement on the stand today. Um, that oh, was because on. I recall in videos of certain things happening that oh. when I, the day I gave my statement, when I walked to the police station, when I walked into that police station, there wasn't even a, a glass door on oh. that. So how building. is, I'm sorry, how is that different than what attorney Binger asked? Did you want to add anything? How is that any different was so than asking if you remember other things? This guy digs pretty well for someone who doesn't look like he gets a lot of I, exercise. Yeah. <laughs> when I had a meeting with Mr. Richards, the following night, I want to say, the following day, around like maybe 3, 3.30, at his office. Mm -hmm. And he remembers the time. I was also then. showing videos yes. there. I'm sure Krause and isn't prior to for the defense. happening <laughs> in those I mean, videos, is, I was saying yeah. things that actually were just about to happen and he asked me oh 
uh, do you mind if I bring this up? And I said, absolutely. But I did not change. I did not alter that statement. I did not write a new statement out. So no like one I said before, he, he comes across as, as such no, a sincere, right, genuine, kind-hearted person. So it's well, hard okay. to impeach him. And he's thing. trying to go you hard know, on him. And I don't think it's working. Statement. I don't know about you guys. But the way Mr. Well, Binger wanted it. Right. I mean, how he portrayed it to me to, was to lying. add on to my statement physically. Mr. Richards just took notes. Did, did someone ask you to type out a new statement? Oh, what's this type hard, out? Hard Shit. Typing. You have a bias in this case, don't you? Whoa. You don't want Mr. Rittenhouse to be found guilty or not guilty? Okay. Objection. You don't want him to be found yeah. guilty or not guilty? You don't, you, you don't have an interest action. or a bias in which way this trial comes out? I don't know. I'm did a you, photographer, photojournalist. That's what I do. I take photos. Uh, did you go and give an interview to a uh, a gossip site that is biased against the district attorney? Uh, oh, Jesus uh, Christ. Oh, my God. <laughs> so you actually yeah, went to the media or someone who claims to be media to talk about this meeting with the prosecutors. First of all, he came to me. I didn't go to him. Oh, oh my God. Did the defense <laughs> take a, a break, break that no one else took? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know him personally. Stop, 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 stop. I'm sorry. Um, Who is he even talking well, about that he's supposed to be on? Uh, let's do this. Um, we need to take one more break before the day's done. Is anyway. Anyway, so why don't we take uh, just a ten-minute break? And <laughs> nice. We'll talk about and, maybe, and maybe Mr. Farley will get his. Rouse might be about to get his he's ass getting elbowed on the ropes yeah. right now. I mean, he's, he's going to go getting... down and get his notes from he's... the place where he lives, down by the river. <laughs> and he might he might actually get get snappy at the judge again like he did yesterday what the hell and, and you, you wouldn't thinking? imagine that a guy who's six foot four 112 pounds could take out that kind of girth but he's burying him <laughs> Idectic Honestly, memory you don't mess with that you don't mess yes. with that i'm sorry you don't fuck with that explain that explain that you're you're, uh, you're just saying something serious yeah, no, yeah, he, th this guy has has expressed uh, like an eidetic memory, basically perfect recall of, yeah. of so much stuff. And then he's he's and he's got a very specific lensed interpretation that is extremely literal. I don't right. know if he's right. I don't know if he's autistic, but it's characteristic of someone on the autism spectrum yes. to, mm -hmm. to tend to take things literal without nuance. And And this guy has that it's obvious and so and it's not only that it's obvious that these prosecutors knew that yes yeah. Yeah. because yeah. they talked to him before they they interviewed yeah. him and they figured oh, here we, here they could trick go. him yeah here you go okay speculation on it he's asking what he knows about an unnamed reporter's bias yeah and that's i've never heard that before that he can testify <laughs> about somebody else's bias uh i you about his bias well, you know, what is it? What does that mean? Do you know about the bias? Um, I can break it. I can ask it a different way. That would be good. You could also abandon this line of questioning. Your Honor, what's the way just run for the hills. Why don't you go uh, to details about the well, shooting or any of the facts relevant to the case as opposed to how uh, unethical no, let's you were in how this guy? You can walk around if you like, but we need to make a cross-examining. It's a lot of CYA here. It's a lot of CYA. Yeah, that's they're a big worried, egg, by yeah. The way. They look they have terrible. a really big egg. Ron, Ron, you were saying <laughs> you were saying right before the judge started speaking. These guys know they've talked yes. to this guy. They yes. know this is how he is. It makes them look extra slimy. The jury is sitting there watching these guys cross-examine this guy who seems really straightforward and forthright. Oh no, but I'm, I, no no no. I'm actually saying something even more damning. When the prosecutors met with him. Mm -hmm. They figured they could get him to say and sign anything they suggested, mm -hmm. they because even because it's if in fact he has thing. that, is it I, didactic, I didactic, didactic, you can I say didactic. photographic. You can just say photographic yeah. memory. It's the same. That's thing. sort of yeah. that right. That's sort of almost photographic like memory that we associate with people who have uh, <laughs> autism. Like they come across as sounding stupid, but in other respects, they can recall things that uh, we don't, we do not. have actually know anything about this fellow but yeah, no 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 they, he, the way he comes across they figured oh great we've got mm -hmm. gomer pile here mm -hmm. he's gonna uh, he's gonna just go along and get along he's a nice guy anything else you want to add yeah look yeah. at this video so oh, that's look, what's at, this, now. look yeah, at this look video the phone. you want to change yeah. oh yeah it's really like yeah. they're trying to bully forrest gump here that's really what it is except yeah. that and it's just 
Except it's for entirely the based on he's Bojutin. Rain Man. He's not Forrest Gump. It's based right. on his yeah, speech impediment. That. That's mm-hmm. the thing. It's yeah, based yeah. on his speech yeah. impediment. They got this guy in there. Ron's exactly right. Uh, oh, well, let me just, let's just show him this picture. Then he puts the phone down clear, like a very important detail there. He puts the phone down, then he picks it back up later. Are you sure you don't want to change your statement? You want to make any changes about who this is? You know, I mean, it, it looks we've so already got slimy. these jokers yeah. acting up anyway. We've got other testimony about these prosecutors acting right. up. Right, exactly. This is, yes, yeah. This this was stupid. Like this case. Them. This case, this, well, yeah, but can we just observe for a moment the even contrast, going, going to this on cross. The contrast of the witnesses that are, you know, that the prosecution and the defense has brought, because every witness so far brought by the defense has been one after another someone who seems so completely credible in the way they present their story, their testimony, and what they're how they're coming across compared to the Gage Grosskreutzes that were put up there. I mean, are are you to... saying that the uh, the the kids of the uh, car uh, lot owner didn't seem credible? <laughs> I, um, <laughs> I, the inventory guy that doesn't know how many cars there are. Right, I, 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 I'm not sure what you're saying here. Uh, a couple of thoughts. What, what is that the, you're saying? This was uh, again yet another just a disastrous Unforced testimony. Error. From the state uh, you know what else on, is on disastrous the, the fact that we are 1,000 subscribers away from Rakeda being 200,000 yeah wow. oh, Ooh, I mean, come on so come on guys let's get there let's get into 200,000 I want to see it over the top and while oh, you're there yeah. smash that I'm out button. grifting the grifter guys we're, <laughs> we're actually less than 500 away because I get to oh. see the real number oh no that's Ooh. just edgy come on okay, guys 500 let's do this <laughs> Uh, let's do this. All right, I'll finally subscribe. Well, do you guys think the prosecutors <laughs> should have even gone into this on cross examination? No, why, they should have. The they, you drop it. You come you... out with is, oh, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't do this to you, did we? We didn't. It's like you're, you're not going to address the photographic evidence. You're not going to address his testimony about Rosenbaum. You're not going to address anything relevant to the case. What you're really worried about is how Covering unethical you look in Zeminski's yes. case. Yes. Terrible. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Imagine how much of a, it was a little shocker. We laughed. And then if they would have moved on to just like the facts of the case, it would have been a big deal. It's way worse now for them with the cross-examination. They they took a small problem and made it a huge problem. I think we hit 200K. Oh, yeah. Good job, Nick. 200K. Congratulations. Really? Wow. Thank you. And the number one streaming site. We're 2,000 ahead of PBS. The number one streaming site. Wow. Thank you to the chat. You guys are amazing. Even though you're making me laugh a little too much. um, (laughs) And uh, and I, I, I... I, I didn't want to come across as rude or mean because I really uh, was not. Again, if if I'm going to be rude or mean to someone, you'll know. Look at the big mm-hmm. prosecutor. I've been rude and mean to him the whole time. Um, and, Except you uh, just called him big instead of fat. Well, that uh, he, look, he's he's, he's had fat. a hard day. Ron. He's, he's had a husky. hard day, Ron. He's, he's husky. I'm husky. He's husky. I'm husky. <laughs> big bone. <laughs> big bone. <laughs> no, he's. Uh, well, like Chris you Christie said, imitator for, makes me look for, poofy. For a guy, for a guy that doesn't look like he gets up and worked out too much, he's really good at digging. <laughs> Who said that? Who said that? Oh man! No, it's uh, this. This has been. I mean, I, unforced error is uh, is a phrase that my friend Ty uses a lot, and there's a lot of unforced error going on from the prosecution here again, and the defense. I mean, Richards, uh, he got, he's gotten tripped up on leading. I think he had a, a tough witness to direct yeah. examine because the guy yeah. is responsive. But you know, but yes. he's not, he's not making a, I understand, you know, when I, I always have a second share it, and the guy, usually it's a younger guy and he wants me to object 10 times more than is appropriate because yep. he's going by, you know, what he learned in, in, in law school is right. an improper question. You know, you've got to, Save your objections. They got to count. They got to matter. Good. No, These guys are letting too much go by. They're not right. making a record of improper. This this entire thing about the journalist. Forget about the state of mind of the journalist. The relevance of you. So you want to prove right. bias? You didn't come close. Yeah. You didn't come close to setting a foundation up for that. Right. No. The, and the judge is also, I mean, at some point the judge needs to do his job too, even if there isn't an objection. You got to, got to ride on, you know, hey, Emily. The case. Hey. What's up, Emily? I heard you hit Emily's 200K. Back. 
I did. I did. Thank you. And the prosecutor's attacking a witness trying to ask him someone else's opinion? What's well, happening? That's, yeah. That's, uh, that, uh, not just anyone. I, not, that, I would like that, to, I would like to take a take a tally of how many lawsuits have just gone up in flames just in the last couple of days, aside from this one. <laughs> he seriously could not have done a worse job if he called him Elmer Fudd. That's they, like there was no, it, it, seriously, yeah. that was terrible. I that see was, what you Yoda. did there, Joe. I I know, what you Zeminski was an arsonist, like getting in the word arsonist on the record. I mean, this is just looking and, good. And the the these these questions, um, aren't you biased? No, like that just <laughs> no. Don't you have an interest in the outcome of the case? And I'm sitting no. here like, why the no. hell are you asking this? You know he's gonna say no, and he's gonna say and it, it just in a very matter of fact way. He looked terrible. Oh, At least yeah. ask yourself, what am I gonna say if he says no? Before yes. you ask that question. Yes. Well, you yes. really do, you know. though, don't you? I mean, no. That's what all you, you should say is thank yeah. you for being really? honest. The, I think his yeah. follow-up question is really. Really? But are you sure? Really? Oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. Do you want to change your brain. Brain. No. Well, <laughs> no, that's what he does. What no. he does is he shows him the phone, then he puts it down, then he shows him again. You say, you want to change your statement? Are you biased now? <laughs> it was very interesting watching them say, well, no, they wanted me to change it to say what he wanted me to say. Um, that never looks good for the prosecution. And when they could not like sure. that either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they just they look a little too sticky now. And he comes across very um, earnest. I think yes. So going yes. after him is not good. Yes. Yes. The witness I think is the a very earnest to witness. Prosecutors out. Yes. I call him this break. I really All do. They, yes. <laughs> well, I, so they can look think, at them and say, "What the fuck are you thinking?" <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think there, there, you know, there were there was about to be some cross uh, glances there, but uh, again, with with this type of witness, you you see him on direct and how he is. You just go ahead. And you hit the factual statements pertinent to the night. The other stuff is is fluff. And if this guy blanks you, you're going to look terrible. Because oh, you can't go news. after him. He's not aggressive. He's he's uh -huh. just coming with the facts. And again, defense attorneys can go a little harder on people than prosecutors can. <clears throat> Juries don't have a tolerance for prosecutors bringing the weight of the state and looking like they're being slimy. They just don't like it. Because people don't like it. The chat doesn't like it. Nobody likes it. No, you're representing the government. You have to be better than that. Hmm. People in the Agreed. government. That's a take neat note. thought. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's, and it's what, a tough burden because you get be. paid less. <laughs> That's a fair point. <laughs> uh, it just. <laughs> How do I get a chair that is the judges? So not only does it swivel, yes. it rocks. It's giant. <laughs> it's made it's of wood. That. That's a prison made it's chair. stately. <laughs> That's gotta it's, be a prison made chair. It's a great chair, and it's got the seal of the state in the leather. Yeah. It's very nice. That's this is way part. better than the case. They need a better the, seal. Not even the federal judges have that. They have palaces. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, yeah this is probably the 30, best 30, judicial 30, throne I've seen. Yeah. <laughs> Game of judicial thrones. Yeah. Make <laughs> the, the That's why he mentioned trial by combat. <laughs> so I wonder I wonder if they're going to try and squeeze another witness in. It's 4 o'clock Central. So they technically, you know, they, he's been ending around 4.30 to 5. This guy's going to get done in the next couple minutes. Um, oh, you mean the sure. witness? I thought you were talking about the prosecutor. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> Look, Ty, he's a little bigger. He takes longer to cook. Yeah, but, he, but he, he was, he's been done for a while. Yeah. What is the judge ordering? Is he ordering lunch for tomorrow? Oh, yeah. What is that? Christmas cookies? Yeah, is that somebody's yeah. kid's fundraiser? Oh, right. He's yes. getting some uh, wrapping paper. A kid's fundraiser. Uh... Yes, I think it's I somebody's it. kid's fundraiser. The improper. It. Improper. What if it's so like the clerk's so kid or something? Sickening. Maybe it's Rittenhouse Boy Scout cookies or something. I don't know. <laughs> no, they we don't do Boy Scout have, cookies. We used to have Christmas parties at our court, various courthouses with the court staffs, with gift exchanges and white elephants. It was always really fun. Um, criminal courthouses are so unique, especially when they're small, small prosecution office, small defense bar. It can be a lot of fun. Remember, it can it's also be really stressful. Now, you bigots. <laughs> All right. He just no looks further angry. questions. That's the only thing you should say. No, no further, further questions. questions. Yep, yep, yep. Sit down. Um, or ask about the actual this, details uh, of the case. Blogger approached you. <laughs> yes. To this blogger. Why do we care about a blogger? He's, he's going to do it. We don't. We never have. He, yeah. He... This blogger is going to be thrilled. Uh, can you repeat the question? Do you know how he found out that you had something to say? 
What do you mean something to say? Well, you said he approached you. Do you know? Do you know how he knew to approach you? Yikes! So angry. he was at my attorney's office. Um, did you waive attorney-client privilege so that uh, your attorney could talk to him about it? Whoa! He wasn't in the meeting with my schmuck. Attorney. You schmuck. What a moose! You this witness is way smarter than the attorney. He was at my attorney's office, just not in conversations in regards to. He was waiting for my office there. And you know this blogger and your uh, attorney have a very close business relationship? Oh, I don't know. Do you know anything about this blogger? I do not. So why did you talk to him? He was with the media. You talked to all media this that ever contacted you? Judge! No. Judge, get involved yeah. in this case. You know this blogger has posted... No. I don't know. Oh, I, 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 let me finish the question. Which it's blogger? Blogger? it's no, turning, no, it's turning the process. Has posted many articles. Why? Wants They're going to let them skewer themselves in front of the jury. Why object? Yeah, they don't yeah. need to protect yeah. this witness. You, you know, you exactly. might, you might be right. You might this witness be, is protecting you, himself. Uh, you get the, my you get the price. Office. I do not know this. Agreed. Did you do guy. any research about who this person was before you spoke to him? No. No. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yep. Now Why he's objecting. You winning? Oh. Yes. Because uh, nothing's going to hurt the defense. It hurts the prosecution acting that, like this. On that. Oh. Perfect. So... No, on that topic, I no, I oh, no, it's on that topic. Thank you. So, hmm. would you describe our our meeting in the DA's office as cordial and uneventful? God, oh, Jesus! Oh my God! Jeez. Oh my God! Besides the uneasy feeling I had. <laughs> <laughs> so when we asked you, to be I will. I, I'm going to adopt this guy. Yeah. When Attorney Richards asked you the next day, uh, uh, let, me, let me back it up. So we asked you, you felt that you back it up. I wasn't prepared. Really back anything it way up. Fair to say? Correct, because I didn't want to change it. So then when Attorney Richards asked you the next day, if you have anything to add to your statement, you tell him all sorts of things. He didn't present it to adding my statement. He, he said, can I take notes? He didn't use the word statement like I'm changing my statement. So that so that the verbiage is what made you uncomfortable. Correct. Did he have you read your statement before you talked to him? I just read it the night before. Okay, so I already knew. So the fact that you physically had your statement with us is what made you uneasy. Correct. Okay. Um, you're laughing, boy. So you're now laughing. we're talking about your statement. Let's show you what is in Mark does. Uh, is it in- uh, Agony. Do you recognize this? Yes. Oh, he's so pissed. He practically threw that is it at him. The police statement I yeah. gave on 9-11-2020. And this is the one that we asked you to read in my office. Correct. And when you tried to have me change. <laughs> you make no mention at all of Mr. Did I mention? I'm having to be held back. Because this was taken on 9-11. I was a year prior to this when I walked into a building that I really didn't even want to be in. Um, but the ATF, however, you guys work on your cases. It was brought to you guys, not me voluntarily. The ATF brought it to you and got you guys involved. By you guys, you mean the detective that's Uh, investigating this case? Yes. I had a homicide detective over at my house. So you gave the statement on September Name one element of any of the charged right. crimes that's Is been addressed in this prosecution. Is it fair to say your memory of the events was better on September 11, 2020? Pretty much the same. Uh, you're not going to forget this situation ever. Well, then why did you forget to put things in your report? Objection! I, first of all, it was, like I said, when I first walked into the police station, I walked through a police station that didn't even have a door, didn't have no glass attached. There was glass on the ground, completely all shattered on the ground. I have photos, don't worry. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very, I He's got the constantly. He's got um, He came with receipts. Because they couldn't get a hold of D- Detective Howard. So when he came in, it was a really... Paging uh, Dr. Howard. Paging rushed, Dr. Howard. It wasn't... Uh, Take your time, type of deal. You were there for you. Get your statement was an hour and a half long. Don't and know they, what. Right. I don't know how long it was. And they were in the room within five minutes of you walking in the. I don't in the believe that. Room. So, your explanation for why your statement leaves things out is because you walked through a door without a window. 
No, Rude. I was I was trying to explain how nervous and anxious I was because I mean I'm a human all around that area just business local businesses are being destroyed everything. oh my god and to be walking <laughs> so into good a for police the police department in the <sighs> middle of this time isn't good I was threatened numerous times throughout the week of me photographing and capturing all the, all these photos, I was threatened numerous times. So I was uneasy with people still standing outside the police department, walking in, knowing I have to walk out with these people out here. So you gave this statement 17 days after the shooting. Is that accurate? If, yeah. And you're still saying that property was being destroyed and there were protests there was seven no days later? Let me finish my question, please. Oh man! Oh, oh. Not a good luck. This is not of this the week of the shooting. Nothing to that extent, but there was no window in the police station. So, so the fact that there was no window, go. let it go, man. You could not give. Yesterday we saw a murder. Today we're seeing that. a suicide. <laughs> if, if the people <laughs> outside could see him, yeah. So make sure you say what I'm saying. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, 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 he's angry. Oh, my God. Oh, my. Wow. Good things were left out of your statement. Not on intentionally. He's I mean, those are little details. Out. That's a traumatic situation that someone has to go through. I, I just witnessed someone dying. It's another person getting their arm almost blown off. 17 days prior. Doesn't matter how long it is. I still oh. suffer to that, from that traumatic still to this day. Do you yep. have, oh you said God. you've been nervous, you said you were anxious. So. Does that really affect your perception of events? Oh my God, he just doesn't let go, what a schmuck. I, no. You know, I, I was critical <laughs> of the defense <laughs> when some of their cross-exam, I thought they should but have pushed like right or done some other stuff like, to some of the witnesses. Right now. And this is why you probably you don't do that. When you spoke to it's, us it's just bad. let this shithead Absolutely. go on and on and on. Mm. Now, you in your on. statement, there's no mention of Mr. Rosenbaum having to be held back. Correct. There's no mention of him saying anything about shoot me and words. Sorry, can you repeat that? Sure, sorry. Well, I didn't. There's We've nothing seen in the there video. about saying shoot me and words. Correct. Are you disputing that with And Seth? is that because you saw it on a video later? <laughs> but he did. When I was showing a video at Mr. R Richard's office. <laughs> As the video was playing, I was telling things that was happening before the video was actually playing. Like, I don't know, before the, the details that I said coming out my mouth happened on the video. So did you observe him say that or did you see it on a video? I saw, I heard him say it and like, like what? Are, what's your question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As you were there that night, did you see Mr. Rosenbaum Say that, yes. or is that based on him video no. no, I Sit saw him. Down. Oh, He's getting worse. But it's not in Look your at Binger too. Correct. Look at Binger. Binger should be telling him, like, sit uh, down. There's nothing in your statement about seeing uh, Mr. Rittenhouse walk down to car source. He should be texting someone in his office to pull the fire alarm. Like, so, so this homicide suspect and his actions. Seconds before the alleged homicide, that's a little detail. You, you also you, remember going back. I didn't. Bully. This whole situation got blown out of the water when the ATF got involved. Oh and I was so many people showing up at my house, showing up at my job. The FBI showed up at my job and asking oh me questions. So yeah. when this statement was given, I gave it to the best recollection of my memory that I could with everything else that was going on around me at, in my life at that time regarding with the anxiety you and agree the intimidation watching a homicide person. suspect walk up to the scene of the first homicide is not a little detail. Oh my God. Oh my God. I was stressed out at the time. I'm sorry. Does he think the next question is going to make this go better? That you the saw Mr. Gage, uh, Mr. Grosskreutz um point his gun at mr rittenhouse yes that's nowhere in your statement correct uh, there you so go that wasn't important to include on september 11th like i said i'm not a detective 
You're asking me the question. But you can tell you you you, you did it with you <laughs> taking over a porta potty. Is that more is that more uh, important than someone pointing a gun at a homicide suspect? Oh my God. No, but it's easier to remember when I captured the photo. <laughs> oh! <laughs> photo so to remember. Oh, this guy is, man, this guy's landing it's, some blows. <laughs> so are these your memories? Yeah, this witness is obviously pissed. Photos and you've changed your memory Give up, or dubs. altered your memory because of the photos. Well, it's, no, it shows the advantage of being right to your button. witnesses. I mean, he's, he's, he, they're adversarial so now. You had a camera on. You the witness is way better than the attorney. That's how yep. I would have got those yep. photos. And did that take photos <laughs> and video? It did. So they should take away his law degree and give it to the witness. In front of you with <laughs> people chasing Mr. Rittenhouse. I did. Did you turn your camera on? He said I did. Oh, I did. I'm sorry. Did you turn your camera on? To take photos? To take anything? Uh, no. Um, I didn't. Uh, if there's a video, of, I don't know what whose video. Excuse well, me. I'm talking about your video. Did you turn your camera on? No. He should have no. said, let me finish. No. It's a very chaotic yeah. situation. Well, you're there to document things, aren't you? And I'm not a professional. Ooh. So in your statement, it says nothing about Gage pointing the gun, correct? Correct. In fact, you said, He's going to keep hammering. Anthony he walked he the he did up and slapped. That's when I stepped back. I was at the corner house on the southwest corner of Sheridan 61st Street at this time. That's what you said? Correct. I hugged the north wall of the house for cover. Is that correct? Correct. But somehow from hugging the north wall of the house, you saw what happened with Mr. Grosskreutz? That was, by the time I got to the house, everything was done. That's how fast that happened. I didn't even get out of the street. I was still in the street when he was shot, when Grosskreutz was shot. I'm sorry. All you say about the shooting is I saw Gage get shot in the arm and it was a mist of blood. That's all you say about the interaction between Mr. Grosskreutz and Mr. Rittenhouse. Correct. So that was important to say, but nothing else regarding that incident. Like I said, I'm not a detective. I don't know what you guys look for. I'm sorry that I left that out. <laughs> should have asked me better questions in my interview. I've never had to do anything yeah. like this. Oh, wow. He's doing a great job as a witness. Oh, it every such day. a great Beautiful. job. If Brian, Stelter Brian Stelter and Brian Stelter had a baby, they would do this cross-examination. <laughs> this is what they, they would look like this <laughs> and ask these questions. You know if if Brian Stelter that? multiplied himself, um, this is what I don't know how your arms work. The slide would have stayed back if there was no ammunition in it. Did you watch him load the gun? No. He's just going down his list of questions. At this point, abandon the fucking list. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah, now, when you fire, are, put it out. Statement by a detective. They tell you to put everything in it that's important, right? Oh God, he's going back. Why? Through my eyes. Can't let it go. You uh, signed yeah, a he, statement that says this he's a bully. is being typed he's, he's by the bully. Martin exactly. Howard of the Kansas Police gonna... Department, and is a true he's and accurate got his ego in it. statement to him. Mm -hmm. This he is just made a great point. On the top of each page? It is. Yeah. Uh, the witness made a great point and said, this was what was important through nothing. my eyes. I don't know what's Maybe important, essentially, for you. Right, so let's go so there. he keeps saying, don't you think it's bottom, important? He's like, I think I have made what the above statement important. without any threats or promises. Um, I don't know what you think is important. To state the true facts right. yeah. as to this incident. And it just makes the prosecutor look like a dick that he keeps hammering. Yes. And it's a small, indictable position. You can't say your position's wrong. It would also be a position He's Teflon now. There's nothing. And this is all over that. over facts that, that don't, really don't, don't matter all that much. Yeah, yeah, your statement, you this statement is being typed for me by Detective Martin Howard. Oh, on the very first page. Yeah, yes. If I, could, if I could finish my question, please. She has to type everything. Rude. Oh, <laughs> one person can wow. talk at a time. Thank you. What a this statement is being typed for Detective Martin yeah. Howard of the yeah. Kenosha Police Department, and is a true and accurate account of my statement to him. Correct. He's saying his statement's true. He Is just anything else you all think more important. Mm -hmm. Not to my knowledge. Do you consider my question to be <clears> asking <throat> you to change your statement? Not right now. <laughs> if this was in a stadium, there would be chance he of a hole. A hole. And kept it for a while, swinging it around. Correct. So you saw Mr. Rosenbaum drop or leave the chain behind. I didn't. I don't know when Mr. Rosenbaum separated with that chain. But you said kept it for a while. Correct. So it was gone. At, at some point, yes. <laughs> None of this matters. Like when he was in heaven. <laughs> like when he didn't have it anymore. Probably not there, but anyway. 
the thing is, they're going to do this long enough that the last impression this jury will have is the prosecutor being a dick to this mm. witness that has no. been nothing but patient. Yes. They're burning they're Patient, but has stood his ground. Tr- Let me ask, really, yes. Did you see Cal Rittenhouse before? <laughs> because he's telling he the charge horse lot on that night. Yes. And you described him to us as uh, being notable because he was always out alone on his own. Mr. Rosenbaum. Mr. Rittenhouse. Yes. Okay. So he was. You saw him out on his own doing whatever he was doing by himself. The few times that I, the couple times that I seen him. It's like he wasn't part of him. And when you saw Mr. Rosenbaum, you never saw him actually lay hands on anyone? No. Never saw him hit anyone? No. Never saw him kick anyone? No. Never saw him strike anyone with a chain or any other uh, weapon? No, sir. Never saw him rape anyone? No. Did you see me eat a sandwich? (laughs) I like a sandwich now really bad. Let me just check the, the audio. Am I too loud, guys? Yes. yes. I got, I'm turning you down. <laughs> it's funny, Nick, because when I went over to my stream, they're like, why are you so quiet? I'm like, ah, sorry. <laughs> Let's try now, you indicated in your statement that as Mr. Rittenhouse is being chased oh back north on Sheridan Road, Stop. you heard someone say, you just shot someone. Stop. Is that true? Yes, it is. And... You say that Anthony and Gage, meaning Mr. Huber, and Mr. Grosskreutz, were yelling at Kyle to stop. Yes. Kyle did not stop and kept going. Correct. Now, in my office, you indicated that you were fearful of an active shooter. Huh? I don't know <laughs> that. You don't remember saying that um, you thought they were trying to stop an active shooter? They were trying to stop the the person that was running. Did you feel I, at that time? I like I said, I don't know. I didn't know what happened at that corner. Lawyer making himself a so you as a amateur journalist, you were not drawn to go to that location to Which, the to the sixty third Street car source. That's the one on the corner. Well, they're all kind of on the corner, but the one, on the, 63rd, the one on 63rd and Sheridan. Um, Why don't yes, you let I the witness finish? Okay, but you didn't get there in time to see any of the shooting? No. <laughs> You're not going to find a better question on that notepad. Stop. No, you indicated <laughs> that Mr. Rosenbaum said, I just got out of jail and I'm not afraid to go back or something to that level. Yes, sir. Do you know if he got out of jail or not? At the time, I did not know. Does this open and the door? You said you saw him have a small plastic water bottle that night? I saw a plastic baggie. Did you? And you told us in our meeting that you saw a plastic bottle in the baggie? Yes. Now... Mr. Rosenbaum, when he made that comment, you didn't see Kyle Rittenhouse around. No. When he was at the 59th Street uh, Ultimart, and he was saying, uh, what's not in your statement, but you have said, shoot me N-word, and have your strain, you didn't see Kyle Rittenhouse around. No, I did not. There was many people. Keep watching Binger in the background. This is funny to watch. Yes. He's, he's checking. He's for, suffering inside. He's checking for prosecutor openings you said, in Guam. I didn't <laughs> quite hear what Attorney Richards was saying. Did you see you had a picture of Mr. Rosenbaum by a cone on fire? Yes. Like a traffic cone? Well, he's in the background just outside the driveway of the gas station. I think so I, I see I'm a dumpster on fire. It is. is it a traffic cone or what is it? <laughs> Yes. Okay. Construction yeah. cone. I guess Construction cone. Yeah. Now, you didn't see Kyle Rittenhouse anywhere. Is it like the one in the movie there. Cars? <laughs> like the cozy cone? Not at that time. No. Uh, uh, and right. I mean, at that time, you did not see Kyle Rittenhouse around there, and that didn't threaten anyone's safety relating a traffic cone on fire. No. Except for the traffic cones. That's a devastating point. 
I think they're going to win on that question. Are you alive? Yeah. You saw Mr. Rosenbaum tip <laughs> danger with the over a porta potty. I did. <laughs> is he about to go back into it again? I'll phrase his question as he sees fit. Now, you indicated in your statement that that it smelled terrible. It did. So that was a deep <laughs> <important thing. laughs> So genuine. So genuine. Yes. Now, when Mr. Rosenbaum tipped over the porta potty, Mr. Rittenhouse was not around. Not that I see. There's no one in the porta potty that you're aware of? Not that I'm aware of. So that didn't actually endanger anyone's safety. Another no. devastating rejoinder. Well, about but, the no, how is he supposed to attest to that if there's someone in it or you indicated that there is a trailer that was lit on fire? Yes. Mr. Rittenhouse wasn't around to see that. Not that I. Yeah. It calls for speculation for sure. Oh, Does that affect someone's safety? You did not see Mr. Rittenhouse fire? around then? No. And the trailer was unoccupied? Uh, what do you I mean? Don't know. None of this is going to go <laughs> to the self-defense. No there was what? There was nobody in it? How would he know? There could be nobody in it. It doesn't have an enclosure. Yeah, it's a flatbed. <laughs> so that didn't, uh, that didn't uh, mean for anyone's safety. No, unless it tipped over. <laughs> now, you said you saw Mr. Rosenbaum arm himself with a chain. He picked up a chain off the ground or off the trailer? Off the trailer. Armed himself is your phraseology? Yes. And uh, did you see Kyle Rittenhouse around when he did that? Not that I am aware of. And you never saw him swing it at anyone or threaten or anyone with the, with that? I or saw him just swing it, but it was not directed towards anybody or like any human being. <laughs> <laughs> Even that so little that, win that he can't get. Do you consider handguns or, or chains more dangerous? It depends on the circumstance. Uh, I'm not Krause. an expert. Mr. Crow, <laughs> where are you going? No, I... Mr. This, Crash, you're this, killing this, me, of course. He spoke in a great deal what he saw Mr. Rosenbaum do, and I am establishing that. I have no idea how I can have a giant ass. What you say is more dangerous, chains or guns? I'll, I'll withdraw that. Yeah, draw yourself. <laughs> <laughs> From the entire courtroom. Just get out of here. God, you know, if they so zoom in on his notes, I'm betting it's like a stick figure and. But it's a subway bubble. menu. Yeah. You know, actually, this uh, this cross examination is sponsored by Southwest. For, um, Want to get away? He be ordering <laughs> yeah. the cookies yeah. that the judge had the list for. By the way, uh, Nick, I think Tim Pool is sending you for a link backstage <laughs> here. So maybe you should. He did work for a grocery chain a while ago. He yes. keeps, he keeps retweeting you. Living now. I work for a National Bio Company. Okay. So your photography is a hobby, or you're hoping to? You told me you're hoping to come, become a professional. Eventually, yes. Now, just get a YouTube channel. You brought your own exhibit. You <laughs> I did. And the defense didn't ask you to do that. You did that on your own. I did. And you know that this case has gotten a great deal of publicity. Yes. And you know there are media outlets here covering the trial. We're all we're all covering you as well here. With this camera. Are you <laughs> trying to indicate and that he's trying to get a you job? You actually have offered that's that's what he's your for. photographs for sale on that uh, blogger's site who spoke to you. He put those up. So are these photographs oh, copyright infringement? If somebody would want them, but I'm not advertising <laughs> them. Did you bring your I'll... own exhibits because you're trying to uh, enrich yourself with your photography? What? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You're How dare money? you make money on your hobby? What a <laughs> hell out of and here. And he sat what down what on the like that was That was his closing question. One second, question. one second, one second. Kyle Rittenhouse have any significance to you? Stand up. Before the 25th? Yes. No. Okay. Yeah. The night of the 25th yeah. before the shooting, did you know who Kyle Rittenhouse was? I did not. I didn't even know after taking that graffiti picture okay. earlier you, in the day. Were you looking for Kyle Rittenhouse to know where Kyle Rittenhouse was in relationship to what Mr. Rosenbaum was doing? No. I did not know any of those individuals at that time. And, and when you met with me in my office, there was a private investigator present, correct? Correct. And I asked you what you remembered and took notes, correct? Correct. And then I showed you video, correct? Question leading. Correct. Staying. <laughs> I was there. They would know. The private investigator and then myself. Okay. And what did we do first?
I don't recall. He's taking it very, I, very literally. You come in mm -hmm. and show your videos right away? Oh, no, no. Um, you introduced yourself. Um, you introduced the uh, private investigator. I don't remember his name. Um, and then you asked, like, if I remembered my police statement. And I said I did because it was just refreshed to me by the district attorney's office. And then you asked if, um, if I, when did I talk to the district attorney's office? And I said, just uh, the day prior. And then we started going into my police statement. And after I was done going into your police statement with you, then what did I do? Showed me some videos. Okay. And in the videos I showed you, were you able to identify yourself? Yes. I don't yes. know who recorded the videos, but I can identify myself in a video. And that's not just any video. It's right before the shooting. Is that a fair statement? No, Correct. Oral. I don't need to show the video. No, that's all I need. Thank you. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, don't do a recross. Get crossed don't back up it. there. Please do. No, do it. No, do it. No, we come want on. to. Come on. Bumper back up. Here we go. Here we go. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate God. that the attorney was accusing this witness of trying to profit. Yes. Compared yeah, to what I love it. Did. <laughs> yeah. Round of applause for this witness, man. This. Yeah, yeah this, cool. this was legendary, oh, guys. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> He's going to get uh, another witness to authenticate a video to see what he saw that night, I think he said. They need to show that to Giga prosecutors Chad. and defense attorneys because that prosecutor should have been able to see that the jury would have liked that witness and they were going to hate the way he was questioning that witness. You don't do that to witnesses unless you absolutely have to. And there was they no point in to. that. No right. He didn't have to big, at all. It was not that big a deal. As, he came not, off as what he is, a bully. Yep, exactly. That guy was Kyle so looks happy for the first honest. time since, we've seen, since the night of the shooting. He actually looks legitimately happy. That Because I mean, he just yeah. saw a roast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that means Kraus is happy too. And <laughs> come on, when, a roast, not a luau. When you look at that testimony with that witness, you can understand why he said he was uncomfortable being interviewed with the DA's office. Yes. You get the vibe. It yeah. shows yes. why he was nervous, which explains why he might not have been completely thorough in his statement. Well, and here we go. Who's, in, who's they tried guy? to say, oh, we're going to be nice. We started with a good Please witness, state your then we name, got Rambo, name for the and then we got an even better witness. Lucas, There's no way he can Zanin. Yeah, Z this poor guy. And How's he gonna I measure am. up? Mr. Zanin, where do you currently reside? The city? Kenosha. Were you present in the city of Kenosha on August 25th of 2020? I was. Directing your attention to approximately 10 before midnight on the 25th, where were you? Uh, I was parked in my car uh, on 63rd Street on the corner of Sheridan Road, across the street from the car lot. Okay. And can you look behind you? See that map? Yes. Can you, if, if this is north and this is south, this here is labeled Sheridan Road and this is 63rd Street, where were you? Do you want me to point out on the map? Yeah, um, I think this is right here. It's right, yeah, that's it. Can you uh, give him a pen to mark it? And I need you to hold the button down. Yeah. Okay. Oh. So I was approximately right there on the Suddenly south side. Suddenly a cat comes barreling up trying to kill the laser. <laughs> were you parked driving? <laughs> I was parked. Okay. And was there, were you driving passenger what? I was a driver. Okay. And was there somebody with you? Yes, my stepdaughter. Okay. And was she filming anything? Yes. He can't stop so but leave. She was leaning out the window of the passenger side and she was videotaping and I was watching the uh, events. Were you watching what she was videotaping? Yeah, I was watching what was going on in the parking lot at the time. Okay. And what was exciting or interesting about car source at that time? Well, the reason I, I was 
passing south on 60 on Sheridan and I took a right on 63rd and then I turned around and parked because as I was going south, I saw fire coming out of the passenger seat of one of the cars. And so I turned around and I decided uh, to park and I saw people smashing the cars with pipes and bats standing on the hood, kicking the windows in. Hey, you can stop a, minute, a second, Mr. Zanine. I'm gonna show you a video and ask you if you recognize it, okay? Exhibit 135, please. What caught your attention? Shit was on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. Not me. Not me. No, over here. Banging? Yeah. What is that? That's people kicking and hitting cars with pipes and bats. Okay. Mostly peacefully <laughs> hit, hitting cars. <laughs> Metal bats. Yeah. I mean, they're just wantonly destroying property, though peacefully. You can pay to go to those places where you can bash in cars and destroy plates. <laughs> I thought that was just Walmart. Sounds cathartic. <laughs> I will, Maya. Thank you. Thanks, Maya. Nick, I don't think legal man should keep his, his place if he's not going to be here. I think everybody can have a I see. Everyone's about climbing the monkey ladder. <laughs> nice. <laughs> not exactly nice. what I was thinking. How did that happen? <laughs> what is the other prosecuting attorney's name again? Not, not Binger, the other one. Kraus. Kraus. Like Sour Kraus. Thank you, Pants. <laughs> nobody's, nobody's getting shot here, though, so quite clearly there's no risk to anybody. Right, yeah, it's, it's a very peaceful destruction of these cars. If you don't try and stop them, they won't harm you. Yeah. Are we just going to watch like that, six minutes of this? I, I agree with the chat that the witness sure should be looks like it, right? Video. I mean, why not? We've got to authenticate the whole thing. Oh, shit. There it goes. Okay. Okay. That Getting spicy. That escalated quickly. Appropriate response, though. Oh, shit. Uh, mm. <laughs> yep. But the, the black blazer on the black button-up shirt is a um, serious fashion statement for court. Oh, shit. They shoot him. Whose voice is that? That's my stepdaughter's. Did you hear those gunshots? Yes. Could you describe them for the jury, please? Loud. I heard multiple gunshots. <laughs> bang, bang, bang. Was there a they first gunshot, like a series of gunshots? How did you... Yeah, I, I heard one, and then bang, bang, bang. Okay, and <laughs> after heard you, Emily. <laughs> the shots, did the people then start to move? Yeah, they started running. Okay, before the shots, nothing was disturbing them. They were just bashing in cars. Yeah. <laughs> now, you or your stepdaughter turned over the station in cars to Detective Howard, correct? I did, yes. Okay. And you told them what you observed? Yes, I did. And that was back in October... 28th of 2020. Uh, when there. did you ask? When did we're def you we're defense attorneys. We can't help it. Exactly with the officers. Not exactly. I mean, uh, it seems like about a year ago, they told me that I might be called to be a witness uh, within a year, but they never called me. Okay. Would looking at your statement that you signed tell you the date that you met with the detective? 
Maybe. Well, if it has a date on it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So hold on. this is another witness that the prosecution initially advised might be might oh, testify that they never called it. That is not stapled together. Do you recognize this? Yeah. What is? I this? love it when people just. It's my signature. Twenty eighth of the question. Okay. And there's a date on it. Yeah. Well, that helps. October if there's a date. Twenty twenty. Is What's that this lawyer's name? Yes. This defense lawyer here. Richard. Mark Richards. Richards. I would cast him in the next mafia movie <laughs> as, as, as the counsel. Can you describe the gunshots? I heard gunshots. <laughs> they went bang, bang, bang. How, how many times is he going to say, can I finish oh, my dear. question? Oh, God. This could Sir, be why are you up here from Texas? If they weren't compound questions. Um, actually, I let him finish. I'm a licensed real estate agent in Texas, and I'm a licensed uh, real estate agent in Wisconsin. That explains I was out. born and raised in Wisconsin. Uh, I had moved to Texas. Um, now remember, the question is, why did you come to oil Texas? fields for a time? Trying to make him an outsider. Uh, mm -hmm. My mother passed away, and uh, that's not a Texas. I came answer. back up here, so my plan <laughs> has been to sell real estate uh, in Wisconsin in the summer and flip houses, and then to go to Texas in the when winter. It's fucking cold. <laughs> Real estate, uh, uh, not as cold as Wisconsin. The flip houses. Yeah. Texas. So no, I'm it's cold Wisconsin. Wisconsin. He's going to Texas. Give, oh yeah. <laughs> give a Texas address. Yeah. So I mean, the goal was to be uh, like a, a lot of Wisconsin people, snowbird. Snowbird. <laughs> so so on August uh, 25th, were you? I was here. In Kenosha yeah. or? Yeah, my fiance is uh, here in Kenosha. Oh boy. Were you concerned that these can't buy a break? Just can't buy one. Um, it, it was well because there was dozens of people in the parking lot, and then there was, I'd say, at least a hundred or more behind us. So it, I was frightened. Um, I'm a lifelong, uh, you know, I'm, I was born and raised in Kenosha, and I love my town, and I watched every single night of the riots, and. Um, <laughs> Here the we night go. Before, uh, wow. Okay. Right, let me ask you a question. Okay. Oh, let me stop so, you on the emotional please, interlude. Please let me stop. Yep. You. Yep. Please. Oh, the please question stop is, me. were you concerned about people behind you? And I thought he was testifying the narrative. Correct. So it was a good narrative. Why did you? What brought you all past curfew that night? I wanted to. Objection. There's uh, no First curfew. of all, uh, these were historical events that were happening in my hometown. Uh, First of all, hometown. second of all, uh, well, I think we know why the night before, uh, rioters had burned dozens of buildings, small businesses, me being a real estate agent, you know, I have uh, empathy for small business owners. I was very upset that that these rioters were destroying my town, burning my town. So I was hoping if wow. I could see that the night that uh, Kyle was uh, chased and attacked, if I could see somebody... Wow set a fire i could take a video and I, they could be prosecuted by the prosecutors and the police instead of kyle this is you mentioned, yeah. uh, somebody yeah. you called kyle did you know mr rittenhouse before that evening not at all did you yeah. know him at all since then except not at all media uh, sir she's got to take what we say so it's got to be one at a time okay i know it's not how people usually speak but we just got to be kind of yeah, careful about that. So, no i've never met kyle i don't know kyle rittenhouse and you didn't see Kyle Rittenhouse before the shooting that sneer uh, that surveying the area or maddening. looking at the people <clears throat> breaking windows or anything like that? That would be the contender. So you have to understand my... Okay. Uh, no, I did not. All right. Thank you. So, by the way, that that, that testimony was literally out of the civil action. Stopped you from seeing Mr. Rittenhouse. Is that a fair statement? I could not see Mr. Rittenhouse. Okay. If... Mr. Rittenhouse was in the far corner of the car source lot. Was there things blocking your view? All I can say is I did not see the shooting. I just heard it. Okay. And you never saw Mr. Rittenhouse? After the shooting, people scattered, and I could see his face. Okay. And you never spoke to him before or after this event? No. Nothing further. Any questions? No. Thank you. You may step down, sir. Let's break at so, this time and uh, yes, let's break. Vanner's got I'm this playing. huge frown. Uh, uh -huh. Please don't read what you're listening to any account of the trial. Except on Rotate a Law. 
and uh, I think the clerk will take care of you in the in the uh, jury room. Enjoy the evening. Okay, let's see I'm if they have this. any uh, closing motions, motions or statements, mm -hmm. <laughs> like motion to buy Kraus something to calm him down. Like maybe like a cat toy or something. <laughs> <Motion to remove laughs> the star he needs an emotional his... support animal. Yeah, At this point, he needs some icy hot because that pain ain't gonna go away. <laughs> well, Rose's demeanor is oddly like Brian Steltler from uh, CNN. Now, now that I've seen it, I can't unsee it. Yeah, uh, if I only said, I wish somebody would have said that earlier, Viva. That is such a great point. Thank you for bringing that up. He's always stealing my work. This guy, he's like oh, right he below it. me. I said if Brian <laughs> Stelter had a baby with Brian Stelter, it would be this yeah, guy. Yeah, I heard you said it earlier. There. I did. I did not hear that. And damn it. And he said uh, Brian he Stelter. Said better, he would though. do this cross examination with himself. For the Real last quick, uh, to <laughs> to the chat. I know many of you are about to uh, take off. Um, I'll keep watching to see if the judge uh, pulls anybody up or they turn mics on. But I know many of the chat are about to take off. Uh, I'll be back here tomorrow, 9 a.m. Well, I'll be on at 8.45 a.m. Central Time uh, for tomorrow's Anything coverage. else? Oh. Yep. Okay. See you tomorrow. All right. All right. Okay, there we go. So there we go. Um, I will be on uh, 8.45 a.m. Central Time. I'll be sending invites out to uh, the panel again so that they can come and comment uh, along with me. So um, if, you want, if you want to get notified of that, check me out on Locals, okay. ricadalaw.locals.com. Okay. Okay. Or at... Um, oh, wait one second. I'm wondering if we can make arrangements through Zoom under the emergency order of the Supreme Court. The government has no right to confrontation. Obviously, they would have to um, ask questions via Zoom, just like we would. Just throwing it out there, and the court can think about it tonight. I, I don't have to think oh, about it. I can yeah. tell you my response. If both yeah. parties agree and the defendant personally waves, that's fine. Who are they trying to bring in? Okay. There, I didn't. Thank it, you very much. It wasn't on mic. Yeah, so they've got so to bring in someone in by like Zoom. They want to bring in somebody by Zoom. And that's okay if the defendant waves his right to yeah, confrontation, which is not going to be hard if it's a defense witness. Hopefully, yeah, it's El Chapo. automatic right to confront anyone. Is something that <laughs> cool. so, and see but, uh, but yes, if if you want to get notified of the stream, you can follow me for free on locals, ricadalaw.locals.com. It's in the description or Ricada Media on Twitter, and there will be announcements for the stream. So thanks to everybody new. Now uh, let's open it up to the panel for commentary about uh, how today went. You know, I did not expect that. Like today, I thought it was going to be boring. I thought it was going to be human set up. I thought it couldn't get better than yesterday. And then you just get Grambo who comes out of nowhere, slugging, and then Nathan De Bruyne. It's just like the combo you didn't know you wanted, but you needed. And this trial yeah. just keeps getting better. Uh, I yes. respectfully, I got to disagree with you because I'll tell you right now, I think skinny photojournalist guy, he laid it on the line. He made Grambo look, Grambo was solid. I'm doing my recap. You know, my after my, my post game recap. Grandma was solid. She did her work there. But but photojournalist guy, question That's Nathan after question, one after another. He yeah. the guy kept coming at him, and he just was just like whack whack back at him. He was Ab amazing. Absolutely, Grandma. he he is the star today. He's absolutely yes, yes. the star today. He's the MVP of of today's installment of Legal World Series. I'm 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 thrilled to have him on the team. <laughs> First of all, you know, Grambo said one thing, which was like the way to answer the question, where she where she was asked, "You gave that video to help Kyle?" And she says, "No, I gave it to help the case, not yep. to help Kyle." Perfect answers, but and it's very easy for everyone and all of us to pick on uh, Kraus, but that is uh, that is a one on one in what not to do in cross examination in terms of coming off like an arrogant jerk. Uh, you know, say, can I finish the question? You might think you're impressing the jury, but you're coming off very badly. And everyone can look at that and say, these are the do's and do not do's of a cross-examination or even an examination. Just the demeanor of an attorney should never be that which looks like he's trying to school the witness, he's trying to bully the witness, and he's trying to impress the jury through brash, you know, abusiveness for lack of a better word uh, and especially mild, uh, after he after he gave the whole description of why he was nervous going in when he got his statement i mean he had multiple opportunities to really elaborate on on what it was that he that he that was making him so nervous with the glass that was broken everything was destroyed people were everywhere people were showing up at his house at his work so many things that and then you have yet again one of these people that is part of the state 
asking him questions. So it shows it it's a, it's another it's another level of intimidation for him. Uh, a Whoa. mild uh, counter thought, not a counterpoint for Viva though. If Kraus were dealing with a witness who was genuinely an asshole, yeah, mm -hmm. his approach yep. would yes. have been mm -hmm. warranted. Yes. And yep. I don't know if Kraus just couldn't read this guy uh, or what, but Kraus can't Krauss read the room. asshole. That's yeah, Kraus can't read the yes. room. Yes, okay, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Jury. The but look, and he just lost not... his patience. Kraus was confusing too, but I can the read the room. Think. Well, no, but here's the but thing. one of his first questions was, I was nice to you, right? We were nice. It was very nice. You were, yeah. I was a nice guy. And then he goes on to be a jerk to him. And it's like, who's the believable you were one a nice here? Guy like, like this? you're, you didn't accomplish what you were hoping you to can, accomplish. You could be a jerk to a time. witness. They we had a good time. He, I felt very was, uncomfortable. They, they thought, they thought the guy was yeah. disabled in some way. That's, yes. that seems yeah. pretty clear. So, yes. oh, we're, we're friends, right? Like you'd go up to someone in a movie, like when Bruce Willis is in uh, that Mercury Rising movie and he goes up to the kid, uh, the autistic kid whose parents had just been murdered. And he's like, no, I'm your friend. I'm your friend. Come on. We got to go. That's what that felt like to me. It's like, oh, we're friends, right? We're friends. This yeah, is like yeah, speaking yeah. Louder. I think they someone that speaks a different language. Today. So they I think understand. They understand. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I think there's some people Runkle. remember that movie that would have worked, Nick. But... Runkle. Also, Runkle had something. Yeah, oh. sorry, sorry. What, what's up, Brian? Uh, you can be a jerk to a witness, but only after the jury's already there. If you mm -hmm. can get the jury to hating that guy, mm -hmm. then you go hot. But you can't do it before then. And I think that they really got confused between what their egos were making them feel and what the jury is actually feeling. Like, this guy's hurting our feelings. Therefore, the jury's going to hate him, and I can go, go to town on this guy. And it was the wrong move. The guy was endearing. He well, was likable. And he was just sort of this simply honest kind of guy. Yeah. And it was yeah. the wrong guy to swing on. That was well, like watching right. a guy fight a, a blackberry bush. Well, that's why you <laughs> hire attorneys is because you want someone who's impartial. And once he started attacking them, they became very not impartial. They became a part of this and they were emotionally invested and they made bad decisions. And well, you yes. heard why they were invested you talked to the blogger who's biased against the prosecutor's office, didn't you? Their <laughs> yeah. feelings were hurt. Yeah. Somebody yes. hurt but their hurt. feelings and they brought their hurt feelings into court and took it out on a witness that the jury's going to very much like. The jury's going to react to that witness the same way we all did. It's after lunch. This witness held their ground. They were composed and entertaining because they were giving it back to the prosecutor. The jury is on the witness's side in that against the prosecutor, which leans the jury against the prosecutors. And as the prosecutors, they should have read the room better. And they didn't. Uh, Nick, Completely. I would only say one thing. There's a difference between being warranted and being effective. So even if being the arrogant bully of a lawyer is warranted, it's not, very rarely is it actually effective unless you can manipulate the witness by being the bully. But often mm -hmm. it just, even if it's warranted, it's not effective cross-examination. Mm -hmm. And if I may take this opportunity not to shill for myself, for Robert Ruler, <laughs> I'm gonna be live with Robert in 10 minutes. Um, mm, I think we're awesome. talking about this and other things, probably. Awesome. <laughs> and I saw the chat asking if the prosecutors can be disbarred. These are tactical choices. Yes. The yeah, prosecutor yeah. didn't do anything legally improper. They made a bad tactical call that's going to hurt them in front of the jury. And that's yeah. because they don't either don't know better or don't care. Yeah. But, yeah. Like compare with the defense yesterday when they were being sort of snarky to gross crudes. Uh They're like the, the jury's already there when the, when the defense starts playing that card because they're but he's already pointing out you're already lying he gets to that within two minutes of opening mm -hmm. his cross yep. but the jury's already there thinking this guy is a liar he's a weasel and at that point you can start dropping the snark and start dropping the condescension the problem was this guy wasn't lying yeah yes i mean that, yeah. that yep. was their fundamental exactly. problem and they did not see that they kept they kept trying to twist him up and you know just yeah, it was a liar's Why cross aren't you saying what I want That's you it. to say? Yeah. And well, all it. I remember from that guy's testimony is that the DA's office tried to get him to change his statement because yep. that's what they were arguing over for like an hour. Yeah, yeah. Like, they, 
Why did they like one like one question and one answer and move on and maybe they'll forget about it? But he kept coming back to it. Hey, remember remember that thing that you said that was really bad that we did, but we're saying that we didn't do, and you're saying that we did. Let's talk about it again. Let maybe everybody forgot about it. Let's remind everyone. I remember from his testimony. That is all I remember from his testimony. I remember there was a lot of pictures which didn't make any sense and didn't really they didn't show us and and that he was fighting with him saying you're wrong for not looking at things the way I look at things. I look at things and I say this is an important thing. Why you're wrong for not looking at the way I did? That is just such a ludicrous and and it's it is an arrogance to the very questioning direction itself. And it, that's he was just burying himself, just burying. Yeah. I want to point out something thing the defense that he did well. Oh, good. Sorry. Oh, go, uh, just with the defense, sometimes it's really hard in trial to let another attorney go hard at your witness. But when your witness, because you want to protect them, you're like, this is my witness. And your instinct is to object and to override. They sat on their hands and let the witness stand up for himself, which made the prosecution look worse. And that can be very difficult to do in the moment. I mean, not for this defense team. I guess they haven't objected much at all. But <laughs> they, this they is really our natural let it state. Play out. <laughs> You're sitting on our hands. That's like saying it can be really hard to sit on the couch and watch TV. I'm like, not for me. Not for me. I'm already there. A lot it of was... people in the town were talking about malicious prosecution, and you know, the, everyone knows the bar is exquisitely high. But I mean, yes, they're throwing in stuff here in terms of uh, neglecting subpoenas, not prosecuting individuals, and now seemingly. I don't know if it's called tampering with witnesses, but rather, you know, trying to manipulate the witnesses into changing their stories so they can prosecute Kyle. I mean, they're actually adding fodder to the public debate as to whether or not there is or was malicious prosecution in this case, in my humble opinion. <laughs> At times, yeah, it seemed like that. So. Oh, sorry, go yeah. ahead. At times, it so seemed like that cross-examination was less about we actually want to get a conviction out of this and more about we're just trying to keep our jobs now. That's, a, yes. that's all. It, it was. Uh, that, it was, that's it was exactly it. Yeah, we're yeah. In fact, I think that's what Cross was doing most of the time when he was on his phone. Was he was actually on LinkedIn looking yeah. for the next yeah. one. <laughs> Checking job opportunities in Guam. Uh, <laughs> I think I saw some open of name Korea. application. So do, does anybody know of anything that went well for the prosecution yeah. today? Um, uh, it, it ended at some point. The, the, the medical examiner, the photos, the photos of the bodies. Yes. Yeah, that I was think, good yeah. for them. Yeah, I think, but I think that's about it because even their yeah. shot in the back narrative got blown out on cross by the medical. It, 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 he shot in the back, but it goes clearly down into him. And the medical examiner is like, yeah, that's consistent with him being shot while falling forward. And he's like, well, it's not like he turned around. He's not turned, right, Emily? Right. <laughs> he's not the imagery. Turned. I died when he said that. He's like, he's not turned. I'm like, he might have been turned. We <laughs> 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 probably didn't see the talks on it. Okay, but, uh, but the media is going to play it as, uh, car, you know, the pathologist confirms that he was shot in the he back. He was shot in the back. Yeah. And it's a the disingenuous other thing well, argument. And it's intellectually it's dishonest. Stupid. Of course it's disingenuous, but it's the mainstream media. But the, the other thing that played well for them, <laughs> genuinely played well for them, was that that horrific picture of Huber on on the coroner's table? Yeah, with the eyes yeah. open. That yes. was something that that was very graphic, which very made hard the to jury look at. feel like you know sympathy for the state and looking to get some sort of vengeance if the state had put up any kind of decent case at all. Yeah, but... coroner photos are not good. Autopsies are not good. Um, I talked about this a little bit with the. Right, I've I've been to a number of autopsies. They're not fun to attend. Um, mm -mm. But with oh, the no. the Brian Laundry case, people are like, "There's no justice here." I'm like, "The family doesn't have to sit in a courtroom and listen to a coroner and see autopsy photos of their loved one. That might be enough because it's not pleasant for anyone and it's not pleasant for the jury, and it doesn't always." engender sympathy or empathy they know people are dead they don't need to prove the manner of death the jury might be annoyed by that well no, that's what i was going to say it, it, it can go both ways in terms of they can feel that the prosecution is exploiting these graphic images in order to manipulate the mm -hmm. jury and they may not like it the same way some people don't like seeing pictures of deceased children on the front of uh, newspapers even if it's to promote a certain narrative or story so it, that that knife cuts both ways and especially if you're dealing with someone who has been now described as being somewhat uh, antagonistic or looking for a fight. It may not go. It may not go the way that they want it to go. Well, I think both of you are actually right because in Joe's case, you know, they already are. I already checked mainstream media right now. The narrative, the headline is actually "man shot in back," says you know coroner, right? So that's already the headline. However, you got to see the placement, the page placement. You've got January sixth front and center, and you've got this minimized to the side on the right. <laughs> 
That's a massive concession right now that this is not front and center. This is already being marginalized. So when they take this L, it's not in their face, right? They're already trying to wipe this egg off their face and move back to January 6th where they're nice and comfortable. It's their safe space. They're totally happy sticking with that for the next year. I think they want the L. I think they want to see the systems corrupt. Look at all the stuff we showed you. This is rehaul the system. Everything's wrong. I, I, I think they want the L. I think they want the outrage from the from the laws. And that's it's, why they're setting win-win. it up this way. It's win-win. Either they put away a guy who they consider all right in Kyle Rittenhouse, or there was no there's no way that it, that that white people and the system is corrupt and black people can't get a break, even though no black people no no black <laughs> yeah. victims here. But no black victims, the, yes. The system is fact. corrupt in favor of cis white men, and this is why we need to everyone has to rise up and just and and riot and pro- protest and have friendly, fiery but mostly peaceful protests. No, I gotta tell you, it, this was uh, uh, something I referenced in today's video, but from the wet, Wisconsin Public Radio, this is how they described Grosskraut's testimony in the headline. Gage Grosskraut says he thought, quote, I was going to die, end quote, when he came face to face with Kyle Rittenhouse. That was their takeaway. When he so came. It, it, <laughs> it's, 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 it's egregious, but I'm gonna check out now, guys, and uh, was... go to Grueler. Uh, Grosskraut shot that. when he. Fantastic Grosskraut stuff, uh, everyone, and we'll see for tomorrow. See you later, Viva. It's fine. Right, yeah. I gotta head out as well. I will I uh, well. hopefully see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much. All right. This was a blast. Ricada, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Congratulations. I feel like you need to do like 20 shots for the <laughs> 20,000 likes for the 200,000 for hitting 200,000. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you have a busy night ahead of you. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think I'll do God that bless. pretty soon after I <laughs> curl up after I curl up under the loving shadow of Kraus. Can you get <laughs> can you give them when, the same way? Can can you read off your super chats the same way Gage Grosskreutz talks to the jury when he tests? No, I don't have time to do this every single time. Gage Grosskreutz. I'm going to read. When do you guys think I'm they're going to get to closing? Uh, Thursday, I, Friday? If, as when long they finish as digging the, the grave. If the prosecution is not dumb enough to put Kyle on the stand, or the, the, the defense, I mean, if they're not, if they're smart enough to not put him on the stand, surely they're then not then we'll, we should be at closing by Friday, I think. Yeah, I think um, so too. If they're, if they That'd put be great, Kyle on the stand. That'd be great, then we can get some sleep. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. But if <laughs> if they put Kyle on the stand, I mean, the, the state's going to want to spend time with him, even if the defense does. I mean, now, uh, Ron Coleman uh, brought up an interesting issue. The state, uh, the, the defense could theoretically try to limit Kyle's testimony to very specific thing. And then, um, then it would limit the cross, uh, under fifth amendment. But, uh, I mean, yeah, we, this, you never know what a person's going to say when they're on the stand that could accidentally open a door, even if the defense doesn't do it in their question. What, and, what could, what and, could, and what this could judge Kyle has been very on this case. No, I, I, I can't think of anything. Kyle, that, that's, Kyle, uh, the one thing he could maybe say, I don't think it would help enough to merit anything, is, uh, no, I, I never wanted to kill anybody, and I was in fear for my life. That's that's it. Uh, I was in yeah. fear for my life. And, I think but at that this wouldn't point, help if that you're much. doubting that, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Kyle crying on the stand isn't going to move you. Yeah, yeah often you're not the jury just wants to hear from them. This point. Uh, but it's not worth it. Not in this case. You know, it, no. the jury might want to hear from him, but they're going to acquit either way. I mean, how could they not? And well, if this isn't self defense, what is? Yeah. You know, I mean, that's yep. the. By the way, Nick, I was going to tell you, uh, you know, that, that bullshit about racking the AR 15. Have y'all talked about that at all? Uh, Complete we, bullshit. They haven't yeah, found the casing, yeah. they haven't found any proof well, of it. The way you rack an, uh, an AR 15 is you pull back on the charging handle. Yeah. Right. And, and let yeah. it go. That would be an incredibly obvious act, and it would take time to do. So yeah, I know. I have bullshit. one. That was pure <laughs> bullshit. I've actually, oddly enough, I've got the exact model that that, that uh, Kyle has. Just bigot, random. <laughs> well, yeah, how many? Racist. How many? How many pedophiles have you shot with it? Not enough. Not enough. Failing. <laughs> All right. Well, we're getting into the uh, <laughs> indicting ourselves on the internet. Portion. <laughs> right. I don't even know. Pick up my car. I appreciate it. Says Ty with no YouTube channel. No, I appreciate all of you. Nick, yeah. You're doing the good work, bringing this to everybody. And I think the fact yes. that you are smashing the mainstream media in your coverage says a lot about the fact that people yeah. are looking for facts plus jokes. And um, mm-hmm. I think that's a needed thing. So, chat, thank oh you, God. everybody. Thank you for having me. I hope yes. to pop in tomorrow. Emily. 
See you, Emily. Bye, guys. Good night. Yep. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Also, well, uh, a huge shout out to the moderators on in the chat too. Yeah. Oh, don't don't do that. Don't Why? Do that. Why? They get a big head. They get a very big head. Well, these they degenerates. Very they're 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 barely great. above journalists. They are great though. Oh god. See, no, but, but 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 they are they are they are. I, I've seen some of these people here like the entire time that we've been here yeah. almost. No, they're so great. they've they been are. hanging out. I, I mean, this is this is. It's it's painful to be sitting here for this long, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> Tell us okay, how you really uh, feel, Alita. Yes, seriously. <laughs> um, what was one, that? One, one no, last, no, no. I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, physically, my back hurts from uh -huh, sitting, uh -huh, not because of uh -huh. the presence of being with you all. Uh -huh. You guys are great. I yeah, love you guys. I'm going to have to face my staff, and they're going to go conference call this afternoon. Ty, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. It, it was. It was a conference. Call. There was a conference, sort of. Uh, you know. Okay, one one last thing. Everybody who has appeared on this show, including Ty Beard, their links to their YouTube channels are in the description. Um, you can go and click on their names. You can go right to their pages. Uh, if you want to check out their commentary about uh, legal issues, political issues, whatever issues they do, go ahead and check them out. Uh, I appreciate all of them very much, and they all deserve more subs than, than they have or even I have. So uh, give them... Give them a subscription and uh, and see what they got for you. But um, right now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to dive into a whole mess of super chats. Yes. And so yes. whoever uh, wants to hang around is welcome to, but I'm not going to force anybody to do that. But uh, I'm going to be reading through a lot of them and um, commenting on them. And uh, I'm not going to get through all of them. Uh, on this show. So tonight I will be catching up. If your super chat does not get read, please uh, stop by tonight or catch the replay of tonight's show and, and I will address it. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go um, get some sleep, but it's been great, Nick, and agreed. really appreciate you having me. This has been an amazing stream. Uh, I'm going to try to do a little quick, you know, just for my, my people, a little quick stream <laughs> simping for Grambo. But after that, I'm going to crash for like eight <laughs> hours and then go do some work. That uh, is, by the way, I highly recommend I highly recommend you use that title. That is yeah, an amazing yeah, title. Yeah. Simpy for Grambo. Grambo. Yes. Yeah. Oh, 100% good title. all day, every day. If you don't, I'm yeah. stealing it. Yeah, no, do it, do it. What's Anyways, guys, take care of the photojournalist guy. Do we have a nickname for him yet? We need, we, no. We uh, need I, I've seen many, but I don't know if no, I, I mean, want to say any of them. I think that somewhere Grambo oh, is making uh, him cookies. No, Son of Rain Man is what I've heard. Son of Rain Man. Son of Rain Man. All right, well, I'm I'm going to, I'm going to head out as well. Um, because it is also late where I am as well, but, uh, Alrighty. yep. <laughs> See you guys. You. Oh, photo Chad. See you later. Legal bites. Oh, photo All Chad. Right. That's not photo, photo Chad, Chad yeah. is good. That's good. Uh, okay. Uh, by the way, uh, Ian, I didn't get to welcome you to the stream earlier cause there was testimony going on, but welcome. Oh, yeah. thank you. Um, and, uh, oh yeah, go ahead. It's really amazing that you're able to do this because uh, one thing I've been thinking I'm going to comment on later is just uh, in Canada, we don't do this with televised trials. And looking at the headlines, I it's so hard to actually place what I'm seeing in the headlines with what I'm seeing in the trial because the headlines seem to be suggesting Rittenhouse should be convicted. And I haven't seen a, a word of that. You know, I haven't. Oh, I'm not even seeing left-leaning lawyers on Twitter say that yeah. he needs to be convicted right now. It's it's eerily quiet. Well, that tells um, the you most I've know, it? yeah, the most I've seen so far from people is like, well, it's not over yet, type thing, and it's like <laughs> it's gonna get better. <laughs> but I what mean, we'd end I... up with in here in Canada is only the news reports, and there are trials out there that have been big sort of public trials where people have voiced opinions, including lawyers saying like, you know, here are my very strong opinions about this. And some of them I've got transcripts of and reading through the transcripts. I'm like, you guys got it wrong. You watched the news. You did not see what happened in the trial. So I think it's really important that people can actually get this counterpoint that it's at least available out there. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we've got a, We've got a diversity of, of legal knowledge, experience, expertise. But one thing uh, many of us all kind of share is the idea of we all know how to in some way do this. 
We all know how to appeal to another person. We all know how to ask questions and have conversations and conduct interviews uh, <coughs> with the intent of extracting information that is either favorable to us or, or detrimental to someone else. That's what we're trained to do. And lots of us have done that uh, plenty in our jobs. And so even if we may not all be criminal attorneys or we may not have had this particular type of case, you don't need to to know what's going on in the courtroom. Now, it might matter for some of the ins and outs of the procedure, and that's that's where that's going to go. But just, is this a good question in front of a jury? I mean, that's pretty, it's, you don't even have to be a lawyer for it. But, yeah. um, but uh, so I've just seen some silly criticism out there about, oh, the, these guys haven't tried this type of case. It's like, no, I'm not a Wisconsin lawyer and, and I've not done a, uh, I've not done a gun self-defense case. I've had two cases dismissed that were self-defense cases, but uh, we never went to trial for it. It was, they were easy. <laughs> we've, 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 we've done this straight up. We've talked substantively, substantively about the law. I mean, we've, yeah. you know, we, we've discussed the legal implications, but a lot of this is just, is just questioning tactics and making fun of them, you know? Yeah. You know. Or, or saying, uh, you could do it this way. There's an opportunity yeah. here uh, and, and pointing out that the, you know, the prosecution or the defense is not doing that. And that's, that's fine also, but, um, all right, I'm going to start reading. If there's a question you guys want to chime in on or a comment, feel free to do so. Uh, but I'm going to try and get through the $20 plus super chats and then go eat dinner. Um, Britt Cormeyer says, how can we trust your recall? You number days of a trial differently than we name them out in out in CO and other lawyers agree with us. Lol. Uh, yes, I include jury selection as day one of the trial. So uh, my my day seven is day six everywhere else. But, you know, too bad. Tradeo says pick up picked up two great books. Uh, I had the pleasure of editing the Graysonian ethic and the Methuselah's tale. One about manhood, the other about a, a historical fiction. If chat needs editing work, DM me in discord. Don't forget us with your fame uh don't worry i'll be back in discord a lot next week um and uh and as i recover um from from all the streaming um uh gone fall i read that one sorry uh sword and scale says it must suck to be court tv and have this grifter getting more views than they do with their live feed <laughs> <laughs> not just more a lot more heel lot versus more. baby face <laughs> Says this is the best coverage. F the MSM. Uh, Gonfall says I have actually been with you since the mess with Funimation and the Vic nonsense. Hey, thanks, Brett, buddy, buddy, brother, pal. DP says, is there any way the prosecution can pull away with a victory after yesterday? Are people celebrating too early? No, they can. They can. Um, things could go really the bad. Twelve people who can't get off jury duty, to quote Joe. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Rittenhouse gets up there on the stand and confesses. Yeah, uh, Rittenhouse gets up there and says, "You know what? I had a, I had a gun. I wasn't scared. I was protecting myself. I trained for this. I was ready for this kind of violence. That would be terrible I, for him." Can I, can I not can be I just, his testimony? What? Can I just pause you for a second here because I'm yeah. watching my numbers and I'm getting very aggravated. I mean, I peaked out today at um, fifty. 50 i don't know like another 100 higher than where i'm at right now and all of a sudden i just my sub just started dropping drop 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 because i don't know i'm polarizing susan doesn't like she doesn't no, i'm doing really it doesn't like me i actually hired a bunch of bots to subscribe to your channel <laughs> but then i fired them all to break your ego Science. i literally <laughs> lost dozens like dozens over the span of like a half hour and i was just like really just just bad so i just wanted if you signed up to me if you sub to me, please make sure you hit the bell and double check that you're still signed up because Susan, seriously, you could sign up and five minutes later, it's like, let me make sure you forgot about me. So those of you who were interested in subbing, if you're not interested in subbing, I don't care, go jump in the lake. If you were though, please make sure that, <laughs> that, that you're actually subbed because Susan will remove you when you, when you, when you least expect it. So uh, Bryce Byerly says that 15 second clip will go down in history. My grandchildren are going to be memorizing the quote. Look at big boy. <laughs> Joe, I just uh, subscribed. So you got, you got, you got one. Thank more. you, Ty. Yeah, thank you. You yes. can also appear on my maybe, show. Maybe Ty. that'll turn it. Ty, you yeah. got it. Hit me up on, on much more quotes so I can actually bring you on my show sometime. Sure. Hit me up on Twitter. And do, I'll give you my uh, I don't tweet much. I'll, 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 I'll hook you guys up via uh, phone. Yeah, uh, send me his phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. Yeah. Text me. Yeah. Arball716 says, did we miss something big? 
They testified they found eight rounds. If Kyle really did re-rack the gun, there would be a ninth unfired round that was never found. Malfunction or not, that round should be there if the That's gun was racked. Point. Not only that, but the magazine, uh, we, we have no testimony to how many rounds were in the magazine. Nothing on that video showed him re-racking that round. Like I said, no. you've, got, what, uh, you've, got, you've got to pull that, that, that charger back and, and release. You can't, I mean, it's not like a little switch or something and a charging handle and the uh you know. the other thing um that uh someone did bring up as a possible was if the round actually fired but inside the 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 cartridge didn't eject then You'd i still guess have to re-rack it to pop the cartridge out though right but there wouldn't be a separate oh. unfired cartridge that no. came out so the eight yeah. cartridges would still be there but yeah i i don't see the re-racking now, the it came out of as fast as all that's happening, I mean, literally, oh. you'd have to you'd have to realize, oh shit, oh shit, and I'm even wrong. Um, uh, I'm wrong on this. I did not remember this. Michael O'Nines and nobody in the chat both said the first detective testified there were 22 rounds in the magazine, which means unless he chambered a round after popping in a mag, so he had 31, uh, then then he's only out the eight, which is consistent. Because there were eight rounds fired. Kind of surprising you'd actually have 30 rounds in a 30 round mag. Normally you don't, you know, I, I used to put 27 or 28. The other guys, the military is. guys put 28 in, but yeah. Kyle's 17. True. True. He's not a military guy. Um, he wanted to be a cop, you know, at some point, but he, he never oh, got hell, there. He gets acquitted. He can come down to Texas. Shit. Them. <laughs> I don't think he could be a cop. He didn't. Pull the trigger enough times in that thing. He exercised <laughs> Ooh, a lot of trigger discipline. Too much restraint to, to be a cop. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'll introduce uh, him to our sheriff <laughs> down here. I really so, think, by the way, God willing, first of all, he if he gets acquitted and he's out like next week, you need to get him on your show. That's first and foremost. You need to get him on here. You said I was the number one. I was the number one stream of your trial. We were sitting here. I had idea. eight attorneys all pulling for you. Get, get in here and let's let, let my fans actually get to meet the real you. And I think, you know, if you get I'd a hold love of to. him, you would come. I'm sure you would. Um, I also really think he can write his own Not just because it'd be a giant show, right. but I'd also just love to, even if no just one Just meet watching. the guy. Yeah. But I'll tell, you, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you the other thing is I think he can write his own meal ticket. I think when he gets acquitted, I think he'll have thousands of people who would love to give him a really, really great job. And and, and I hope so, because God bless the kid. He's, he's a hero in my eyes. Absolutely. Uh, Perihelion says, good evening, Nick. Thanks again for all the content. Best timeline is Kyle let go of all charges, takes inspiration, and instead of a cop, studies and becomes the best criminal defense lawyer ever. <laughs> I'm hiring. <laughs> um, Ryan Keeler says, what would hurt more, getting your bicep vaporized or watching your $10 million lawsuit go up in smoke with your own testimony? Pretty sure his lawyer thinks the latter. Yeah. Oh yeah, because that was probably taken on a contingency if I had to guess. Almost certainly. What Something do you think tells about... me Gage doesn't have the money to put down a big retainer. Yeah. What do you think about the moment when they actually call out, isn't that your lawyer back there in court? <laughs> that was beautiful. It's I like, mean... wait, the one who's weeping right now? <laughs> the one that's got that Japanese short sword out and is putting it yeah. in this. <laughs> but I mean, you know... I get why they why she wanted to see it. You know, this is important for her, but don't go in person. There's a live yeah. stream. Sit at home and watch that because yeah, you don't. That was just such court. a powerful moment. Of they're right there, right? <laughs> Ryan Keeler says, "Oh wait, no, I read that one." Otakon says, "Been watching since the Dick days. Been here for the uh, Russell Greer and Vic. I think these streams have been by far some of the best you've ever done. A large part of that is the rotating panel. My little grifter grew up so fast." Uh, hell snake says uh great stream nick i love how agent 47 destroyed the prosecution i was surprised that i didn't uh start that uh i didn't start seeing agent 47 throw the homing briefcases at the prosecution to knock them out you can pretty much say he written house them um Catherine smith says if binger didn't have ed before he does after yesterday great analysis degenerates uh, Dakota Fetter says, thanks for Kata for these daily streams. I have my whole office watching you guys most unproductive week ever at work. And thanks for introducing <laughs> me to legal mindset and legal bites. I was already tuned into the others. Um, very cool. Very cool. Thank you. Goober Gobber Gabber Goober Gabber says, let's see if agent 47 is going to put Binger through the ringer again. 
Um, <laughs> Who's Agent 47? I don't get the reference. That's uh, Shirafisi, the Hitman video games. Oh, okay. has a ball <laughs> protagonist with a barcode. That's okay. Agent 47. Kenosha Kojak is what I heard uh, somebody refer to him as. Mr. Tebow Man says, this is totally bass backwards. They're authenticating and laying foundations for this stuff after it has already been entered into evidence and other witnesses have viewed and commented on them. What the fuck is it? A Wisconsin deal? head was going to explode at several points. Yeah, they, they've like been doing that. that the whole time with the video. Uh, I want to, I want to bring a witness to authenticate and introduce this evidence. So then they bring the witness and they're like, do you recognize this video hit play? It's playing for the jury. What if he said no? <laughs> such a weird that would be embarrassing but yeah they they i i don't know if that's a wisconsin thing but it, it was weird to they, just be this they, judge you know yeah but they've been doing it the whole time wisconsin. Here, here's a giant wisconsin. picture uh here's a giant picture do you recognize it that the jury can see do you recognize that yeah no whatever objection <laughs> what you're objecting to this picture this picture you're objecting to you get a ring girl to walk around with it. <laughs> Joshua Unset says at this time the defense would like to call ADA Binger. <laughs> <laughs> uh man, that that testimony from the photographer about the Zeminsky stuff. Oh. That was what? And those prosecutors just put a gigantic Klieg light on it too. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like what the are you guys thinking that's you didn't what ask you to change remember. your statement yes you did yeah yeah that's the only thing really i mean yeah it's almost like the defense was goading them <laughs> yeah them oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> i mean golly yeah oh and then well. actually i would say all three of those witnesses were bait right mm -hmm. attack grandma attack uh attack this lovable photographer and then uh attack the texan the attack, Texan who attack the working class guy who's just trying work, to make a the working class guy who was born and raised right in here Kenosha. in Kenosha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and looks his and looks, lives there. And he looks Spanish also. So if they got any libs on there, he look he I don't I didn't catch his name there. Did you guys get get his name? But uh, uh, uh yeah, I saw it. The chat saw it. His name was Juan Wick. Yeah, that's what they were uh, calling him. Really? <laughs> 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 Uh, uh listen, like, mixed chat, chat is tough. You have the best chat ever. This <laughs> is the best ridiculous. chat. Oh my well, God. they just hold their razors every night on Nick. You one, know? One. Uh, Zan Zanin. Uh, yeah, Lucas Zanin or Zinin, something like that was his actual name. Zanin. Uh, yeah. Um, BG Willia says, I just want to say how beautiful, how talented, how wonderful you are. Wait, you're not legal mindset. Oh, well, oh that's harsh. Ouch. I think it gone was, I think it was a kissing, kissing up to I think it was kissing up to Andrew actually. Uh, Gonfall says, "I feel like I'm watching the NFL championship when people are actually interested in it." <laughs> 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 or sorry, when people were actually interested in it. Um, let's see. Kina X one two two says, "I have to say, the absolute demolition of Grosskreutz yesterday and th was the best late birthday present I could have asked for. Keep up the great work, Binger." Uh, Watermelon Sugar High says, greetings from South Sweden. Please follow McGinnis' movement from when Kyle is ambushed by the Zeminskis and Rosenbaum. He's 100 feet behind Kyle. He then chases them with a phone gun in the air. Uh, what? Mm. Okay. Oh, you, so you're saying that Kyle could have seen McGinnis and, and thought he was carrying a gun, maybe? I, I don't know. Failed prosecution says, I'm back to simply say Big Boy is still the lawyer from the B movie, but he dyed his hair. Uh, Rose B Bay says, I just found you guys and subscribed to everyone listed yesterday. You definitely enriched my viewing experience. The wealth of knowledge between y'all is worth its weight in gold. Um, Wolfgang Deo we'll says, Not, not we'll sure what it. Rosenbaum had in his hands. However, Kyle just heard gunshots, and when he turned around after running, Rosenbaum was right there. It is amazing. Kyle came back to check up on Rosie Bum. Uh, good man. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll point out by the, as far as the, the wealth of knowledge. I mean, it's like it's not just figuratively, but literally also. I I calculated at one point that the cumulative knowledge you had on here was four to five thousand billable per hour. Yeah, as far as oh, oh like, yeah, easy. 
So. Yeah, we had uh, we had ten lawyers on simultaneously at one point, and yeah, uh, I won't use my lawyer hourly rate, but my YouTube one will rack up. And everybody, there everybody, you go. Getting, everybody <laughs> getting along and liking each other. When have you ever seen ten lawyers that do that? Yeah, seriously. I mean, you know, that's some that's kind of weird, actually. More well, it's it. it's because I took pictures of all your children have threatened you. Uh, Mike with, with C says for what we put in the private chat. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I saw that. Thank you. Mike C says, God, I wish G-A-F-F could have been in Rosenbaum's shoes. Who's G-A-F-F? Yeah. Uh, I have no idea. Mm -mm. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to find the next one. Uh, fastest hand in the West, Alec Flash, says in Richard's voice, Doctor, in your field of expertise, do you believe that Joe Rogan ingested horse paste? <laughs> no further questions, Your Honor. Uh, Cameron Nelson uh, is in Richard's voice. Mr. Pathologist, did you find evidence that Mr. Huber fucked around and then found out? No further questions, Your Honor. No further. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Brian Alleman says, to kick off the presentation of their case, can the defense just replay a video of the cross of Grosskreutz to refresh everyone's memory after the mind-numbing tedium? <laughs> it will just play. Uh, is this a true and accurate representation of what happened yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> you'd agree that he's got finger on this end. You'd agree that that was you guys getting your asses kicked, right? <laughs> and you couldn't you couldn't argue against the fact that you were you were looking for jabs. Uh, jabs. jabs. It's gotta be jabs. Burnham 007 says tis but a scratch. Uh Sword and Scale says, Are they allowed to play Sarah McLaughlin Sarah McLaughlin music while showing the dead bodies? <laughs> No, because no, I won't say the in the arms of the angel joke, but those guys were would not be there. That's rude to the dead. The denialist says we are now the big prosecutor, know nothing but cheeseburgers. We all know the big prosecutor knows nothing but cheeseburgers. Um, Gremlins Rage says a bit behind in the live stream, but the plastic on the dead idiot's chest is a chest seal. It's to help regulate the internal pressure of the chest cavity to promote improved breathing. It's not to stop bleeding. Uh, thank you for that. The chat is also live Wikipedia. Um, Angel of Sin says, Doctor, is there any prominent evidence in your autopsy that Mr. Rosenbaum did in fact, with respect to the evidence showing, find out? You do that too well. <laughs> Yeah, it's really it's 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 getting unsettling now. It's yeah, I gotta unsettling. I gotta invite him on, as, and I'll just do the whole show as him. As him, yeah. Uh, but you can't let him know that he's faking it. He should just think that's your normal voice. That's the key. Uh, Mr. Richards, everybody says I sound kind of like you when we talk. Uh, I don't know where they get it, but that's something I've heard. Have you heard that? Uh, Mike, the dad Crosby says intermediate equals a few feet. Well, now I'm a long range shooter. <laughs> and also for the demonetization fund. Yeah. After the, after the dead bodies, I just don't think we're going to get monetized. Uh, oh, we've got uh, Ron. Ron's welcome back. back. You're, how's you're your, muted. how's your important you're muted, work? Ron. He's not muted. He Never just there try. <laughs> I just had to do. I had to do some TV, so you'll excuse me for uh, running out. Uh, oh, oh, this isn't TV, uh, but you had to do some TV. Okay, yeah. what were you doing? Well, with us. You probably had fewer viewers on whatever you were on. It's not. Uh, it's not really TV. <laughs> it, it's not. It's not TV. It's not. It's just right. What? Sure. I know that I'm gonna. I. I <laughs> <laughs> do i need to refresh your recollection john i won't take this witness on voir dire. i i cannot i cannot believe what we went through today yeah i What's cannot your, like amateur night didn't it believe this can you yeah. i mean what was first first you got to go after granny then uh, then you got to go, is there the, is there an analog to pulling on the slot machine? And instead of getting all sevens, you get the opposite and it takes more money <laughs> out of your bank account. Like, well, Cause, cause then they get, they get the photographer who just wrecks them over and over. 
but the the least likely guy in the world yeah. to do that and and as we were talking about before <laughs> he comes across as what what Joe and I would say in our conversation is a, as a Tom, as a simple guy, uh, and instead, you've never for, used in all the word Tom with me ever. I don't even know what that means. What are you talking about? I, I'm talking Tom? about Saint Thomas. We we've oh. had a lot of a lot of discussions of uh, of, of uh, about uh, Catholic philosophy. I don't you know. know what you're talking Wait, about. are you talking about Saint Thomas that, Aquinas? We've never had that before. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay. nothing to do with it. Saint Thomas no, Jones. I mean, of course. It's <laughs> Saint Thomas. No, I was I was trying to be photo chat just now when I was like refuting your claims about our, our I know, I know, conversations. I know what you were doing. I know what you were uh, doing. <laughs> I think those guys are actually way more dangerous than people give them credit for. They see a guy who's sort of, you know, simple homespun kind of guy, and they're like, "I am a big lawyer. I can just take this guy on." Hmm. And he is a big lawyer. Out, like, yeah, he's a what they, he, yeah. he is one of the giants of the yeah. certainly in Kenosha. <laughs> I can't imagine there's anyone bigger yeah, I, in the bar. I, I, I what they run into is a guy who just I, I is unvarnished. Yeah, and and yeah. but also wicked smart, right? Like the guy's sharp. <laughs> he knows exactly what he's talking about. He's you got know, a great memory. It's true. I mean, we're talking about his great memory before, but yes, his answers were really, really well, well, um, um, calculated. I mean, yeah, yeah. He he. It's a he. He answered with a precision that you would would associate with a with like a professional, like a like a lawyer who's in the in the words business. A highly literal I, thinker. Yeah, you could tell that. I mean, he was highly highly literal. And of course, the problem, as I said earlier, they kept trying to trip him up, but he was telling the truth. Yeah, <laughs> you can't trip yeah. somebody up if they're telling the but truth. But also, he was telling the truth about them having yeah. tried to get one over on him. Yeah, they well, got, you put the video they down. They kissy about that, didn't they? <laughs> well, it was a liar's cross for an honest yeah. witness, and Ooh. really, they could have come in with maybe you're mistaken about this, maybe. But the problem is that they end up coming off looking like the liars in front of an honest witness. Right. Also, this attempt yeah. to suggest through, through this, and, and why the judge let it go this far, I have no idea. This that he's biased <clears throat> because he spoke to a journalist who he met in his lawyer's <laughs> office. Oh, and that snippy. Oh, did you waive attorney client privilege? Oh my oh, god. Oh, he should have been uppercut right off the earth for that one. Oh, I, that yeah. was that was just because they were asking they're basically asking him to say yes. The guy the <laughs> guy's the, the, the attorney's got a punchable face to but, begin with. And <laughs> you know, just I ah. mean, I had sympathy for him for most of the trial because or for at least most of the last few days, because you see him sitting in the back there going. Oh, and you know, you know, he's going home to cry into a mixed bucket of fried chicken and vodka. <laughs> but uh, you know, I've lost all sympathy for the Wait guy. A that's what I <laughs> ate last bucket night, literally. Vodka. Oh yeah, that's that's a great visual there. That was my <laughs> actual dinner no, you yesterday. You had cold forty five malt, malt liquor, Nick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I, I've got a bottle of military special vodka that came in the mail. Boone Farm. <laughs> <laughs> from the vineyards uh, of Ernest and Julio Gallo <laughs> but he became deeply unsympathetic in the course of that that exchange yeah, if no, you no, were in... I'm glad I'm sorry and I mean they need the sympathy here by they... the way uh, Ty and Runkle we've never met before and it's, it's my pleasure it's a oh, pleasure hey, to, to oh, meet likewise. you in this <laughs> in this uh, environment uh, such as it is this is what we call meeting these days of Nick, course it brings us all together in his way that's what I think. I had a bad He's kind of like the 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 Pope hat of the of Earth. Oh, of please, Earth. never, please, <laughs> never. Oh, that's just, that's just, oh. that's just Ron, gratuitous. What did I do to you? What did what I do done? to you that you would say that about me? I just can't. <laughs> you know the. But what Carl's... did I do? Because the things he says about me, believe me. <laughs> now you need to make the legal eagle comparison just to really round it yeah, out. Rub, yeah, might as well. You know that's going to garner a tweet now, right? He's going to go on some tirade. <laughs> Of a thread about how all nah, oh, these lawyers are talking about me. Doesn't pay any attention to us, of course. He's way, way, way above that. <laughs> Such a vaunted you know, man. Kraus, I had a bad reaction to him when uh, he was sitting up at the stand. This was actually a couple days ago, and he was twirling that pencil and couldn't think, but he had this pissy, pissy look on his face, just sneering. I thought, man, I, you know, and the judge, I, the judge was getting annoyed by it even 
And I was like, that guy's a prick. And well, <laughs> he sure didn't do anything to disabuse us of that today. But. Hold on one second. What? Yeah, you were. No, Sorry. Uh, I have a I have a friend here in the vault with me. And uh, he brought up that uh, the clip from yesterday showed up on uh, Michael Knowles's show, which is cool. Really? Is it Drex? Yeah. Uh, no. You have more no, friends? No, it's, it's Drex's. You don't, you don't have any Drex's, friends besides Drexel. It's, it's actually producer. Drex. It's actually producer Tim from Drex's show. Oh, okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's a not, Drex connection. So you were on Michael Knowles today? Well, I mean, the clip of uh, of the show was. That's really cool. But see, I already knew that because uh, one of my sister in laws sent me a message about it. Um, you must have that must have had 10 million views by now. I have no idea. That's, or I that that clip, that clip's that been clip. viewed on uh, just on Twitter it's about 4 it's like it was 3 and a 3.2 million earlier. So, so you're now. set for life now. I no. except not, except not, Viva stole all famous. of the Viva stole the clip. He gets all the credit. He really does. You wouldn't even hear what happened. But he doesn't but no revenue. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, I was going to uh, say you got the revenue, so I think they worked out for you. Nothing to see here says, can we get a K in chat for Kyle? Uh, and then a bunch of Ks flooded the chat, which I don't know if that's good. It's like on The Simpsons <laughs> when uh, Krusty the Clown did Krusty's comedy comeback. <laughs> Looks back and there's the KKK. On the that ain't good. <laughs> uh, Caligula says, look at that deceased pedo. The only good kind of pedo YouTube made me edit. Well, there you go. Uh, renal Ryan says, hi, Nick and crew question. Are lawyers shown graphic pictures like this during school to prep for what might be seen later during trials, like to mentally prep you for some grisly image? Uh, okay. not, not in my school. No, I mean, nope. law school has nothing to do with the practice of law. That's I actually, true. I took a course. <laughs> I took a course in forensic, um, evidence and we did, we were treated actually, but that's, it was an elective of course. We were treated to some rather gr grisly stuff in that course, so I became um, a commercial litigator. They uh, <laughs> could you could you imagine them doing that in this environment though? I mean, they get trigger warnings on words. They get a trigger warning on the Constitution class. It's like, oh, we're gonna talk about uh, we're gonna talk about what was that case down in Texas? The the sodomy case? Is it uh, Franklin Lawrence or no L Ma Lawrence Lawrence oh, V State true. right? Are you, yeah. Are you, are you, yeah. You're you get a trigger about, warning. No, no, no right to sodomy. No fundamental right to sodomy. I think was the holding. Right. Yeah. Or Lawrence v. Texas. Yeah. It, you. Uh, you. You get a trigger warning talking about that today in in law school, and it's like these are these are people who are going to go and hey, they're gonna advocate be our, they're on gonna behalf. Be our opponents. I'm I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, oh, compared to what we saw of, I, I mean, I that the christening of the. Harvey Milk Navy ship. They did like really? a YMCA oh musical number or something. <laughs> nice. Like nice. You're worried about, what, about, about rent. You're worried about the lawyers. You know, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh Swade <laughs> says, was he crouching? No stippling on the waist area. There's no stippling on the waist area because he had pants on. Yeah. Uh that I mean that was that was the main thing there. Doug Buzzard says, thanks for your coverage on this for all to see. Thank you. Um, Susan Anderson sent a sticker. Much appreciated. Woodfoot says, this is for all you new people. Nick only has one rule. Everyone subs. No one spams. If you don't hit the like button, I'll mute you myself. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get me? Uh, Man, we get that's, you, how you that's how you sir. succeed in this biz, I guess. Yeah, that's what you got to do. You got you to gotta beat the chat into it. Uh, David Payton says, just found you for this trial, enjoying everyone's perspective. Thanks, everyone. Uh, well, make sure then that you go subscribe to everyone, not just here. Uh, normally, everybody's on their own channels. Peter says, uh, I'm just starting to think this is Wisconsin nice in trial form. And yes, Wisconsin nice is a real thing. Um, next, we've got... Uh, Suede says, falling and charging look the same to the self-defender and imply attack. Uh, yeah, I would, I would, well, can look the same. I don't, I don't know if they automatically do depends on how you fall. But if, if you're running after someone screaming, fuck you, whether you fall or you charge, uh, that, you know, I don't think it matters at that point. I think I mean, it was like when this trial is over, we're going to need to make a list of the top 10 moments because there was so many great moments like McGinnis, 
there was at least three or four from photo chat where we just we were dying <laughs> from grambo there's just so many great moments and it's not even over it's the gift we're, that we're like that giving. meme of the guys you know pointing and laughing <laughs> that's like the whole thing is like <laughs> Mike the Mike the Dad Crosby says, I hope they didn't hire a certain armorer for this prop. <laughs> That's when the judge had to reprimand the detective. He's like, check the check the gun, check the gun. Check because gun, he just gun, starts pointing gun. it at people. It's like, what are you doing? You're you're a cop. You should know that you always clear the weapon. Uh Mr. D says, and for our final witness, the state calls Chewbacca. Uh, <laughs> Wolfgang Deo says, none of your business said I'd call that 10 feet uh, guy to the stand and ask him to show what 10 feet means to him. Damn, I agree with this demonstrative. These people be throwing out numbers without actually understanding them. Yeah, that that's that's court. That's uh, the judge even talked about that going into it when they were talking about having the testimony of of John Black. He's like he remembered litigating a case because he always remembers litigating a case where uh, someone ran a stoplight and got into an accident and he's like well how far was that and they're like 90 feet and he's like no it wasn't it's not even close to 90 feet uh so, yeah people just don't know numbers um rzeqdw says please read your discord dms and give me your thoughts on my friend's speculation about this case on stream or in private whatever you prefer in private first also ping me on discord when you read this i'm behind on the stream again um linus l says could it be argued that the longer the trial takes, the more chance the jury will be influenced or even intimidated by the media. Uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm worried about him sending the jury home every night. Yeah, that, that seems a little bit. Yeah, odd. they don't really sequester juries very often anymore, though. It's yeah, expensive. This is one of those, you know, Nobody will serve on a jury already. And so, if you yeah, sequester them, in order for it to yeah. be meaningful, you're not only sequestering them, you're taking away their phones or else you're not sequestering them. Yeah. Forget it. You're only yeah, going to get street true. people and, uh, you offensive. know, people like these prosecutors. <laughs> I mean, if they wanted Good to make job. it more desirable, they could sequester them in like a five-star hotel and make it a really, you know, have it a spa day. But they're never going to do that. They're going to put them in the cheapest place possible with no entertainment. And, you know cut off the the tv from the room so that they can't check the news so that all they can do is sit there and contemplate death <laughs> yeah all we can hope is that they watch this stream that's what we can yeah. hope. <laughs> so um, i'll tell you right now tim pool did a lot he loves your stream of this and i'm and you need to reach out to that brother and you need to say to him come join you'll you'll enjoy you know come join us here on the stream that he should like that you'll send him a, a, a link and let, give him give his commentary about what's happening here. It'll be a cheerful place, a happy place. Uh, I I don't know. This is not a slight to Tim or anything, but he's not a lawyer. I I prefer to keep the live stream of the trial to lawyers. Uh, okay, that's, that was it the was plan just, that I had going in. I'm not modifying it was, that. It was just a thought. It was just a thought. Yeah, you're saying that's your rules, right, Nick? I would always, but I would I would certainly you know uh, like to get his thoughts on it and uh, and maybe that'll happen at some point. Right. LR says for the OSHA guy is the contractor mandate going to survive the challenges currently in court? That's you, Ron, right? No. Oh, I thought you said you were fighting against the uh, the OSHA mandate. No, on, uh, it's not going to survive. Yeah, he's answering. Oh, the oh. Sorry, my <laughs> question actually. Uh, sir, was that's you, Ron Wright? Can you please answer oh. the question I asked you? Witness, oh, really? It's judge? an embedded question. It's double hearsay. Is that what it is? <laughs> Look, it is if you don't hearsay. understand the question, maybe you should tell me that, and, and then I can berate you for not understanding the question. Well, you, lovable you know, photographer. I'm, I'm just Are a regular guy. Advertising for the Kenosha prosecutor's office openings. <laughs> Look, I'm just I'm auditioning. I'm auditioning to be a Kenosha prosecutor. Um, Philly Witch Doctor 99 says, Do we get an extra 24 hour stream at 200,000 subs? Oh, god, uh, <laughs> we're not talking about it. Cat Zap says, The defense should call a legislator involved in the drafting of the gun law to testify 17 year olds would were exempt from the long gun part and why. Uh, I mean, they've submitted the legislative history. Uh, did he say argument... Semitic? Did he say some? Did you say Semitic? Yes, I distinctly yeah, I... heard you say Jew. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Dog I did. I guess. Jew and, <laughs> uh, did you hear me say Jew? 
Uh, I see. I know. I see what you did there. So, uh, <laughs> they submitted the legislative history in their motion. They lost. But what I what I gather, without reading the briefs or or the formal opinion, the judge seemed to imply that the and and Kraus made this at oral argument. He said they believe it's a jury question. I think that's a crazy uh, perspective on this, but they believe it's a jury question. So the defense is asking for a modified jury instruction to include the exception language in the jury instruction, which would be, that'd be one way that Kyle actually wins on the gun charge rather than loses because that, that law is hard for lawyers to understand. And so the jury will be No, no law. I sit there and I've looked at that law like, like for like 15 minutes. And I'm like, I have no idea if this applies to him or not, but apparently if they have the right jury charge, the right jury charge, a panel of 12 lay persons, they're just going to figure it. They're going to piece it all together. They're going to put it all together there. I don't understand this. It's the majesty of the jury system. Don't worry. They're they're going to read the exception. They're going to also read the three exceptions to the exception that are built in the section, and they'll mm-hmm. understand it. and uh, And they have no case law to guide them. It'll be perfect. No jury could ruin <laughs> that. Um, Simple Living says only seventeen thousand on PBS. Yes, uh, we for at least a while. I think. I think for the main part of it, we were ahead of PBS Suck today. It, so PBS. Uh, they do often. Um, MM says, Nick, the reason you become the go-to in this case is because you have always acted honorably and in good faith. Can you please explain the importance of belief and acting in honor and good faith? Love to the panel. Uh, the importance of belief? Religious I guess in... Belief, I, I, I don't know if it means religious belief or if they mean in terms of law. Uh, it's all of the witnesses have to testify to what they believe they're experiencing. Um, they, they can't testify to what they didn't experience or encounter. So I, I think that's it, but acting in honor and good faith. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is a legal question or if this is a personal question. I really have no idea how to answer it. Uh, and I think it would take a long time, but, um, always act in honor and good faith. Uh, how's that? Just in general, try that out. It'll it'll help you. Christopher Nicholson says, if they put Kyle on the stand and he starts crying, are you going to make fun of him, Nick? Yes. Yes. Sorry, uh, I cool. like Kyle, but I have rules. I have rules. Oh, well, you you're a professional, Nick. You can't. Yeah. You can't cry in public. I actually, I think it would be bad if Kyle got on the stand and started crying in public. I think it's bad if he gets on the stand. But if he gets up there and starts crying after he he shot two people, he shot three people, killing two of them. He's like, oh. Woe is me. You know, this was very traumatic for me. The jury goes, yeah, but the other guys are dead. Yeah. Right. I, I, I don't. It could go the other way, though. If he doesn't cry, he may end up looking. You yeah, know, that's, why, that's why you don't put him on the stand. Yeah, that's yeah. why. That's why you yeah. can't take the stand, because you don't know what facial reaction the jury is hoping to see out of him. And let's call. And let's listen. Let's call his lawyer. Let's someone get their lawyers on the oh, phone yeah, and tell the five of us. Hey, uh, if you're watching this, could y'all just get on the stream? Nick will send you a link. Yeah, yeah. Richards, get on here. Ask, look, look. I still say the Richards co- would make a great mafia consigliere lawyer. Oh yeah, he has the look. Oh yeah, uh, I, I'd cast him in a heartbeat. The first time I saw him, one of one of my favorite descriptions uh, uh, from the Warhammer books, because I'm a super nerd, um, of one of the Primarchs is his face was carved out of granite. <laughs> like, and I saw Richard sitting there, and he's like, I was like, oh, this guy, he almost looks mean. He just, just has that good face. Uh, Andy M says, I'm center and lean left and agree with you guys, not the media. That, and that's because to anyone who is objectively looking at this case, there's no way that this isn't self-defense. Also, love how many types of lawyers are here. Hey, we're calling it like we see it, you know, and, and we're not really seeing it through a political lens. Yeah, we've got our we got we've got our we're rooting for Kyle, but we're calling the law straight up. I actually uh, don't know what Kyle's political leanings are other than what I've seen come out of CNN that he uh, associated with Proud Boys after the shooting at some point because they met up at a bar. Like, so I don't know, like, uh, he's also at the time was 17. Like, do you even, I don't respect the opinions of 17 year olds on politics in general. No, no. So I, I don't My care. My opinions what. are exactly the same as they were at 17. Yeah. <laughs> You're talking, but you weren't talking about regular people. So I understand. Yeah. I understand. That. <laughs> now you did not want me making big decisions at 17. I can promise you. Uh, Alart Van Vloten says, 
How much would the cost be to get this amount of legal minds? This stream is priceless. Thanks, everyone. Uh, look, uh, to get <laughs> to hire 10 lawyers is a lot of money. Um, that's that's all I can say. David says, uh, hi, I'm mostly a Viva viewer from Canada. Hmm. I tried looking up Rittenhouse Trial Day 5, and you guys don't show up at all. I was watching last week and yesterday. Amazing breakdown and super entertaining while I'm at work. Uh, That's Padre what work is for. <laughs> Padre says, talk more. I'm here to listen to a bunch of lawyers talk smack about the trial. Oh, thank you. Someone realizes it. Uh, Tim Herrera says, money for adult diapers so Ricada Law can make it through the proceedings. Uh, the God of Sleep says, if you were the prosecutor and knowing what facts were brought in the case, would you have instead brought a case against Gage for attempted murder? No, I don't think so. I don't see how um, you'd get a conviction on that. No. Um, Assault. No. I, uh, <coughs> I mean, but I think, I think Gage has a reasonable claim of uh, self-defense. Yeah. But he ran up and on him. He did. I don't know what the uh, citizens of Rest provisions are like there. Wisconsin? Uh, there's no duty to retreat in Wisconsin, and uh, the prosecution has framed this entire thing as they, as Gage and Huber believe they were stopping an active shooter. If Gage hmm. literally believes he's stopping an active shooter, you've got a bunch of people saying he shot this guy. Reasonable you've got gunshots reason. that are audible. You've, you've got a guy with a gun that everybody's saying he just shot a guy. Uh, and you, you just might the have gunshots. But he's, he not, just but, heard, he's not, but he's not shooting anybody else. An active shooter, you would, I mean, by the normal definition. But is you there think, enough there for an arrest? Like, he no, might be potentially Well, there's ever been as much evidence as there is to arrest Kyle. Yeah, it might yeah, be that he's well, yeah, trying yeah, to affect a lawful arrest in that process and then entitled to defend himself once Kyle swings the gun. Uh, yeah. Lots of people, I think... Are, uh, yeah. I think I, lots I of think people are have falling trouble. into the mistake of saying it's got to be either Kyle or the other who's got uh, a defense. And I think here it's both. Yeah, it's uh, it's certainly it's, possible. It could be both. I mean, logically. Yeah. Um, I, I think there's reasonable doubt there. Um, I, I think, and again, I don't think they should have charged Kyle either. Well, but that's I, I think what the questioners are getting are, are, are doing. I, th I think the implicit question is if it's okay to charge Kyle, why not all these other people? It's that selective yeah, I mean, nature. Of the okay. Yes. Under that qualification, yeah. If if yeah. you're using the same logic or the same motivations that you would to charge Kyle on on Gage, then yeah, you could charge him. I, I think it'd be real hard to sustain a conviction for attempted murder on him, though. I really do. But they charged uh, Kyle with everything, so why not the curfew violation that they're trying to sink uh, on Kyle? Why not the concealed carry violation? The curfew violation did get dropped today, just uh, in case you oh, didn't yeah. see that. So um, that was uh, that was a good moment. Um, Lee Coy says late comment, maybe already covered, but the smoke the prosecution was talking about in the video is from the dispelled casing drawn out of the barrel by extraction from an expanded casing four barrels worth of smoke. Oh, okay. So yeah, since he's firing four times and the, the bullets are going through, um, it's the, the last one is bringing out all of the gas from the chamber, I guess, is what, what he's saying. Are the press, are the, are the district attorneys elected in, uh, uh, the DA is, but the DA, um, these but guys the are ADAs. ADAs. Probably aren't. Right. They're hired. He's running. He oh. ran and lost uh, in Racine, uh, Wisconsin last election. And I think he's running again next time. Or well, I'm maybe gonna not run. anymore. I'm going to yeah, run for I, supper. I, I, I got right, to bust out of here also. And Joe, okay. thank I you guys. Go ahead and do the same. I will see you tomorrow. Incredible Good simulation of reality. Awesome job today, <laughs> right. Nick. It has its moments. And, and the rest of you as well. Take care, brothers. See ya. Cheers. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Man, I I'll should grab some dinner myself. And, uh, but thank you for having me on. L wonderful. And I'm going to try to be here uh, earlier tomorrow. I don't have court. So. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, man. Thank you. Hey, Nick, uh, I got to run too, but could I shill that I'm going to be at a role playing game convention? I mean, I this guess. Week? Yeah. The Long Con in Longview, Texas this weekend. There you go, guys. If you want to yeah. go see Ty and bother him, go to the Long Con in Longview, Texas. Uh, listen, you haven't and, lived uh, you've been to East Texas, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, uh, man, that, that, by the way, congratulations on, on all this. This that, That's that's extraordinary. The, thank you. Thank you. I hope you'll fun. let it go to your head. I mean, I assume I, you will. It's already there. Yeah, good, good. Well, it's, it's all, all right, right, my friend. Well, hey, you have a good all one. Right, see you later, buddy. Bye-bye.
uh, uh, do I have to kick you out? Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, to the person in the chat who said who said I'm dumb, you you can uh, disagree with that legal analysis, but I'm I'm gonna frankly tell you that it's it's the argument the state is making, and while they're doing a poor job, um, I don't think they're bad on their legal analysis. I think they know how bad their case is, but. Uh, that's that's the entire theory is the active shooter theory. Question is, would a jury believe that they're reasonable? Now, Gage has some complicating factors, uh, like the concealed handgun being illegal because he didn't have an active conceal and carry permit. So maybe that does it. But we get to the same question as with Kyle. If he's defending himself, do you get to uh, do you get him on the murder charge? I don't think you do, but maybe you get him on the concealed charge. The concealed charge, he could certainly eat that. Um, so that's a that's a little bit of a different analysis. You don't have a self-defense claim to illegally carry, but you do have a self-defense claim for the weapon that you are illegally carrying. Um, so I hope that clears that up. Caligula says 30,000 viewers. Grats, Mr. Rackets. Oh, God, that's better. That's what you get for awesome analysis and guests for all this time. Hey, thank you. Gonefall says, now I can't enjoy you as a smaller YouTube page, SMH. Oh, well, I'm so proud of you, man. From controversial Funimation defamation on Vic to here, what a ride. I'm super chatting now is my gift to you, sir. Hey, thank you. Aaron Pipes says, do you see a civil suit for wrongful prosecution against city and DAs given the absolute failure to make a criminal case on virtually all the elements of the charges and the clear proof of self-defense? Probably not. Although uh, the stuff they're doing uh, may be with the, with the photographer may have been unethical the the questions about having him change his statement and and stuff like that that they got real nervous about that very very nervous about that um lawful lucas says nick first super chat but long time law degenerate just passed the massachusetts bar exam and wanted to share the love chat subscribed all these beautiful minds and a nose love everyone's content got me through law school congrats lawful lucas Welcome to your new career in which you'll probably not have time to watch any of us <laughs> for a while, but go get it, buddy. Uh, get out there and, and start doing something uh, good for you. Scott Mink, uh, Minkheim, Minikheim says, is it possible the defense hinted at bringing Kyle on the stand as a means of wasting the prosecution's time preparing to interview him? Um, I don't know if that's, I think the prosecution would have been preparing anyway, on the off chance that they bring him um, or on the chance that, that, uh, that they can goad him, goad them into bringing him. So I, I don't know that that would be the, the goal. Spike Viper says, keep up the good work. Thank you for that. People projects done poorly says the trial is nothing more than the establishment going after their scapegoat because if Kyle wins the narrative that the riots were the result of social justice goes away. A lot, uh, also lots, lots of peeing is a sign of diabetes, Nick. <laughs> I don't actually go to the bathroom that much. These streams are 10 hours long. I go like twice. Uh, Planet Tober TV says, friend and his fellow Green Beret are held in Venezuelan prison. His brother is working to raise an air, uh, awareness and funds for food, etc. Check AmericanRescueCoalition.org and go fund me under Free Luke and Iron. Thanks. Wow, there you go. That sounds wild. Gigoku says, I'm homesick from work and watching quality content with a flock of amazing lawyers. Keep up the great commentary. About 33,300 live viewers and almost 200,000 subs. Keep up the good work, Nick. Hey, thank you. Civil rights lawyer says, thank you, gentlemen, for watching this for me while I'm forced to work. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, why Heitman says, I'm just fascinated at how the prosecution is being made to look like fools by the defense for even bringing the charges. This needs to end. I agree. Prosecution should fold the case at this point, but they're terrified for the political fallout from that or Binger should be again. If he folds the case, his election, his career's toast. His election is over. Um, Ray Fernandez says between judge grandpa and armed grandma are, we are getting the best storytelling. <laughs> Versi says, God bless this gamer grandma. <laughs> Cannot believe she. How would, who could have guessed going into this, that there would be three N words said on uh, live, live television. That was a bit surprising to me. 
Uh, Squirrel says, technically, the dad and mom own the businesses, so she, in fact, did not have a conversation with the owners. Yeah, but they didn't hit her on that on uh, on cross exam because she wouldn't have known. It was their it was her perception of who the owners were. They may have represented themselves as the owners, Sam and Sal. Swade says defense has this one before their witness called, but these witnesses are showing all of the world really how justified Kyle was and how ridiculous the narrative painted has been. Keep them coming. Uh, Peter says Pool just pushed the stream on Twitter. Thank you, Tim Pool. <laughs> super iron bob says i apologize i'm probably not explaining myself properly no sir you just don't know what you're talking about at all grambo demolishing the da over and over <laughs> g man uh g man says uh doctor in your expert opinion could a gunshot wound to the pelvis cause a person to fall forward prior to the shot being fired or does the fall typically occur afterwards <laughs> what a question that was um next Trump Willis is my name, says my mom has been watching the trial the whole time. And the only thing she thought today was, why are you tottering the boy with images like this, torturing the boy with images like this and making him relive this? And she thought he was guilty at first. Yeah, I think people are changing minds here. Suede says horizontal, not back turned. Uh, next, turned, as it were. Drew says, can defense call Binger in regards to cops testimony regarding not fulfilling the search warrant and other matters? No, you're typically not going to get a lawyer who's uh, practicing on the stand. Um, they, if a lawyer is going to be a witness, uh, they shouldn't be. I don't think they can actually represent uh, in that case. Mark Fleming says Binger equals baby finger. Mm. MM says the nose nose. Binger looks like he just found out his wife performs in Bukaki videos. Gross. Repent Center says, go to 4chan slash poll and follow the Kyle Rittenhouse general threads for the best memes. Use the catalog button to browse easier and thank me later. You're here forever. Enjoy your stay. I have, I don't even know how to get on poll. So not going to work for me. Um, all right. Next. Uh, squirrel 69 says technically wait i read that one. Oh, i've read some of these i had to switch screens so that's good uh let's see hip hip poopy says i would buy i heart grambo shirts as my mother's nickname was grambo no Crusader says, may Allah shower blessings and good fortune upon all of you and especially upon base Grambo. As for Binger, may Allah place him before Kyle on the day of judgment. Also, is Sheer Feli on cross your worst nightmare, Budhorn? He's uh, he's not a good one. I mean, he's good. You wouldn't want him to face him on cross. Ray Fernandez says, the big lawyer after all this is going to live in a van down by the river. Squirrel says, what are the odds that Binger was really after getting the civil suit to get crushed for Gage? Would the questioning with car source folks shift the lawsuits to them rather than the city then campaign on it? Um, I mean, he couldn't campaign on that. That's not his job, but I guess that could be a motivation. I don't think it's likely though. Gunner says the lady in Viva's clip is the court reporter. She's sitting in front of the witness box. The clerk is the lady sitting in front of the judge. Uh, Renzo Talara says, I want a Grambo t-shirt. Oh, we should... We should do that. I can't put her face on it. Kellen Miller says, I want to draw attention to how difficult re-racking an AR-15 in Kyle's seated position with the rifle tight against his body is because of how an AR-15 charging handle works. Rival needs to be away from the body. Yeah, that's that's what Ty uh, was, was intimating when we were talking about it. It's like, it would take time. You'd see it. It's something you have to do. It's a big motion. Um, Russian word says the accent is thick uh okay what do we got whiskey actual says this chat super chat is to spite youtube for randomly switching my feed to yahoo news for absolutely no reason chris nemo says i'm three hours behind but nate needs correcting left-leaning people know kyle was justified too it's only the extreme left-wing partisans who swallow the msm narrative thank you chris nemo for uh for expounding on that Next, we have ah! just a second. 
these uh there's so many people in the chat that it overloads chrome <laughs> i don't know if like chrome caches all of the messages that come through but um it it eventually overloads chrome and i have to uh refresh the page um so that's that's been fun the main thing with that is it make it resets where i am in the uh and and i have to go to the, a different place to read the super chats which is really YouTube has got to get a handle on that. Um, okay. Hold on. I just got to find the spot. Where were we? Oh, my goodness. I will find it like Daniel day Lewis chasing down his bride in last of the Mohicans. I will find you. Here we go. <coughs> now I need to get back up to the next one. Oh my gosh. Where is it? Woo. RH says, congrats, Nick on your pending 200,000 subscribers. This trial has been a neutron star level dumpster fire. I can't look away from also. ASMR stream when uh, Casbiness says Richard's reaction to objections for leading lends insight into why Richards didn't object to the prosecution leading. He thinks leading is a technical issue. Hints didn't object and is frustrated when Binger does. Yeah. He seems to not understand how to not lead a witness. Actually. Uh, he's good on cross maybe because he was born leading witnesses. <laughs> you just learned it. He was born into leading witnesses. Um, does it matter? Says, turns out the perfect witness is a 4chan savant. <laughs> oh, my. The Dragon's Treasure says, generic 200K. Congrats, sub. Thanks. Uh, Pastor Flash says, congratulations, 200,000 subs. Now we need two 24-hour streams. You better stop. You better stop. Billy Witch Doctor says, does this mean we get a 48-hour stream? No. Endless End says, congrats on 200,000 subscribers. I remember when you were just hitting 10 to 20,000. Did you see that Attack on Titan political ad that was floating around Twitter? I've still got a link if Twitter didn't nuke it yet. I heard they were considering it hate speech. Uh, Rep, Rep Gosnar. Go, go, what do you know? Do you know the guy's name? Uh, yeah, he, he did that. Uh, Ron Little says, blaming Kyle for being where he was is akin to blaming a rape victim for looking good at a bar and fighting her attacker. This analogy would probably trigger the jury in Kyle's favor. Patrick Kennedy says, a lot behind on the stream, but here is 20 bucks to make a meme of the totem's reaction to Granny saying bitchin'. <laughs> RJS Payne, 56, says, why am I enjoying this as much as March Madness? Uh, because, because sports have let you down. Sports organizations have have done that, but uh, also we're funny. Fire Sky says, let it end, but this is funny AF. Gigi Evans says, prosecutor stay puffed is going after him like he does a steak buffet. <laughs> uh, Eric Johansson says, sit down, pork drippings. Wolfgang Deo says, screw wide boy and his elitist attitude just because he has a significant interest in the case does not mean that photo memory is going to be caring about these little details. Serious. WTF is wrong with, and he made bad decisions. Mark Gee says, big boy staying up there like he's at a Golden Corral buffet. Just sit down. You've had enough. Uh, sir, the mashed potatoes were gone two hours ago. David Kingsley says, stay puff marshmallow man is going so hard on this kid because he thinks the guy is somehow stupid. And marshmallow is trying to make up for being pwned by the other witnesses while still being pwned by this one. Do you actually say the P in pwned? It's weird. That's weird. It shouldn't be that way. There's a lot wrong with this world, but that's that's one of the big ones. Uh, Fatal System Air says, congrats on 201,000 subscribers. All-star cast on panel. This has been great coverage. Elliot Smith says, here comes Fatlock. <laughs> Margo Rana says, 37,000 concurrence. Number one, as far as I can tell. Heartfelt congratulations to you, Nick. Prayers for wisdom and continued success for you and the rest of the panel. Lastly, would appreciate prayers as I take the LSAT on Saturday. Margo, I'm sure you will do great. Go nail it.
Go nail it. Stop laughing at fat lock. You got to stop. I can't, I can't talk if you keep laughing at fat lock. James Spoon says, congrats, Nick, on 200,000 subscribers. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. I really appreciate it. Uh, what's next? Leo Topic. Thank you for the donation. Really appreciate that. Nocturnal Guy says, uh, so would it be correct to say you bucked around and found out? Gage. Yes, that's correct. Mark says, if the jury somehow convicts, can the judge overturn their verdict it, if it deems they are compromised? Um, he can declare mistrial if he thinks the jury has been compromised. If he thinks the jury is just legally wrong, that no reasonable jury could come to this legal conclusion, then he can do what's uh, what's commonly called a judgment notwithstanding a verdict. Uh, I or it's non obstante a verdict or something because it's fucking Latin. Um, but uh, yeah, J and O V. Um, I'm not sure if they call it that in Wisconsin to the internet critics out there doesn't matter it's it's the same thing a judge says no reasonable jury could reach this conclusion and then he issues a ruling that would dismiss the charges or, or find not guilty based on the record and then the state can actually appeal that that's the sort of due process protections for a judge just declaring people innocent is the state can appeal that up to a higher court um karn says did they address anything about kyle illegally carrying yet just tired of hearing this talking point from friends. Nope. That one's going to go to a jury trial so far, or that one's going to the jury so far. So, uh, we'll see how that turns out. Um, the title of the stream is, is the prosecution finished tomorrow's? Yes. Oh, Oh, tomorrow's stream. It would be just titled. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Got it. Uh, Ducey says rackets. I own the Ricada law Ethereum address so you can accept crypto. I want to give it to you so you can grift us with crypto. Should I DM you on Discord, Twitter, or email? Um, Discord, Ducey. Thank you for that. I don't even know what that means, but thank you. Um, I mean, I know what Ethereum is, but I don't know what the rest of it means. But hopefully you can walk me through it. Really appreciate that. Uh, Gould Ducat did nothing wrong. Says, how does Gage have a self-defense argument? Is there such a thing as pursuing a fleeing person in self-defense? Um, it's... Again, if he determines that Kyle Rittenhouse, if it's reasonable to determine that Kyle Rittenhouse is an active shooter and he's trying to stop an active shooter, if that's reasonable and he hasn't made contradictory statements, then uh, he could raise that issue. Um, you can, uh, because you're not, self-defense is not just yourself, but also others as well. So if he believes that Kyle is an active shooter who uh, has shot someone and is going to shoot someone else, he could he could do so. And remember, not just the uh, he not we're not just talking about Rosenbaum who he shot, but by the time Gage engages Kyle, Anthony Huber has also been shot. So he has now shot two people. That is the FBI definition of an active shooter. He's also fired shots at Jump Kick Man. Now again, Kyle is justified. I do not think Gage is justified. I think you'd have trouble getting the conviction on it. Um, so that that'd be the basic elements of the self-defense claim is that he's stopping an active shooter. He's fired at two people right in front of him very quickly. He has a gun. He thinks he can stop it. Uh, Michael Amante says, try to rewind your stream to show a friend lunchbox arguing with the witness about the other Zeminsky case, but I can't seem to do so. Used to be able to rewind with no problem earlier in the day. It's probably because the stream got so long, but it should be up soon. P Dog Knight says, I don't think the curfew violation was dropped. It was just removed from this prosecution because of the number of jurors. That charge is adjudicated by a jury of six. They talked about this on day one. No, they moved to dismiss it and, and the judge dismissed the charge. So it's gone. Um, Dude McGuy says, Is a group of lawyers like this an attache of lawyers? Again, I, I like to call it a retainer of lawyers, um, but that's me. Uh, yours is probably better. Jack Bauer says, I learned today from that prosecutor that I first have to background check every guy I meet in a toilet or in my lawyer's office before I'll talk to him. Greetings from Europe. Yes, a baffling, baffling claim. Uh, why'd you talk to him? Because he's the media. Do you talk to every media? No. Yeah, for the record, guys, uh, I get I get requests to do different shows and I, you know, I don't really... A lot of them, I, I kind of know. I don't do a ton of background checks into their deep, like I don't do deep dives into their history because um, who has time for that? And I also don't respond to all of them. So, you know, I know exactly what the guy's talking about. Uh, Cinnamon Skoda says, uh, UOF ins, 
you owe fins for Leo here. Grambo was right. A gun is a gun. Um, I don't know what U O F I N S. Oh, wait, use of force instructor for law enforcement officer. The L E O wasn't capitalized. So it threw me off. Sorry. Use of force instructor for law enforcement officer here. Grambo is right. A gun is a gun, especially arms reach pistols can offer advantages over a rifle. And like she said, the result is the same. The weird obsession with an AR special scary status baffles me. Well, they're just hoping that the jury has no idea. I mean, that's it. That's what they're going for. They want to use the political power of the AR-15 because they want to draw the specter of the jury into the media sphere so that they think about what they've heard about Kyle Rittenhouse over the past year in the media before they were a jury, if they're not trying to draw them to look at it today. Cinnamon Skoda read that. Oh, just read that. And then here we go. Leo Topic says, I guess my chat got deleted. The firearm could have been on safe and the malfunction was Kyle trying to pull the trigger on safe. I mean, I, I guess that's possible, but Kyle had literally one second before shot Anthony Huber. So I, I think that's, that's tough. I mean, he would have had to shoot Huber and then have the, the safety mechanism trigger uh, or switch, or he would have had to switch it on his own. Um, so I, I don't think that's it. And then finally, the helmet head says, hear me out, not a retainer of lawyers, but a bankrupt of lawyers because no one can afford this panel. <laughs> there you go. Hey, guys, thank you so much for hanging out today. I really appreciate it. Tomorrow, uh, we will be back 8.45 a.m. for more coverage. We will keep this thing going. Uh, we're going to watch this whole trial and um, uh, much appreciated. Also, uh, tonight, I will be getting any of the uh, chats that were under $20. I will go through all of them tonight and uh, try and address any questions that come up. Again, my personal policy, and may God willing, I'll always have it, but we'll see, is to read every chat that comes in. I have no intention of not doing that. And so that's what I will be spending tonight doing and offering maybe some additional thoughts as I think back on this and maybe a recap if people don't want to watch the full uh, nine hours of coverage that we had today. Thank you guys so much. We will see you tonight or tomorrow. Have a good night, guys. Peace. Where's my, where's my mouse? Okay, <laughs> peace. Peace. Sure, we have mistrial here, sir. I'm gonna mistrial my foot up your ass, you don't shut up.